right hand puncture, right hand front puncture to be precise. And you know what? This is a an absolute tragedy for Stuart Motorsport. Alexander Sims being caught out by that downpour there and this car was in contention, it's got to be said, in contention for an overall win or indeed a podium position, top three podium position now, just ebbing away from this car and the car down, dropping down to third. The question, the big question that this team will ask of this car, when the wheels come off, there'll be massive inspection and assessment made of that suspension on the front right and also the rear right as well because it looked like uh, both front and rear of the side of that right hand side of that car did hit the barrier and it was wasn't as hard a hit as we've seen no Some bodywork damage there johnny being uh, addressed by the good old broader uh tank tip um wheel off you can have a look, boys. You're putting the wheel straight back on, so you're happy. And did that that look like a cut slick? I think it is a cut slick, yeah. So not a full um, slick tyre, but uh, some grooves, which will help to dissipate a little bit of water, which is built up. You, I mean, it's not full uh, treaded tyre weather yet. It's pa probably just a passing shower over at Brightshide and Exmuller. And amazingly, just a little bit of tape is all that's needed on that front right corner. So... Um, they're obviously happy with suspension. Yeah, I mean, it was barely a look, wasn't it? Exactly. And of course, they'll have had... Um, Alexander Sims will have been telling them that, um, you know, the, the steering feels fine. It's, you know, all I've got is a puncture. But I, I personally would have had my head under that wheel arch. Well, yeah, but it depends on what was reported back by Alexander Sims on the run to the start-finish line because uh, the dotting of Hoare, well, obviously much, much slower for the Schubert Motorsport BMW down that. Bit more tape being applied now on the top of the fender. But otherwise, these checks can be done within the pit, uh, pit time limit. And, and uh, so, actually, the amount of time they've lost is all on that inlet, it would seem. About four minutes to go before we get to the top of the hour and another race hour completed. A rainbow in the Eiffel Valley as this mixture of sunshine and rain hits for the first time. It is picture postca uh, postcard conditions here, though, in the Eiffel Mountains. And the race continues on. In which direction are we going to go next, folks? Joe Bradley and me, Johnny Palmer, are going to be stepping away fairly shortly for a bit of breakfast, but we will leave you in the capable hands of our RSL team to do the next little stint. And pendulum sw swinging very definitely to Audi at the moment. But Mercedes are just waiting in the wings with the second and third place cars from Team Get Speed. The Schubert BMW is away again. So that in lap for Alexander Sims taking... Well, actually, the pit stop will be included in that as well, but we reckon he's lost a couple of minutes, basically. He lost a minute in that long sector six, or sector seven, rather, which took him three and three-quarter minutes rather than with the rainfall, two minutes 50. You can normally do that sector in under two and a half minutes, but an idea there of how much Kelvin van der Linde was taking things easily. Maxi Gertz, who'd already had an off in this stint before the rain hit, when he went off on one of the Porsche Caymans um, coolant or oil down at Arenberg. And Gertz has had his moments in the rain over the years too. A couple of minutes to two-thirds distance, Joe. And again, these are small milestones, but we're nearly at eight o'clock in the morning. The rain is still pounding down on certain areas of the circuit and somebody else with a moment this time. It's one of the pro sport Aston Martins facing the wrong way on the run down towards Exmuller. Yellow flags were warning Maximilian Gertz of that uh, difficulty to get through. And um, again, slippery surface flags being shown, not because of debris, not because of any coolant down, but purely because of the rain. Bright sunshine on the pit straight. What's everybody on about over at Exmuller? It's a lovely day, isn't it? Pouring down at Exmuller, keeping that track very track surface very, very slippery and very tricky to drive on. And again, another element of the uniqueness of the Nürburgring and the Nürburgring 24 hours. 
Um, we've got quite a few slow sections developing with cars. I mean, we had a car pointing the wrong direction there, didn't we? Um, head yeah, on. Pro, pro Sport of. Aston, I yeah. think. Is that what it was? Didn't, didn't grab the number. Um, but uh, Pro Sport here with a couple of Aston Martins in the race, and that one uh, had made contact with the barrier by the looks of things. Marshals were about to attend. So that might have been the 82 Pro Sport racing Aston Martin Vantage from the SP10 category or the 81 or indeed the 80. Difficult to tell at the speed that Maxi Gertz was going through, being shown yellow flags, but no actual speed limit in place. So it's Audi from Mercedes from Mercedes, Team Phoenix with Kelvin van der Linde halfway through a second stint for the South African. Maxi Gertz just over a minute behind. The gap is 66, 67 seconds. And Maro Engel, two and a half minutes further down the road from that. It is a new driver in the BMW as well. So at four o'clock yesterday afternoon, we got underway with the track in very good condition indeed. Sun was shining in the Eiffel region and about 60 odd cars in that first starting group got underway. We've got uh, near enough 40 SP9 entries that took part in a two part qualifying on Friday. Side by side action in the early exchanges between Nicky Team's Aston Martin and the number 98 Rover Racing BMW. They left uh, turns one and two side by side. This is a horrible moment for Laurence Vantour. Uh, mere passing glance with younger brother Dries Vantor in the Audi. You couldn't really make that incident up. And the front of last year's defending champions destroyed the number one Manti Racing Porsche out on the spot. Kevin Estra embracing his mechanics to say, we'll have to pack things up and see you again next year. Felix van der Laden in the KTM from Teichmann Racing, dramatically alight as he arrived at Arenberg. But that wasn't the most peculiar uh, thing of this incident, because as the fire was being pulled out and Felix van der Laden got out of the car, the car started rolling down the hill and into the foxhole. Felix couldn't hold it back. Why would you want to get back into a burning car? And it hit the barrier not once, but twice. But thankfully, that second hit into the Armco slowed and stopped the car and the fire was eventually put out. Then we were plunged into darkness for many hours. Sheldon van der Linde going so well in the 98 BMW M4 to this point. Made a mistake, caught some grease on the track, but whatever happened, it pitched him into the barrier and the stronger of the two Rover Racing BMWs left with a huge sharp bite out of the front right. Fred Verveesh, one of the first on the scene after that. Now, Kelvin van der Linde, our race leader in the other Phoenix Audi, collided with a midfielder on the Grand Prix Strecker. He was pitched into the tyre wall on the run up the hill towards Michael Schumacher S. That wouldn't be the end of race for Kelvin van der Linde. He's jumped from the 5 to the 15 that he was always named against and is our current race leader. This was a spin for the 44 Falcon Motorsports Porsche. In, again, in the night time, he was subsequently glanced by a Opel Astra in the OPC division. And that did further damage to the rear of the 44. KTM catching one of many Porsche Caymans in this race on the run out of the Goodyear hairpin as well. And that car was heavily damaged. One or two mechanics did get maybe 20 minutes here and there of shut eye. And then just after 5 a.m., there was some daybreak, but unfortunately, end of race for the BMW junior team. The 72 car driven at the time by Max Hesse was uh, pitched in, well, a, a slight mistake maybe from Max, a change of conditions between the eight minutes at Kesselschen that he'd previously been through there and into the barrier, doing sufficient damage to the back of the 72 to put it out of the race. Meanwhile, the race leaders and those in contention for a podium, Schubert Motorsport, and the 15 car of Team Phoenix doing their pit stops every hour or so and turning the cars round sufficiently to provide this uh, good foundation in the early hours of the race, now into the middle hours of the race, but still according to Adam Christodoulou, we haven't got to crunch time yet. That happens with about two or three hours to go. Unfortunately for Tony Richards, it would be the end of race for Team Matol Porsche 
hitting the barrier at Schwedenkreuz, dropping oil on the surface. And in second place at the time, Maximilian Gertz skating off the road at Arenberg on Tony's oil, on Tony's coolant. And he kept it out of the Armco, thankfully, but did lose time because of that through the gravel trap at Arm uh, to Arenberg. A change of lead on the track, on the Dottinger Hur. This has happened in the last half an hour. Schubert Motorsport BMW getting the toe on Kelvin van der Linde and the race lead. But then the rain would strike at Exmuller and an uncharacteristic mistake. Well, not really, because the track surface had changed so dramatically. The Cup 2 leader at, at uh, Hohenrein and Tiergarten having a similar moment to Laurence Fantor, not as violent, but unfortunately the car would go out of the race. And then, much more recently, at Metzgersfeld, the rain, the heavens opened. And this mistake from Alexander Sims as he did not adjust to the conditions quite as well as Calvin van der Linde in his draft. That was a big hit to drivers right into the Armco barrier. The Glickenhaus skating almost to the same bit of the scene as well with Felipe Fernandez Laza at the wheel. I can't quite believe that Alexander Sims got away with that with just a front right puncture and Schubert Motorsport have got the car back into the race. It was due a pit stop at the end of the lap anyway. So, a resume there of what <laughs> Nick Damon has missed. Well, he'll, he's been away and out of the RSL commentary box, but we're welcoming Nick back along with uh, a few other members of our team. Plenty happening. All action, Joey. Thank you very much for your uh, you and Joe's hard work over the uh, course of the night. We have a typical Nürburgring situation. It's dry at the front, it's wet at the back, uh, and all shades in between. There's debris, there's dirt. But currently, to do the top five, they're all SP9s. Leading is the 15 Audi Sport Team Phoenix Audi R8 with Sheldon van der Linde. Plakken van der Linde, there's Maxi Gott in the, on the first of the two get speed Mercedes AMG is the number three. Then Mauer Engel in the four. Then the 22 Audi Sport Team car collection. And then the first of the BMWs, we saw the accident um, that they had uh, there for Alexander Sims. Got Jesse Crone in the car now. This is Stuart Motorsport. BMW M4 GT3. Uh, just going down a little bit further on some of the other cars. SPX is still led by Glickenhaus. Uh, Fernando, Le Fernando Leder in the car at the moment and cup two by uh, K Craver Racing. Now we have a bit of a treat for you and I shall pass over to my very good colleague, Mr. Ben Constantinos, to talk about who's coming to talk to you any moment now. Am I the treat or our guest no, the treat? You're certainly not the treat. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our RSL commentary box. And uh, great to speak to you for the next couple of hours uh, as uh, we settle into Sunday here at the Nürburgring Nord Schleifer with just a little sprinkling of rain around the circuit. Uh, the Schubert Motorsport BMW uh, is back out onto circuit. That isn't it in our picture. It's the number 15 uh, leading uh, Audi, presumably in a code 60 zone rather than uh, slow. Yes, he is. That's good news. Right, let's talk BMW. Unfortunately, uh, we saw just recently the BMW junior team car uh, crashing out of the race with Max Hasselbord. We've got the other two boys uh, in the commentary box with us now, Dan Harper and Neil Verhagen, who I keep calling you Niels. I'm Apologise profusely for that. I'm getting confused with your sim, your sim expert. Um, <laughs> morning, boys. Uh, firstly, how are you guys feeling after after a, a long night? Tired. <laughs> yeah, it was a long night. Um, you know, it's it's unfortunate to end the night like that because the pace was there. We were coming. It was uh, and yeah. We were just clicking away at it. We had an earlier mishap in the race as well too that we were recovering from and just from that point then obviously i think out of your commentary box we were not very much in the picture anymore but uh yeah from our side of things we were very fast and we were enjoying the race so it's a it's a shame to go out like that uh but you know it's a north life it bites hard so we're learning that and we're still a junior team we're got a lot of things to learn and hopefully next year we'll come back and learn from the mistakes and not make them next year yeah, um, well, firstly, I want to say thank you for having us here. It's, uh, it's cool to be up here with you guys. Um, and yeah, just obviously a shame about the, the result um, right from the, the get-go, the second stint, which it was, it was me in the car, and I had the, the contact with the slower car in Tiergarten. Um, and yeah, that cost us uh, a lot of time, three laps down already. And uh, yeah, from there it was just ticking off the laps and trying to get ourselves up the leaderboard as, as high as we could. 
and uh, the boys, Team RMG, they they done a, a mega job. The car was was super fast all through the night, especially. We were really really strong, setting fastest laps of the race throughout. Um, but yeah, it was it was just difficult, and uh, it was it was really good to see that the motivation was still there in the in the team and in in my teammates Neil and Max. And uh, yeah, I'm glad Max is okay after the the crash. It was quite a, a heavy one, so. We're not so sure what what happened, uh, if it was a, a mistake or if something happened uh, on the car. So that's yet to be confirmed. Uh, but we're glad he's okay, and uh, like Neil says, we'll come back stronger next year. Uh, Neil, let's take the positives out of what's happened over uh, the, this race so far, especially your opening stint. Uh, you must feel. Uh, so cool to be fighting with Philippe Engel right at the sharp end of the field. Uh, you didn't find yourself in the lead of the race at any point, did you? But you were very, very close. No, actually, uh, to be leave? honest, I was quite surprised where I found myself out <laughs> of turn one. I got a mega start and, yeah, then was able to bring the momentum through uh, lap one and was up to P3 uh, and then fell back to P4 after the Lamborghini was able to get by me in turn one. And then, yeah, then it was just, uh, I think the, the Ferrari was a bit of a corkscrew in the bottle then uh, with the Goodyear's tire falling off compared to the Michelin's then. Everyone needed to find their way around, and uh, yeah, then unfortunately it took me a little bit longer than it found the, the front two to get by, so. Uh, but in general, enjoyed the first stint, and then afterwards, then into the night was probably the most enjoyable part of the race so far. Yeah, Dan, you've, um, you've had experience of the Nordschleife for plenty of times. You guys live just around the corner, um, but being in the top class, it changes your mentality a little bit because I think last year when I spoke to you guys you were in the GT4 car no no I got yeah. that wrong I spoke to you online anyway so yeah two years ago two years uh, we done the GT4 oh, wow. uh, that was our first time here oh, wow, okay. and uh, last year we competed with the M6 with the same team RMG um, and unfortunately it ended with the same result uh, with a technical problem that time um, but yeah we haven't had the, the best of luck the last two years here um, but it's been a, a steep learning curve and um, the opportunity BMW have, have given us to be here and fight for the, the overall victory in a, in a full factory car, um, the new M4 GT3, it's, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, from the, when I look back a few years already, uh, when we, we first came here in the 240i to get our permits um, to now, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy that we, we have the pace and uh, the ability to be fighting at the top of the, the top class here. And uh, yeah, obviously the result's not what we wanted, but we, uh, we proved even in the races leading up to this weekend that we, we can fight at the front and yeah, sometimes it just bites hard here at the Nordschleife. You talk about the journey, um, and it's been a big journey for you guys because uh, it was kind of the COVID year in which you got thrown into this house together and, and called BMW Juniors, and, and suddenly your life was dictated and ruled, and, and a program was put to you by BMW. Just you say it seems like a long time ago, and talk us through that program that BMW put together. Yeah, I mean. Like we said, the, the beginning with COVID striking at just the wrong time when our program was just about to begin. Um, there was a bit of uncertainty how it would plan out, how, what was going to happen. Um, and thankfully, when, when the racing got back to, to start it again, we were able to, to start with the 240, get our permits. And then uh, we came for the 24-hour the race uh, in the GT4 with Valkenhorst. And uh, we won the, our class and uh, finished, I think, 19th overall, the first non-GT3. So that was quite a cool one. Um, and then the next year then, uh, we came back with the M6. Uh, we had Augusto Farfus on the car, which was really cool, mentoring us in the part of the junior team. And uh, yeah, we were really, really strong there as well. Uh, didn't quite have uh, the luck and made a couple of wrong decisions. Um, with, with strategy at the beginning, which lost us a lot of time. Um, and now, yeah, this year, it's just the three of us. Um, and uh, BMW believed in us that we could fight at the top, and uh, we proved it, I think. And, uh, yeah, just this weekend, like you said, it wasn't meant to be. But the program, Neil, is not just the Nordschleife for the 24 hours in Nürburgring. You're, you're much wider than that now. You're getting involved in, in the three-hour races in the uh, Endurance uh, GT World Challenge as well. Uh, is there a difference in mentality racing here on the Nordschleife for the 24 hours versus those three-hour sort of effectively sprints, right? 
Well, I think this is pretty much what we've seen now has become a 24-hour sprint race here. Uh, but Norschleife is a complete different beast compared to everywhere else in the world. I mean, you can you can just see how hard this track can, can bite back at you. And you, uh, you need to have a lot of respect around here. And, yeah, I think uh, other places it's a little bit easier to, to make a couple mistakes here. Mistakes cost a lot, so... Um, but yeah, as you said, the program is not just Norschleife. We're competing in the Fanatec GT World Challenge and uh, trying to open our, our bride and our horizon in, uh, in all racing categories. So hopefully we can see ourselves doing some more series in, in the next couple of years coming up as well, too. And yeah, I think we have some big plans coming up and uh, can't wait to... Uh, to hopefully get uh, started with those. Considering you started in a COVID year and weren't sure whether the program uh, would continue, whether you would be allowed to stay in the house and all the rest of it, uh, are you? was it always the plan for it to, to be this long? Um, I the, the initial, let's say, program was, was planned the two years and then a, a possibility to, to extend it to the third if, if things were running well. And thankfully, they, they were happy to keep us for the third year, which is this year. And uh, after two years with just the Nordschleife, we were very keen to obviously explore different series, uh, get back on different racetracks as well. And uh, thankfully this year, the, the possibility came to do the Endurance Cup um, in GT World Challenge with Team Rove. And um, we've got the second round of that next weekend in Paul Ricard. Uh, so now we're looking forward to that. And, um, and yeah. The, uh, the program, we, uh, we hope it can continue. Uh, we're still unsure what the plans are from, from BMW side and uh, for next year, but we're, we're very happy here. They're, they're giving us awesome opportunities that not many others could supply us with, so we're very happy if they, they want to keep us. And what's the house atmosphere like? For having three racing drivers living in the house together constantly on each other's, uh, well, 365, basically. Uh, yeah, I mean, luckily with uh, with this year having the dual programs, we're quite busy now. Uh, with RMG being very close to around this area here in the Nurburgring, we can visit them quite often and spend a lot of time with them there. And uh, as you know, I'm doing quite a bit on the simulator as well too, as as we saw from the first round of GG World Challenge on the on the sim cup that went quite well for me. So spending a lot of time on the on the sim as well too to to prepare. So. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. I mean, at the same day, I mean, we're all still, well, now 21 for me and Dan. Max is 20, so all about the same age as well, too. So, yeah, I mean, we still all have our good fun that we always do. We're all good friends outside of the racetrack, so it makes living together much nicer. And are you, uh, on a weekend off, are you still watching every bit of motorsport under the sun? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 YouTube playlists yeah. with every live stream that there is out there. Exactly, yeah. We uh, This year and actually last year, we got quite interested in the uh, the AMA Supercross, um, which it's been a couple of late nights, obviously, with the American timetables, uh, but it's good fun and it's quite cool that we all have quite similar interests, obviously, with the motorsport. And then me and Max uh, have got Neil into the, the football or the soccer, as he would call it. And uh, yeah, we we have good fun, I would say, off track as well. Who's the chef? That's Neil. Me, yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Are you? Uh, are you? Do you consider yourself good? Is he? Is he good, Dan? Yeah. No, he is. He is. He's uh, definitely improved over the years as well. I think so. <laughs> Was that part of the BMW program? Do you have a chef come in and tell you? I suppose you've got. A, do you have a nutrition thing going on there as well? Yeah, from uh, from Formula Medicine side, who work closely with BMW, they they have obviously their uh, nutrition specialists and. Uh, they at least advise us what we what we should do, and uh, I guess at certain points you you go away from it a little bit and enjoy your, yourself. But no, we we try to keep ourselves as strict as possible, especially leading up to big events. And um, actually, that you say it, we the Zur Nurburg, the castle, the restaurant uh, last or was it 2020? I think the, right at the beginning they gave us some uh, cooking lessons oh, cool. uh, in the in the in the uh, the, the restaurant which is pretty cool and just give us some tips and things on uh, how to make our food taste better. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's, that's really good. Uh, guys, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, I'll see you, Neil, next weekend with yes. the Forks Sim Racing um, for, uh, for the GT World Challenge. And uh, safe travels home, but it's not very far. You walk, I suppose it's just a walk home, isn't it?
Yeah, um, you could walk, you could bike, you could uh, take your e-scooter if you want to. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, no. Tell me you didn't drive. I did drive, yes. You drove? Yes. <laughs> that you means know. this is literally 200 meters from the airport. Yes, I, I'm very aware, yes. You know, <laughs> as, a, as a racing driver, I am also a little bit lazy as well. So, <laughs> Well, uh, drive safe. Back to the house. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Uh, Neil Verhagen and Dan Harper from the junior BMW team, uh, unfortunately, out of the race after an incident for Max uh, Hasser that we saw. Uh, a high-speed incident, uh, unfortunately, contact with the barrier, and uh, he is well, out. Only two thirds of the team. You said Max Hassa was the uh, the third driver, and much as you're seeing, is it Neil's you're seeing next week at the Fanatec event? Yes, I'm seeing Max in two at the week after Le Mans, ah. where he's taking part in a major international RC event, major oh, control car event. So oh, yes, nice. in Italy, yeah, it's the uh, the RC GP series, which is the biggest independent series out there, of which we do the coverage and live streams on RC TV. Uh, but, oh, well uh, yeah, done. So oh, got to get it in. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it's um it's a small world. So so. One of us now needs, someone else in the team needs to meet Dan Harper in the next three weeks, we've got the set. If you aren't aware, they uh, do live literally two, three hundred metres from the ex outside the I circuit. I think is pushing it. All but, you know, exactly, almost uh, opposite our car park. Yep. Uh, the, just, just along to the right. Yeah, and that is the house in which the three drivers um, uh, have spent the last couple of years, both Covid uh, and the years after, with... Um, it kind of looks a bit like a BMW um, dealership. Dealership, yeah. yeah. And it has simulators in the front window, um, and they are they are in. The the front window, then Ben lustfully looking in through the window, gazing oh. longingly. Set me up a simulator. So it seems that it seems that patch of wet that apparently was down by Arlenberg is uh, now. Actually, it wasn't Arlenberg, was it? It was actually down by. Um, it was down by the carousel, wasn't it? I think it must be in, in various parts across that far, I'm going to say far left, I don't know what the, uh, it's actually the northern part of the circuit is where it was, um, but now seems that's gone. I was just checking my, my, my weather app, which has been monumentally inaccurate, but uh, did actually predict sh fluttery showers for, for this morning. It's saying 80% 80, 80 chance of rain at four o'clock, as that's a... Um, that's a replay of the one two one going off. Yeah, that's that was a while back so actually. I'm not we quite sure we're seeing up, that again. Both looked up as a as a car spun in front of us on our monitors, um, but it is obviously a, a, the Germans just um, laying onto the uh, uh, the problems of previous cars. Yeah, that, the back Falcon one two one was a class leader before it had that shunt, mm. um, very much at the sharp end uh, of cut uh, cup two and. According to my timing screens, let me reset that. Is actually still leading the class? That no, can't, can't be, be right. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. No. The timing screen needed to be refreshed. Apologies. The timing screen needs to be refreshed. One of those oft uttered commentators' words. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he's still. Oh, timing screen needs to be yes. refreshed. How is that possible? Ah, oh, because it was five hours ago. <laughs> well done for five hours ago. Black Falcon's still at the sharp end of uh, the Cup Two class, though, with. Um, their 1-2-3 car uh, in second place in Cup 2, which is 20th round of rule, just in the pits right now. Uh, mm. They are behind the Crimer Racing with 2Ks, a 1-2-7. Uh, so that is the leader in Cup 2 now. Uh, and Glickenhaus is still leading the uh, SPX class in 15th position overall. So they must have had a few issues because they were, they were nearly in the top 10 I, I when I we think, left. I think they were about 13th or 14th. So it may just have been that they, that they kind of um, you know, shuffled up and down depending where they're on the fuel strategy, which is two and a half, three minutes either way. Um, they may have had a little problem. It won't have been anything more than that. Perhaps a brake change, but it wouldn't be much more than that. Um, Kelvin, Kelvin van der Linde leading by one minute and 11 seconds uh, last split from uh, Maxi Gotts, who's leading from his teammate in the Mercedes-AMG Team Get Speed, uh, as Mauro Engel, who is quite a bit further back from him. So I, I need to wait until he crosses the, uh, the line because... They've been, they've been currently split by a by the start finish point. At that point, the time tells us well, just a lap. He's lap behind. No, he's not eight minutes behind. Um, and then what? just behind him, it's uh, it's Fen the Audi Sport Team uh, car connection, who's now 40 seconds behind Engel. So we need to kind of work out where these guys are on there. I mean, it gets less important to be honest as we get to the end about where they are on their strategies because obviously it's just it's it's. Is it two laps? Is it one lap more of fuel than you or two laps more of fuel? Well, they can get the fuel in two minutes thirty anyway. Mm. But then there is this course of back time. There's a back time pit stop at the end as well, which is where you gain you gain the time you lost uh, if you decide to go long at the start. Uh, comes into the right. In fact, Max Gotzel should be in this lap from second place, uh, whereas Kevin Van Linder has uh, this lap and one more for his fuel stop. 
as does Mara Engel. Um, actually, uh, Sven Müller is only halfway through, so he may even, it's possible, might actually, when van der Linde, Engel and Gotts will come in, cycle to the front. In fact, Schubert Motorsport, even earlier on their stop, they did lose some time, of course, after Alexander Sims had to do seven or eight miles on three wheels before we arrived in the studio. Um, and I don't, I don't think the repair was too great, but you know that's a lot of time you lose when it's that far on a flat tyre. So I think we're going to see a shaking up of the order, which is going to continue with uh, three different strategies currently being uh, employed as far as when they're coming in for tyres. Um, coming in, in two-thirds of a lap, it's Max Gotzel, then a lap in two-thirds, it's Kelvin Van Linde, then just under two laps now, because a bit further back, it's Mara Engel, and in three laps, it's Sven Muller. Three cars under investigation right now. Uh, we've got Uber Motorsports 125 Cup 2 Porsche under investigation. We also uh, have the number 66 uh, MSC Emstau um, TCR Volkswagen Golf, uh, which we've now got you can rapid scrolling to get down to the 333 <laughs> car, which is the final. God, you, you, you get RSI getting down the uh, entrance that quickly. Uh, Drunk Regal. Really? Yep, that is. Drunk, drunk Regalt um, in a Hyundai i30M in the VT2 front wheel drive rather than the TCR class because it's not a TCR car. They are also under investigation for what we know not. Uh, but uh, there's been investigation been naughty. is nearly always a speedy offence, be it in the pit lane yeah. or be it through the. the I mean, it's an interesting point really because you think about it, when you've had a long period of not code 6, when code 6 you start turning up or even slow zones, it's easy to miss them because you've suddenly got your mind clicked into the other point now. I mean, they had a bigger worry for a while, which was the, the, the small amount of showerage on the backside of the circuit. Uh, and then you go, oh, okay, oh, fine now. I'm going, oh, it's green, green, green. And then you get caught out by a, a sudden 120 or, a, or a, even worse, a 60 slow zone. It's quite easy just to get that slightly wrong. Yeah, Matt, uh, Matt G, Secret Penguin, uh, on Twitter, hashtag R, uh, N24HRSL, believes uh, that the number 22 is passed under... Uh, yellow flags. That's uh, Nico Muller aboard that car uh, in fourth position. I'm not sure, Matt. Oh, it's Nico Muller. Sorry, it's Sven Muller. So, there's so many top racing Mullers. Uh, in the Audi is Nico Muller. Sven Muller would be in a Porsche. Ah. That's how to tell on Very those good. ones. Uh, van der Linde is a bit more tricky. Well, no, they, they, you have the Audi van der Linde uh, and Sheldon. you have then. And Sheldon is. BMW. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a remarkable situation in the Nogan Green 24 hours that you can crash out of the lead of the race and then jump into some, in, in another car and uh, be leading the race, as is... Just 1950s Formula 1. As is Kelvin Van Linde right yeah, now. Yes, it's Sterling Moss and uh, the, uh, the, the, the ghost of Sterling Moss and uh, while well, fan Joe live on at the Nürburgring launch life. <laughs> uh, also, eagle-eyed viewers spotting a KTM stop down at Bergwerk. We've had a Code 60 down there for a while. It has now cleared. Um, but uh, haven't been able to tell you which of the KTMs that is. Of course, uh, we've got two different types. We've got an SPX uh, KTM and we've got a Cup X KTM. Um, the Stuck KTM is number 117, it's second in SPX, way off the class leader now. But that seems to still be running. Uh, 116 was another one of the Cup X cars, but that seems to be a bit further down my order. Uh, best uh, Cup X runner is still the 162, down in 52nd place. Uh, and really, it's Tightman Racing, uh, fighting Tightman Racing in that one. Uh, that's the GTX version, not the GT4 version that they are racing against, interestingly, mm. uh, in that Cup X category. So, can't tell you which KTM it was down there because it's not stopped there any longer. It will come back on the back of a a tow truck or on the back of a flatbed, depending on what its malady was, uh, but... There are a couple of uh, intervention vehicles running. One's at Flats Garden. I think that's actually dealing with a, with a current incident there, uh, which is yes. being contained under local yellows. Uh, remember, we have local yellows covering intervention vehicles when they're travelling back to the pits as well. Yeah, this is what's happened. The intervent that is, the IV2 has something on its... Um, IV2 is the intervention vehicle too. Has something on its, its uh, flatbed, but of course, what's happened is the car on the flatbed has turned off its transponder or has no power ah. anymore, so we're not getting the indication of where that is. So on the on the tracker, so that we will we'll only know what what, what what that is. We should certainly know anything of KTM when it rolls in front of our eyes down, down to the pit lane in uh, ooh, probably... It's got quite a way to go now, so probably a good uh, seven or eight minutes. Bit of love for the TCR Hyundai's. Hyundai Works 
uh, entry into the TCR class, the only uh, works entry really outside of, well, no, that's not true completely. I was about to say outside of the top class, but we do have uh, Toyota Gazoo Racing Team Thailand, which I would, yeah. would, you would kind of say uh, is a works entry. Hyundai have three works entries into this race. We've got two TCR cars, uh, and then we also have a V2T uh, front car, which is they're named the Hyundai Driving Experience Machine. Very important uh, that car is to them, uh, the driving experience. Not something uh, that is unique to the Nürburgring any longer. It started here, the opportunity to drive the i30N, the Kona N, i20N, uh, and there'll be some electric Ns coming on stream as well. The Elantra N being uh, uh, the TCR version. There is no Elantra N in the real world, I think. There's obviously been some problems with that uh, 831 TCR currently being piloted by Anti Burley. Uh, because when we left for our little Kipet, which was several hours ago in fairness, uh, he was alternating for the lead with yeah. his teammate, but unfortunately he's now fallen four laps back, which is just over half an hour, obviously, during the night, so there's been an issue there. Still second in class, though, ahead of mm. the Bonk Motorsport Cupra. I, I must be, I'm surprised how few TCRs there are here. Yeah. Because there's a lot, because obviously TCRs are a very popular class within the um, NLS. Um, and quite well suited for, for this track, and they've, we've only had seven entries, which is a bit surprising. Um, whether they were to foreshadow the problems that the uh, World Touring Car Championship found, uh, uh, I'm not sure, but we haven't seen e-tire issues particularly on these cars. No, exactly. Uh, Mark Bessing is leading now, uh, just about to click over to 100 laps in the Elantra. How's, uh, the, how's the prediction going? Oh, well, we've, how, we've had some green running overnight. Uh, we need to do that in an hour and a half, and we've got six hours left. Then we uh, can really work it out. Back, back time to wait, then. Too difficult maths. That would be, yeah, <laughs> it was seven and a half hours is a bit more tricky, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not the always obvious of divisions, is it, of 24? Actually, <laughs> got does indeed come into the pits as we expected from second place. Um, he will definitely drop to fourth. The question is whether he will actually drop to fifth. Uh, and Jesse Kroll in the Schubert car will go past him. Another one of this phalanx of cars across all motorsports sponsored by the pink water purifying company. They even managed to get two races on the Alpine. They couldn't afford the whole season on the Alpine the F1 car as the primary colours. And the Alpine's going, well, right, we've been pink twice, now they're going to be blue again. Been around for a long time, BWT, in the world of sponsoring motorsport. Not just uh, Alpine this year, but of course in Formula One terms. Uh, Aston Martin slash Force India previously. Um, lots before that. Lots of DTM stuff. Lots of DTM and Formula 3. It's an Austrian water purification company. That's what they say anyway. Uh, they, how you have, uh, how you are able to uh, have multiple sponsorship programs across various championships. So I do actually because know there's a large amount of impure water in the world. Clearly. <laughs> And they're based, they're based near uh, Red Bull, actually, okay. uh, in Salzburg. Uh, so, and obviously lots of nice pure water coming off the mountains there. But uh, BWT, I did actually know a, uh, a girl who was part of their marketing team at once, but I think she didn't, didn't last very long. And going to all the races, looking after mm. sponsors and teams. Uh, but yes, very much changed the look of the Get Speed uh, cars. Much not used to them being in pretty in pink. That is your first Psychedelic First reference of the day. Because <laughs> don't forget it was a Psychedelic First song long before it was a John Hughes movie. And Ben's going, is this 20 years when I was born? Oh yeah, I'm going <laughs> over again. <laughs> well, see, the, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the references for the, for, for the uh, I don't know which generation I am, and you're doing the, the Millennials ones. I think, I, think I'm I am too young just to be a boomer, so I'm whatever came after that. Oh, in the back of... Uh, the back of our picture is the KTM car coming on the back of a flatbed uh, coming into pit lane. So if I strain my neck, we might be able to really get a glance at which KTM it is. I think it might well be um, the SPX. It's, it's the orange one. Right. KTM colours. So could it be, could it be uh, the 116? Well, I think had problems previously. So the SPX ones, you mean? Is that the SPX one? Is it? Yeah, one six, one and seven, the SPX cars. I think it might be one of those. Yes, SPX down at a hundred and third position. The one one six. 
We're never going to see, actually, am I? Because we're going to see the colour of it. No. They haven't come close enough for us. It's now going off and, and being delivered for you to pick up and put. We, 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 at some point, I suppose, we'll get pushed down by the team down the pit lane. What uh, does the 116 splits say? I've got splits on my computer. The uh, In the penalty box is the bright yellow Toyota GT86, which is a, a Fantasy 140 car, which is an absolutely fabulous machine. Um, run by, I suppose, what you call the true enthusiasts. So I, was, I was having a look at it from the pit lane. It's the pit lane AMC Sankt Vith car, uh, GT86 Cup. It's brilliant. But the, you look in the bonnet, and it's like a bonnet of a 1980s car. It's got so much space around it. It's not, it's not like packed with ancillaries and radiators. And then it's just an engine, and then uh, and then some electrics. The ele obviously, the electric has been slightly dodgy for them. They've actually covered them all the electric. They put all the electric in the top uh, right-hand side of the uh, engine bay and covered it with a perspex cover. So I was just trying to keep it all, and it all looks like a pretty simple, like a three or four fuse system you'd see on a, a much, much older car. But the simplicity in the club racing 140 is fantastic. They have served the penalty, they've been given a little push, and they are trying to down the pit lane to make their full stop. I'm not quite sure where they are in class 140. My guess is they are running off the runners. They are very, very much near the back overall, but that's not the point. They have a, uh, they are actually currently 99th overall and they are fourth in SP3. It is not the 116 because we lost the 116 uh, in the middle of the night. So ah, it's a different problem for the KTM. That one retired at 2, something like 2.20 in the morning. The 117, therefore, in second position, possibly is in similar colours. Um, and that has been out on circuit 7.20. So it could actually be that because we... Uh, saw it last just over an hour ago it was the last time it checked into pit lane and again stint seems to have stopped so Alan Christazulu took over the number four get speed uh, Mercedes uh, from uh, Maxi Gott so he actually has emerged in fourth so he's actually ahead on the timing screens by about 20 seconds of Jesse Crohn so that shows you how much time they lost uh, bringing in that car with the wounded front right and the tyre went down after the accident. Um, and I, I think that actually wasn't an accident caused by the weather, was it? That was just a, that was a different lack of concentration off and a bit of, gra a bit of gravel by Alexander Sims. Uh, just up at the Adenauer Force, I think it was. Maybe just turning into Metzikfeld, actually. But uh, so he's rejoined in fourth. Kelvin van der Linde, the leader in the 15, Audi from Audi Sport Team Things. They're going to be coming in at the end of this lap. And then that'll cycle Maro Engel to the, to the lead uh, in the other of the get speed cars for a lap. One of the things I like to do in the morning I uh, don't when, know about this. when I have a little <laughs> bit of time on my hands Even is, less to, I about now. <laughs> is to get my, uh, my weather radar out and flick through the day's oh, weather. You're like, your day must fly by. <laughs> um, we are still on the verge of potential rain uh, at the very, very end of the race. That there's less rain at forecast than previously, uh, but we are looking potentially at something right at the end. But then again, uh, that little drizzle that we had just a few moments ago wasn't on the forecast either. So who knows? We're at the Nurburgring. Yeah, this is the problem, obviously, of being here. Um, yeah, you know, it's bad enough at Silverstone where it rains down the hangar straight and not around the rest of the track. But here, you've got such a huge circuit. You, you, if it's not raining for at least half there, how can you put how can you put wet tyres on? Because they'll destroy themselves in the other half of the track. So it's almost like you have to kind of um, tippy-toe when it does rain and just hope for the best in the rest of the circuit. Um, for KTM fans out there, I have now got eyes on the crossbow that's on the back of a flatbed crashed uh, down at Bergwerk, and it is the class-leading Cup X. No oh, way. So it is... 17. The, no, the 162. A oh, Cup X, not SBX. Yeah. Sorry, there's too many Xs involved with the Expos. Yeah, but, I mean, to be honest, I think most of the KTMs are in the pits. So is it Cup Cross, then, rather than Cup X? I think I said Cup X. <laughs> the 117 is, has been in the pits most of the night. 116 uh, is been in for over an hour, but it, that is the 162, uh, which is, as I say... Uh, Cup X leader down a 52nd overall, well ahead of its nearest Cup X rival, which obviously is a teammate. Um, and it does look like front left damage to that car, so uh, that's a bit of a shame. That's had contact with a, with a barrier somewhere. Well, I don't know where that actually might actually have been, but because he went off, that may actually have been as a result of the drizzle. Because when he went yep, off and the time went off. Uh, leader, as we expected, is in the pits, making his 14th stop. Kelvin van der Linde brings the Audi. R8 to a squeaky halt, and um, for those of us who are used to the frenetic activity of a pit lane, the, uh, the activity here on these time pit spots is so relaxed 
Um, put a saunter up, think about turning it round to face the, uh, the echelon form into the pit lane. A very, very relaxed changeover. And we'll tell you who gets in in a minute. We haven't quite got eyes on the main yet, but there's going to be a handover. Hopefully a chat will come and have a, have a word. They're, they're leaning in, which we're going to hear anything from that. Uh, the engineer is topping up the engines. It's also getting itself out. They're half, and they're interesting, unlike the uh, KTM, they're just lobbing in hoping the best. That actually had a small dipstick. So they're putting the correct amount of oil in that V8 engine, the 5 litre V10, so V10, of course, 5 litre V10 engine in the back of the uh, Audi R8 LMS. Drinks are changed, windscreen is washed. Lots of information coming from Kelvin Van Alinda to. I uh, can't see the helmet there. Is that Robin Frines? Maybe. I think it's actually um, Fred Levich on the rotation, but doesn't necessarily mean okay. it will be him. No, no, that's on the rotation. Doesn't mean it is him. Yeah. But that's who you would expect on the rotation. Um, but my guess is, it's, it, 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 is, is it might actually be Robin, but let's find out. I'm not so good I've with the I've covered half the team now, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much... In fact, yeah, I've covered three quarters of the options. We know, you know what? We know it's not Kevin Van Linden get back in again. It could well be Dries Van Thor. It could be. It, it yeah, could it be any of those be. three. But They're the, those are the drivers that are allowed to get into the car, so it could be <laughs> any of them. <laughs> and this is the analysis you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Radio Show Limited. Uh, I think it is on rotation, it's Fred. It should be Fred. So it was Robin was in just before prior yep. to Kelvin. So. Come to you racing helmet. Uh, so that legacy of his um, days in driving Audi touring cars uh, and moreover uh, partnering uh, Nico Bart, who is son of Jean-Michel, who is the owner of Come to you racing. Uh, racing in GT3 this year, actually, Nicola, rather than uh, making the switch from touring cars uh, to GT3s and uh, has Fred Rich as a teammate. A long time come to you racing uh, driver, but then also now very much an Audi Sport driver as well. Marengel joins here, uh, Kel, uh, well, Kel Van, Fred Vich in the pits. Uh, his three minute pit stop has begun counting down, and you can tell by simple maths that he's two minutes and 20 seconds behind the Audi of Team Sport Phoenix because he has that much longer on his very relaxed pit stop. By the way, if you do like soap operas in your motorsport... Then, oh, I love them. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Nick. Then start getting, digging into what happened here in the World Touring Cars uh, over the weekend. Have a read of some of the drivers and team statements that have come out over the last 24 hours. It is, uh, it is kicking off, let's say, <laughs> in the world of WTCR uh, with yeah. the cancellation of both races here uh, at the Nordschleife just 45 minutes before they were supposed to take to the track. They'd been four days of discussion as to what they would do and uh, the stakeholders within the championship were not able to agree and therefore they never went racing. Obviously, motivations from certain different teams uh, being doubted. Sorry, are you saying that some teams put self-interest above the interest of the championship? It's possible. Sounds very unlikely, Ben. Uh, and lots of accusations flying around. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but get digging. Those teams that did have not have any issues versus those teams uh, that did. Good stuff. Um, penalty for the 3-3-2, three, three, uh, which is our driving experience Hyundai, works Hyundai uh, i30N. Uh, that is our class leader in VT2 front, and it has a 1 minute and 32 second penalty for non-respect of code 60. Sven Muller has rotated to the front uh, on the pit stop alternate strategies that they've met at various meetings. He's now uh, leading by not a huge amount from, uh, it, well, it says Kelvin van Linder. We know it's not, well, one thing we know it isn't is Kelvin van der Linder in that number five car, so someone hasn't clicked around the driver ID yet. Well, I think we definitely know it's Trevor Vich. From, from your... Well, come, to, come to me, yeah. So we think it's fresh. So Fred, someone's not clicked it. Oh, it's happened now. He's managed to ping it. Someone's just turned it. Go, no, no, no. And, and it is. It's a manual It's a manual knob that yeah. you need to twist. So it's, ju it's just changed our timing screen to, to Verviche. Uh, the graphic on the display is still saying that it's uh, it's Kelvin, but they, I think they've avoided any penalties. You can get these weird penalties you get for not displaying the right driver. That's not going to happen. But yes, yeah, so Sven Muller has taken the lead. Uh, not Sven, I keep it. Nico Muller, thank you very much, has taken the lead in the Audi Sport Team Car Collection Cup, but only by about 12 seconds, and he has to come in for a three-minute pit stop pretty soon. So... It's a good, goodly lead for the, the 15 car uh, when all is said and done. One of those weird things at the start of this race when we uh, had a couple of driver changes after half a lap of the race uh, because the driver named on the original start list 
uh, had not necessarily selected the right switch on the inside of the car. So suddenly, when they had the opportunity to, to switch to their correct position, and it is literally just a switch going one, two, three, four, you twist it for you as driver one or driver two, suddenly people started ch driver changing halfway up the dotting oh, Hang on a second, what's going on here? After Myers, I think it would be quite a challenge. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not sure there's anywhere really where you could easily change drive. But, but, but yeah, you, you kind of think, you know, it's interesting. So, yeah, we, we, we're kind of joking about it, but we ha I have seen that, and I'm sure you've seen as well. People get, teams get big penalties just for not having the correct, you know, selection switch. Well, of course, if you have a championship where driver time yeah. is important, and the only way to tell which driver is in the car at any given moment is by uh, that particular ID, then yeah, you're, you're definitely non respection of, respection of the rules. Yes, you have non respection of the rules. Yes, you can't. Plunging downhill in the uh, first part of the uh, Hudson back section of the track. So he's just uh, starting another element of the Nordschleife part of this lap. That car running in fourth after problems for Alexander Sims about ooh, an hour and a half ago now. And a long, pit, a long, long lap after a puncture. Nico Muller enjoying his lead of 13 seconds, which I think will end at the, I'm sure end, at the end of this lap. Um, yes, so this is, he's, he's having a one lap of glory here, leading the Nürburgring 24 hours, the 50th running of this uh, fantastic event. But the lead will then rotate back to Fred Vavish. Audi looking strong then. Phoenix versus car collection at the head of the field. But then we've got the Mercedes, which I've kind of tipped as... Well, when when Nico comes in, he's actually going to drop yeah, yeah, yeah. to... Fourth or fifth? Just, just ahead, I think, of Jesse, Jesse Krong. He's about three and a bit minutes ahead of him, so he will drop, drop into third. So it's realistically uh, a battle between the, 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 the brace of Audis and the, and the brace of Mercedes, because... Uh, uh, the Jungadella number four cars are also kind of in the mix. But uh, as we are getting now with seven, seven, minutes, well, seven hours to go, he, making up two and a half minutes in, in clear run now with these GT3 cars is quite difficult. So it's going to take a little problem to pull these cars back. But we have Audis in the window of opportunity, Mercedes in the window of opportunity to take victory. And uh, whilst Schubert Motorsport is really now the only BMW flying the flag, or it is actually the only BMW with the possibility of getting itself on the podium, the weight of BMW on their shoulders with both Rover cars out of the race before midnight. Um, the first Porsche, if you are yeah. a fan of Porsches, only down in 10th it's, position. It's just not been, it's been a combination of problems all the way through for Porsche, some of their own making. I think the Falcon Motorsports cars have, have had a little bit of a, a suicidal tendency during the race to the two cars pound themselves against other objects. <laughs> um, Earl Bamber and the, the KTM G team, that's Earl Bamber in the car at the moment, they had an early problem where they had to replace an exhaust. And at this level, losing losing a lap early on, how are you going to get it back? And then, of course, the uh, the, the favourite Porsche, which, of course, has, went out to that spectacular, the non-car, the Manti car, went out to that spectacular inter Nissan battle between the Van Tours um, and came off worse up at um, Tiergarten. So... I'm not trying to think whether there's any other... Yes, both the dynamic Porsches were running well. Yep. Uh, they've both failed. That's why the car that has disappeared since we were here last night was the, was the other dynamic Porsche, the 28. That's hit a problem. The 29 didn't last very long at all. Uh, the two drivers, um, Matteo Caroli and Christian Engelhardt, swapped over the 28, and that was, that was, that was actually climbed up. That was the highest rank, ranked, actually, Porsche when we, we left all those hours ago. I mean, they were talking about like, only seven hours ago we went. Uh, but over the course of the night, that car has also uh, fallen by the wayside slightly. So I can find out where the 28 is if it's even still running. Um, and it's been just been bad news, bad news for the Porsches. I mean, yes, we've seen it. We have also seen a number of BMWs fall by the wayside as well, to be honest. Um, most of the Audis, it appears, are still running. Yeah, it does. We, we obviously saw one in the wall. Um, Kelvin van der Linde putting one of the car collection cars out of the race, but uh, now leads in the other. Yeah, the Dynamic Motorsport car, um, the 28, that is, that must have come in, that came in not long after, they came on lap 85, and the leader's now on lap 109, so it came in 25 laps ago, um, I'm not sure what 25 times 80 is, let's have a look, so I can work out an approximate amount of time, this is, this is, this is a, 
I'm going to use a calculator at a racetrack, which is never a good idea. Just while you do, um, I'm very unhappy with Sarah Rigby on Twitter. Petrol oh Sarah has just mentioned the word bacon, oh. which is always something that uh, goes hand in hand with motorsport on a Sunday for me, uh, <laughs> including in my greasy hand at cart tracks of, <laughs> around the world. Um, and unfortunately, there has been no sign of any bacon That's across shocking. the whole of shocking. our week. Of course, shocking. we are in the land of the sausage. <laughs> That's another way we certainly are. Three and a half hours ago, my calculations about when the uh, 28 car went out. OK, we're back but, on the... But we're learning a lot about you. You now learn that first thing in the morning, you consult your weather app, uh, and then you have a bacon sandwich. Which is... which so is Ben's a, morning routine, part three, is what? Which is, interestingly, <laughs> quite challenging in France, because, you know, we all know that the only place you can get proper bacon in the world is Britain. I'm sure you don't, Mark, as well. Yeah, I wonder, actually, because we call it Danish bacon, but is it... It used to be. Um, do the Danes actually do it the same way as the Brits? Yeah, I mean, Danish bacon was from Denmark, so I, you know, you didn't support a lot of pork. I think be, there's a lot more of it made in the UK now. I, mean, this, this, I think this is the, uh, the most obviously relevant conversation to any 24-hour race, the uh, origin of um, bacon within the UK. Um, but I wa yeah, I'm going to have to visit a Danish campsite <laughs> and find out. <laughs> What are you doing here? And uh, Nico Muller has come into the pit, so his, uh, his eight minutes of fame have ended. It's and he is now going to drop down to third place. Fred Bavish. Well done for bringing it back on subject. Switch switch back. Um, this is not my job. My job is to take it off subject. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> uh, has uh, leapt back into the lead again as he goes around the, the Grand Prix Strecker. And I don't know, it's, it's interesting. I always kind of think it must be for the, for the drivers. It's like the Grand Prix Strecker is the easy bit. I mean, they are saying that, we have seen two of the three of the major contenders go out on the Grand Prix circuit yep. which is Kevin van der Linde the other of the Phoenix cars and of course the uh, Top Sport Porsche which is the one the Porsche got taken out wasn't their fault top running Porsche the Top Sport Porsche and who was hit by the 99 Rover Probably, Racing yeah. BMW so interestingly the what I would always think easy with the runoffs and everything else and well lit uh, Grand Prix course has, has claimed a number of victims. It could be that people just relax. Oh, I can do it here. You know, I'm on my oh, I'm on the north stuff. I'm really on the edge. I don't want to go. And then oh, it's the easy bit. It's lovely expanses of open gravel and grass. If anything goes wrong, I'll soon gather it up. Well, that didn't happen. I'm surprised also uh, of your you and Joe Bradley's assessment of the Grand Prix track. I don't mind it. Do you not? Quite nice flow to it, and mm. um, no, I enjoy it. I but you absolutely. Don't like it, do you? I I don't like the Mercedes Arena. This cut through, which they do, which cuts up, is even worse. Yeah. Where you come in through turn one, and then you have to immediately turn, shut, so you're, you're braking from where the car can do, 170 miles an hour, into what is a hairpin. But then it stops being a hairpin, it comes an S bend, um, and it's unloaded. Then, then, then well, back ways, in the day when you came here with Formula One, that was a chicane. Yeah, because the, the, the uh, arena, I think, was built in 202, I think. Okay. Um, from memory, but my memory is hazy in my age. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's it, because you then you, you you effectively you go down. It's called the it's called the it's, it's called the, you know, the AMG arena. It's not really mess this arena anymore. They've uh, they've given it a bit more of a sporty feel. Oh. Um, and then of course you come down immediately to a to a, a the, the, the left, not particularly, which is now called the uh, the Goodyear section because they've changed the sponsorship of the Dunlop Curve of Goodyear. I mean, obviously AMG is part of Mercedes and Goodyear and Dunlop are the same company, so whether they switch their long term sponsor, that, the Dunlop the Dunlop um, uh, well, I suppose hairpin curve, that, that really long uh, right hander at the bottom of the hill, that's quite a you know, famous corner. But then you kind of go through the Michael Schumacher, which is quite nice, and you get another nagy bit through the um, the Ravenel curve and the Bilstein curve, which is like a long extended chicane, isn't it? So you can't left and you get the straight and right. And you go downhill towards the Vidor chicane. Um, now, obviously, if you take the, 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 the version of the chicane we're using for N24 is the more relaxed version. Uh, yeah, much nicer, less clunky. And the, and the sharper version, which is used, I think it's actually used when wet cars used to come here. Yeah. And it's also used when F1 used to come here. It's a pain in the backside. And but interestingly final not, corner. when they did the six hours here uh, for GT3 cars, they do use the faster one. Yeah, it's... Um, I think I, mean, I don't I think apart from you, but perhaps you, yeah, you perhaps you use the shop while you want to slow the cars down a bit. It's, it's certainly not as good a piece of racing. The Vino Chicane actually in that format isn't too bad because it's it's got plenty of run. I think it's a relatively easy thing to aim for, and you can you aren't, and if you do get your braking slightly wrong, you can still get over it. The other one, if you get your braking slightly wrong, you're going to miss it because <laughs> it's a very much sharper. I would say it's probably. 35 to 40 miles an hour slower, I think. Uh, and there's nothing, there's no fun in clunking a racing car over a big, no. uh, slow curves. It just looks, it just looks, uh, yeah, clunky. Clunky is the right word. 
um, and which is what you have to do in that uh, particular chicane when, when it's the tighter version. So I agree. I like this one, and I like this one because you can get it wrong, and it will compromise you at the end of the lap when you do the Grand Prix loop, uh, and can, you can then be under attack through the final turn. Yeah, but it doesn't ruin your day. Um, some, more, some of those penalties we've been chatting with have come and been both under investigation and served. The, um, the three, we couldn't cover the 3-3-2 three, three, who's been yes, transgressing. He's got, he's got another one. Yeah, he's literally had that reported uh, about uh, six minutes ago. Uh, so that is the Hyundai driving experience car. So they are experiencing all the elements of driving. At this one they've experienced in a non-respect of code 60. And, th and th this is... For one minute 32. That's off their previous the one. one. Yeah. Yes, their previous one, just um, the six minutes earlier, where they didn't respect code 60 for one minute and 32. So they now have a three minute in total penalty. So... Yes, they're experiencing not obeying the rules, and they're also having an experience of being uh, caught out by the stewards. <laughs> but I don't suppose it will particularly affect their, uh, their enjoyment. I'm sure we'll um, add, add the stories in the bar later. Just on the uh, back, back to the, the world of breakfasts, um, <laughs> sim racing stewards, racing at racing stewards, uh, reminding us, and I know this uh, because I live in in France, that. Uh, uh, due to another B word, we, you can no longer take food products across the border from the UK into mm. France. So all of those people travelling to campsites for various 24-hour races, whether it be here at the Nürburgring or in a couple of weeks' time in the middle of uh, the countryside in France, will no longer be able to well, take bacon. I, and you can't buy the same bacon. I can't help feeling that as 50,000 Brits descend on... Le South um, over the course of the next couple of weeks with a selection of cool boxes in the back of various hatchbacks. I don't see customs rummaging down for a couple of packs of bacon, to be honest. Uh, no, but they could they could they have could. a right haul if they really if they've got a security guard that likes bacon. I'm just thinking if 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 the uh, the Channel Tunnel or Channel Ports um, teams wanted to have a massive team breakfast, yep. stop a couple of cars. Knock yourself out. I've got sausages. Are, are, are eggs allowed across the border? I don't know. No, 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 no dairy, fruit. Meats, nothing. Fantastic. Uh, interestingly, uh, it was something always on. Whenever I had a friend coming from the UK to France to visit me, uh, live in uh, in the south of France, uh, that would be the first on the list. What would you like me to bring? Something? Yes, I'd like you to bring some bacon. And mm. it's no longer legally allowed. So basically, you are you, you're encouraging bacon smuggling. Well, <laughs> I'm not encouraging it, but um, anyone who would like to bring some bacon to me in France next week is very welcome. You'll find me in the TV compound. Yes. <laughs> I have a delivery, I have a delivery for, for Ben Constantinus, but it's in, my, it's in my big trench coat. <laughs> Slightly smelly. <laughs> well, yeah, that's probably part of the course. Um, so after the complete... You can take a sandwich, though. Really? You can take a sandwich that's branded Flexi Plus, of course. Obviously. <laughs> but you but cannot, who knows about Flexi Plus? You uh, cannot take a sandwich of your own purpose. But you can buy sandwiches in, in, and you can buy a lot of products like that in the actual terminal. Because you've already crossed the border. Oh, no, oh. you haven't crossed the border. No, you haven't. Not in the channel tunnel. No, you haven't. No. no. Possibly, in a remarkable piece of unlikeliness, some common sense is being applied. No, never. Well... Who knows? Um, so, anyway, so if, you, if you are heading out to France uh, next week, do make sure you take plenty of time and plenty uh, of bacon for, for Ben. And make, yes, remember that uh, we are post post Brexit, and it's uh, a lot longer to get through the uh, Euro Tunnel and ferry terminals than it was previously. And there's a lot more trucks about, even though there's actually the same amount. It's just that they take longer to get through. Uh, so safe travels, but uh, do give yourself yeah. a little bit of extra time. Yeah, not wishing to bring your parade immediately. I've done the Channel Tunnel twice recently. There's been no problem whatsoever. Oh, you were unlucky. But then again, on the flip side, the reports of huge problems at the ports over the weekend because everyone's getting way for both uh, the half-term course for the Champions League final. Congratulations to Real Madrid, I think, for your 13th. Uh, European Cup slash Champions League victory. Bring up a round a sport with a ball that's round. Because we are a broad church here at Radio Show Limited and we embrace all sports whilst obviously giving our biggest love to the world of endurance and other sports. Should we talk about skiing then? It's not really a skiing season, is it? <laughs> <laughs> right now we talk about kind of grassing, aren't we? <laughs> Which is otherwise known as mountain biking in the summer season. Yes, I mean, you have to say that the uh, the extreme sports world has absolutely given a new lease of life to the uh, the alpine resorts during the summer it's not just kind of blokes with hairy knees walking around with a big stick is it now you actually get people who are, who are there for a reason which doesn't seem weird so i think we've just we have just got um yeti cron to stop again from this this sort of rotation of pit stops because they're so spread out now the rotation is five of the eight laps 
But it is uh, Fred Vavi. She's leading uh, Anne Christodoulou by a th uh, inconvenient. They've got to cross a lap again, which makes it very hard to, to do. Uh, Christodoulou is uh, 24 seconds ahead of Jesse Kron, but Kron obviously has a pit stop he owes us. Uh, it's a minute and 15 between Christodoulou and his teammate, Danny Juncadella. And then Nico Muller is another two minutes further back, which makes me think that that last stop for Nico must have been slightly longer than expected. Because he should be just three minutes off the overall. Oh, that's because I've misread that. That's why he is three minutes off the overall lead. I misread that timing screen. It is, it is, it's, have you honest that was the correct information? Uh, poorly executed by me. KCMG, Earl Bamba in the pits as well. That is the second of the Porsches overall. In fact, also the uh, Uber Motorsport um, 993 GTR is in the pits as well. So two of the three top running Porsches. I'm afraid Porsche fans, that's only running in 10th, 11th and 13th overall. Falcon Motorsports and Patrick Pilo uh, are the leader of the gang. If you are a Porsche, ni Porsche 911 GT3 R991.2 fan, I've eliminated the brackets there from the team nomenclature. And who the most will leave. So, yes, it's not been so far, and we are now a long way in. We've run more than two thirds through. Coming up to the end of the hour, actually, coming up to the end of the 17th hour of this, the 50th round, 24 hour from the Nürburgring. And it's not been so far a great race for Stuttgart. However, a number of other towns within uh, Germany are looking a little bit happier. Uh, 102, which is the, the Pro-Am Valkenhorst BMW, is back out. It's been uh, in the pits for an hour and a half, or a little bit longer than that, uh, but it does seem to be clicking away its laps, uh, so uh, that's a little bit of, of hope, which you would do for a Pro-Am car, because you want to give those that have paid uh, the maximum amount of track time. So the Pro cars uh, that were fighting at the very top, uh, that effectively are out of the running for the win, they are retiring. But if you've got a Pro-Am car, you work as hard as you can to get that car back out uh, and sort of circulating once more. Thank you to yeah. Simo99, who pointed that one out. Yeah it's, yeah, it's the experience of the amateur driver and gentleman driver. That's that's what they're, they're here for. They probably didn't, yeah, they didn't expect to win the first place because there's so many pro teams. But yes, yeah, the pro team, we've seen a couple of the pro teams have absolutely withdrawn when they had a... 45 minute repair hour repair which you know if you were in a, in a rage quit yeah very much <laughs> if you were in a a, a a mixed team or a pure uh sporty amateur team you would fix that car and carry on going and, and have more fun and have more learning experience but um you know the professional drivers the professional teams have learned what they need to learn they're here to win they're here to do very very well and once that's gone the thought of running that car for another you know 20 hours or 18 hours and lifing all the parts is is just not worth it for them the stunning filled campsites around this Nürburgring Nordschleife kicking into life, getting the grills operating, getting the coffee on. You're back on bacon again, aren't you? Sunday morning. And Literally, your mind is obsessing with bacon. Look at the... The um, smoke, there's some great barbecue going on there's there. There's lots of fantastic barbecuing going on in the, in the campsites. The, the hangovers are needing to be uh, soothed. Uh, they are probably pretty consistent uh, since the early part of the week. Um, but the campsites have been really full. The, the car park's interestingly quite empty driving in this morning. A lot of people coming in for the day by the, by the seams of things. Uh, maybe again returning yeah, for the end the, of the We day. went past the park and ride long distance car park. Yeah, yeah. The, about four hours before the race started, they issued a, an edict from the Nürburgring organizers saying that all the, the car parks were full, the ones you could walk from. So it was only the park and rides which were available. Um, so I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think the day trippers, um, Effectively, locals, people living in a, within an hour or so, come in, watch a few of four or five hours on Saturday, go home yeah. in their own beds, come back and watch four or five hours on the, to the end. They have been much in evidence. I mean, it's, it's, it, because Thursday, which is first qualifying day, was also um, Ascension Day, therefore a bank holiday here in Germany. There was a huge crowd on Thursday. In fact, there was a bigger crowd, I think, on Thursday and on Friday. Um, but then, to d then yesterday, it was, it was packed, and, there was, uh, and the atmosphere has been fantastic. Obviously, after two years of no audiences and the, the hollow atmosphere of, of the November 24, which is, of course, it has always been a party for the fans, with a motor race running in between it. And that was back on again. Uh, and the madness of the of the Germans has been fully exposed, um, often often on camera. It has to be so. We, we get occasional vignette shots on our on our monitors of people doing. This. But we, we had a long shot yesterday. A man having a shave. We have a Porsche in the wall. One of the uh, black Falcon cars. Uh, this is down at Brunchen, and it's been quite a smash by the looks of things. He's made contact 
multiple times with the barrier. Oh, he's taking too much curb. It's the one, two, two. It's the teammate of the one, two. He took too much curb trying to avoid one of the cup uh, BMWs. Absolutely his fault, I'm afraid. The cup BMW did leave a car's width, but he just went too far to the left. Massive bit of curbage there. It's uh, the one, two, two car. It's got Mr. Ludwig on board. I haven't got his first name, I'm afraid. I'm sure it's not Klaus. Um, so that car is not going to be running anymore after a hit at least 100 miles an hour into the barriers. Um, the one, two, two. My guess is they were probably the leaders, weren't they, in class at that point? Peter Ludwig in the Black Falcon Cup from uh, Fort Lauderdale in the USA. Fourth in Cup Two, down in 30th position. And yeah, that was just. That, you, you, I'm sure they've had a rest, but to me that was a tired mistake. Well, to take that much to go that far away and be given enough space by the Cup car, the BMW 240 Cup car and then just take too much curb, and that was it. The car never got, the Porsche never got anywhere near having four wheels on the ground again until it was facing the wrong direction. Yeah, it, it hit the end of the curb, didn't it? it? The start of the curb launched the car into the air, and by the time it came down to rest, as you say, so unsettled, that it spat across the track into the right-hand side, uh, made contact with the Armco barrier, and then came to rest on the exit of Brunchen 2. So I think, I think that's one of the things that's not spoken that much about the Norse. Like everyone thinks about it as a ribbon of tarmac between Armco barriers, but a lot of the curbs are really vicious. And they do a lot of the work of unsettling the car. So if you go a little bit wide on some of the corners, it's the curb that's damaged. You could have easily got the car back if it hadn't been for the fact you've been launched in the air and not enough rubber is in contact with the road anymore. So it, it's not only very narrow, it's not only lined with Armco, they've got killer curbs. They've got everything. Uh, this, this car is actually on the exit of Flansgut. Uh, oh, right. It's crashed through... Uh, it began in the exit of Brunchen and settled at mm. Flansgut. Uh, if you know your track maps, which all I, I, downhill, I must say, I'm uh, still getting to grips with IDing uh, various parts of the circuit. The, the barrier has taken a bit of a hit uh, on the inside, so mm. I think that might need some repairs. And there is quite a lot of debris uh, on the, on the uh, track, and uh, the car really was all over the place. And we may well have lost our very sexy camera down there as well. Yeah, they, yeah, they have a camera which they've been using because um, that's actually used one of the jumps which the uh, 122 has crashed over. Well, yes, because he's, the, ta he's taken a jump before the yes, jump. He's pre-jumped. And there's been a, an effect shot, which we've been lucky enough to see on the, on the monitors, uh, where they shoot through the very artistically through the gaps in the arm curl and they get the cars jumping in and out of frame. Unfortunately, he was already in the air before he was supposed to jump, then landed and then speared off into the barrier where that camera was. Uh, and more unfortunately, that is definitely an unmanned camera, an unmanned camera. That's position. fine, yeah. So uh, someone from our production crew is going to have to try and well, see if they can it, get access to it. It'd be worse being manned, Ben, because the person might have got hurt. Uh, yes, this is true. <laughs> um, it's going to be a tricky one to reposition, but... Uh, Something for the boys and girls to do down at, uh, at Sportline Television, for our broadcast partner this year. And there's lots of love, actually, online for uh, the Vega timing graphics that we have on our television screens, uh, because they show the car, they show the number of the car, and they show the position. And so you can easily match the colour uh, of the car to which class it's got in, and the number, and where it is uh, in the top 12 positions. And we've seen that uh, cycle through different classes and all the rest of it. Uh, so, Jane Mooney uh, giving that particular bit of our coverage some love, which is very nice. The graphics people will be... Well, I think that's an interesting point. The graphics is, is one of the areas that obviously has improved night and day over the past 10 years, really, as people have got uh, able to use much more advanced graphics machines at much lower cost. That was the point. Graphics titling is always a very expensive part of the production, as you well know, Ben. And now, you know, we can all do it, really, with, um, with overlays <laughs> and computers. And all you need is someone who's got a little bit of artistry and a bit of, a, a bit of flair and can, and can decode some very basic, normally, um, timing information, which tends to come in a, in a quite easy HTML format. And you can produce graphics like anything. You know, we've got a, we, 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 uh, you know, we do some live stream. We live stream RC, we live stream drifting, and we live stream karting. And each of them, despite the fact the timing system is the same, each of them come with a completely different graphics look and graphics set. For, for, you know, and it's just changing a few parameters. I'd point out nothing to do with me, but to do with a very intelligent Swede I know who did that all for us. Ooh. And it's not, yeah, and it's you know, and it, yeah, we are obviously compared to this, which is a, a top level international TV budget. We can replicate. 90% of what they can do there, just because it's now the power and the graphic ability is so easy to come by. 
but you still need flair and you still need to have a design and you need to stick with that design and you need to make sure it works for the customer and so there are, and it, which is which why, is where it goes wrong so often in uh, in other forms of motorsport yeah i mean if you if you look at certain people and, and the interesting thing is of course it's like it's like the graphics are like um, everything else in sport no one no, you're never going to please everybody i think some of the most divisive graphics are actually wc graphics a lot of people hate the wc graphics because yeah. they have no background effectively I also and think they don't tell you the right information. So, you know, um, but when they came out, I thought that, you know, I, I personally thought they were great, then John Hindoff was, 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 was on the other side of the fence. So, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a thankless task. You're trying to give really accurate information to the viewer as quickly as possible. And, and, and sometimes people say, oh, I don't like that, for the old ones, even though they weren't telling what they want to do. But yeah, if you get them right, um, you know, it makes things much more easier. I mean, I think if you look at Formula One's graphics, Formula One used to be, you need, you need to watch Formula One with a timing screen to understand what's going on. But now, thanks to the improvement of the graphics, except when they're showing erroneous information or interested, like how many stops they've made, which doesn't matter, you can tell what's going on and who's... Striking uh, uh, distance. Yes, the ebb and... Yeah, those, let's, let's not talk about the Amazon powered by AWS graphics. Um, yes. I'm actually, yeah, you're thinking about bacon. I'm thinking about those terrible graphics now. Uh, a, <laughs> a, um, a project, interestingly, completely led by Rob Smedley, once uh, Felipe Massa's race engineer. Mm. Smedley, part of the F1 team, was a, on the broadcast for a bit if you were one of the early people to watch F1 TV. But uh, that's his baby, AWS well, graphics. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's... I, often, if, it, if it's something like that, it'd be whatever type of motorsport, and I, and I don't particularly like it, I always think, was the name you, Nick? Calm down. <laughs> I can read that graphic screen. I quite like the fact that the um, one of these, one of these, the BMW that is in uh, 54th place overall, that's a 336 car. Now, I'm just wondering if that's actually on because it's a class leader. Um, 336. No, it's second place in VT2 rear wheel drive. Um, He's got the situation where he applies the brakes really hard. It's still got the system that the uh, road car has where when you, you, know, you brake really hard, it flashes the brakes to make you know that. So they've kept that on the car. <laughs> so the, the lights are taking, I'm not braking really, really hard. It's of course you are because you're racing a car. <laughs> you're not trying to go to the shops. I, I wonder whether the, uh, the ABS is still on that car and, it, and the ABS is kicking in. Might be, but he's slowing down anyway now. Half because we are uh, in going into the accident area of the... Um, Porsche into the pits. Yeah, the Porsche's, come. the Porsche's been removed, by the way. They got towed out. Yeah, but they've got the barrier repairs. But they've got to do the barrier, yeah. yeah. So into the pits has come the 20 car, the erstwhile previous leader. That's a Schubert Motorsport car with the M4 Yessi Crone on board, still patching up the damage caused by the puncture that Alexander Sims had a, a couple of hours ago now. That car has dropped from rotating in the lead and looking like a good bet for a well, top two position. Uh, now it is pretty much running in fifth place. Uh, I think even as a stagger unwind, it won't get any further than that, even though it is the last of the cars to pit, because it's the first of the cars to pit, depending on how you're, you're running your rotation of those cars in the top five. But I think it is quite fifth, if that makes sense. Hashtag um, N24 RSL, if you want to get in touch with us. Johnny Main, uh, Johnny Fun 101 uh, asks, do we think there might be some changes to how the barrier positions are at the tier garden by the time we come back in 2023. He's referencing, of course, mm. two big crashes for two of our uh, Porsches. We saw the 121 have a big shunt up there and the number one uh, have a big shunt. Because it's been resurfaced, Nick, we, we've, we're carrying and we're able to carry a lot more speed into that section now. Uh, and it does seem as though if you go off at one part, you are there's a kind of a pinball effect all the way through it yeah. and it takes a while for the accident to, to stop yeah i mean it's it's as we saw from the major accident which is the one we all talk about which is the van tour brothers uh crash into each other it you know it's a violent accident um it, you know the car span across the track did a small amount of greenery and then thumped the barrier hard at a marshall post i heard marshall's weren't on their phones they were watching so they were able to scurry away before the car hit it's hard to say, isn't it, really? Because does one accident make a trend, which is just one of those things? I mean, they've, they've resisted changing virtually every other part of the Nürburgring and just said, you know, buyer beware, effectively, on the driving. But that one is an interesting because what happens is, as you point, rightly point out, it's one of the places where the track narrows, and it narrows from the fastest part of the circuit into a not particularly difficult uh, sweeping left, and then you, sorry, sweeping right, and then you go left and you slow very quickly. So you're doing three or four things at once and losing width of track. So if you are too abreast, there's a lot of stuff to happen. That's what actually happened in that accident with the Van Torbo. That, that Dries actually hugged the kerb 
but Lawrence was still drifting in, I think, because psychologically you could see the curve coming in from the, from, from the right-hand side, so from the left-hand side, and so he actually moved left. So he was actually measuring himself against the outside of the road rather than where uh, Dries was, and that caused the accident. So possibly the modelling might be that they might want to slightly open up the entry. Um, but the point about this track is that the reason you don't see anything faster than these cars, GT3s, racing on it in a competitive ban manner it's because it has a limit to what could be contained within it. You know, you couldn't contain a P2 and you couldn't contain a you know, Formula 1 car within the circuit. Um, these cars are very strong, they're very robust. We've seen a number of accidents so far during this race and all the drivers in all the classes have had severe dents to their wallets, but they themselves personally are absolutely fine. And that's the thing, the, the track can only take a certain speed. And, so, and there is an accident waiting to happen every single corner with a barrier. So. Do you concentrate on one particular corner because of one particular accident? Difficult to know. The Porsche is nearly at behind the barriers down at Flansgarten. It's actually not quite yet recovered. I thought it had been done a little bit easier. There is a lot of debris to clear up. Yeah, it's dropped some oil as well. Some fluid as well, and the barrier has yet to be repaired. Um, there is a nice little battle going on for sixth position. Lucas Stoltz has got himself up ahead of Matteo Drudi. Uh, that is the Mercedes Bilstein number 12 ahead of the Audi car collection 24 and the two of them are being chased down by uh, Schramm in the team Phoenix Schrera Sport Audi and Nico Bastian in the other uh, Bilstein uh, Mercedes so potentially four cars if the uh, flags fall in the direction to compress those uh, guys together but we have seen a change where uh, Stoltz has got himself up ahead of Drudy for sixth yeah, Luca involved in some early activity. He actually thought he had a bit of an accident as well. He went in the back of somebody early on. And that took that car... Well, I didn't take it out of contention and pushed it back a bit. And, um, so Luca, he was the leading Mercedes for a while, but now there's two ahead of him. Adam Cristudo and Bruno Giugudella? Um, Danny Giugudella. Where's Bruno Giugudella come from? Who's Bruno? Bruno Giugudella, I think I've got in there. From oh, the, yeah. Coming back from the, the wonderful school. world of F3000. Um, they are uh, ahead in second and third, but yeah, there's some, some, some good battles there, you say, in that, in that patch. Because those cars are, are not, you know, the, the Stoltz, Drudy, Schramm, Bastion, they're not miles away. They're, they're five minutes off the lead, yep. um, which is obviously not a lap. Hashtag anything can happen. It, it, yeah, and, and given the fact the early attrition rates of the, the leading GT3 cars, by early I mean the first four hours, because the first, you know, sixth of the race in an endurance race really just should be just playing yourself in and they couldn't be bothered to, they just thought they'd go for it straight away. You know, we lost a number of cars early on. Um, you know, if we had the same issue, as Adam says, when all hell breaks loose in the last two and a half hours, you know, it is a possibility, well, it's certainly a possibility that you're currently sixth, you could easily end up on the podium. There could be three, you know, two or three of the cars. And it is as simple as any of those cars ahead of them has a puncture in the first half of the lap. Yeah. They will lose those five minutes. Yeah. It's not like they have an engine blob or a big accident. It's, it's a, quite as simple as that. It's, you know, and punctures probably are the most common uh, misfortune that befalls any endurance car. You know, if you're, you know, if you're doing a brand hatch where it's a minute back in again, isn't it? Here, six or seven. Thanks, Roxanne. Uh, who doesn't have a question to, for us. She just wants to give us some praise. If you want bacon, you want praise. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, I just want your bacon. Um, <laughs> Let's not clip that one out as a quote. <laughs> uh, there was another... That's my second favourite quote of yours after Y9. Y9? Y9. Sim Racing Steward uh, asks uh, yourself, Nick Damon, on hashtag N24RSL, why so many of the lower class cars have white blanked out windscreens? Actually, it's not link. It's not just the lowest class cars. Most cars have will have quite a lot of tape at the very uh, base level or fully whited out rear windscreens because uh, the GT3 cars have such bright lights. Yeah, and there are no dippers. The, uh, and often it is a, a covering which is um, sort of like a, a one-way mirror, but not a mirror. So it's a one-way white. You do get some vision through it. But it's uh, a one way only. But yeah, I mean, it's a very good point. You, you do need, if you're in the, if you're in the, uh, the depths and the darks of, of the Norwich side, concentrate as hard as you can. And a laser lit Audi comes behind you flashing, you know, vigorously, let's call it that. Um, it's massively distracting. And, and 
you know, the, the, there are two options there, getting out of the way or having an accident, and then it's not always possible to make a, a, a logical <laughs> decision which one to do. Um, when you're being fired, so yes, it's, it's kind of a protection, protection from being... But, but yes, the GT3 something as well. The GT3's got that look, look very uh, uh, blanked out. A lot of, of course, the military cars don't really have rear windows. It's just engine covers, aren't they? So it's uh, currently uh, 17 minutes past nine local time, and the beer is already flowing uh, within the campsite. We've, uh, we've, we've been having quite a lot of updates of this particular uh, Gentlemen. beer. I think that might be coming to the cameraman, do you know? Ah, I think Mr. Cameraman is getting, cameraman's himself getting, a bit of a, getting himself a little bit of a libation. So whichever one that is, if the focus starts to it's go... It's wobbly, yeah. <laughs> it's my seventh. I'm doing fine. I never knew there were so many cars. <laughs> There's two of each one. Recovery truck yes, heading. That, 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 that is really hard to get used to. What's that? This is the first time I've, yeah, I've been here and, I, I, and really watching these on board. Is having full chat, running in first position, GT3 cars, going past unabated speed course cars. You know, the course cars are sitting off the racing line. By course cars, I don't mean like a, you know, a, a little mini with a flashing light. They're a great big, you know, um, rescue vehicle, like, which we rescue from the side of the, the, side of the motorway with a, with a you know, big lift, crane lift as well. And they just whiz past them. Always protected by intervention vehicles. There's yeah. always an intervention vehicle behind with its flashing lights uh, and behind enough so that it would eliminate the possibility of anyone running into the well, back of the that, table. You do remember at one problem or two, I ran the back of a jet dryer. So, you know, racing drivers are known to, to do weird things. Another problem for another Porsche down the uh, Dottinger Ho. That's a puncture. Um, not quite close enough on which of the Porsches it is. It's got a, if you know your colours, it's got a white top and a green, lime green uh, lower area. Yes. Absolutely has a rear right punch, which is good to you. Yeah, it's, it's coming off the rim. I, th it's, I think it's had contact because it all seems, unless it's a Cayman that doesn't have a rear wing, which I think sure it is, mm. uh, I think it might have been missing stuff and it looks like it's crabbing as well. So. Yeah, hopefully when it gets a bit further up the uh, Dottinger Ho towards that le long lens camera, they'll zoom in and we can identify for you which of the, uh, the Porsche is having the issue. But if you are a fan of a white Porsche with a lime green lower uh, balance, and uh, it could be bad news. A beautiful sunny morning. Clouds around, not heavy clouds. I'd like to point out that it, you know, as soon as we came on, the rain stopped. Yes, yeah. it was only drizzle. Yeah. In fact, it was, it was um, if you have just joined us, uh, I'm sure this was mentioned by uh, Joe Bradley and Johnny Palmer. It was oh, it's the incipient rain. It's the car that was in 66th place. It's the 397. Uh, Porsche. I will give you all the information you could ever want about it. So I scroll down to where it is. Uh, it's the un it's the, the no-name team. Oh yes. With their Porsche 911, which has no sub nomenclatures to it, so it's in the V6 group. It doesn't even say you know, what year it was ever. Um, it's a not, car. It's a car. I'm not quite sure who's in. Well, it could, it's going to be Sebastian Rings, Lucas Picard, Alain Pierre, or Alexander Koppen, um, who have picked up that puncture. Not it is. It is Koppen who's in the car. Okay. And that is a class leader. Oh dear. And it is not a class leader of which there are only one car in the class. No, I can, see, I can see another car immediately above it. Yeah, exactly. So how far is his lead, Ben? Is the question because he's obviously going to lose at least five minutes. That's regardless of the fact of whether there's some damage on the car after that. As you said, 66th position, uh, generally. Uh, Nat now has become 68th position, but the next of the V6 cars is down in 74th position. That's a sort of red sport car. So uh, gap. Oh, I'm 72nd on my screen. Do I need to refresh? <laughs> uh, no, it's probably me that's uh, a little behind. Um, so yes, it was. A, he was a lap. So he had a lap lead. He's picked up his own uh, Audi intervention protection as he crawls back up through Tiergarten. The Audi. Uh, it is an RS4, most of them are on the intervention How cars. How scary would it be being one of those Just cars? slowing behind it and letting the car... But in fairness to, to the car, you know, it's been driven very, very, very well by Mr. Cobb, and he's, he's, he's realised the problem. He's stuck far to the right-hand way. This is the frightening bit, where you come off the Dottinger Ho, the other cars, you can, and you have to pick a side, and you are taking up one car's width of really a two-and-a-half car's width bit of track. Now, the cars do know you're there because of that Audi intervention vehicle, which is a really good point you made, Ben, about how as soon as they can, they get behind and they protect, and those flashing lights, and of course, it's, you know, it, that works both at night and day. I, I, still, I still wouldn't want to be sitting in a, a, a relatively standard machine no. driving at 30, 40 kilometres an hour when, when you've got GT cars coming up nearly 300 kilometres an hour. Uh, I mean, the idea is they don't make contact. Yeah. They rarely do actually make contact, but uh, 
I would still be scared. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm a bit of a wimp. Good, good driving by um, Alexander Coppin because he's managed to keep that tyre from destroying it seems like anything else apart from itself. He's, uh, he's driven very sensibly, very slowly. Kept the delaminated tyre on the rim. It's uh, flapping about to the right. It's come off there like a, a, sock coming, a, foot, a sock coming off your foot to the, uh, the right-hand side of the car. But he has come in in an exceptionally sensible man. Now, you know, hopefully this is not because he's gone off and punched himself. A bit of bad luck. He can come back to the team. Well oh, done. Look, brought it back perfectly. Uh, and the 228 car, which is currently running in second, um, is going to get back on the same lap. But whether they're getting the lead of the class, well, that's debatable. Question from uh, Jaegertron2000, Adam that's a great M name. H, <laughs> uh, on the hashtag N24RSL. If you get a puncture on the Grand Prix loop, uh, can you come straight yes. back into the pits? Yes, you can. Yes. But that lap does not count. Now, that sounds silly. You don't get a counted lap, so you just basically start. It's basically you're back in the pits and you've lost that two miles where it is. Now, obviously, there is no reason to go out on the Norwich Life and then do another 13 miles. So everyone would do that. Perhaps you have another problem where you think, you know, like I can nurse this back and it only costs us a minute, a minute and a half. Then you wouldn't be worth losing that, that two and a half minutes going around the uh, Grand Prix striker. But it's, uh, on the whole, if you develop a problem on the Grand Prix, you absolutely just come in, take the shortcut. Um, take the pain about, two minutes. Well, it does depend on how slow you're going and at what point you got the puncture. But a lap of the Grand, Grand Prix track is about a minute four. Uh, it's two and a half, it's two and a half miles 30? because it's lost a bit. So you, if you had a GT3 car, you'd do it in 150, two minutes? No, a bit less than that. Sorry. No, no, less than no, that because no, that's no. with the arena. Yeah, it's about we've lost it. If you lost it, you could point you because we had that short, immediate right after the turn one. That's taken at least 15, 16 seconds out of the track. Um, thankfully, it's a horrible bit of track, the AMG Arena. But sorry, that's sorry, that's sorry Nordschleife. I, I, I think the Nordschleife is... I mean, this is the, the thing that, that Joe and I are making up. Both of us absolutely love the Nordschleife and really have no time for this Grand Prix part of it. So, um, you know, it's kind of it's the necessary evil to get on the good bit. Well, somebody's had their porridge this morning. Vigorously. Vigorous flag waving within the... Uh, the lively crowd out there. And the young lady has absolutely decided what she needs to do is wave at something. Uh, I suppose... Uh, it could be, it could be. She could be telling the whole of the rest of the campsite that the bacon's ready. <laughs> Quite possible. Quite possible. Communication. She was up on a tower with a big Audi flag and maybe that's like ringing the bells at church. It could be. Uh, it could be. Right, it's Sunday after all. Yeah. Tire off on the Porsche leader of VT6. How much damage has been done by the flappy rubber uh, on the inside of the arch. Make sure it hasn't ripped off any... No, uh, looks like they're happy with that. And, yeah, he's done that well. It might have been slow, but he's done that well. Even the bodywork doesn't really have that much uh, uh, black marks on it. So this is a, this is a very basic ba base Porsche 911. My guess is it's probably a very old cup car. You know, like seven or eight years old. Uh, it's, it's in a class with Caymans. Back at the front and leading as they have been effectively when the stagger unwinds for quite some time now. It's Fred Vavish in the 15 Audi Sport Team Phoenix. Their overall lead is just shy of 40 seconds, Madame Chris Tadoulou. But it's But it's come down. Christo's been pushing hard there. Not, the, not in the last lap, but in previous laps, yes. Yeah. The last lap they were within, um, well, they were three tenths apart. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm completely oversaying. They were three hundredths apart oh, wow. um, over the 15.8 miles or 25.378 kilometres. But I think I absolutely agree with you. I think Adam has pulled that down by about six seconds since he got into the car from about 45 to 40. Uh, a further minute and 12 back is Danny Giancadella. So that's the two um, Mercedes AMG GT3s, Mercedes AMG team get speeds. The three and the four running in that order in second and third. And sandwiched by two Audis. Um, the fourth place car being Nico Muller of the Audi Sport Team car collection, who is a further 50 seconds behind. So the top four are covered by two minutes, 43 seconds, which is less than a pit stop. The time pit stops before the last stop of all are three minutes each. Six and a half hours remaining. We finished the race at a six o'clock, uh, four o'clock, four o'clock local time, sixteen hundred. Uh, about to say six o'clock. I, I, I do that a lot. Uh, there must be something wrong with my brain. Uh, I, four o'clock. Just one thing. <laughs> <laughs> four o'clock local time is the end of the checkered flag. So I'm expecting to see quite a uh, a crowd come in today as well. You know, drive in once they've uh, once they've had breakfast. Oh, the breakfast of my mind uh, and. Uh, 
that will enjoy the last couple of hours. I think, I think it's important to stress you, you, you did get a little stack before you came on here. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't it wasn't cooked. <laughs> but, um, oh. oh dear. Bit of traffic problems in that last couple of sectors for Alan Chris Dilly. Dropped a couple of seconds back and, um, on uh, Feather V. She's had a lovely clear run right down the hill as he's gone through into. Uh, he's about to go through the. Uh, the Orenberg, isn't it? No, so he's about to go to, to uh, Ex Muller. Going through the second entrance, which is no longer used, and is one of the first ever viral videos from that second entrance into uh, the Nürburgring. Was a guy who it was a 30 second video, and it was a guy in a BMW, and it started with him big upping, and oh, oh, we're on the road, I could do this, and he crashed, and he crashed and broke his car in nine seconds. <laughs> he came, came on at the bottom, and by the time he got to Bergwerk, he, he destroyed the car. Fred Ravish choosing the wrong side of a Cayman to try and lap in there. Uh, went left, but the Cayman started to go left, and unfortunately, uh, Ravish held up uh, in that particular section uh, well out of the throttle. So while Christo has lost a little bit of time over the last couple of, of laps, he might well it's, gain a bit back. It's traffic. Now. I mean, it's, 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 it's ebbs and flows. They've been flung a second either way because it's just traffic. If you, if you slip past a slower car, one corner earlier than someone else, you can save yourself a second and a half. What, what's quite impressive with these um, onboard cameras, uh, uh, supplied by AMP Visual, by the way, who do pretty much every onboard camera known to man around the world of motorsport, they, um, they have quite a good microphone. And when we rode on board with Adam Christodoulou uh, a few laps back now, you could hear him shouting at himself. Yes, um, and, and, and other drivers. Like he's on iRacing, chatting to his group. <laughs> uh, I think he'd, been, he'd held up through Tiergarten, a little frustrated, and was, uh, and was shouting, come on. We, we, yeah. we also heard, we did hear something else. Um, well, it's a good example there. Fred Vich actually, I think, just got held up going through the second carousel, maybe the first carousel. Uh, he got held again, so it's, it's, it's all about you know, how you, uh, you you meet the traffic, isn't it? It's, 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 it's so much of it involves a little bit of luck. In comes the... No, is that the Cup leader in Cup 2 in 20th place? I no, think Cup 3rd. The Mulna Motorsports uh, 131 is 3rd position. A lap behind the Black Falcon 123 who is a lap behind the 127. Yes, we've lost the, inter the, the cars which were plugging those gaps. They both um, had heavy impacts with the walls in these last two or three hours. But uh, the cup class certainly has been well contested. And with the new 991 GT3 cars, these are the same things as pound round, the well, the endurance version of the cars you see at the various Porsche Cups, the Carrera Cup Championship that supports F1, the British Touring Car Supporting Event in the UK, the Inter Supporting Event in the States, and I assume other supporting events in other countries, in the South African ch ch Championship as well. I do, remember, I do remember many, many years ago, um, going on the, on the Grand Prix at Brazil, they had the Porsche South America support race, which was by far the, the most disastrous race as far as crashes I've ever seen. The, they were coming down the, uh, the, sort of the back straight, actually the corner after the corner four, on, uh, in uh, Sao Paulo, and for some reason, the guy in second lurched left and took out 18 cars. Luckily, no one hurt. Parts bill, astronomical. <laughs> so they'd lost, it was a big field. They had about 40 cars. They'd lost 18, cleared those up, and then they had exactly the same accident, lost another 10. That's another eight. And you never forget, there's a couple of races, support races, you never forget, and that's one of them. Still not my favourite support race. We haven't got time to talk about it now, perhaps later, which is the Honda support race uh, for WEC in Bahrain many years ago. Wow. So the Huracan, um, which you can hear in the background, that is the car which led briefly uh, at the start of the race. The uh, bright green, well, it's not really bright green, it's kind of a... It's Conrad teal, colours, isn't it? It's teal, isn't it, I think? Uh, teal, green and black Lamborghini Huracan. I the think we should, we should now assign that colour as a Conrad colour. Yes, we should do. They can because retire we, the colour. We described it in Spa as Patronas colours. It oh, is mm. how Conrad cars have been yeah. liveried, and therefore it's completely correct that yeah. it's run by Franz Conrad. It's got uh, Hackender aboard it right now, throwing it through uh, the chicane at the end of the lap. Uh, it lies in... Oh, that's the chicane. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right at the end of the Grand Prix lap. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, pedantic, Nicholas. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm here for, keeping on the straight and narrow. 
12th position for yeah, and, Hutt and the reason that car has dropped back is, is not because of any particular issues, because it's a pro-am car. Yes. So yeah. it fired off with its two pros, uh, led for a bit, and then I think it was second or third. Then, of course, yeah, the, the, the less quick AM drivers, I think it's leading pro-am class, uh, took over the, the reins. It's obviously going to lose two, three, four seconds of that because that's, you know, that's what the point about having a professional driver is, they're a bit quicker. Uh, and on our timing screens, the pro-am cars are not separated um, from the pro cars like we would see in other championships so we don't necessarily without a lot of work know exactly where yeah. they lie in relation to the other pro and cars out there that'll be exciting I mean, when the podium start rolling through, that'll be exciting we'll find out they have no idea then three teams will go well, what the rams <laughs> <laughs> never knew got a very grumpy uh message on uh, twitter from anyone at fan one porsche Right. Saying, is there any rain forecast? We need to salvage <laughs> something from this disaster. Uh, yeah, I, oh, oh dear, oh dear. Um, there, we, there is a car that's just pulled that's away. I think that, that was that, that, was it, wasn't that, that, that cup car that we just talked about in second place? The one, two, one It could one have been more, though, yeah. Um, as it left the pits, it was mostly smoke and not much motion. Now, whether that's just a case of an overfilling of the oil, they put an oil and, and a little bit went into the crankcase. Because um, if that's actually how the engine's running, it's broken. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Porsche really have had, have had no luck this, this year. They, it, it's all gone wrong. Their top cars... Have, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not like they've been hit by acts of God. They've been hit by acts of, acts of accident. And uh, well, I'll, I'll ease back from stupidity, but acts of misjudgment, let's say. Well, I mean, it started off the weekend with Patrick Pile driving into the back of Nick Tandy in practice. Mm. Two works Porsche drivers. And Pile has been in multiple issues. He, he had a flamboyant first lap where he found himself thrown over the kerb uh, at the Vidal chicane uh, and had more contact in the 44 Falcon. He's also driving the 33. I think he's been a little kinder uh, to that particular one. But, you know, just an example of, of some of the things that have happened for, for the Porsche team yeah, down there. Van Tor losing, uh, coming off after an incident with his brother. We've had um, the KCMG car, which we thought would run well, had an early problem and lost the lap and just can't get it back in this company. And the problem with Panic's call is they were being constantly battered up the backside during Code 60 by the number 20. The BMW was, the, uh, was the, the statement the team made. I'm not sure how often constant it is, but what, unfortunately what it did, it did that thing you can do with the Porsche where it comes to the back and you actually crush the exhaust and that just caused overheating issues. So, yeah, it's just not, it's just not gone Porsche's way. The top sport team taken out entirely by the Murray Racing Car. Yeah. Minding its own business. Absolutely contention would be running around in the top five now, as would, of course, the man. But that's not endurance racing about. Endurance racing is not about the ifs and the buts. It's about who actually gets to the end of the race. Um, and every car has a story to tell, whether they've been lucky or unlucky or successful or non-successful. One of the longest stories is probably the Glickenhaus, the 706 car that had a terrible set of qualifiers. Didn't start the race particularly well. It had a new engine this weekend, but it's now running very happily, multi-miles ahead of the rest of the SBX cars. Frank Meyer, also in 15th overall, so um, a happy ending it'll be for Glickenhaus. Uh, and in a single lap, that Glickenhaus is as fast uh, as the SP9 GT3 cars. We've mm. seen it have the fastest lap of the race at points uh, yeah. across this race so far. Um, but all is not lost, uh, Porsche fans. Oh, this is, look, look, here we go. But they will win the Cup 2 class. Well, exactly. <laughs> it actually leads eight classes. Porsche leads eight out of our 22 classes, some of which doesn't have any competition, some of which only has competition with its own brand. So, you know, there are a couple in there that uh, it's pretty much this, obligated this is, to win. This, this sounds like, this sounds like uh, some modern journalistic, you know, journalistic reporting. Headline, you know, Porsche has eight victories! And then the subline, in which they're only competitive against two. But you know, let's, let's, let's sell the big headline and not the, uh, the subline, yeah? Yeah, exactly. I just wasn't going to count how many of those eight are uh, <laughs> definitely going to be Porsche victories. Um, yeah. Well, you know, Porsche obviously the 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 premier uh, racing brand. Realistically, uh, uh, yeah, you, you couldn't argue that they have converted more road cars to race. And Christopher gets chopped off nasty by the uh, the BMWs going down the hill. Gap down to 32 seconds last time it was Lisa, checked. Yeah, lost a couple of seconds there as he. Uh, it's a mega Sweeps stick. round to Versfine, and we'll be coming into X Muller in a minute, but uh, he lost a little bit down the hill. I don't, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it's interesting if you look at the, 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 the action sometimes of the cars, the slower cars. I know the, the rule on the whole, and it's kind of thing a rule that is applied 
quite rigorously here at the Nürburgring is it is down to the overtaking car to get past the slower car. The slower yeah. car does not have to move on its line, the overtaking car needs to move on its line. The thing I kind of think is when you can see one of these cars coming up behind you, now it's absolutely fine that we sort of, uh, we look, we, uh, there's a pink Porsche just ahead of the pink and white Mercedes and the pink Porsche kept its line and the Mercedes had to slow. So because you lost some stuff, that's just luck. That happens, you've lost some time. But a few corners earlier, the BMW then moved back onto a line in front of it. You thought, well, if you stayed slightly wide, you both would have got through. You'd have got through with no damage and, you know, and, and there'd be no, no risk to the Mercedes. So sometimes I kind of wonder how intelligently stay on your own line at all costs, but actually a little bit of breathing off a little bit can just give it, make it easier for everybody. Yeah, but then you're unpredictable. If you, if you do that, then the faster car doesn't know exactly yeah. where you're going to be. Sticking to the racing line and allowing and making sure it's the responsibility of the passing car to make the pass is almost a safer way of doing things. But it's so hard, especially in some of the... I mean, imagine being the Dacia Logan with, okay. uh, with absolutely no roll cage or safety around you, really, just, just a bit of tin. Uh, and, and, ten horsepower, yeah. uh, and being chased down and passed with closing speeds probably over 100 mile an hour difference. And you're... You, you want to get out of the way, you know, you would want to jump out of the way at any given opportunity. But if you do that and you go right when the uh, GT3 car has already decided it's going right, that's when those big crashes happen. It's remarkable. We see, um, we don't see as more of them, to be honest. We do see them, of course, but we, uh, we don't see some of the contacts we've seen are actually SP9 on SP9. Yeah, the closing speed contacts have been mercifully free of regularity because effectively with 135 cars, 138 cars going round uh, of all different speeds, there's probably about at least a couple of hundred overtakes per lap. Yeah. Um, and virtually all those are cross-class, so not contested in, in many ways, but people have to work out where people are. Now, despite the fact we've been sitting on board for a while without Chris Dewey, who seems to be having t tremendously slowed up by traffic, is you're quite right, he is still gaining on... Um, uh, Fred Vavis, the, the gap is down down to 33 seconds. They crawl into one of the slow zones. Yeah, this is where the barrier repair is being done uh, on the entrance to Flansgarten, on the inside of Flansgarten. Hopefully, they've also moved our camera back into position. And the, you can see the camera boxes there. So they have a crane, one of those uh, Unimogs, one of the uh, popular uh, vehicles for... And yeah, the, 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 it was a pretty impactful smack that is required. And it's actually, it's, it's double layer by Armco there. So they're going to have to uh, replace that. Uh, and note the third car in that little battle was the, uh, the leading TCR Elantra, uh, mm. which was lucky to actually get away with not being collected because it had been uh, passed. And by the time that Porsche came back across the circuit, could well have easily uh, been collected as Bambi takes a little stroll through the or, field. Or as you like to call it, venison. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are the four, yeah, the four layer, um, <laughs> the four layer uh, barrier there, four height layer, and they're replacing a couple of them. Hope that's not too close to the circuit. But there's beautiful countryside around here. Perfect, as we said on our way home, uh, for deers to roam. And uh, oh, the blessings of a good effort from that the cameraman is, to pick him out. That is, I've got this really long lens, and, he, and just you know, on the monitor, he has zoomed in on a small deer, probably three, 250 meters, 300 meters away. He's also up on a massive crane. That is as well. windy up there. Epic view, and unfortunately for him, not many campsite uh, things no, to zoom into. I think he hasn't, that he hasn't got people shaving or drinking or waving flags. So he's on wildlife. He's on wildlife. <laughs> wildlife watch on a Sunday morning. Lovely. I mean, it, it, that is, it, whenever you work with a, 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 a team of professional cameramen, you will find. Obviously, the first they're looking for is pretty girls, and once they've, they've exhausted the pretty, I, I assume still, but I'm not sure they're still allowed to do that. You will see them looking for for, um, for wildlife shots. Yeah, you get these marvelous little ISO shots of dragonflies and everything else. But that's obviously it's a long lens work, and we've got a nice deer. Great. And miles away from the circuit, by the way, for those of you listening quite and safe. not watching. Yeah, quite, quite safe. safe. Yeah, yeah. 33 Falcon Porsche, another one of the Porsches is really not delivering what we expected. Jackson Evans wore that car at the moment. What is delivering what we expected is Adam Christodoulou, who comes into the pits after a pretty impressive eight lap stint. I think he gained in that time over Fred of the Vigil. I think about 13 seconds, I think he gained during, his, during that last stint. That's the second and a half a lap. It's, uh, he would be able to catch <laughs> up, waves the camera. He's a little show off, isn't he? He is a little show off, yeah. 
He absolutely knows what he's on. There would be a, I'm pretty sure there's a big screen around that he <laughs> saw himself on TV. Yeah, I mean, Adam Christodoulou obviously absolutely made himself a career now as a ring expert. Working with Rima Jafali, uh, the Saudi Arabian lady driver in a in the GT. Is it GT Open they're doing or they're doing Blanc Pan? No, GT Open. GT Open. So if they've formed a, she, she's formed a team. She wants to get help to get more uh, races, especially female races from Saudi Arabia involved. And Adam's been her, her driver coach uh, throughout her, her reasonably short career. Because she started late. No, she's just over 30, I think. She started only five or six years ago. And she's been doing mostly single seaters. But Adam is the driver coach for that as the air filter is changed again on the Mercedes. I don't think I've ever seen so many air filters being changed. But in it's, because, hours. it's because they've got so much time. Yes, they and can. they can. Um, what I love about the air filter is not like a, a £1.99 bit of paper cassette you get down to Halford. It's actually got a carbon fibre top to it. Now, I'm assuming the actual, it's probably one of the, the sort of K&N style where it's, um, it's cleanable and, re, and refillable with oil. So I don't think they're, they're, they're chucking that away each time. They've got a, a rotation of three and they're cleaning and resurfacing them each time. But of course, the air filter, vital part of the equipment of any engine. Um, the amount of air, the air gets sucked in and, it, and the particles get removed. Now, you know, you can have an open an open breathing system, but then you are liable to get small bits of dirt and dust and sand and Especially gravel here. in the in the engine. And that'll just score up your balls very quickly and that'll ruin the engine. Now, not score it, up your balls. Score up your balls, love. <laughs> but uh, with the um, the propensity of, of detritus you do get in the Nürburgring, I think a good air filtration system is absolutely vital. Um, because if you look at um, old F1 cars, they often were just open breathing, weren't they? With just little kind of hats of, uh, of mesh just to stop a big stone getting in. Of course. Oh, James Atkinson. Was that Earl Bambi? <laughs> hey, very, very good. Uh, you see, Nick, Nick was always going to appreciate that one. Good morning. If you have any more uh, deer-based jokes, we'll be happy oh, to receive them. No. We've got quarter now before, you, before it gets uh, the next gets team serious. on. Gets serious again. <laughs> next, team, next team on, and they aren't quite so interested in the various ruminants by the side of the track. <laughs> so the uh, clear-up from that Porsche accident was about an hour ago now, wasn't it? It was just taken out the camera, taken out the... Uh, Filthy, the truck uh, down there. Fence, cause they, well, I think what happened when you, obviously the front of a Porsche impacted a barrier. The car then bounced across. Once the front of the Porsche impacted something, that's all your water lines and your oil cooler lines gone, and so it's going to dump huge amounts of various types of liquid. Uh, we have another Code 60, I'm afraid, down at Exmoor and the 331 machine stationery uh, down there. Oh, he's topping himself now. He's got mummy oh, and baby bear. Oh, mummy and baby deer. If I tell you what, if a rabbit turns up, we know there's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Lovely stuff. Wholesome. And somebody played with an RC car. I've, I've hardly approved oh, that. Oh, there we go. It's, uh, it's ready to run. Looks like it's a... It's a uh, bit of nick. Absolutely. So they've, they've been drinking, they've been shaving, they've been seeing a bit of, of wildlife. I mean, it, it is, you know, what goes on around the track is so important to the overall atmosphere and, and, and almost the legend of the Nürburgring 24, isn't it? Yes, it's a great race, but it's, it's a, you know, such an event for European motorsport. 331 stationary down at Exmoor, um, the V2 Hecker, fourth position Adrenaline Motorsport BMW 330i. Uh, that is the reason why we've got a code 60 at that part of the circuit at this moment in time. And an intervention vehicle heading over to uh, tend to that vehicle. It's on the outside of the right hand intersection, I think, of that track. Yeah, we're getting now down to the business end of the race, coming up to the last quarter of the race. We'll start in about 30 minutes. But just to give you an idea, that means we've got the whole of a six-hour WEC race to go. Hopefully yeah. we get more running than at the Spa. But um, and, and in fairness, whilst if I look to my left and it's my right now, it's looking quite grey, isn't it? It's kind of, you kind of think there's a theoretical rain in those clouds that it could also pass us over. Bits of grey, patches of I, 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 I think that the whoever was who tweeted you hoping for rain for a chance with a Porsche climb up the field, I don't think they're going to be necessarily disappointed. My, my bet is we could well see a lot of, uh, some, some wetness in the last hour, hour and a half. It was forecast. The forecast has gone away again and there is rain coming from the north uh, to hit the circuit at some point. Uh, but it seems to be travelling slower than uh, perhaps it was initially. Plenty of time to get here still. Yeah, yeah, plenty of time left to this race. 
And we are, I want to do my math soon. We've come, as yes. we've come close to yes, six hours. Yes, you've got 12 minutes. <laughs> Ben will be using fingers and toes, so unfortunately the socks and shoes are coming off again. <laughs> <laughs> 116 laps completed uh, right now. We've got 12 minutes before we get to the hour. And I'm going to do some very basic maths. Okay? I, I think Vavish is going to get at least up to 117 completed. I'm going to say he's going to have 118. Hour. I'm going to divide it by three and times it by four, and that's 157.3. So 157 they're on for the moment. Wow, it's still tight, isn't it? Mm. It's better than it was yes, uh, when we last green running, yeah. yeah. But we are actually... We're losing about half a minute a lap at the moment under the Code 60 that's uh, down at Flansgarten. Uh, and of course, now we've got another one at Exmoor that will only slow the, the what circuit. What year was the record set? Uh, quite a few years ago yeah, now. Yeah, and I think, I think it's interesting. I think there's been a general tightening since then. 14. Yeah, I mean, it was, I can't remember who it was. it was. I think it was after the, it was after the uh, Yules Bianchi accident. There was a much bigger tightening of, of controlling speeds around accidents. And that was in, in general. You know, this, is, this, is, this track is unique in that it allows service vehicles to be on the track whilst the race continues. But there was a lot more thought about controlling traffic velocity around instant. So my guess is that an instant now, which wouldn't have had, which would just be under local yellows in 2014, now gets a 120 or a 60 slow zone, which is great. I mean, I'm, I'm 100 for that because safety is the number one priority before you get anything involved. So I think you are always fighting against a change in attitudes over the last few years. And of course, the fact is that the GT3 cars haven't actually got any quicker. Uh, they've got easier to drive, more reliable um, and nicer, but they haven't got any quicker because they've always been constantly bopped back to, to the balance of performance back to where they were. So whilst you've got a car that's comfortable to drive through a complete stint that has a wide operating window, an absolute outright, how fast can I do a 15.8 mile lap? That hasn't changed. In fact, I think actually this year, didn't the whole field got slow, slow, didn't it? I think the whole of the GT field got slightly taken back, didn't they? They've, they've reassessed again. It's kind of a, a forward creep. Because it is the point that, you know, yes, a modern GT3, often when you buy the GT3 version of these top sports cars, you're actually buying the least powerful version you can get. Mm. By the time it's been, it's been restricted down to what will the match everyone else, you'll perhaps 100 horsepower down what the road car will give you and more. Um, obviously, the, the suspension is, you know, 10 million times better and the handle well, the lap it's faster. But so often you can jump into the road car version uh, and it's untamed and, and actually a faster vehicle. Um, not very comparable, but when I raced a smart car once at the <laughs> okay. Spa, yes. I was faster on my way home than I was at the racetrack. <laughs> and that's nothing to do with, uh, that was just to do with the hills at Spa. Uh, we're checking in quickly with the, uh, the Opel Astra, uh, which once again is piloted by Carlos Tavares, uh, the big boss of uh, the PSA group, as it once was. Uh, he had a, a nice chunk of uh, Opel out of that car uh, when we were last on air uh, by collecting the 44? 44 car, yeah, who'd been spun round yeah. by, by Nico Muller, who got a, the 22, who got a penalty for it. Uh, absolutely not his fault. Absolutely one of those things. Nowhere to go. Uh, they haven't bothered putting the uh, whole of the uh, front right corner back on again. They've kind of left it um, half off and a bit of t tank tape. So you've got to say, I respect that from them. <laughs> it, uh, it was quite mangled though when we had a when it got back to the pits the there was quite a few bits of chassis underneath the the, um, the skin that looked a little bit uh, damaged yeah so and just to, just to update you because course it now the Stellantis group yes yes Don't forget that I, I I couldn't remember I was gonna I was gonna yeah how, how is that different to the um, uh, the guy who owns EasyJet that's he's he's nearly Stellantis, isn't he? I don't think he owns me. I know he, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think Stelios. He, Stelios, but I think he yeah. sold it, hasn't he? Has he? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think it's, it, I think that whole thing is now owned by, as unsurprisingly, a massive investment firm. <laughs> we uh, we've covered all kinds of bases in our last two hours. I hope you've been enjoying our random coverage of the <laughs> 24 uh, with um, a little reminder on our screens from our. Uh, good guys at the TV compound. What happened to Carlos Tavares? Uh, he came around the corner, found a Porsche in the middle of the road, and clunk. 44 Porsche get actually getting away relatively lightly. Well, he, got, that, he, he had a puncture, and he had to then go back and lean through the Grand Prix loop into the pits again. Yeah, this but was actually at the first corner. So don't think, yeah, I don't think he had any actually damage out, which is surprising because it was a massive clunk. So for once, you know, he hit the rear of Porsche, and it's just a, just a tyre. Leaders in the pits, the number 15 Audi Sport Team Phoenix, Fred Vavish, uh, probably staying aboard that car. He's already done one stint. Uh, and He's been joined by Daniel Cadella as well. 
in the four in, from second place. So we're beginning this cycle again. But when they are all running, and there's still six hours to go, so I'm not sure we can quite get to back timing yet. When they are all running, it is Vervish from Chris Zulu. It is actually one from four, and that lead is about half a minute. So it looks like Mauro Ingle is officially down for the car four, but that's wrong. It's actually Dane Pinkadillo in the machine. And this should see Nico Muller cycle to the front. Yeah, Nico Muller should just about cycle to the front and lead for a lap. Yep. Um, which is his second glory lap. And every hour, Nico Muller has a glory lap. Slightly varying strategies that will begin to unravel themselves as we get closer uh, to the end. I think Nico Muller, you know, having that one extra lap will keep him, will put him on the hour. Whereas the uh, the 15 and we just seen uh, Chris Adulu in the number four in pits, I mean, they're off the hour. That's right? a really good point actually, we've been talking about the fact that the last pit stop can be shorter. We haven't talked about the fact that somebody may be able to skip a pit stop entirely. Yeah. Um, there wouldn't be a whole three minute game, it would be a gain of uh, a run down and a stop. It's a possibility. We do have, we do have six hours still go. And we've still got 122 cars out on circuit, according to my timing screens, which is a great effort. I mean, we've lost, I would guess, at least six to eight SP8, uh, SP9 cars. Yeah. And so it means everyone else is still making an effort to keep their cars going <laughs> well, in the right direction. Excuse, no. um, just been a bit of a, a from, from John, who's just about to take over in a few minutes. He's been watching the strategy a little bit closer than we've been able to. And he, says that he thinks that the Cron cars, that's a shoot motorsport being an M4, might be able to skip a stop at the end which is about a minute and a half, two minutes. Now, they're a bit further back, but... We they know, were the ones that... They're the first to pick. Yeah, but that three sh but, short but, but we are now in that rotation. But it's interesting to see... It's going to be interesting... This is something for everyone in the last two hours to work out on calculators, abacuses, and obviously the slide rule, which become the, the RSL slide will be back in action again. <laughs> um, but prior to that, of course, the, yeah, the other big variable is the weather, and it's looking greyer all the time, you know, over here. I mean, I, I, obviously, we live in England, so we know that grey clouds don't necessarily mean rain. Um, but then again... This is, this is the Nürburgring. We've had one uh, sprinklet just at the north end of the track, and that did cause a bit of consternation, but no real damage to anybody because everyone, it, didn't, it didn't ever get to a point where it was more than just a tippy-toe through four or five corners. But that spread to the point where we have half the track wet. That's going to give the team a serious headache. We did actually, as we walked in, see wet tyres being prepared in the in the pit lane and not whether they ever got onto a car because it was only very localised showers wasn't it and it was quite light too yeah I mean, that was also uh, and from looking at the car it was one of the, the lower classes where you're perhaps a little more panicky about your driver having slicks around uh, open parts of the Norge life but I think yeah it was, I think what happened was it might have happened but it only came over effectively on those four corners at the top end by X Muller if it swept through and it took over that entire section at the north end which includes all the difficult bits as I like to call them um <laughs> Uh, from your extensive experience on iRacing. Yes, the difficult bits <laughs> at Brunsch and Wiffenman and uh, how act. Then that's this point where, you know, it's about keeping the car on the island, but also you're going to lose a huge amount of time. But the problem is, when the, if you've got the rest track dry, how long are your wet tyres going to last? With a half a dry, half wet circle? Yeah, exactly. We did have horrible conditions uh, for the, uh, the classic part of uh, the weekend, racing in g really greasy English Dartmoor <laughs> kind of rain. It was horrible for them. Uh, and they constantly changing from wet to dry tyres to try and keep up with what was going on on circuit. Mm. The worst kind of conditions to, to experience a racetrack I, when, I, it's, when it's not really wet, but it's, mm. it's certainly not dry. Looking, looking directly from our, our pit box position, so we're looking sort of in a uh, sort of northwesterly direction. It's looking very grey northwesterly. I, you know, I would definitely predict if I was sitting at home in my garden rain. Um, and that is going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons in no uncertain terms. Well, my, my, my forecast, my radar, says that there isn't expected rain. There's heavy cloud, but there's no expected rain. But the most important thing when looking at forecasts is to look out the window. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's always the window. The, it's not the seaweed, it's not the brick, it's the window. Well, you know, you, you see it so often in, uh, in higher echelons of motorsport where they're watching the radar without looking actually just out the side of their tent. It is looking very black, actually, isn't it? Uh, round the kind of the westerly side of the circuit. Uh, and 
that is it, and that is blowing our direction. That is the, where the wind is coming from. Coming to three quarters of the race gone, should we quick run down the class leaders before we, uh, we hand over to uh, John and Peter? Why not? Uh, even if we are in the throes of the SP9 uh, pit stops right now, Nico Muller is in the number 22 and leads in SP9 and overall. The Glickenhaus is down in 15th but leads SPX. Uh, and we have Kramer Racing's 127 leading in the Cup 2 class by a decent margin. Uh, Mark Basseng is aboard the Hyundai Elantra right now. He has a good advantage as well. In 22nd overall, the 830 leads TCR. Uh, Schmickler is the leader of our Cup 3 class, the 264 machine, 23rd position overall. FK Performance with Ben Green aboard that car right now. Uh, the BMW M4 GT4 machine leads SP2. Uh, Indy Donje is aboard the Door Motorsport Aston Martin Vantage GT4 right now that leads SP8T. Uh, SP7 is led by Uber Motorsports Porsche 911 GT3 992 car in 32nd position. Uh, and then in SP3T, we have Autorama uh, leading in their Seat Leon 44th overall right now in the 113 car. The alternative fuel uh, team, uh, sorry, class is not led by the Mustang that's had various maladies. Uh, we have lost, I think, completely the Dodge Viper, but instead we have the Porsche, an older Porsche 991 from four motorsports uh, that leads in the 320. BMW 330 of Adrenaline Motorsports leads the V2 Hecker. That's the 330. 880 leads Cup 5, Schubert Motorsports BMW 2 Racing Cup. Uh, 240 uh, is leading the BMW M2 class for Adrenaline Motorsport. They also uh, lead V5 with a Cayman, uh, but they are now only leading two of our classes. We have two class leaders without team names in SP40 uh, and V6. Hoffer Racing lead SP6 in an old BMW M3. Uh, we do still have a KTM leading in Cup X, the 161. Probably one of the very one of the only ones still running in Cup X. Uh, 323 leads V4. That is the Rockstar Games boys. We had them up in the commentary box in the dead of night. Uh, and then the Toyota Atlantis leads the SP3 class. At four o'clock local time on Saturday afternoon, under clear blue skies, we went racing for the 50th edition of the Nürburgring 24 hours. Three sets of cars heading into the tight Grand Prix section before heading off into the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Uh, and after the first round of pit stops, the Aston Martin uh, Vantage of uh, TF Sport found itself in the lead and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rover Racing's 95 machine. The first massive drama with brothers Vantor touching at the end of the dotting of her and Lawrence Vantor in the one car, the Porsche that won last year, ending up in the Tiergarten out of the race. A huge accident for Grello. And Manti Racing having to uh, pack up and head home. Dr drama for Felix von der Laden uh, in his KTM crossbow. Uh, the car itself coming, uh, setting itself alight uh, from the rear end of the machine. He was able to get out uh, without any assistance, but then the car set off on its own, driverless and still uh, alight in the foxhole. Eventually, the steering itself into the barriers and thankfully the fire crews down there were able to rescue the car after a few moments. But some scary visuals of a flaming KTM setting off on its own around the Nürburgring. Day became night and Sheldon van der Linde had a failure on the right front corner of that car which sent him into the wall. He was the leader of the race at that point. It meant that two Rover racing BMW M4s retiring out the race and Rover packing up early. Handing the lead to the number 15, uh, Fred Verwiesch. Number 15 has Kelvin van der Linde in it. Kelvin was also driving number five when he made contact with a Cayman and found himself in the wall and out of the race down at the Schumacher S. Van der Linde still in the race though, in the sister car. 
a spin from the number 44 Falcon Motorsports Porsche, who was helped around by an Audi and then collected uh, by Carlos Tavares uh, in his little Opel. Both of them are still in the race. More contact between slower cars cars. A Cayman being sent into the wall before they even got to the Schumacher S. It's just being tagged uh, by the KTM crossbow that was passing him as the toll of the 24 hours took its place in the pit lane as mechanics tried to grab an, a bit of sleep. Max Hasser. Uh, in the delayed BMW Junior Team M4, having a big lose around the back end of the circuit. And I'm afraid the BMW Junior Team also out of the race. Not a good day for BMW whatsoever. Van der Linde on the dotting a hurt, overtaking under yellow flags. And then we had a big lose from another of our games, the 281 machine. Uh, having a bit of an accident, putting some oil down on the circuit, and the number three, Maxi Gutz, catching the oil, and luckily keeping the car out of the barriers, but did have to take a trip across the gravel. That car sitting second position right now. BMW versus Audi. The fight for the lead. At that point, the Schubert Motorsport getting itself ahead with Alexander Sims aboard that car, but then the rain began to fall at one part of the circuit. Sims, one of the first to come across it, and we, at the same time, had the 1-2-1 Cup 2 leader heavy into the tier garden wall, the second time that that Marshall post had been assaulted. Alexander Sims just catching the rain at the wrong point and running wide into the barrier. Luckily, not massive amounts of damage done to that car, but he did lose the lead to Kelvin van der Linde, who was able to keep the car on the tarmac whilst he watched the BMW ahead slide off it. Van der Linde in the number five then, taking the lead as Sims headed to the pits. So it is very much uh, Audi's at the front, the number 15 car, Fred Vavitsch aboard that car right now in the lead. Nico Muller taking a long penalty pit stop right now uh, in the 22. And most recently down at Flansgarten, uh, a big mistake from the 122 Black Falcon Porsche taking the end of the curb uh, and then taking off. Uh, and that's why we've had Code 60 for the last half an hour to fix the barriers down at that part uh, of the circuit. Nico Muller getting a penalty for overtaking under yellow flags. And so that's why the number 22, which is handed over to Rene Rast, now sits in fifth position. Thank you, Ben. Um, extraordinary scenes throughout uh, this uh, 2022 uh, running, or the 50th year uh, in 2022. Quite incredible. Um, we, we said earlier on, at the beginning of the show, when uh, John Heinoff and I did the, the warm-up, and uh, uh, that we... It may not be the Germans' time this year. It's certainly not BMW's race, is it? Morning, everybody. We have a six-hour dash to the flag now. After an 18-hour dash to this point. If you're just getting up and around and joining our coverage, Ben Consonjuris there taking you through the highlights and the summary of the first three quarters of this race. And if... You've got anything left now in the fast draw now is to bring it out. I don't think anyone has been doing anything than, other than driving flat out to this point. And with the threat of more weather coming in, getting as much of a gap as you can, almost impossible to get a, a lap on pace here over similar cars. Some great battles still going on. And since last we were here in the early hours of the morning, the Cup 2 class for the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup 992 cars has been whittled down from three cars to two, although they are still, the top three are still in order in the bottom end of the top 20 now. We left them in the mid part of the 20s, mid to late point of the 20s. They're now 18th, 19th and 20th, but there are a couple of laps between Mulder Motorsport uh, and the two leaders. 
And Black Falcon in second now with Georgia Piana in the 1 2 3 car. It is five and a half seconds behind, so that is for those cars about three quarters of a lap just under that and leading that category the K Kramer racing Porsche at the front of the field it's getting very interesting to, indeed and tactically or at least what's been forced upon some of these cars because it's not always been by choice Peter but it looks to me as though as it plays out and let's not forget at the top of the hour just a few moments ago, some eight minutes ago, it was the 15 car leading. Now they can just about do an hour in terms of running once we get back the full green flag around the circuit. So looking at that, that eight lap stint is almost exactly uh, an hour, a little bit over that. Looking at uh, about an uh, eight, eight at full speed, about an eight minutes, 15 to eight minutes, 20 fastest lap of the race was put in by the BMW junior team in the early hours around about uh, a quarter to five this morning maybe a little bit earlier uh, than that and that from memory was a, a 14 an 8 14 I don't think that's been usurped with the little splash of rain that we have had Lucas Dolts has done a, an 8 11 has six. he yeah wow Currently okay. running in eighth in the uh, Bilstein uh, Mercedes AMG. Well, that is since we were away. So that is uh, in the last. Dan Harper, I think it was, who set the time in the uh, it was. BMW Junior team. Yeah. Absolutely correct. It, it was that just as the first signs of the blackness was turning to inky blue in the sky and the sun beginning to threaten to come up over the horizon well yeah 8 11, 6 so now the question will be the back timing of this situation to the end of the race which is some five hours and 50 minutes away with the yellows out a full eight lap stint for these drivers is a comfortable one hour and 14 minutes that's the uh, last full stint for Fred, for Fred Vavish was 109, 114 for his teammate Kelvin von der Linde. John, unless we've missed anything, I know we've just literally just come on yeah. and done a transition, but uh, Vavish's last lap was an 11.22 and he hasn't pitted. Uh, he has just pitted. He that has was, just pitted. Okay, right. That, that was his first lap that's out fine. of the pit, so, so that includes. Just, just no, 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 no very good. Sure, just uh, and and uh, Richard and Westbrook relax. has just done the same <laughs> as well at 11:34. That uh, and the reason Peter's looking at that is because it stands out like a sore thumb because all of the lap times for the top 20 cars, uh, including some of those uh, Cup Three cars, are within a few seconds of each other. Eight or ten seconds here is like eight or ten tenths around a, a standard it's a very circuit. Good point. Because yeah. you're talking about a track that is, you know, if you take a circuit like the Brands Hatch Indy circuit or some of the shorter circuits in the States, but you're talking about a, a, a distance of the circuit that is ten times longer here. Yeah. Oh, nearly 26 uh, kilometres, 15, nearly 16 miles on the configuration that we're using at the moment. Twice as long as Le Mans, if you want to look at it that way. Um, it really does require you to think very differently about your racing. So seeing 20 seconds between first and second is really not a lot of time at all. And this, uh, I'm absolutely certain, and I'll quote our master statistician, Paul Truswell here, everything else being equal, and then Paul would say, if I said that, which as you know, John, in endurance racing seldom happens. And uh, thank you, Mr. Truswell. I hear you say that every time I begin that sentence. If everything else remains the same, this is going to come down to last pit stops. When you take them and how long they are. Because once you get inside the last portion of the race, the length of your pit stop is as long as it needs to be, rather than running on the algorithm about how many laps you've done. Also, I noticed this year that there has been a slight change to when the end of the race is. 
and I hear you shouting at the radio or your screens at the moment and thinking, that's it, Hindhoff's completely lost it. The end of the race, obviously, is 24 hours after the start. Well, yes and no, <laughs> because perusing as I was through the supplementary regulations of an evening, yes, I know, my life is that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You've got to fill the time on the Euro Tunnel somehow. So I'll, I'll turn the pages for you. Yes, <laughs> sit, sitting on the Euro Tunnel for half an hour, and uh, I just thought I'd catch up on a few bits and pieces. There's always the debate here about when the end of the race is, because it's like it has been in the past slightly different from how it works in the NLS series, uh, of which this race, of course, is not a part. We have to keep seeing that, but so many people um, put these two together, including the teams. Uh, so. The chequered flag waits for the winner today. So four o'clock rolls by, and after four o'clock, the first time that the winner comes through the chequered flag, uh, comes through the finish line, is when the chequered flag flies for the first time. So it's not four o'clock on the stroke of four o'clock, let's get the flag out and start waving people by. It is, we wait for the winner. So the end of the race, is four o'clock and then the winner coming to the line. That's when the chequered flag goes out right in front of us. And the other layer to that, of course, John, is that's the winning car. Correct. That takes the line. You can still be up, we can still have the finish of the race 10, 12, 15 minutes later. Correct. With all the rest of the classes, TCR cars, that if they've just started a lap and they've got to go round, it's, it's a lot longer. And we've seen that in some of the classes in NLS down through the years and indeed even here where you know that the lead is coming up behind you in the tear garden and you've got half a chance of improving a position, maybe even going for a class win. Happened a couple of times uh, last season with the, and, and the season before in NLS, with the BMW Cup class, what was, what was then the, the 240i class. We had it uh, last year when uh, TF Sport did that uh, uh, sort of temporary check with the um, outing if you like with the, the, the Aston Martin with Nicky team and uh, he, Bruce Jones and I were coming NLS round for you and it was coming down dotting her up tier garden and it was going to cross the line with a matter of seconds to go mm. sufficiently low as in single digits enough just to lift out of the throttle bit and take the flag and not to do it but Nicky team was at the wheel of that car and we thought will he will he won't he will he won't he no he didn't and he went across the line with I, I, I'm sure it was sub 10 seconds yes. I think it was about six or seven seconds yes. to go and then set off around again so our view was it was the risk you've got to do another 25 kilometers etc etc mm. what's Nicky team's response to that at the time mm -hmm. he sets the fastest lap of the race on the last on lap. the last lap yeah. to win it and uh, I did mention that to Tom Ferrier and I said did you not sort of you know advise or just say can you not uh, uh, you know slow him down or struggled whatever home. he struggled home no, exactly and Tom just looked at me and just that glint in his eye and he said but it was Nicky Peter there was no point <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, actually, yeah, I can see the point, yeah. None whatsoever. Not going to happen. John Hindoff and Peter Snowden, good morning to you. Wherever you're joining us, it's a good morning here in the Eiffel. Just after, in fact, spot on, 10 past 10 Central European summer time. Delighted that you've chosen to spend some of your Sunday morning with us. And uh, hello particularly to our producer back in London. Rob has rejoined us, Rob Lomas. Good morning, Rob. Thank you to Kerry for all her work on the overnight shift. Been so much incident and accident. And even going through our summary, really still hasn't told the full story with uh, so much going on. I've, I've never seen anything quite like it, to be honest. No, no. We, we, we know the Nürburgring. We expect the Nürburgring to throw up. Absolutely so. Amazing things and drama. It's going to happen, but never quite like this. And I still think there's one card to play, which is the rain. Yeah, and I think it's raining outside now. I do, I think now. it's starting. I, I think there's a drop or two coming uh, unusual. The, the weather normally comes from the southern end, the south and, and west of the Grand Prix circuit. 
uh, down to where the old Sud Schleifer peeled off into the countryside. In fact, some of the roads that we take on our way in and out of the Nürburgring run alongside or were part of that phenomenal combined circuit, the Gesamtstrecke. So looking at the at where we are and how many full course or how many uh, slow zones we have on the course it's going to influence who has the upper hand when we get to the last pit stop with about 70 minutes to go I reckon Luca Drudy's just put the best time in for the ninth position car so there's there's performance out there at the moment if you can find a clear stretch of track the Audi Sport team car collection Matteo Drudy excuse me uh, in the SP9 number 24 8.12 8.14 so just over a second away from the best lap that was put in earlier on this morning zero slow zones zero code 60s this is the opportunity even with maybe a few spots of rain at Tiergarten which has been a real action area this weekend I, I, I think possibly the Marshalls post and the television camera tower may have to be moved there they've been right in the line of fire and as I say we've got a full clean track the siphon coming down the hill to that tricky left-handed hairpin you come in on a right-hand kink there is a yellow flag out there Marshalls post 112 a and that's about as far away as you can get from where we are on the start straight crossing the line now Adam Christodoulou and the gap is 10.2 seconds and 8.13 8.65 by Christodoulou Fred Vavich and 8.23 last time around so the lead coming down this battle ebbing and flowing Christodoulou then on the Grand Prix circuit as into the pit lane comes Jesse Krohn for the Schubert Motorsport team. Now that's an eight lap stint. Now that's it. Now that's interesting. That is interesting. That's 40 minutes before the hour or 20 minutes after. And think about where you want to be. You want to make sure that if necessary, you can get to about 10 past four o'clock. There's no point saying, right, we'll get enough fuel into it to get to four o'clock and then finding, Peter, that you've got to do another lap. So you need to build in. So being ahead at the top of the hour and saying we're doing about an hour, that might be a little bit squeaky for people. And John, I, I think we owe Schubert Motorsport a bit of an apology, actually, because uh, we've talked about these BMW M4s, we've talked about the BMW junior team, outstanding, mm. largely because of their age, yeah. sickening, that they're, they're that young, that good, <laughs> that fit, it's that talented, employed by BMW. So are we jealous? Yes, of yeah, course we yes, are. Yes. Absolutely. Sorry, guys, unashamedly we are. Yes, absolutely. Then you've got Volkenhorst, then yeah. you've got Rover Racing, but we've talked about those three, and we, we overlooked it, we did say it a couple of hours in, that there is another M4 GT4, in, sorry, GT3 here, my apologies, Schubert Motorsport, and they're the ones that actually held up the honours for BMW at the moment and they're running third yes and I, I, I said early on we hadn't talked about this car up until the first few hours of the race um, and they've quietly gone about their business they didn't get into the top qualifying running the 50 year anniversary uh, livery on Michelin tyres one of five tyre manufacturers in the top SP9 GT3 class new set of Michelins going on and they are unscrubbed brand spanking new slicks here comes René Rast to take the position to take fourth position from them and this car will drop down through the timing screen in the next 25 to 30 minutes as they just talk up the wheel nuts the single wheel nuts on the rims of that car but the question is, it's not where it is at 21 minutes past the hour, but where is it 10 past the next hour? And that's what I want to look at. Threatening weather at the moment in terms of the clouds. 
Oh dear, more and more and more penalties just before 10 o'clock local time. Two pit lane speeding violations for the number 243. 30 seconds each time for that car. And uh, that is bad enough if you're in a fight. And the 243. Still running, still turning laps for Mr. Chip D, uh, Mike Chip DKR GMBH, one of the BMW 240i racing cup cars. However, more importantly for a couple of other teams, well, actually, let's go to the 811. I seem to think I've called the 811's number a couple of times. That's Chrysler Racing. I think that's the third penalty they've had for various things. They were on pole position for TCR. Albeit inherited that when the Hyundai number 830 got all of its qualifying times withdrawn uh, for uh, various uh, infringements in the qualifying session. But the big one that's just popped up on the screen is for the number 135. This is the Click Versicherung team. Um, and they are running in Cup 2, the highly contested and very closely run Carrera Cup 992 category. Code 60 violation, 3 minutes 32 seconds and a penalty point. Uh, and that is a point on the driver's licence. We don't get the details of which driver it was. So still with what looked like uh, at Kesselshen, is was that as the yeah we're going I think it was through yes, John with a flatbed truck. Now what I couldn't see as we got a quick look from Fred Vavish's car was whether that was having to recover a stranded car or whether that was one of the barrier repair crews who have been very busy. There's lots of shiny, new, unweathered metal barrier around the circuit. We had a, we've had a couple of big repairs at Tiergarten. We had a, a long run through Vipperman, didn't we, at one stage for about an hour. Also down in the foxhole. So with now Niklas Kruten be, be, behind the wheel of the John, shoot at Motorsport, that car's back out on the track. Sorry, Peter, go ahead. No, no, the, the bar repairs, and, or whether they're linked or not, I'm not sure, but the... Uh, Kesha Chan is the 331 car, which is the uh, Adrenaline Motorsport uh, VT2 gaps in the arm curve we talked about right. if it's really tight there's a very a lot of places here at the Nürburgring you've got the track you've got the white line a bit of curb and the tiniest narrowest ribbon of grass sometimes not even a car width wide therefore the gap in the barrier isn't very big so the car's being pulled out of the way so it's safe to carry on racing at reduced speed but they need to pick it up on a flat bench still I think that's why that's there that's my thinking penalty for the 69 door motorsport Aston Martin GT4 this is the Dirk Muller, Frank Weischar, Stefan uh, Ken Fennig and Finn Albig. Uh, they are down, down the field, I'm afraid. And they're going to get another one. Do you dare to dream at this point in a 24-hour race? Into the last quarter, Peter, we're no. in daylight. You've probably had your breakfast, unless you were in the car an hour and a half or so ago. You, 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 can't, you can't even at this point dare to dream? No, I, I, I don't think so, because that's, that's, uh, that, that's the danger. Um, there's, there's, there's too much to run. Far, far too much to run. There's nearly, nearly a quarter of this race to go still. Uh, it's uh, you know, if you go into an NLS round, you've still got a longer, longer bit of time left. So, uh, no, you don't. Um, the time to relax is. Yeah, you probably don't do it until after the flag. To be honest, it's just not, uh, not a good time to do it. Um, We've still got to say they've got that 331 uh, adrenaline motorsport BMW on the side at Castellon. I think that has been be recovered now, uh, out of the way. But we've still got a slow zone at that section. It is currently a. It is down to a full 60. 
Yeah, so it is a purple, sorry, pink flag section through there. Audi Sport it is at the front for the moment with uh, Mercedes in uh, Team Get Speed, a very strong running with their cars, three and four running line instead. Adam Christodoulou and uh, Junka Della in second and third place. Um, sandwiched by uh, Audi, René Rast, number 22 in the Audi Sport Team car collection entry. So um, the Schubert BMW is still running in fifth place. Uh, just reflecting on what potential there was for your ex-teammate and good friend, Tom Ferrier, the TF Sport team. Aston Martin with just one entry for that private team. Sadly, no works effort from uh, EMR uh, and, or Aston Martin Lagonda, but as close as you could hope to get with the way Tom runs his operation. Still relatively new to this Nürburgring thing, um, but very fast learners and... They, he'll be back, he'll want to do that. Well, I, I, I he'll I want think that on the bucket list for that car. Just been speaking there whilst you were talking to a, a team spokesman, and uh, thank you for coming all the way over to the other side of the track to speak to us in the TV booths here. And there's a real sense of frustration down there, Snowy. Uh, you know Tom very well, he'll put it behind him, but the brand and the team felt without being too arrogant that they felt they had a chance and they 100%. felt that where they were when Nicky team went off on either gravel or or oil they've got some on board that I've just had a quick look at which uh, we haven't seen in the broadcast yet um, that they've retrieved from the, the car it was either gravel or oil there was definitely something being put down by a car that wasn't too far ahead of Nicky as he was coming through some of the faster parts of the circuits just beyond the, the Kleiner carousel uh, or down into the uh, the Kleiner Carousel and the Stefan Belloff S and he ended up with the left of, of the road and absolutely nothing he could do car just slid off and into the barriers on the left hand side scraping down the barriers and then oh, he tried to get it back couldn't get it much beyond the next couple of corners and couldn't even get it round onto the Dottiger Hurt and you never think you're in control here Peter do you? No. even as you go on to the last lap because things happen but I think there was a quiet confidence there. Tom said at the start of the week when he was asked the pointed question, look, you're in amongst all the German marks. BMW have got six cars. Audi have got six cars. Mercedes have got eight cars. There's all of it. He said, you only need one car to win. Exactly. exactly. That's just Tom through and through. You can hear him yeah. saying it, can't you? Yeah. 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 And uh, you're quite right. He, he will put it behind him, but it will be niggling. Yeah, yeah. I, I guarantee if I went for a, you know, a, a metaphorical drink with him, obviously coffee, yeah. uh, it would be, I still want to come back, I still want to win it. We still, we still want to win it. it well, actually, that's, that's very unfair. We will still well, want to win it. So well, look, to do it. look at the attitude of him when he stepped up into the World Endurance Championship and went to Le Mans. And uh, Tom's very much, you know him far better than I do, but I, you know, I've known him for a long time since he was racing as well, of course. And whilst he was racing... Um, and now, I think he's taking this into his team. I said earlier in the week, any organisation, I believe, takes its tone from the people or the individual right at the very top. It's and all leadership. Yeah, it is called leadership. Uh, and it's called uh, strength of character. And Tom, to me, has always been one of these people, if it, if it doesn't hurt you, it makes you stronger. And they will learn from this. I don't know what you can do, you know, Alan McNish always used to say, I don't believe in luck, there's just feeling to prepare. I understand what Nishi was saying about that. I get the concept, but it's not always applicable. You cannot control everything. No. There are things that you can't control. And as a driver, you want to control everything. I understand that. And you want to believe that you could have done something different. I hope Nicky team looks at that on board because there's nothing he could have done different. Uh, absolutely not. And that, that's something that Tom will have gone through and made sure that... Nicky team does need reassurance, but we all have our doubts. If you've yes. gone out of the lead of a race as big as this, at some point you, you need to know the facts. And this is the point of what professionals do. Professional team leaders, managers, drivers, they all just they need the facts. Once the facts played out for them, I, I don't want this to make it sound like a, a, a Tom Ferrier fan club, but it is a little bit of the moment. And, but when, when we raced together, there were, there were six of us, three cars, six of us in the team. And there were two people to me that I stood out and I knew were going to do something different within our little sphere. Not necessarily going to run a team the way Tom did. No. The other guy was Phil Keane. Yeah. 
that. <laughs> for the longest time, the Stig, of course. Uh, well, exactly. And I mean, he was, he was a child. Yes, he was going to get him from kindergarten in the morning and pick him up after school and say, Can your mum sign your note and come with us? He but. was a child and a <laughs> stick insect. <laughs> and, uh, I, know. I love Phil Keane, he's great. Um, JJ says the only true way for non German brands to, run, to win here is to run a full NLS season in preparation and have more than one car in the race. One bullet in the gun isn't enough. And, and I do, I, I, under, I, I do agree with that because you can't, you can't allow for something like Nicky Team came across there. Now you could say, would would one more Aston have been in the same position? We've seen both of the Rover Racing cars go out again under, you know, all right, self-inflicted the first one, and just, you know, something failed on the car in the second one. Aston Martin are never going to have three teams here. I don't think in the in the near future running two cars each. Um, but to, maybe this will provide the spur to Lawrence Stroll and the current owners and management at Aston Martin Lagonda to say we are on the verge. We need to take one more step to really be genuine contenders. What TF Sport and that organisation have rung out of this effort as the number three Mercedes has pushed onto the grass. Adam Christodoulou having to get right out of the throttle as he was uh, coming through, as he now heads down the hill again. Absolutely brilliant driving by Adam. Got to the outside of the eight seven one was that and had to swap around the other way how about that for changing your line but what what tom's rung out of a single car team there with a great driver lineup and great organization proves to me it proves what we all thought we knew about the potential for that new aston martin it's it's not had a chance to run at the sharp end of the field here before because of the circumstances around the change of ownership of, of Aston Martin. Now, with the new management in place, uh, Lawrence Stroll has uh, changed the management structure again at the Aston Martin Lagonda. Is this the opportunity that they've been missing? Uh, they're, you know, they're surely now, they haven't got a pro car at Le Mans this year. Um, they have got some customer cars running in Am. This is the biggest GT3 race in the world, with due respect to everything else, but in terms of its stature, it's, it is. GT3 is the top of the, the class, it's a multi-class race, and it's the Nürburgring Nordschleife. The key phrase there being GT race. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. It, it, it is the one they want to have. That's why it's got the draw. We've heard it from various people, as sort of, you know, El Bamba, Peter Kate, and what the draw is it to this place. And I think, I think it's also a little bit Marmite, this place. You either get it or you don't. Mm. Uh, and if you do get it, you, you know, by heaven, you enjoy it and love it and embrace it. Um, I, I, it's a very, very interesting point you make, John, about them uh, in a, a semi-works effort there with uh, TF Sport. And if ever there was a time to say, look, the, we've, there's our CV. There's, there's Aston Martin CV. There's the brand CV. It's not just Tom Ferrier doing having a go. It's, it, it's, it's the brand. And they, they need to be out there. And it's uh, the kudos that could bring for winning this race outright with some factory yeah. support or be, being a factory car. Um, who else is going to run it? Top TF Sport. You heard it here first. Yeah. It's got to. Surely. Um, there's the opportunity there. Hello to John. Hello to all the GT Hub members as well. This 50th anniversary has, for them, been about remembering one of their members, Sith, who died in April. This event was his favourite on the endurance calendar, and though we were hoping for a Porsche win uh, in his honour, they reckon this has been a great tribute to their mates. There'll be a lot of people remembering friends and family who enjoy motor racing at this time and particularly if you're recently bereaved we offer you our condolences and best wishes and particularly to the marshalling community who of course lost one of their own here uh, at the last NLS race 
working, the whole family was working here and uh, sadly died of nat natural causes out on the uh, circuit, despite the best efforts of the medical staff who brought him to the medical center. And we salute all of the marshals, not only here this weekend, but on a massive weekend for World Motorsport with the Indy 500 coming later on today. All of our viewers and listeners in the United States and uh, my colleagues at uh, NBC Sports, who we work very closely with on the uh, IMSA shows. Not the Monaco Grand Prix, around the streets of Monte Carlo as well today. And the endurance race, and that it is at the Charlotte Motor Speedway as well for NASCAR in the Cup Series. And hello to all of our friends at NASCAR Productions. Again, we work very close with them, closely with them in the, the United States. So, another 40 minutes has gone by. Time flying over. Fred Vavish leading the race for, for Audi. John, dare I say, it's actually brightening up it, a it is bit. Uh, it is you Visibly can say the that. last literally five ten minutes yeah i thought it was going to go the other way yeah the wind at ground level at least has dropped considerably uh, the flags that aren't don't have one of those bars across the top of them are hanging a little more limply and uh, billowing rather than being pushed at 90 degrees to the flagpole this battle between Vervich and Christodoulou. Christodoulou not catching the best of the traffic and he's lost five seconds since we last looked at that gap. Traffic giveth, traffic taketh away. It is never more true than here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Although last time around, Vervich picking up the pace, he was just on half a second slower than the very best lap that that car has done. Uh, at RSL underscore studio, by the way, if you want to get in touch with us, use uh, our hashtag for this event. Hashtag N24RSL. That will get you directly on the screens in front of us. Ian McCarthy says, the purest in me wonders if the time stops if the car's too well turned out after 18 plus hours. Surely they should be filthier. I think part of that, Ian, is that... We haven't had any bad weather. It's just dry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And round here, what really makes the cars, gives the cars that patina, is a little bit of wet. And then it's the brake dust and the crud and the dirt and the, the dust that gets thrown up from the, the track that really causes the cars to look a little bit battle weary. I remember an, an interesting little conversation between a team owner and a team manager or principal of the same team, yeah, where the owner put all the money in investment and got this shiny new GT racing car, yeah, and it was all being admired, it had been delivered. You know what colour it was, it was a blue one. And he was admiring it. And and that just, one, okay. yeah, that yes. one, yes, that one. Okay. And just saying, oh, isn't it, it's fantastic in, in his American way. Uh, and uh, the team manager, Ian Bickerton, Bix is out in Dubai, well, actually in France, so if you're listening, Bix, say hello. And uh, it, it was totally nonplussed because it was a shiny new race car. And he said, when it's, when it's done a race and it's dirty, he said, that's when I like it. And yeah. I remember him seeing it in the garage at the end of a 24-hour at Spa, and it was exactly described, John. It was filthy. There was bits hanging off it. There was tape on it. I'm sure there's some cable ties in there just for Joe Bradley. Uh, but he's, he looked at it and went, now that's a race car. Uh, slow zone, or at least a yellow flag, just on the exit of the... Galgen cough. In fact, as I say that, it's just cleared as I'm starting to interrogate the system. Um, very good. They were testing it for a week, weren't they? They were testing it. Yes, well. they were. Well, we win. Uh, let's say a very good morning to a, a fabulous uh, motorsport. I would say a legend of our sport, although many of you uh, will not know all the hard work uh, he does uh, behind the scenes in press rooms all around the world doing translations. In fact, the annual of last year's shortened race was uh, translated into English by our very good friend René de Boer who's listening at home. René, lovely to see you all be briefly here at the track earlier in the week and uh, I hope you're enjoying this morning's coverage 
And happy birthday to you, sir. Um, the amount of times we have spent time that we should have been talking about whatever motor race we were at, talking about weeding wonderful rally cars down through the years, other forms of the sport. Rene has an encyclopedic knowledge of such a great variety of the sport. I, I, I think that endurance racing has a special place in his heart. I think that's fair to say. Meanwhile, Fred Ravich, the leader, trying to put a lap on the man filters AMG, the Mamba car, which itself is in behind. It's a, through the, one of the follow my leader areas as they've come th down through the very fast sweepers and down towards the Stefan Beloff S. Now making the right turn to square themselves up the, and then the left, the right, the left to square themselves up for the Kleiner Carousel. And for the moment, it's Vavish who slowed down. Now, what will that do to Christodoulou? Adam Christodoulou chasing the leader down at the moment. This wonderful battle will be interrupted in a couple of laps' time when Adam Christodoulou peels, peels the number three, get speed Mercedes Benz into the pits for what will then be its 16th time. For the service now the Schubert Motorsport team have already done their 16th stop they sit in fifth position and Nicholas Cruton is a couple of laps out of the pits and I tell you this is going to be very interesting I must remember to look at the top of the hour standings and around about five past seven past as well to see where we are and see if we can pick out any potential for advantage at the end of the race. Time's picking up when traffic is helping. It's 8.18 for Vervish last time and the fastest lap of that car's race for eight. At 8.12 for Adam Christodoulou and the gap at the front of the field for the first time in a long time is in single digits. 9.297 seconds, that's what we were talking about, Snowy. We've got five and a quarter hours left and this is what we've got to look forward to. The gap coming backwards and forwards. Christodoulou going on to his eighth lap of his stint, so a slightly lighter car but he's got the bit between his teeth. It's the second of his doubles. And so he'll be getting out at the end of this. John, you look at me, you know why I'm laughing. They've done 19 hours yes. around the Nordschleife. Yes. There's another five hours to go, obviously. But what's happening at the front? Less than 10 seconds. Yep. All to play for still. And it's going to get, I think it's going to get closer. Uh, the battle between Junker Della and Rennie Rast for Team Get Speed, the four car, and Rennie Rast in the 22 car collection. Just about half a minute. A minute. Minute and 16 further back is Schubert, but on a slightly different pit stop strategy because of that little three lap run that they did with Jesse Cron after he'd done his first full stint. He stayed in the car, was in after three laps, and then did eight laps. Still haven't managed to get anybody from the team to talk to us about that as to whether and what that issue was. My bet would be it was a, a puncture or a minor issue of some sort that uh, they felt they had to address straight away and not wait for another five laps they've maybe felt they would lose too much time we're just slightly 15 minutes off at the top of the hour john and therefore uh, we're just slightly off at the moment but we might do it actually we might just do it uh, in terms of the lap the laps record the distance record 159 is where it stands yeah we would, so we, we need had a new be... benchmark at 160 um, not just because it's a nice round number but that would be a a new distance record. Well, we need to be at 125.4 laps at the top of the hour in 15 minutes time to achieve that and we're on 123 now with on the 124th lap yeah with 15 minutes to go so it's still it's possible be there. it's still possible it's brightening up even more the pits opposite looking absolutely resplendent the sun starts to shine off that there is forecast rain we had that a bit at 11-ish we we thought about um and it was it did it did come down a little bit of a smattering. The, the clouds looked worse than anything else, to be honest. Um, but the, I, I still, there's still a possibility at the last hour. 
And that could that could change it. That will obviously take the, the distance record oh, out of our hands because it'd be wet and my and unfortunately goodness. the cars will get filthy then as well. So let's not have the rain. No, no, I, I <laughs> we've got a we've got a cracker of a race, just you know you know what they say about when you simmer something for a very in cookery, if you simmer something for a very long time, you intensify the flavour. Uh, and you, you bring it all down. That's how you make a good sauce. You can't make a good sauce quickly. You need to take time to you know, I, simmer I, everything down. I, th I thought for a minute then that I've been transported. I was in Bake Off with Paul Hollywood then. <laughs> Former teammate. Former teammate. Exactly. Hit you see what I did there? Yes, Come you on. Did. <laughs> you did. Well, he's, he's much more of a fluffy sponge rather than uh, reducing the sauce. But uh, in, in cookery terms, the longer you take with a sauce, um, and the slower that you make it, the more intense are the flavours. And at the moment, we've had 19 hours of this just gently simmering away. Um, There's not, not a lot about the Norse life I'd describe as a fluffy sponge. No, no, indeed honest. not. Indeed not. It is much more of a bubbling cauldron, isn't it? Uh, and maybe when we get to the last two hours, even in the last two hours, things can happen. And probably... Almost certainly in the last two hours, we are going to see major changes. Audi have two cars in the top four as it stands at the moment. Mercedes, who are the German manufacturer who have been bereft of a victory here for the longest time among Audi, uh, Mercedes and Porsche. Porsche last year, of course. The best of the Porsches at the moment is KCMG. A lap off the lead he says where is tandy in the 18 car Nick tandy good morning Brittany. good morning to felix and evie down at in bedfordshire i'm sure felix will be watching and listening hopefully not in his pajamas still at uh, 10 to 10 uk time the dad's in the car kcmg holding on to a solid 10th position at the moment Lucas Stoltz comes into the pits in the number 12 car. And that is the second of the team Bilstein cars. Raffaele Marciello, Phil Ellis in that car. And the team car is the... And where's it just gone? The other Bilstein car. I think, or Baston car, where is it? The sixth, there it is. Oh, the sixth in sixth position. That's why I couldn't see it. Gabriele Piana, uh, Hubert Haupt. Throwback livery on that car looks fantastic. A uh, few more pit lanes, speed limiting, speed limit violations that have come through. 30 seconds for, just note these down. Oh, the 143 twice again, so that's in and out. They've been pinged for that. And the 243 got two earlier on as well. So that's going to be a minute for the number 143. And, you know, even if you're not in a nip and tuck battle, it's really annoying to try and make up a minute on the track. Is, very difficult indeed on your class competitors. That is the Golf Mark III 16 valve. The Zinzig, MSA Zinzig EV in EDSE in SP3. Uh, just saw Audi number 24 team car collection come in and Lucas Stoltz was in as well, as we mentioned. So that's the eighth and ninth cars in. Get rid of these penalties for you. Uh, number 69 car. Again, non-respect the speed limits or speeding in the pit lane. Can't have been over much just to get the 30 seconds. The Aston Martin Vantage GT4 of Dur Motorsport. Two more for you. I know this is a bit tedious, but there will be people ticking these off and wondering why the pit stops were longer later on. And the triple two is the uh, rear and all-wheel drive VT2 category, and it's a 328i. It's the GT Tire Motorsport by WS Racing. That's the car that Wayne Moore, one of the Kiwis here this weekend, is driving. No, oh, it wasn't Wayne in the car. 
and what was the other one that I just saw there? One four three. We've done two two two. 224 Team Zorg Ren Sports BMW 330i. Uh, and the last one that's just lit oh now. No, this is this is a much bigger penalty and has serious implications for the driver concerned in the MSA M Style FM ADAC ADSE TCR Golf, the number 66 car, and I don't know which of Sebastian Sherman. Florian Haller, Daniel Fink and Peter Elkman was at the wheel, speeding in a code 60, 5 minutes and 32 seconds, so must have been well over the speed limit as Adam Christodoulou, as expected, comes into the pit lane from second position, having closed the gap to under 10 seconds at one stage to the leader. It's not just the 5 minute 32, it's two points on the licence as well for whichever driver, so that is a serious infringement. Uh, and that could have implications for that driver if they come back here again or if they transgress again in terms of their driving uh, license permit for racing here at the Nürburgring. In any event, not just in these events, that could be any of the other events uh, that are still to take place this year for the Nürburgring Langstrecker series. Uh, absolutely, to cross your license. Um, I'm the, the intensity and draconiness of that uh, suggests to me, uh, is, there, uh, is there a bit of a backstory to this? Is there, mm. Has there been a bit more, has there a bit of form on that when it's not just a, that's not just a one-off penalty, that's a, that's a proper warning. But I just, I, I, John, you've been the, the martyr going through all these penalties, but uh, I, I don't know if they're able to check back I can't, I can't I, remember the I 66. I can't either, that's why I'm asking the question. Um, no, we haven't but been here seen, all the time. It seems a lot yeah, in exactly. one go. Uh, unless it's just such a super speed through that that's the I think that's what yeah, it is simple as that so yeah absolutely no way there's a it's a warning shot deterrent Christo is out of the car with no haste being shown this is not because they don't care what's going on this is all about the amount of time they have to be in the pit lane from pit in to pit out uh, ah Nick Damon will be delighted the now essential part of every mechanics kit along with a 10 pound lump hammer some gaffer tape uh, as well as some zip ties is a mobile phone torch and they were looking i think they were looking at the wear on the brake parts of that car i was just going to say a really silly phrase i know you're trying to say not for the first time snowy we know that but i was just going to say all this lovely technical equipment, so and so, and radar guns and yeah, yeah. things, all of a sudden, a mobile phone torch. And I was going to use the phrase old school. Yes. But on a torch on a phone. Now, yeah. when, when we first had phones, do you know what you did with them? You made phone calls. You made phone calls, exactly. Yeah. Nothing else. <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell will be spinning in his telephone exchange, wouldn't he, if he knew what we'd done to his great invention that was meant to get people talking to each other. Now, 90% of the time, you use them for making sure you don't have to talk to people. <laughs> exactly, yes. It's quite, Everything quite else bizarre. Yeah. So, the engine fires on the BWT-sponsored Get Speed number three. Adam Christodoulou has vacated. New set of tyres for that car. They're just counting down and checking that the pit lane is clear before they roll out. They'll have tested this during the week on the pit lane speed limit. They'll know what the transition time through the lane is and therefore they'll start the watch as soon as they know they're in the lane as the driver one of the things as you're coming in that you'll have to do particularly if you you're getting out before you pull your radio cord adam will say i'm at the lane i'm at the start of the lane now and you never want to cut that too close give it a couple of seconds either way because again that's much better than having to stand still in the penalty box for 30 seconds. Should, and, should, and that's the minimum That's the minimum time penalty that you can get here, is 30 seconds. It's just not worth it. It's not just no. that 30 second stationary. It's the slowing down to the penalty box yeah. and back out of the pit lane. So the, yeah. whole, the whole pit lane time is, I don't know what the run is from here, the, the Nürburgring. Um, but you know, somewhere like uh, and at in the UK, I know it thinks 137 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, it's that slowing down and speeding up again. To have a quick look at the uh, leaders in class as we rattle through another uh, racing hour. You know what's going on at the front. Still Vavish leading. He's got another lap or two before he comes in. 
Uh, which Richard Westbrook up the fifth, back up the 15th again after that car was in the garage, to being put off the track by Felipe Fernandez Leza uh, in the early hours of the morning. The SPX class is rather imploded there, but Glickenhaus can only race who's in the class, and 15th in the GT category at the moment is pretty good. Leading SPX Cup 2, K. Kramer in 18th position. I said I thought we might get the leaders in that class somewhere near or in the top 10. Uh, they've got uh, the better part of a lap on Black Falcon in second place. Hyundai lead with the 8.30 back in the, in the front of TCR now. Thomas Lag behind the wheel of that car. It's Schmickler performance for the Cayman GT4 category, the 264. That's the Cup 3. SP10 BMW Evo 2021. FK performance at the lead of that car. Been a battle between them and the Aston Martin. Dome Motorsports still have SP80, the number 95 car, uh, leading that class. SP7 led by Huber Motorsport, the 70 car. Up to 32nd for them now. The Stanco Autorama machine, the Seat Leon, running in SP3T. The 113 leads that. AT, four motors by a concept. The older Porsche, the 991 Cup car, converted to run on biofuel. The 320 leads there. And is inside the top 50 as well. Rear and all-wheel drive VT2, that's the 330 Adrenaline, 330i, M2 Racing Cup, Schubert Motorsport with the 880. The Adrenaline Motorsport team have the 240i Cup class as well, the older cars and that number 240i, I don't think it's been headed in that category. 718 GTS from the private team and the number 718 SP4T leaders. V5, Adrenaline Motorsport, Porsche Cayman 981, the number 444 car in 61st position. Cup X down in 66th now for Teichmann Racing with the crossbars. They've not, uh, none of the crossbars in any of the categories have, have had clean runs, I don't think, today. And yesterday, 161 though, leading in 66th position. The Crawl Weekender, Hoffer Racing, the number 200 car, the beautiful M3 A46 GTR. What a lovely looking car that is. And that's running inside the top 70 at 69th position. The Scott, uh, Team Zog Rensport Cayman S number 228 leads V6. Toyota Gazoo racing the Team Thai car. Uh, it's the Mad Cow back in. He must be doing the same shift as I am. Natavuda Charan Suka Watana uh, in the car at the moment and in 77th position for the four door Altis, Toyota Corolla. 325i Rockstar Games car, they took the lead. I would say six or seven hours ago, just before we went off, maybe a little bit more than that in V4, the 323, the self-built 325i, is in 78th position. VT3, Team Mathol Racing AV300, has been there or thereabouts in that class for the whole race. And the front-wheel drive category, VT2, Hyundai driving experience down in 80th position with their i30N. And that is another hour of racing that we have just completed. Uh, we have got just under five minutes to go and another 60 minutes of racing on the Nürburgring Nordschleife starts right now. Just after 11 o'clock in the morning, we're into the pit stop cycle for the leading cars. And in fact, the leader of the motor race comes in on the hour, right on the hour now. If you can do eight laps, it doesn't take a genius in quantum physics or quadratic equations to, to reckon eight laps at just over eight minutes is something over 64 minutes. So we're looking at somewhere closer to an hour and five, an hour and six minutes. And they are ahead at the turn of the hour. Daniel Juncadella has responded and trying to close down the gap in the number four get speed Mercedes. That car's fastest lap of the race has just been completed at 8.12.921 and an 8.12.7 for Rene Rast in the car collection Audi number 22. I, I don't think a, a switch has been flicked, Peter Snowden, but what we are seeing now inside well inside the last six hours, in fact now inside the last five hours, there's a certain urgency, maybe a little bit of a thinning out of the field. The, the rain that was spattering has disappeared, the track's in pretty good condition and it's got rubber on it, and the times now are there. The times are there for the taking. 
Well, they certainly are. We talk about consistency of being in endurance racing. One of the phrases we often use is stay out of the pit, stay out of trouble, but also consistency. That leading Audi from Phoenix, uh, Frederick Vivich did a six lap stint at the very start of the race. We yep. knew that people would do a little bit at the Five, beginning. six or Five, seven. Six, seven. Not unexpected. Van der Linde then hopped in it and did a seven lap stint. From then on, it's just done. Ready for this, John? 13 <coughs> consecutive eight lap stints. Clockwork, metronomic. Uh, uh, but who was it who was saying it was uh, when we had one of the drivers in overnight? Why wouldn't you just do it? was John Edwards, wasn't it? It was John Edwards, yeah. From, from BMW. Well, the exact phrase was there's no reason not there's to. There's no reason not to. With the slightly extended version of the Grand Prix track that we run in the 24 hour uh, event and its qualifying race only, it's a bit longer than the NLS, the standard NLS track that they only go halfway down the hill and they use the cutout. So with a little bit of code 60 we have seen nine lap stints the notch lifer does not change no. it's the bit that's tacked on the end of it and <laughs> eight you know that that bit that the that, other that, series that's really on. modern thing yeah, yeah, yeah that other thing, that the, other thing. yes <laughs> yes the bit that the, the, the spring <laughs> the kids drive on yeah yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> The arri that arrive and drive series. <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry. I, I, that's 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 unfair. I, I'm, 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 I don't mean that at all. I'm a, as everybody knows, I'm a, a massive motorsport fan and all forms of, of motorsport. And a weekend like this for me is uh, is in in some ways absolute joy and absolute pain because I'm here doing this and of course there's nowhere I'd rather be but how do I take in everything else that's going on this weekend in including the Cup Series and one of their longest races in NASCAR at Charlotte Motor Speedway which is a venue I've worked at and I absolutely love the streets of Monte Carlo the Indianapolis 500 and, and one of the reasons I, we set our schedules this year to give everybody some time off and thanks to our uh, colleagues at uh, Sport Total and at uh, uh, Emperor as well uh, for looking after us so well. We've been able to get in and out the circuit quite quickly, quicker than normal, because we're on the uh, the TV side of things, which is drivers left. So we have been able to get to uh, get to our car, and the mighty Hyundai GV80 has been perfect wafting team transport, very comfortable indeed. Had we had to sleep in that, which we have done in our cars in the past here in the press car park, we, uh, I think we'd have been very comfortable, but we've had the opportunity to get back in a couple of three hours, which is luxury for us in a 24-hour race. But one of the reasons we set that up is because we want to watch the Indy 500 tonight when we're all finished and packed up. And uh, sit down, no doubt, slightly dozily, but hopefully that race will be uh, enough to keep us going. Uh, so, yes, we, we love all forms of of motorsport no spoilers for the the grand prix please because that's on the dvr for when i get home on monday and a massive catch of motor gp this weekend as well which i'm a massive fan of two wheels four wheels on road off road if it has an engine and they keep score i'm interested in it when, when it's based where there's sort of 50 odd hours of motorsport compressed over 24 hours and it's still not enough for us I've, there I've, can never be enough motorsport i've, I've always uh, been massively impressed by those people who follow endurance racing and take in what we provide and, and the, the team is massive to do this. Yes, they hear our voices. And it's very nice what people say to us, but we've got people back in London, Kerry and, and Rob. We've got a whole team of people just behind us and to our right in the TV compound. Uh, uh, spare a thought, dear listener and viewer, for our camera operators, because even if you're listening on the radio, how can we see all the way around the Nürburgring Nordschleife, because we've got people out in the country in rain, hail, snow, shine, heat, cold, and you get all of those uh, quite often. There was frost on the cars overnight here. It was that cold, yeah, and, we got the, degrees. and we got the ice warning yes. on, on the way back uh, after our uh, overnight stint, uh, and the helicopter pilots, all the people who were producing the pictures, our intrepid pit lane reporters for our German colleagues as well have been up all night. And German network Nitro, who've been exclusive, uh, uh, extensively covering this race as well with additional content. And we've uh, seen how hard they're working. A huge, huge squad of people. And of course the backroom staff as well, who put everything together, do the deals, make the partnerships swap all the emails and have the phone calls beforehand to make sure everything works out. Even down to the people who've been looking after us in the hotel. 
and uh, the manufacturers who support this event with not just us, but the rest of the press corps who have been toiling away in the Ravenel press room right opposite us at the moment, the Ravenel Meiji Centre in the TUV Tower. And add to that all the PRs and everyone who looks after the teams. This is a huge event. Only 138 cars this year. Only most championships would love to have half of that. I have no doubt with the crowds that we saw back here, there's a huge pent up demand. And this will be an extended race again next year in terms of its entry list. In Fort Richard Westbrook and the 706, the bright red Glickenhaus. Glickenhaus coming into a very, very important time for them. This car racing here next weekend, they'll have two cars on the Circuit de la Sarte. For test day on Sunday, we'll have full live audio coverage for you for that. The only broadcaster that brings you test day coverage on RS1. Many of you will be listening to this on RS1 right now. And that heads into our extensive Le Mans week coverage with every session brought to you on Haggerty Radio Le Mans. 91.2 FM around the circuit for next week. A lot of people asking about that as well. René Rast then now leads the motorist. It's his turn on the pit cycle. And by that, I don't mean he's riding a bike uh, on the lane. That's a pit bike. That's yeah. good. <laughs> Very different. He'll come in at the end of this lap. And where are Schubert Motorsport? Will they cycle back to the lead? I uh, think they will because the 15's in, in now. The, the Audi, the number three, gets speed. Oh, no. It's going to be... I need to check this the next time they come through. So this is a change. I don't think the 20 is going to cycle back through to the lead because of those two stints, and particularly the last few laps by Adam Christodoulou in the number three Mercedes. Now, he's out of that car now and handed it over to Fabian Schiller. And I think they've done enough to stay ahead of the Niklas Kruten driven Schubert Motorsport, even though they have now. Yeah, they have done the, the, their pit stop. It used to be for a moment or two that the, the Schubert car would go through. Very interesting. So there's a wee change into this. Uh, what have we got? 21st hour of the race. Renny Raston, the, the leading uh, Audi um, at the moment currently, following a uh, line astern, uh, Axel Jeffries in the Conrad Lamborghini, which is still it's still in 12th position. And we've said that car is, is quite, pace has never been an issue. It's quite capable of being in the top 10. It might might still do that. But lap after lap, or sorry, corner after corner, Renny Rast is following Axel Jeffries. And it's uh, he's two laps down, but of course, they're roughly running at the same pace. So. What, why should he let himself go down another lap? So he's sitting there, Axel Jeffries, doing a, a fantastic job. And one of the standout drivers in this, uh, this Conrad Lamborghini just hasn't quite had the luck uh, it deserves. Uh, bizarrely, we've seen it drop out of NLS rounds and not complete four hours. And I, I did say before the show, it's one of those races where it might just go and surprise us and run right the way through. And here it is. A long way in. Wicker Bill, hello. Just going back to pit stop timings, he said. Morning, Wicker Bill. Morning, Wicker. I should say that as well. Four w BWT Merck came in with four minutes to go in the hour. Important to keep an eye on. Splash and dash at the end of the race. Um, at eight minutes and a bit, um, you're doing 64 minutes and eight times whatever the bit is. Um, that can be, you know, if, it's the, if you take the best lap, that's 12 minutes. 12 here to 96, that's another minute and 30, so that'd be 65, 30. I, I think realistically, you are looking at 66, 67, and depending on the traffic, 60, yeah, 66, 67 minutes. So it's not quite the straight one hour. Now, at the front of the field, it is Rene Rast who leads through. He's gone by now and we're waiting to see the chasing cars and, and who peels off into job. the pits. That is the 22 car of Rene Rast coming to the end of his stint. He's been in that car for 
just a single stint. Actually, I just need to refresh for a moment because it would seem to me... There we are, that's better. Yeah, Renner asked eight laps. So through goes Vanto. And Vanto has done his 16th stop. As has Schiller. As has Cruton. But Cruton did not cycle back to the lead. So that Schubert car, which I was banging the drum for earlier on. Maybe the pendulum just swinging away just a little bit. Uh, question coming in and from a number of people about the fuel tank sizes, and it depends on uh, BOP. Oh, and in fact, there we go, JG's answered. There's a number of things that are used to balance the performance of these GT cars, GT3 cars. Fuel tank size and fuel fill is part of it. Uh, and anything between, well, I was going to say 110 and 120, but uh, Johannes, thank you, Johannes, has looked up the exact regulation and it's 113 and 121, depending on BOP. So getting, you know, getting on for 10 litres of difference and there's a weight consideration there in terms of the uh, the weight of the car and hauling that around but this all is to balance out the performance of the fuel consumption and um, it, it's not it's not to say that people with bigger fuel tanks can do more laps they can't here well, um, i'm just going to say to uh, working on averages now nobody works on averages in these teams but we know it's approximately 14 liters a lap around yeah. here so on a 121 litre tank, that's going to give you 8.6 correct laps. That's all it can do. Yeah, but it can't do that ninth lap. Yeah, uh, and, unless and, it's, it's, it's code 60s. Uh, and, and the and the reason that that some people have got more and less is because this is not meant to be a fuel save formula. The idea is that everybody can get eight laps. So and that the guys is, that who, has absolutely proven that the 113 litre tank will do 807. So yes. it will only just just do eight laps but, but absolutely the, right as you said there they, the likelihood of uh, of the 113 litre tank is that as a car is a little bit more abstemious in terms of its of, of its fuel consumption so everybody what they'll be trying to do is to balance everybody out at around about eight and a bit laps eight and a quarter to eight and a half but not any more from that i'm laughing again john because I, I love how we fall into the traps of being so involved in motorsport you've just described a car that's using 14 litres of fuel every eight minutes as being abstemious yeah. Yes, it's fully economical. <laughs> oh. Fully economical, that. Uh, out has gone René Rast. He stayed at the wheel of the number 22. Uh, we've just seen one of the Get Speed cars go through past us as well. That would have been the number four car, Gilles Gunon, who's just gone through. So at the front now, with 16 pit stops completed for the top nine cars, Audi Sport Team Phoenix by 11 seconds. That is Dries Van Tour. Um, for the pride of the Vantour family, after slightly hip checking, bit of hip and shoulder to his brother that ended the Manti run, side by side stuff in the first four hours of the race. Not sure. Not uh, absolutely. Nobody seeing that it was deliberate, but both of them were not prepared to give an inch there. It could have cost them both in the end. It's only cost. Lawrence and the Porsche team. There were some long faces at Porsche in their fifth floor suite after that incident at Tiergarten. Fabio Schiller, Fabio Schiller for Mercedes AMG in second position in the number three team, Get Speed Car. What a transition for those guys. Uh, new sponsor this year, new colours, still running two cars, and two cars in the top four. The only team with two cars in the top four. Car Collection have two cars in the top nine. Team Bilstein have two cars in the top eight. Uh, team Phoenix have two cars in the top six, but if there was a team's championship at the moment um, and the checkered flag was to port, fall as it stands, as they like to say at the end of all the seasons, the sporting seasons, uh, it would be Team Getspeed who took the team prize. 
One Mercedes in second place, then the first of the BMWs. The next BMW from third, which is the Schubert Motorsports number 20, the 50th anniversary livery car. And the next BMW is a very long way down indeed. In fact, it's not, there's not another BMW in the top 20. I'm not misreading that, Peter, am I? No, there's not another BMW M4 GT3 in the top 20. The team that came in here playing down their chances, saying, oh, you can't have favourites at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. With momentum, with pace, and at the moment, their hopes lie with the Schubert team. Never would have thought that phrase, not, not the Schubert one, but not nope. uh, only one BMW in the top 20. The years that, that I've been coming here, the nighttime hours have not been kind. Dacia Logan alert there in the pit lane. The, the nighttime hours have not been kind to BMW. I remember the Z4s looking like they were going to absolutely dominate the top. And Claudia Hurtgen still driving in those days. Huge incident into the catch fencing. Uh, at the end of the lap, took one of their cars out. Cars falling off around the circuit in the darkness. And again, it started early with the Rover racing car hitting the Top Sport Porsche. And from then on, both Porsche and BMW have, have lost cars with, I'm sure they would say, um, rather worrying and monotonous regularity. Just absolutely not expected at all. But Stuart Motorsports, great job there, as you say. Yeah. Uh, Krupner at the wheel there, so the number 20 car uh, in uh, Tartan City again, third place. And uh, also a, a great bit of attrition here that the top, it's almost the top 10 cars, John, that are on the same lap. Uh, and it's actually first nine are. It's Nick Tandy in the KCMG Porsche uh, in 10th that drops down just one lap there. I'm, I'm indebted to Brian Nagy, who has tweeted in at RSL underscore studio on the hashtag N24. HRSL, uh, who reminds me uh, that the number 20 Schubert BMW went off in the wet and ended up losing a lot of time with a flat front tyre. That's why they didn't cycle back to the lead. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Brian, for that. Still one of the incidents of the race, the uh, inter niching contact and conflict between the brothers Van Tor brothers in harm there and a big big hit for Lawrence in the number one Manti Porsche that remember had started at the back of the leading group in 36th position because of a purple flag a code 60 infringement early on in the week and they had fought their way to the very sharp end and were looking strong as all of anything with Olaf Manti's name and I know Olaf is not as integrally involved as he used to be but you do not win you do not forget about winning seven overall victories here that experience that history and that passion doesn't go away well depending on the actual dynamic of the particular race you can win one and, and luck can be on your side you still, still hugely impressive to win the 24 hour here at Nürburgring, but luck can help. Luck has got nothing to do with winning it seven times. No, it just doesn't happen. And don't forget, John, this is exactly what they did last year. I think it was 14th or 19th that car started uh, when it won it last year. It was defending champion. It normally runs with number 911 on the door, mm -hmm. uh, the eponymous Porsche number. And of course, it had the one on this year, defending champion, carrying it proudly. Uh, so it was on course to do almost, almost exactly what it did last year. But unfortunately, uh, I, I don't want to do the sibling rivalry thing because it's too easy. But it, they were just two drivers on exactly. one of the same I, part I of the track. I don't that doubt was, that for a minute. All right, uh, we're, we're making some we're making some nice Better sound bites and, and 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 that out of it. But they were just two drivers who weren't prepared to give up. Earl Bamba, who knows them both very well indeed, being teammates of course with with Lawrence Van Ter at Porsche, knows Drake's very well indeed. Very different characters as he described it when he was in here. Uh, in one of his breaks from KCMG Porsche. And he said, at that point, they weren't brothers, they were just competitors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a very interesting incident. And um, we've had a couple of very big incidents, uh, not just in this race, but in the lead up to the Total Energies ADSC 24 hours of the Nürburgring for 2022. And I do wonder if there might be some discussion 
about a wee bit of a change there, whether it's moving the marshal's post and the television tower, the scaffolding tower that has been in the line of fire at least a couple of three times this season already and twice in this race, or whether there is something that can be done about moving the guardrail back. The problem is, at the end of the tear garden, that is actually a bridge over the road underneath. We actually walk underneath that to get to our car. It's, it's just not that simple, is it? No. It's, uh, there's infrastructure that was always what they said at uh, uh, Tamburello at uh, Imola years ago. P Porsche Look, curves. Barriers back. You can't because there's a river. Yeah. It's, it, it looks so simple because we see this narrow strip of tarmac and we go, what is with barriers? There's always more complications. Uh, Porsche curves uh, at yeah. Le Mans, you know. Um, we saw a few years ago as cars hitting barriers and getting flipped over the Peugeot on test day had a huge incident there uh, and ended actually over the top of uh, the barriers at, at one stage it's hugely strong those cars well you, you can't create something that isn't there <laughs> there's part of that section of the track just like the end of the Tergarten and the Dottinger here where it's a it's a an overpass a bridge over a public road so to widen it, you'd have to widen the bridge as well. Otherwise, you've still got that pinch point. Uh, important little move made there by Fabian Schiller. Past the, uh, the man, but fa man filter cars. And now past the second of the two co Toyota Corolla Alt Altis. And just as they go through Arnberg and down into the foxhole. And again, a car that's a bit overlooked, John, that man filters uh, land run. Uh, 55. It's in, mm. in 14th. Uh, Patrick Gassenheimer at the word of that. It's still still running in 14th. We said earlier, didn't we? That it's a, uh, I mean, it's a great colour scheme. That Mamba, uh, even onto the pit board, it looks it's got Mamba on the back of it. Now um, three full laps down uh, after the leaders have just gone by. Still a great run though. Yeah. So at 14th, yeah, you you're just outside the top 10 with a good few hours to go yet. You, you never know. Lions paid by car collection. The white and very very fluorescent ready orange. Uh, 23 car comes into the pits from 16th, 15th in class in SP9 and car collection uh, maybe slightly disappointed. That is a pro-am car. Uh, I still think that he slows down. Where's the other car collection car? The 24. That's a that's a pro car. I still think that the Axel Jeffries driven at the moment, Conrad Motorsport number seven, Lamborghini Huracan, is still the best of yeah, still the best of the Pro Am category cars. Shane Lewis behind the wheel of the 21 CP racing car, they in 20th. So the leader for once with a bit of clear track and has stretched the lead to 14 seconds. Dries Van Toor. Here's a question for you as a driver, Peter, and difficult because I know you've never raced against against your brother. Um, <laughs> but let, let's let's say a teammate instead. I know they run for different manufacturers and they're not the same team, but after an incident where you have inadvertently caused a teammate and uh, uh, another manufacturer contender from from whichever team you're driving for to to retire does that put more pressure on you as a driver or have you just got to completely forget it i think you've got to completely forget about it during the event you've got to mm. put it to one side i think both parties need to do that emotions always run high on those things never it's never sorted out at an event uh, <laughs> it's probably better drivers are always going to have a different view no matter what the rest of the world will say. You can have a million people vote on it and they can all vote, uh, all but two of them will vote different ways. The two involved will always have the opposing view. Yeah. And that doesn't mean say that one will say I'm right or you're wrong, but yeah. they'll always have a different view. Drivers never, never concur. Uh, you've got to leave it until the event, event's over and talk about it afterwards. Then, uh, the, the problem with that is then that it can, it can sow seeds, it can fester, etc and that's that's why it's probably good just to nip it in the bud immediately after the event i would say mm. there goes the lamborghini the unmistakable wheel of that v10 at the moment axel jeffries put the car on the front row here last year of course axel 
one of the favourite drivers of Conrad Motorsports and Franz Conrad. Got to know Franz pretty well, actually, around the turn of the century when he was running the Celine S7R and it was designed, developed and built by Ray Malik, Wellingborough, Northamptonshire's finest supercar, as we always called it. And Franz Conrad took that car to Sebring. Ollie Gavin was driving for us as well at that point and took a massive victory there. Really hard fought. Car was very, very new. And was built to take on the might of the then GT1 field. Four cylinder tortured engine of the Toyota Corolla Altus coming down towards Brunchen is the lead car in that class, the 119. Another good run by these guys. I, I hope I, I, there's been a, an ongoing debate on Twitter at RSL underscore studio. So it's a 120, my apologies. Uh, which has got a little bit, looks like it's been running a little bit, uh, burning a little bit of oil or running a little bit rich on the back of that car. Ongoing debate about some of the smaller engine cars and whether they should still be here. Um, I understand why the sub-1600 cars, the Suzuki Swifts, the Daihatsu charades, etc., were taken out of this race when the cars at the front of the field were getting so quick. And having a discussion with some of the drivers over the years um, and talking about keeping the touring cars like the Hyundais in the TCR category in here. And that car, the lead front-wheel drive car, is the TCR leader. And uh, that is the, the Hyundai 830 manual lag at the wheel of that at the moment. And that is sitting in 21st position, so notwithstanding the, the attrition that we've had, that's still a good run by that car. And it laps. It's lapping in just over nine minutes. Nine minutes four is its best, nine minutes 14. What at the moment? That's, that, what were you lapping in round here? I can't remember. I, think, I, think I would use a calendar, I think. No, that's not time. true. Um, what, was the, what, was the, what was the quickest car that you, you raced around here, then, would you say? Uh, it would be the Evo 6, uh, Mitsubishi, which was a, yeah. a, a quick car on its day. Uh, it was a front-running car. Yeah. You're going to make me look it up now, aren't you? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, so, so would you have been running for overall honours in that? No, not quite. One class down to right. sort of SP8, if you like. Yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So understood. GT4 car, yeah. Uh, your, your point about the the, the, the city under the smaller engine cars, um, I can see arguments for both sides. So can I? And, and, and I'll put I'll put my two pence in for what it's worth, and I'm sure we're going to get Twitter feed alive and etc. Now for this, but um, I can see the point from the top cars, the SP9 GT3 cars of. They're possibly a hindrance to the closing speed. It's the speed differential is the issue. Hmm. However, from the other side, it is what it is. It's a unique event. It's a Nürburgring. You've got to have the attraction of everybody being able to come in this. It isn't just a GT3 race. If you take those out, you lose one of the big USPs of this event. Yeah. But what makes it safe to me is, and safety has to be the most paramount thing is, what makes it safe is the way it's disciplined with the license structure. If that wasn't done, then I would agree. The, the speed differentials are too great. But everybody from a 1600cc car right through to a GT3, full aero, Evo, everything, all the box, all the parties and the tricks, everything possible, has to do the same system. Yeah. Therefore, the discipline, so that's down to the organisers. And I say, fair play to them and long may it continue. I thought very interesting and considered comments from Peter Cape. By the way, we've got the uh, I always? What, what's third place at the time, Nicholas Cruton out of the Schubert Motorsport BMW, the lead BMW. He's in the pit lane, just lost a position to Gilles Gounon, who's down at turn one, the first corner at the moment. Uh, Peter Cates from the, the Math Altistics one, Cayman, uh, the Cup 3 class car, was saying they've been debating why there's been so much on our race control screen. And he thinks it's just that a lot of people have been away for a couple of years and have, have not necessarily forgotten but you do get race rusty, oh, and if you're say, not, not racing, yeah, if you know, yeah, not much fit, perfect. But you, 
you know, that's, I don't mean that as any criticism. No, no, no. It, and we lost time. We lost an NLS race this year. We lost the exactly. second NLS race. I'm just going to say that. It, it had that. to be cancelled on, on the Wednesday of race week. The weather was beautiful. I was sitting in the studio back in the UK. We were talking, weren't we, about it? And I, and I was looking at the, the 360 camera, which is on top of the TUV uh, Rhineland Tower, and it was gorgeous. And I'm thinking, why have they cancelled this? Well, by Thursday afternoon, there was about four inches of snow and you couldn't see the other side of the track. Um, but that, you know, that was effectively a third of the pre-event running that was cancelled. And there will be people who would have been banking on that to get a few laps in before coming back to the Nürburgring. Now, clearly, you know, they would have already been qualified, they would have already had their, their permit, but they may not have seen this track and the changes that were made, the resurfacing that was done over the winter, they may not have seen that until first qualifying here on, on Thursday. And, and that, that's the other two elements of it. Uh, the, the track's been resurfaced in a fairly quick part so that the speeds are up. And the big thing is the, the weather that always controls everything here at the Nürburgring. We've always said, it doesn't matter how well prepared you are, what your team is, what your car is, whether you're Phoenix, whether you're BMW, Aston Martin, any other brand's teams, adrenaline that win the NLS time and time again from the, the different classes. It doesn't matter how prepared you are, one person, one th sorry, not one person, one, uh, one item will control it entirely always, and that is the Nürburgring itself. We've had a dry race this time. Bits of research. We haven't had, we had the tiniest, tiniest bit of slouch showers, didn't really slow much down. It's been a dry race. Everything's been run really fast, and everybody's slightly out of practice. So, yeah, how we, about. It's, it's like going back to school first day of term after still, summer holidays, isn't it? Yeah, everybody's still in the middle of the We all know everything is still, but you're in yeah. a different class, and you've got a different part, and you, you know where the loons you are, but you don't, you don't know where your teacher is. Yeah, exactly. you're all that sort of thing, you're like, but you still end up with the heads off, is anyway. Yeah. Well, I, I did anyway. Hang on a minute, I don't go to geography in block three. I used to go to geography in block two. What's well, going on here? I, I need to pass geography to find where block three is. Yes, exactly. Good job I did map reading last year. <laughs> the, um, I, I thought a couple of drivers' comments about... I'll get back that to a moment because the Hyundai Driving Experience 332 i30N hatchback has come to a halt. The four-way flashes are on. It's to driver's right just beyond the tourist lap entrance to... Mm -hmm. The Dottiger hurt. God, those trees have got much bigger on driver's right since our first time coming here. I almost didn't recognise that because of how tall those trees are. Seems like they've grown in the last year. So we have a yellow flag covering that at the moment. Now, hang on a second. Was, was that the I-30 N? Was that the non-TCR car or was that the lead car in TCR? It was the 332, not the A30. Yeah. Okay, I, I said that uh, um, without really thinking. Um, the 830 has been burning a bit of oil or a bit of fuel. Oh, well, I, I noticed that a few laps ago, it's yeah. just, just mostly, mostly on the overrun. So dri driver's out on his phone, good old communication, sitting there talking about it. But I did notice that the last couple of times when we saw some of those mm. higher shots from behind where you look up and see them going over her act and some of the rises. It just had a, had a haze, as Mike Salmon used to call it. Code 60 now on two parts of the Dottinger Hur to cover the recovery of that car. Uh, and I didn't see any issues um, with that. And that had been a good run for that car. This is part of a really big undertaking by Hyundai and their end brand, which is their performance brand, the driving experience to get people to literally experience the performance side of that car. Well, it was fine coming out of Brun uh, Brunchen. Uh, still looking in pretty good condition with that distinctive eggshell blue base coat for the N cars. Is there a little bit of a wobble on the front wheel, on the left wheel there? Am I trying to see too much into what our director is showing us? I did, I did. Uh, has it not got a left front wheel? I'm wondering. Has I, I, that come I, off? I was thinking, John, that it was sitting low, and like you, I didn't want to go and say too much too soon, but it looks like it's sitting low, or well, is the grass too deep? But it has its hazards on almost straight away, so I think it might have lost its left front wheel. Wow. Uh, well, let's have a look at it and see if, it, if that was an outlap. Was it simply finger trouble? Or 
Uh, what car did we say that was a 332, isn't it? Yes. See if I can, there we go. Uh, first lap out the pits. There you go. So. I've ju they've just I've just had some onboard footage of the uh, uh, Audi going past it, the Vantor Audi, and it looks as a quick glance. I'm sure I saw brake disc and yeah. hub there. I think it's lost its left front wheel, John. Uh, three, three, two. I've also got a stationary Porsche at the uh, the second carousel, the number 300. Uh, that's a 718 S. Uh, oh, that's class leader. Yeah, that is the class leader. That is the Mathol car, the sister car to Peter Kitts T61. And that car was behind the barriers earlier on in the week in qual I think that was uh, second qualifying. Still managed to hold on to uh, pole position. Uh, and that, at that time, was... Uh, Marcus Adolfo Vasquez, the Argentinian, and that 300 car then off the racing line, very much off the racing line, because it's on the flat part of the carousel and everybody drops in to the bottom part, the concrete part. That's the VT3 leader, and behind the wheel of that is the driver Trinius who wasn't on my original list. So that car needs recovering as well. Now I was trying to, I interrupted myself there because I was uh, trying to look for the driver of the Hyundai driving experienced car. Which number um, did we say it was, John? Sorry, eight. Which one? The Hyundai, the one that's... Popped. The, the Hyundai was 332, and it was, I believe, Gerrit Holthaus from Ludenscheid, German driver. The, the whole ethos behind that driving experience, the Hyundai driving experience, is to set up some centres around Europe and then expand them across the world where people can go and, and have a, a first-person go of some pretty extreme driving in Hyundai products. And much like other manufacturers have done around the world, notably BMW and especially Porsche, who've now I think got seven or eight Porsche experience centers. The first one was at Silverstone, had two in the States now, one at Atlanta uh, and one just outside LA, Carson City, uh, Japan, uh, Italy now as well, and right across the world for Porsche. And not just to have a go, but to potentially find out if people would like to come here and race their cars. An opportunity to go through your permit with Hyundai, who've got a performance centre here on Gottlieb Daimlerstrasse, which runs parallel just on the side of the main road, the other side of the main road to the Dottiger Hur. Um, and I think that's a super idea from Hyundai, opening up this circuit to more people. Um, I'm not an engineer by any stretch of the imagination, but I think the 300 has had a cooling issue. Um, there is a lot of essential fluid that should be in pipes, radiators, and possibly uh, even the engine block. I, I think it looks like coolant rather than oil uh, that is streaming out of that one, that 300 uh, Mathol AV Porsche 718 Cayman S. If only Joe Bradley had been on the commentary then. We've just witnessed one of the marshals doing the famous... Dip. Put the hand down. Dip, taste, yeah. taste test. Is it oil? Is it Ooh. coolant? I've I just saw the Viper go by. The Viper's back out and running again. Uh, they had problems earlier on in the alternative fuel class. They were having a bit of a battle with the Mustang. Just being in the grass. For the... Very good. Uh, for the, uh, the longest time. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that... Do yes! Uh, it is... Oh, no, it couldn't have been the Viper. That car's in the pit. So what was that that went by, then? I apologise. I got very excited, that, there. The 113. Biggest engine in the field. The uh, 8.4 V10. Talking of big engines, John, I've just seen a car that we haven't really covered a great deal in this race. I had a little bit of a uh, mentions at the start, but uh, the number 21, mm -hmm. uh, CP Racing Mercedes-AMG uh, of... Uh, 
Uh, Shane Lewis just brought that car into a bit. Running 20th overall still. Not, not quite where they'd want to be, but... Uh, <laughs> We say it time and time again, it's a long race. Of course, it's a day, but it, it's a long race in a way that no other races really, really are around here. Yeah. And it, it, it's great to see that car still going out with... What are we coming up to? Four four hours to go? So four hours... Yeah, four hours 18 at the moment. Yeah, so we're, we're about to start. I did I did say yesterday at one point, John, that uh, NLS is not... They, it's a championship, it's separate. It's not... This race isn't part of it. But we know up to this point... It's used as a test bed mm. data collection for this race. They, that's what they use it for. NLS races are four hours long, generally They're, speaking. Generally speaking, as a norm, as a there, norm. Is, there is a six-hour race. There is a six-hour race. Yeah. Uh, there's also going to be a twelve-hour race this year. Oh, now, is that a twelve-hour race, or is that two six-hour races tacked together? I understand it's a twelve-hour race, mm. but I stand, to, I stand to be corrected. The point being, everybody knows about F1. A Grand Prix is, by definition, two hours long. Or yeah. 200 miles, whichever comes up first. That's that's the race, I believe. Right, OK. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm my understanding. I yeah. could be wrong. Yeah. Um, so that's half of an NLS race. Yeah. This is six NLS races run consecutively. Yeah. In 18 minutes' time, they're just about to start their fifth NLS round of this race, if that makes sense. I mean, I know we're comparing... Uh, it's motorsport, but we're comparing tennis rackets and apples. <laughs> but to say, you know, half a Grand Prix season... Yeah in this one weekend in terms of uh, of race time. Oh, far better way of putting it you know, in, in terms of just there, John, race thank you. time just race time he's um, good isn't he now now in fairness a grand prix season should not be 20 22 24 races let's just get that out there as much as i love grand prix racing um i think 16, 16 to 18 yeah 16 tops I you reckon. need to make it special otherwise if it's every yeah. week you know why why tune in anyway that, that that's it for another time uh more time penalties we gave you that big one for the three two four which was the code 60 and two points so since then uh the ah rene rast has picked up a penalty or at least his car has although he's on a double at the moment so when was that reported not seeing that now but a 32 second penalty for that's our race leader for the number 22 he's only got an 11 second lead uh, no, it's the 15 in the lead at the moment, isn't it? My, uh, sorry, my apologies. Yes, yes, Rast is 22 in fourth. So yes, yes. Don't do that to me, Peter. What? I, I, thought, just, I, could, I, thought, I thought I'd I lost thought the eyelids were going. I thought you were starting to just. I thought I just. <laughs> tell you what, I can't pass him a bit of sugar. I can't give him a bit of chocolate. I'll wake him up. Yeah, good man. Uh, 32 seconds then in the penalty box at the next pit stop. You don't have to come down and make a special run through pit lane. Uh, also getting a 32 seconds. So this will all be. Um, yellow flag infringements because it doesn't say code 60 so this will be double waved yellows not getting slowed down enough uh, also for the Huber Motorsport number 25 this is another one of the 125 excuse me another one of the Cup 2 cars that was in the running not so long ago but K. Kramer Racing seem to have stamped their authority on that the Black Falcon number 123 in second has just pitted, and we've yet to see the Kerr Kramer number 127 come in. They're running solidly inside the top 20 at the moment. And they're... Because... Oh, here we go, I'm going to say... Because the Porsche 4-litre engine is so economical... I'm glancing sideways to see if Peter picked that up. Uh, they can I know, run... I know, I know what you did. They yeah. can run nine laps, and nine laps in the middle of the night here was an hour and 22 minutes. So doing a double stint, yeah, you can't, you'd go over your drive time. So, oh, hang on, no, Krantz did do. Ah, that was because that was pretty clear. Yeah, an hour, so about an hour and 10, if you've got no issues. Do you know what? For once, I think we've nailed that with the 332 car. Wobbly front wheel, which is part of company, and then had to be parked up at the side of the circuit. To coin one of my old phrases, it's never a good day when different parts of your car are doing different lap times. I, I always think that's to be avoided, if at all possible, Peter. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strong argument. <laughs> yeah, <there's, laughs> I've, I've made many pronouncements down through the years, uh, the vast majority of which have been utter nonsense, but I'm standing by that one. 
Uh, that's a hill that I'll die on. Different parts of your cars doing different lap times, never a good thing. Probably a portent of doom. <laughs> I like it, different. Two parts of your car doing different lap times. I like that. <laughs> I've seen well, it happen. I don't as a driver. No, I don't like that. I've seen, I've seen it happen. Where sometimes the, the main part of the car is quicker than the bit it left behind. But I've actually seen the other way around, where a car has spit off a wheel, and that's gone across the line um, long before the uh, major part of the car. Just Fastest lap of the race, by the way, was set uh, a little while ago now, an 8.11. 639 and that still stands for Team Bilstein and the, the number 12 car uh, which has got uh, Philip Ellis in it at the moment but the lap time from memory let me just scroll back I think it was Lucas Stoltz who set that in the early hours John, just to confirm that uh, NLS race we talked about later in the year being a 12-hour race. That's on the uh, 9th, well, 9th and 11th Friday, so 10th and 11th of September. It is two, two six-hour six hour races. One on, one on Saturday, Correct. one on Sunday. It is, right. yes. So a double six. Yeah. To use proper NLS old six, fashion. it is, effectively. Yeah. It, it's, it's termed as one race weekend, so it's not six and seven, it's just six, is it? Correct. Right, that's interesting. Yeah. So I wonder if they're going to so do... 12 hours in name. I wonder if they're going to do a la Kravendik then and effectively okay. park Fermi the cars overnight well, and to. restart them. You've got Shorty. Oh, well, good luck with that if they're not and they're running compound timing. Because all of, you've spent many, many hours in circuit commentary boxes around the UK, as have I. And when, when you do... Uh, oh, we're just going to restart the race from lap four. And then everything that... I mean, a lot easier now because the, our timing partners all over the world... Are, have far more sophistication but where you had to remember that when the race stopped there was 22.342 seconds between first and second and so if the second place car actually gets into the lead and gets four seconds up the road and that's what it says on your timing screen they're not actually leading oh don't don't too much for my my little my, i'm a bear of little brain and that is far far too much for me lead lead down to seven seconds now by the way with Fabian Schiller chasing down Dries Van Tour. Now, that will be interrupted shortly because Dries Van Tour is on his sixth of eight laps. Fabi Schiller in the Mercedes team gets speed car, who, by the way, sit second and third at the moment, the three and four car in two and three, separated by about uh, just over two minutes, two minutes ten. Uh, and he's on his seventh lap. So Fabi, one more after this one in the number three get speed car. Uh, the car that he uh, shares with uh, just two other teammates. A lot of the top teams going for just three drivers. Earl Palmer telling us earlier on, actually worked better in the early part of the week. They got to cycle through their drivers and do their laps much, much easier. Significant moment for Conrad, who are about to go a lap down to the leader, a full lap down the leader, coming down towards Callanhard. And it is Axel Jeffries behind the wheel of the Conrad Motorsport Lamborghini Huracan. And the leader, Dries Van Tour, has a minute. And this is danger time for the leader. Because clearly, Axel Jeffries will want to stay on the lead lap if he can. That's obviously, Peter, that Lamborghini is a very quick car. And Dries Van Tour is well under 10 seconds to the good in the lead. And he's losing a bit of time at the moment. Lost four seconds last time around to Schiller and Gunon in the two get speed cars. But you can't take a chance with a car that's as quick as that Lamborghini. No, it, it, we've said it so many times, it's pace has never been questioned, it's reliability has always been an issue. Even just crazy things like a wheel bearing a couple of rounds ago. But here it is, at, uh, coming up to 20 hours in. And uh, I really, really would like to see that Conrad car get a... Oh. Get, a, get to the finish. And it's, we always say this about 24-hour races, about winning and this, that and the other. To be honest, the first thing you need to do is, is finish. Finishing a 24-hour race is, is a victory in itself. Totally agree. Honestly think Conrad deserves... A top 10 finish. That will do the morale of that team so much good. And they may yet win the Pro-Am category as well, TPC. Well, climbing up through Calhard mid-curve. And 
now heading up to the very well known and popular spectator area of the Caracciola Carousel the overhead shot one of the real icons of this Nürburgring Nordschleife and still by the way the leader hasn't got through and the get speed car is almost in sight now so what was seven seconds at the line he's down to under six seconds now you can't miss the get speed cars they stand out even from the overhead helicopter shots and by the way thank you to the organizers of the nls and of this race for once again investing in the helicopters for all of this season it's been wonderful to see the ebb and flow from the overhead shots bet they don't it doesn't use as much fuel as a gt3 well, car around here though it's quite as abstemious no indeed Indeed not, I've rolled that word, that word out twice now, I'll put it aside and not use it again for three weeks, I promise. The, I, I was just talking to some of the drivers as well, by the way, that there is a rule coming in next year about tyre heaters, electric tyre heaters are going to be banned here. Now, not only do they heat the tyres, but obviously it's a nice warm place to sit, as we've seen from a number of shots over, overnight of people reclining on, on sets of tyres. And, and there's, there's a very big split of opinion about that, about the safety issues of going out on cold tyres here. Um, you're allowed warmed, you're allowed blankets here and they're going to uh, ban all warmers. Tyre cabinets, I kind of understand that, you know, you're burning a lot of paraffin normally to, to heat those and there's an environmental concern as, as, as all of us have to be nowadays. Um, but I think the electric tyre heaters there's always a cost implication on people to say, yeah, it's to save money so you don't have to buy them. Well, most of the teams have them, and it's a damn sight cheaper buying and running a set of tyre warming blankets in a 24 hour grace or indeed even across the NLS season um, than it is buying a front splitter or a corner for a GT3 I, I would, car. I would have thought there are uh, other areas where we could save money more yeah. logically. Well, that would not listen, be part of the list. But listen, if it's environmental concerns and not, uh, not, right, then let's, let's, get some, uh, let's get some solar panels on the roof and some, and some big batteries to, to store it and, and heat the tyres using I'm all for it. carbon neutral energy. Absolutely. I'm not no issue at all with them going more environmental side of stuff. Battle, battle for the lead is on the Dodiga Hur and the lead... Audi just about drags past the 12th place Axel Jeffries car, so now only 11 cars. Is that two laps down? Oh, it's two fact, laps, the, the lead is two laps down. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. two laps down that that car's going. I thought it was only a single lap, so Nick Tandy is the last car on the lead lap, I think. No, I mean, that Mark will see Fred from Falcon. I think he's just about to go through as well. But that has closed things down. Three and a half seconds between Vanto and Schiller. Uh, you know what I said? We were just simmering away nicely. Somebody's turned it up to gas mark seven again, haven't they? They were listening. They were. Strip riders are very good, you know. Very. I hear Tom Cruise wants to make a movie about this, but uh, he's seen this, the results and read the synopsis for the last few years and said he doesn't think anybody will take it because it's too fanciful what happens around here. <laughs> Um, that is good. Vanto then leading as we head towards the last quarter of this race. Peter Snowden and John Hindoff with you. With again, what has to be said is very, very threatening dark clouds over to the western side of the circuit and off in the background. That is the TCR car, isn't it? It's one of the. Cupra TCRs, yeah. I think. Yeah. We're way Ma past the last quarter, last sixth of the race now, aren't we? Uh, Four hours to go, last sixth. Yep, yeah, six fours are uh, 24. Yes, indeed, but we. Well into that now. Uh, non respect the flag signal for the number 125. That's a 32 second penalty. Remember the number 22 in third place, Rennie Rats, next time in the pits will have to stand still in the penalty box for 32 seconds. And it was indeed a the multicoloured Cooper. Yeah, the Bonk Motorsport. Yeah, uh, 833 that just had a just uh, outbreaked himself at the, the hairpin at the bottom of the Grand Prix circuit and just very gently but gracefully almost uh, almost ballet style just understeered off into the gravel, kept his foot in, 
uh, and uh, it continued on. So, a big moment for Fabi Schiller on the Grand Prix circuit. Again, the Grand Prix circuit proving difficult. The pressure's on here with just three and a half seconds at the line, now five seconds at the last split. The drivers involved in that struggle at the front of the field are taking chances as we head towards the last four hours. Schiller will be in at the end of the lap that he's just started. Van Tour has one more after that. And we are ramping up the excitement here. Well past 10 and through 11 now. Dries Van Tour leading the motor race as we come to complete another hour. And rain, rain on the windscreen of Van Tour at the top of the foxhole at Arnberg. That's the, that is where the bad weather comes from. We've been talking about the dark clouds over to the, the west and southwest. And that is enough to need the wiper for Fabi Schiller, who is not far behind, just four seconds now. Gets a bit of traffic. Schiller does in second position. Adenar Force for the leader. Adenar Force now for second place. And the cars are starting to move around. It's raining pretty hard. It's raining pretty hard as they head around from Adenar Force and start to climb up to the western side of the circuit. They're on the same piece of straight. It's come down from 15 seconds. And the race is on. Franz Conrad has seen it all down through his racing years. They've had a great run sitting outside the top 10 and 12th position at the moment. But remember, they're looking at the Pro-Am category. Is that the leader slowed right down there? Or was that one of the other classes? No, he's gone through. Van Tour in the number 15 Phoenix Audi. Now four seconds to the good in the lead. And that's it. That's what the lead has come down to. He's chased the chasing car here. Fabi Schiller will come in at the end of this lap and the decision will have to be made whether he stays in, and I think he will, but what tyres does he put on? Is he gonna put wets or slicks on? How bad is that weather? How quick is it coming in? They'll be leaning on every weather app possible. There's four hours to go and we're not writing any headlines the top stories are yet to play out in the 50th anniversary running of the Total Energies ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring. Stand by for action because another racing hour and the last four hours of the race starts right now. Magnificent stuff at the head of the field with the lead now well into single figures. Fabi Schiller will pull off at the end of this lap. It will be one more for the lead car, the 15 Audi Sport Team Phoenix Machine. As we move in to the closing stages, interesting isn't it to say that four hours is the closing stages of this race. That's the length of uh, Nürburgring Lang a series event. Yesterday start at four o'clock in the afternoon with the top 36 cars in SP9 and GTX in bright sunshine. And for the most part, the weather has not been a factor here. We've had a few spits and spots. One or two drivers who went off during the night with uh, raindrops on their windscreen might want to disagree with me here. Great racing early on and genuine pace by the only Aston Martin in the top class entered not by the works, but by Tom Ferrier's TF Sport, that they took to the lead. Over competitiveness with his brother is what Lawrence Vanto has been tweeting about on social media that took out the number one Manti Porsche. Number one, because he won this race last year in the shortened event with the three and a half hour sprint to the chequered flag on Sunday. An incident that you're going to see replayed over and over again. This will make the sports programs this weekend. The good news is that nobody got hurt. It was spectacular for the Teichmann Racing machine, Phoenix von, Le von der Leyen, with 
his best efforts to get out of the car and help the marshals, but as soon as he took his foot off the brake pedal, it rolled away down the foxhole, narrowly missing GT4 Porsche Cayman, and then reignited. The marshals were on the scene quickly, but that car, of course, took no further part. Leader of the race in the darkness for BMW. They'd already lost one of their two Rover Racing machines, and then a failure on the right front, front of the car that pitched Sheldon van der Linde into a lurid slide and took off the right front corner of the machine. He sat there for a long time, but nothing he could have done. Kelvin von der Linde in the Audi R8 share a Team Phoenix car tangling with a Porsche on the Grand Prix circuit. So that car dropped back. He had another opportunity. He was in another car. Faulkner came here full of hope with the 44 and the 33 Porsches. 44 car tipped into a spin by the number 22 Audi Sports car collection machine. And then Carlos Tavares, one of the top executives at the Stellantis group with nowhere to go in his Opel Astra, did some damage to the right front. Both cars continued. Early morning, often the time when things can be made or broken. And for Max Hesse in the BMW junior team, it was break, not make, with a huge spin on one of the fastest parts of the circuits. Damage too bad for the 72 shell car to continue. Then the rain started falling. And the 261 Mathol Racing Cup 3 Porsche off the track. Maxi Goats finding rather less grist, drip than he was expecting at Arenberg at the top of the Fox Hall, but managed to rally cross out of the gravel and continued. Lots of side-by-side -side action on the Dottinger Hoa. It's so quick down there, over 280 kilometers an hour this year through the kink. Always the option for a bit of side drafting and into the newly resurfaced Tiergarten. It's now a genuine passing position. BMW and the Schubert number 20 making the best of it. Not everyone had all the look at the same part of the track. Another big incident there, which again sent the marshals scattering and our camera operator staying on the shot despite being in the firing line as one of the lower class Porsches suffered. And again, it was BMW who hit the bad weather first. Rain on the windscreens at the top of Kalhart and a position loss to Kelvin van der Linde in the number 15 machine and a wee bit of damage for the BMW. Stay off the curbs, they say, in the faster parts of the circuit. There's a good reason for that because if you get airborne, no matter which tyre manufacturer you use, you're not going to get any grip on the curb, on the barrier and over and out for our camera. 22 car then has led for René Rast in the team car collection machine. Fabi Schiller has also cycled through into the lead and the BWT cars sitting in second and third position. But at the front of the field, at the moment, Audi Sport Team Phoenix about to make their 17th run down the pit lane. But it is Dries Van Tour after the hip and shoulder on his brother who leads as we head into the first of the, the last of four hours of running here today. Welcome if you've just joined us. In a moment, it will be Ben Constantinus, Joe Bradley, and uh, also Johnny Palmer. So let's bring in uh, Ben first of all. The overnight hours as spectacular as ever, Ben. Huge challenges out there on circuit with slower class cars, plenty of them still running, 120 cars are still on circuit with just 14 uh, in pit lane and we have the number three Mercedes in the pits getting a fresh set of tyres but we do have rain on parts of the circuit so what tyres do you put on the Mercedes at this point? If you put wet tyres on they're going to work at some points of the circuit but by no means all of it it's a long, long 25 kilometre lap and surely by the time you've driven on those wet tyres on the dry condition parts of the circuit, you're going to lose their effectiveness anyway. So a really difficult moment for our leading contenders. What would you do, Ben? No, you've just got to suck with it. You've this, got to suck it and see. I think this race is just the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Here we are, four hours to go. Let's add a bit of rain. It all depends on the, 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 the severity of the rain. 
and from the on car um, from the on car cameras, I would say that the track is just beginning to transition from damp to wet to greasy. When it starts well wet, because when it starts getting wet, that's when the slick tyre will aquaplane. Yeah, and that's the that's the issue. The other issue is that it's effectively when the track is damp, it's cooling off the tyre. As it goes round in the damp, the water cools off the tyre, so you're effectively going back to cool tyres. So it really is a tricky one. I'm, I'm glad I'm sat here and not having to make that decision on the number three. Listening to the throttle application from Dries Van Thor in the 15 Audi, he's being tentative. He's being careful with the front end of the car, making sure it does bite, making sure he doesn't understeer. We've uh, just had Aston Martin release the onboard footage of Nicky Team's race-ending accident. He crashed out of the lead of the race. We haven't seen it on our TV screens until the onboard has been released just a few moments ago. And Nicky Team, in the distance, somebody depositing some oil down on the circuit. Team coming to a very, very fast, fast right-hand kink, which would usually be easy flat. He turns in and the front doesn't bite and he just understeers into the barrier. And that was why Nicky Team ended uh, his race. But no, no way he could have done anything about it. He just turned in and it didn't bite. So that's what these guys are going to be worrying about now. Yeah. With Rain back on the Grand Prix loop now. So we saw it start over at the carousel, the foxhole, and it's made its way here to the pit paddock area. Where Nicky Team went off, that sweeping right hander onto the dotting of her. It's a fully committed corner. It's flat. It's an, it's an acceleration zone. So you just basically plant your right foot and turn the steering wheel, get the line right. However, if anything goes wrong, if the track is a little bit damp, then that's going to make things a, a lot different. You know what, Ben? Asking the question, the tyres, regarding what tyres went on the number three. A cut slick. We've seen them go on earlier. We've got slick tyres that had grooves, just one or two grooves cut in them. And that might be the answer. Uh, th th as it, I think, going back to my initial comment, it all depends on whether that rain continues to come down. Because if it continues, the track gets wet rather than damp. That's what happened, remember, when the Schubert Motorsport BMW skated off. The rain first hit at Metzgersfeld, and Alexander Sims, who was leading the race, again, similar to Mickey Teams incident in the night, actually, just ran out of road because you turn in at the point you did eight and a half minutes ago, and you can no longer get through the corner because there's not a great deal of water that's landed on the track, but that prime bit of of grip that you had last time around just is non-existent. And if you're the second car in the line, like Kelvin van der Linde was, he could adjust because he was about five, six seconds back. But Sims didn't have that luxury. I was amazed how little work actually the Schubert Motorsport to BMW needed. And they bolted on, as we're mentioning, some, some cut slicks, which is probably the halfway house that you require. But the message on the screen now in front of me is that uh, the full course is affected by rain. So are we at that switchover point where wet weather tyres, full treaded tyres are the way to go? Have we stepped beyond the psychological rain? Do we know what we're talking about when we say psychological rain. You see rain on your windscreen. You are then on a voyage of discovery. You can feel the grip in the car, but then it's a voyage of discovery. And already we see the car slipping and slithering. And it's, it's as if they've just come out the pits on cold tyres. Like I say, you're cooling off those hot slicks and they're going back to underneath their operating temperature. And that just renders them on ice. Best lap times are in the 8.12 region. The circuit is actually fully green at the moment, would you believe? Not had much green flag full running, but uh, the lap time's down 20, 30 seconds. So they are certainly losing out. And the Mercedes is able to lean on the car a little bit more. Runs very, very wide, but he, he looks like he's able to use the tyre in a way that when the BMW came through the same sector of turns, he was so tentative and, and wasn't really leaning at all uh, on those tyres. He was very, very close to the back. He was lucky there. That yeah. was the number three. Just sliding there. And again, that, you know, discretion being the better part of valor, I think, at this stage of the race, or indeed any stage of the race, when it comes to the, 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 the damp and the wet track, that's, it's beginning to get wetter and wetter and wetter, and the rain continues to fall down. We see the windscreen wipers now pretty much everywhere on this course. Before, the problem was that it was wet at one point, you know, far, far away, 10 kilometres away, but then the Grand Prix track was, uh, was completely dry and one lap of uh, half a lap of this place will destroy a set of treaded wets mm. in just half a lap and it'll be it'll be useless 
I wish I could see underneath those heat blankets that oh, yeah. have been prepared in the pits. The blankets are on Seen for, a, for a, a set of tyres. Not sure which team this concerns, but um, they'll have both options ready because it's changing all the time. And depending on how far away their car is from the next stop, they might have three or four laps to make the decision. And it might be easier by that point. But this is tricky. I'm remembering again back to the end of the 2017 race where we had two miles of complete downpour and the rest was dry. Dries Vantor, though, in from the lead of the race. Fabian Schiller is already in the pits in the number three car. And car four being driven by Jules Gounon. So this is the decision to be made by the 15 crew. Are you going to go wet? Are you going to go dry? The car will be put up onto the jacks initially. And there are no tyres anywhere near to this car, so they're leaving their decision to the last possible moment. Again, that engine cover, though, comes off the car. They are checking, as they so often do. A couple of mechanics literally climbing onto the back of the car as it's rotated through to 45 degrees against the garage. I'm waiting to find out exactly what it is they've been checking there. We suspect the potential slight oil leak. It must be a very, very slight oil leak because they've been doing that every pit stop. So it's hardly losing anything, and it's not. it hasn't gotten worse because we haven't seen smears of oil increase on the rear of that car. And it's, uh, it's certainly been on the pierce. It's been the pierce setter, if anything. Well, the engine cover's going back on. All seems to be, if not well, then satisfactory for the 15 car. And they will have been monitoring that all the way through the night. This is not a new problem. Sensors probably still reporting something errant back to the guys on the Pratt perch on the pit lane and into the, you know, the, the brains trust back in the garage too. This is a really difficult moment because on the TV pictures, we are riding on board with the number three Mercedes, no rain on his windscreen whatsoever. Uh, and it looks much faster than a couple of laps ago where we were seeing them being pretty tentative. Uh, so the Audi guys will be watching that as well because this is the latest information that they have about conditions around the back of the circuit. They're still, still waiting to put those tires on because they're not sure which ones they should go for. Well, you see, Fabian Schiller's going to have more up-to-date information because he's still out on the track, so he can be radioing through to get speed to say it's going to be slicked all the way here because the rain is starting to ease. How good is Audi's latest info? They'll have access to radar, and I suppose Phoenix do have another car out on track as well in the form of Kuba Gimaziak, number 16, running in sixth place. So how much more can he offer to the crew? Well, that number, that number three, Mercedes, he's keeping his toe in, isn't he? Fabian Schiller not being phased at all. Uh, no windscreen wipers since Ben mentioned it, so clearly no more rain coming down. And that track is... But there's, it's still fairly relatively warm out there, so whatever rain did come down, it's quickly dissipated. And he's been hard on the throttle in places where, if the track was damp, he wouldn't have been. Slick tyres for the 15 onto Dries Van Thor's car. And I think that is the correct decision for this moment in time. So the rain, the wetness of the circuit easing slightly. I wonder whether... Uh, anybody has gone uh, something slightly different from our top group. They've all been pitting right this moment in time. Five years ago, 2017, we were going into the final stint of the race and Audi actually threw a misstep rather than pre-planning, put the wrong tyres on their Audi and it turned out to be the right decision. I'm feeling one of their cars actually did a, a lap of the Grand Prix circuit, then in via the back door to change onto intermediate and that eventually won them the race because of the ground they gained around Adenauer Forst and on towards Metzgersfeld where it was almost biblical rain there, but dry everywhere else. But the amount of time they gathered up on their, their competitors got them the victory in 2017. It is drenched, the Grand Prix circuit yeah. now, and uh, it has to be wet weather tyres for this area. Yeah, fully grooved tyres for the number three car of Fabian Schiller. Well, this is a massive switch of strategy then, isn't it? Car it's four car. Right. Yeah, it's all right. I have a screen to my left, which is constantly telling me that Schiller's in the pit lane, but uh, that's well out of date. So yeah, I that is a reset. <laughs> you can ignore that. Yeah. That's, that's probably about half an hour ago. Cut. Oh, now then, yes. That's so, the ones I was talking about. Get them out the, get them out the truck, boys. We need those tyres. So Schiller staying out, as we expected. Jules Gounon running in fourth position in the number four pink and white BWT Mercedes. Has the Conrad Motorsport Lamborghini been off the Grand Prix track recently? No, well, stayed on the track, but 
just dipping a couple of wheels in the gravel track. Who's at the wheel of that? Is it to Michele Di Martino? It is. And Di Martino now in a really awkward place, spinning the car nice and neatly actually on that greasy track surface. That's one of those moments that you think you've got, you think you've got, and then it's round. But he did very well to keep it fully out of the stones. He couldn't do anything about it. The car had just pendulumed round and uh, on that greasy track. Strange thing is, out on the Nordschleife, there are lots of dry parts of the... The majority of the Nordschleife is, is dry. The cars pull out of the... Uh, around the Sabine Schmidt left-hander and out through and down the hill towards the Hattenbach. And the track is kind of... Kind of uh, damp-ish, but as we go around the Nordschleife, it gets dry. So if you did go for the full wet tyre, which would be ideal for the Grand Prix track, by the time you get back down the Dottinger Hall, those tyres are shredding themselves. It was a mistake from the 15. I'm, I was wondering oh, why yeah. we were waiting uh, for some replays from the 15 car and watching him around the lap. Rain still falling on the Grand Prix mm. lap, and of course, remember, he is on the slick, slick tyre. Uh, so there is no way of displacing any water and it is still very tentative on the very first part of the lap and the entrance onto the Nordsch life. The number four out of the pits and just to check on who that is, Gunon staying at the wheel is what I'm being told. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that will be within the driver rotation order on that car. Brothers, what's the, um, the cut? part of that slit going to do? Is it going to allow the tyre to move around more to create more energy or is it simply to let the water displace? I think it's, I think that it, it's a very scientific um, explanation as to why that works and it's to do with the outer edges uh, interacting with the tarmac and creating heat. Um, with a flat slick the hardest part is losing the heat. That's the problem with the damp track, you lose the heat, the tyre drops below it's operating temperature, the pressure drops, and the car is like on jelly and it, it's like on ice. So what it does is, uh, everywhere you've got a slot, you're generating heat. As that slot moves across the tarmac, I, I kind of at a molecular level, it interacts with the molecules of the tarmac and, and it creates heat. So it, it keeps some temperature in the car. It's not about moving water. No. Uh, there isn't enough water to move. It's just about creating heat and keeping that tyre up the temp. But as you say, with, with quite a big wadge of tyre not there in the groove, then that's allowing a bit more movement on the tyre as it rotates, and then down to probably a molecular level, as you say. Michelin will have designed this over many years of research. And if you do get any, any an element of water beginning to build, the water's got somewhere to move, and it kind of reduces the chance of aquaplaning. On a flat, slick tyre, the water gets underneath the flat plane of the, of the tyre, and it just sits there, whereas if it as a groove to move into it will move into that and that allows the rubber to then bite into the tarmac so there's a little bit of help where if it does start to get a little bit wetter it's all very clever stuff and might even just give the driver a sort of psychological boost to think oh, i'm not on slicks anymore so there's bound to be more grip out there and you just push a little bit harder but this is this has to be measured pace now you know it cannot be for me, full on, like we saw on Friday, qualifying pace, you've got to be 80%, maybe 90%, but at the same time, there's a motor race, a major motor race in the season to win slash lose here. Eight and a half minutes, the difference between you entering a corner the last time and now, it's even longer for those cars that have stopped. So despite um, the... Mercedes having an advantage of Jules Gounon because he was the most recently out on the track and couldn't feed back the information to the team. He's now been out of the game for the best part of three minutes and it could be a completely new racetrack for, for the young German. And for because he had to stay out to complete that stint on the slick tyre, uh, that car has actually dropped quite a way back uh, from the number 15 that was, I know the gap was like three or four seconds when we inherited uh, the commentary box, wasn't it? Uh, before the pit stops. But remember, Audi came in first. One lap later, Mercedes came in. That one extra lap on the slick tyre has cost them something around the region of 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. So now the gap up to 20 seconds between Vantor and Schiller, but Schiller has the cut slick. Vantor has the slick slick. So still. Uh, I, thought we were, I thought we were waiting for the hour. I, I know, so I know. On? Yeah, uh, because, because the rain's come, it's now at the carousel. Yeah, windscreen wipers are back on around that part of the lap, so I think it's going to be not long before our front two uh, are together again with each other. 
if you think about it geographically the carousel is on the opposite side of the of the of the of the castle to the grand prix track so we've got rain on the grand prix track and across the other side of the valley we've got rain but each side of that it's completely dry right so you've got the bit in the middle, which is the, the outbound section to the carousel and the return leg down the Dottinger Hoare, which is predominantly dry, but either end of the circuit, wet weather. This is so tough for the teams. And, and think about the drivers, because they're not necessarily making the decision, but they're the guys who've got to keep it out of the fence. Yeah, you know, this is why they get paid a lot of money. Exactly. Uh, if they're not getting paid a lot of money, they really should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, it, 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 they can give you, they can give the uh, engineers, the strategists, as much information as possible. But then, it's down to the guys making the decisions on the pit wall, and it's being able, it's being relatively happy with a car that is moving beneath you all of the time and having to react. Yes, you've got the driver aids like ABS and traction control, but they're only going to help you to a certain extent, as we have seen many times over in this race alone. A huge accident could be just around the corner. Rene Rast now leading for Team Phoenix, uh, for uh, the car collection, the number 22 car, then the Phoenix Audi number 15 of Dries Van Tor, Fabian Schiller running in third, for Mercedes, the BWT team get speed crew, and then it's a BMW. So Audi, Audi, Mercedes, BMW in the repaired Schubert car running fourth. Rast owes us a pit stop though, uh, and yeah. has been out on slicks on this greasy surface for the last couple of laps. Has the opportunity now to do something different, but will have lost quite a lot of time, as we saw from the Mercedes, by being out there whilst there was that uh, little rain shower. Even by sitting in the pits for two and a half minutes, having a service whilst the shower cleared itself, uh, will have benefited uh, Van Thor a little bit. They're both on the dotting of her. Wow, it was it was 21 seconds. It's down to uh, 18 the last time I checked. Now it's 15, and surely that's not 15 seconds between Audi and Mercedes. It's 3.9. What an amazing lap this has been uh, out of the pits from the Mercedes. The confidence of those cut slicks showing dividends. So where's he found the time? Second bit of the Grand Prix track and the uh, it's Schiller that's motoring on, a 150, so he found three seconds in sector five. And they were about level pegging in sector seven, but it is down to underneath four seconds now as they head across the line for the 134th time and heading into the pits as expected. Rene Rast already with Audi Sport team car collection who have him up on the dolly jacks and Rene staying at the wheel of the car for another eight lap stint in fact he's in the penalty box beg your pardon so that's the reason why he's looking relatively chilled waiting for the time to tick by so our temporary race leader having to soak up some penalty time before now he can move on down towards the team and car collection dare i say it the grand prix track that seems to have dried it was soaking wet just a lap ago now the leaders are on the Grand Prix track or the Grand Prix strecker and will make their way around and it looks to me as though perhaps that advantage that the number three Mercedes had last lap is perhaps going to be a little bit reduced but that is a tremendous tremendous amount of time to gain and he's now challenging the, uh, the Dries Van Tour Audi only just under four seconds up, up the road. If the track begins to dry what's the disadvantage of being on those cut slips from Mercedes are they going to they'll, overheat? They'll overheat yeah yeah yeah, they'll, they'll overheat and start tearing up around the, uh, the, the area of the tread that's been cut in. Uh, for the same reason as that's to put them on, to create the heat yeah. around the tread. Yeah, to create too much. Kind of overly heat. Do you think they'd, la well, it would last for a stint, but it last it's longer about than the performance drop-off, isn't it? Yeah, they last longer than wets, of course, them. yeah. So that's the better option. Plus yes. there's more rain coming. Indeed, uh, and that's the purpose of the intermediate, is that uh, you know you can continue to push up. There is a driver change now, actually, for 22. Yeah, Christopher, Christopher Haas. I was just about to say, it looks like the, uh, the eyes and nose of Christopher Haaser that I can just see peeping through his helmet. <laughs> he's always very wide-eyed, even yeah. though he's just got in the car. I can, you know, I, I, I can see he's wide-eyed coming into the pits. Slick's going on to that number 22 Audi. Full, full dry tyres. And this is a different team, let's not forget. So this yeah. is Car Collection making this call. It was Team Phoenix who made the Van Thor call. Yeah, and it was the Mercedes, the Getspeed Mercedes, that went on to the cut slick, wasn't it? 
So we're seeing it, and because Ben, it, it, Johnny, the, the decision is based on the weather in the moment. Mm. However, the weather changes moment by moment. That's yeah. the tricky bit. Yeah, and how much Incredible. do you how much do you trust the radar and therefore the weather coming in in the next few moments in roughly an hour long stint, four lots of eight minutes and a bit, or how much do you just trust the feedback from the drivers to say this is where we need to go right now? The Look, problem is if you go with the conditions right now, they will change. So it's such a tough call. And looking at the stints, uh, looking at the splits on this lap, the Mercedes is slower than the Audi at the head of the field, losing a, a, a second, half a second in each of the couple, uh, the first couple of sectors of the lap. So, and look, it's bright sunshine out there too. That's incredible. Just one lap previous to that, that track was wet. <laughs> yeah. Now the sun's shining and the track is completely dry. An absolute nightmare for the drivers, for the engineers, for the you know the, the the man who makes the decision speaks to the driver the engineer decides you know what do you think are we are we okay for drives are we you know it'll be a it'll be a joint decision based on information although the leaders of course are some seven eight nine kilometers away from where we are right now and might be experiencing very different things that, over in that's why time. the engineer has to rely on the driver you know yeah. it's all right saying well it's dry here yeah uh, how many times have we heard that and that famous Le Mans victory of uh, Audi in 2008 came down to that very thing communication between Howden Haynes and Tom Christensen so uh, obviously he won in the race to have two cars out on track rather than one is a firm advantage some guys have still got all three of their cars not in sp9 but in other lower order classes and if you've got cars evenly distributed around the circuit then you can get all sorts of data being pumped back to the pit wall i'm thinking about car collection who do still have two cars in there in the race Rene Rassid just came in from a temporary lead and Patrick Niederhauser who's at the wheel of the 24 Phoenix still have two Audis they used to have three you remember the five crashing overnight when Kelvin van der Linde was in his second car he jumped across to the 15 that he was also named at against once that incident had happened but they've still got the 15 that leads the race and the number 16 car of Kuba Gimaziak and the 16 shouldn't be discounted for top five finish just yet. But um, conditions are brightening up most places now. Well, the sky even looks brighter, doesn't it? We've yeah. Just over the uh, over the pit start finish straight, it's uh, it's brightened up. The clouds breaking up to the right towards the castle. The, the, and I think that's the direction the weather's coming, isn't it? From the castle. Which was really over to sort of Exmuller and Breitscheid, and it, it, it uh, arrives at Arenberg sometimes as well. So, yeah, yeah over so in that corner of the track, and then it depends how far it stretches. But I, I was surprised it got all the way across to the Grand Prix track earlier on, and so heavily. And now, as quickly as it arrives, it's just stopped again. It's a light breeze as well, so the weather's moving very, very slowly. It's true. Yeah, the. Uh, great load of uh, flags that uh, are immediately opposite our commentary box on the inside of the circuit fluttering gently that's a great word i was get, i was thinking what word is johnny going to use there fluttering fluttering love it yeah well they, they were, are fluttering they were billowing earlier on in the yeah. week and um, sometimes you know go out of the commentary uh, box open the door and it whips back on the hinges and against uh, the booth itself but we've got a much more genteel breeze today which is bringing some weather systems in but taking them away again gently too there are still raindrops evident though now at Flansgarten and Brunchen and heading towards Ice Curva which is lacking in grip hence the name most of the time actually but these two cars are right together now Lawrence, uh, rather Dries Van Tor and uh, Fabian Schiller separated well as they left us by a little under four seconds it's about four or five car lengths now with the Mercedes it, it should be reveling in this part of the circuit with the cut slick on three and a half hours to go and we've got less than what's that about a second and a half between the leaders Dries Fanto at the wheel of the number 15 Audi Sport Team Phoenix Audi R8 and Fabian Schiller at the wheel of the Mercedes get speed Mercedes AMG GT3 and these cars are circulating together it's going to come down to perhaps an element of luck if that rain I mean if we look at the sky around the track up towards the 
trying to carousel both cars out of there. We're getting towards the final stages of the lap. They'll soon be going through that sweeping right-hander. First bit of the right-hander onto the Dottinger hole, a little bit tighter, and then it opens up. It becomes a, a downhill sweep onto the main straight, and it's maybe here that we see the Mercedes of Schiller pick up that big hole in the air and be dragged along by the Audi. The Audi moves to the right, then it moves to the left. The Mercedes just sits in the Audi's wheel tracks. Not quite close enough, I think, to pick up that slipstream, though. And the gap has remained exactly the same. Just look how matched the performance on these cars are. The thing I notice about the Mercedes is it doesn't have the straight line poke that the Schubert BMW has got. Because you remember Alexander Sims was pursuing Kelvin van der Linde uh, just before Sims left the track in the first bit of rain we had all race long and the BMW was able to haul up to the back of the Audi and then power past in time for the turn in at Antonius Bucher but the Mercedes despite having that draft from the back of the Audi just couldn't get close enough and there is a point where you get within about two car lengths and then you pick up about what seems like 10 k's per hour more than the car in front and just bomb past but get speed not able to do it there into turn one the right and then the left it's almost a hairpin right and hairpin left to start the lap off here they're onto the grand prix part of the track and the mercedes across the line was would you believe a half a second so from four seconds down to half a second we don't really need to stop watch now do we you can see that and that four seconds was all in the seventh sector of the lap which obviously is the longest sector of the lap mm. uh, and m most of the fiddly stuff but uh, four sectors in one single uh, four seconds in one single sector plus we also saw the 15 Audi just getting caught a little bit by uh, the alternative fuels Mustang uh, through the tear garden which uh, didn't allow him to carry the, the maximum speed he would like to have done well it was half a second across the start finish straight it's a little bit more than half a second i would say as they get towards the i say that it's about three quarters of a second don't get excited everybody the mercedes is still staying with the number 15 audi out through the king towards the v-doll chicane they've got a couple of back markers to circumnavigate before they get to the braking area of the chicane lights flashing on the audi dries van Tour needing to clear this traffic he does one car he's got one car ahead of him towards the sabine schmidt left-hander onto the nordschleifer and the audi has cleared the two back markers now schiller in the mercedes clears the second car so they're back together clear road ahead of them but that traffic has caused that gap to open right up now and i would say that's almost about let's say that's about a second maybe 1.2 by my estimation so the Audi's still on completely slick tyres, that's what we're saying, isn't it? They didn't change to... Definitely. Didn't, didn't yeah, change they to inters, yeah. whereas the Mercedes behind could slip. Is it possible that the, it's the four that's on the cut slip and not the three? I, yeah, I wondered that. Ah. Have we got ourselves a little bit mixed up? Well, it was Gunon that came in, wasn't it? And I reckon they... Because I was getting confused thinking Schiller was in the pits when he wasn't. I, got, yeah, we the Schiller pit stop was whilst we were on highlights we didn't see so that we didn't yeah. see what he's on but i'm going to say he's on cut slicks just by the way that the the car is well he loses he, he lost time on a fully dry grand yeah, prix track exactly when we go out into the countryside on the Nordschleife, life he starts gaining ground and through that seventh sector that was where it was slightly damp wasn't it what we need to be doing is comparing Gilles Gounon's pace, who we know is absolutely on intermediates and fabian schiller and uh, is the number three mercedes able to go a fair bit quicker than Gunon. Um, it's marginal, yeah, isn't it? It's, it, it, it's uh, you know what? It, that's it's always going to be possible. Of course, to, you do know what traffic they've encountered. Yeah, that's not entirely reliable, I suppose. Uh, last time around, Gunon. Now that wasn't his out lap, was it? It was an 8:30.186, whereas Schiller did an 8:25. But five seconds can easily be explained by some traffic i reckon running deep and out of now force there was dries vantor and now the mercedes is properly on the back of the audi r8 looking for a way by we're going to go left and then left again at metzgersveld in a moment and dries vantor positioning the car perfectly so the mercedes cannot get a run into this part of the circuit the harder stop through the left hander they're now heading towards callenhard and fair siphon but that was Dries Van Tor getting a touch crossed up at the bottom of the foxhole and into Adenauer Force. Gap massively closed up, but he's weathered the storm. Information from the Get Speed Mercedes team. They are, that 
the number three is on the slick tyre. On the full slick? They're both on full slicks. So both the 15 and the three are on full slicks. That's it was the four that went under the cut tyre. Yeah. I just wanted to clear that up because it was an element of doubt creeping in. I think Schuller's going quite a bit quicker than Gounon here. Where the conditions favour the full slick, and that's the majority of the Nordschleifer now. I wonder what happened to Dries Fantel. We'll get a chance to explain that to you in a moment or two again. He caught at least one back marker, but it was more of a just a slight misjudgment. Keeping a keen eye on the 15 car, because we know all is not necessarily well with that machine, with the mechanics uh, jumping on top of it every time it comes in for each eight-lap stint to make sure that the problem around the engine bay has not got any worse. Pace looks very good at the moment, heading up the hill through the fast stuff at Kesselschen and through Klostertal. And then they'll leap on the brakes again to head right and dramatically left through the carousel. No water on the windscreen throughout the whole lap so far. So not only is it not raining, but it does look as though the circuit is back to dry conditions. We are now in the seventh section of the lap. This is where the time was made up by Fabian Schiller last time through, but it does look as though it is not, it perhaps wasn't down to weather and more down to traffic. Flakes of debris being thrown at Schiller, but I think you're right, there was no water there. That was more tyre pickup um, affecting the screen briefly. Both at the carousel together, Joe. The three pitted just before the rain came, and Ian McCarthy's tweeted that the decision to go under the cut slick for the number four was probably based on information from the number three. If I mean, Schiller reporting into the team how wet it was, because at that point it was. At that was point, yeah. Slipping and sliding around, and at that point, the, the cut slick that went on to Jules, Goun Jules Goulon's car was the right decision. However, hindsight is a wonderful thing, and... The tyres have to be on there for eight yeah, laps, you've not got, one lap. You've got to react to the moment, haven't you? Because uh, you can lose so much time doing... being on the wrong tyre at the wrong time. How many times have we seen that over the years? The Mercedes not catching the Audi as, uh, as readily as we thought. The gap across the line last time by was half a second. I don't think it's got as good straight line speed as the Audi. And uh, that was mm. you know, demonstrated on the Dottinger Hoor when, when it got the chance to gain so much ground in the draft and couldn't do it. And, well, we now know that they're on the same type of tyre. So it's not going to be a, a firm advantage either way there but it just can't, um, it seemed to be keeping up with the Audi up the hill towards the carousel, but through the fairly high speed corners, whether that's slightly better aero or not as much poke from the engine, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll monitor it on the dotting of at the end of this lap. I'd be interested to see whether the Audi can gain yet more ground. Alexander Sims, who's basically chasing these two cars, but quite a bit further down, has just done a personal best um, speed track time at 209 kilometers per hour through sector five. So that uh, BMW with its straight six twin scroll turbocharged engine still providing good punch through a fairly long sector there, taking a minute and three quarters. On to the Dottinger Hoor now, in fact. And wow, yeah, an absolute best long sector there for Dries Van Tor. Conditions are fantastic right now on the racetrack. And that Audi has just produced the best sector seven of the race. I think that was down to a nice clear sector as well. But we were saying the Audi is really stretching its legs away from Fabian Schiller. Schiller duly sets his car's uh, personal best sector seven but he is over a second slower than the Audi. 1.2 seconds slower, and that gap has just gone out, hasn't it? Let's see what it is across the line. As Dries van Tour crosses the line, eight minutes, 29, still eight minutes, 13. Sorry, just waiting for that to update. So getting back on the pace, aren't we? The gap is out to 1.8 seconds. Let's call that 1.9, so almost two seconds now, the gap, and awesome piece of driving there on that lap 136 laps completed for these leaders just under three hours 20 to go what a dramatic finish as ever 
for this race. Uh, Tremendous. I love the optimism of our Tidal Screens having a theoretical best mm. uh, because, as we've spoken to a multitude of drivers across these 24 hours, it's impossible to have a perfect lap to round the Nordschleife. Yeah. Uh, the theoretical best lap uh, is a 7, an 8.07.7, uh, wow. which is a, a good, what, four seconds off the fastest lap of the race, which is uh, Rafael Marcello at the moment, number 12 machine, with an 8.11. So that is faster than we had uh, in race conditions last year. And there has been, as we are in now, uh, some green clear running, which is quite nice. We've still got 118 cars on the track, so there's plenty uh, of traffic to contend with, but having completely green flag running and uh, potentially no wet conditions, and as we've seen through Sector 7, it's, it's as good as any uh, at the moment. It's running fast out there. Yeah, that theoretical best column is telling us uh, if you take the 15 Audi, and its best individual sectors throughout the whole race and add them together, you get an 8.07. But what the timing screen's doing as well, if you look above that, which I hadn't spotted before, is taking all of the sectors, the best sectors from any of the cars and adding those together. So if you could be in, I don't know, a Mercedes on the Grand Prix track, an Audi on the Hatton track, <laughs> an Aston Martin through the carousel, I'm just picking these uh, cars and numbers or out of the were, blue. Or if you were a robot. Or if you were a robot didn't make a on a simulator, yeah. you could, folks, do an 806 around the Nürburgring Nordschleife and not just an 806, an 806 flat, <laughs> 0 0.084. But that would require you switching cars probably about 11 times at north of 250 kilometers per hour. Yeah, because every almost every single sector of the lap is being set by a different, different car. car. <laughs> well, that's balance of performance, isn't it? Yeah, basically in the, yeah. in the making there and trying to get a car good on one part of the track and another car good through the, let's say, through the corners and one car on the straights. And when you combine them all together, ultimately that time means nothing, but it's still quite fascinating. 806.0. Back to the matter in hand. Third place BMW of Alexander Sims in the pits. And Sims, I'm going to tell you exactly what he's done. He's, uh, oh, computer's playing up again. Uh, Sims should have done an eight lap stint. That's what we've been seeing. Yes, he has. And I think it will be according to their rotation. Ah, now they've gone to single stints now. So, ah, it was Jesse Crum. I'm not going to even hazard a guess. I'm just going to wait and see who appears in that number 20 BMW. Keep an eye on how far he drops down. He's dropped down to fourth place, just behind the number four Shugunon driven get speed Mercedes as the Schubert car takes on. It's pit stop. Fifth place is the Hassa car collection Audi R8. And in seventh, Marciello in the Team Bilstein Mercedes car 12, running in sixth. Um, is it time for a class update, Johnny? I think it is, yes. Uh, we a, a are while. approaching quarter to one in the afternoon now. That means three hours and 15 minutes to go. And just remind you before we go into this class update that the top two positions are separated by a very small margin indeed six seconds five seconds there or thereabouts from Dries Van Toy in the 15 Phoenix Audi from the BWT backed get speed Mercedes of Fabian Schiller so VT3 is the uh, starting at the back and working forward as, as I've been doing VT3 is being led by the number 300 uh, that's the Porsche that we saw on the outside of the carousel though, Johnny. I'm not sure if that car is still running because we saw that leaking fluids down the, the banking of the carousel. Good point. At, at the moment, it's classified as leading VT3. That's the team Matto Porsche Cayman. Um, car 300, it's an 85th place overall. Yeah, SP3 is being led by the number 120, the Toyota Gazoo Racing Toyota Corolla, car 120 and 77th overall. VT2 front, is the GT Tire Volkswagen Golf, car 223, that's in 75th overall. V4 has uh, the Rockstar Games by Viken BMW 325, car 323, that's in 74th place overall. SP6, well SP6 only has one car and that's the Crawls BMW M3, the Hofer racing car, uh, leading SP6, car 200 in 70th place overall. The V6 class, as the team saw Rensport Porsche Cayman, 
car number two to it. That's in 67th place overall. Cup X is being led by the Titan Racing KTM. That's in 160. Uh, that's car 161 in 64th place. 61st place is where the V5 class leader, the Adrenaline Motorsport Porsche Kim, car 444. SP4 T class being led by the number 718 Porsche 718 GTS. That's in 59th. Uh, the BMW M240i class is being led by the number 240, right, rather rapidly. That's the Adrenaline Motorsport BMW uh, M240. It's in 54th place overall. Cup 5, that's the BMW M2 class. That's being led by the Schubert Motorsport car 880. They're in 53rd overall. And then the VT2 Hecker, that's Adrenaline Motorsport's BMW 330, car 330 in 50th overall. The Alternate Fuels class is being led by the number 320. That's the four motors by a concept Porsche GT3. It has been the head of that field for some time now. They're in 49th place overall. And then the SP3T, the Stanko Autorama Seat Leon. They're in 43rd place overall for car 113. SP7 is car 70 in 30th overall. That's the Hubert Motorsport Porsche 911. SP80 is the door motorsport Aston Martin Vantage. They are in 25th place, that's car 95. SP10 is being led by car 78, that's the FK Performance Motorsport BMW M4. And that is the, uh, that car is in 23rd overall. Cup 3 is the Schmickler Performance Porsche 718, that's car 264 in 22nd. TCR is still being led by the Hyundai Elantra of Hyundai Motorsport, that's car A30, they're in 21st overall. Cup 2, the Porsche Cup uh, class, Kramer Racing's car 127 in 18th place overall. SPX still has the click and now 706 in 15th place overall leading that class. And the SP9 class, our overall leaders, the number 15, uh, Team Phoenix Audi of Dries Van Tour, they're still leading the class and indeed the race overall. Um. Fear not, we, uh, if you were paying attention to us in sound and vision, just revisiting Lawrence Van Tor's crash from yesterday in the Grello Manti Porsche. We have got a Code 60 out on track though at Vipperman because uh, Peter Hansen in the Max Cruiser racing car, number 811, running third in the TCR class, is no longer uh, in motion. Now, I'm not sure whether he's clattered the tyre barrier, the uh, metal barrier, or indeed the car's just stopped. But there's already a Code 120 and then into two Code 60 Marshall posts to deal with his recovery. So TCR, you mentioned the race leader, Joe, in that rundown, which is the 830 Hyundai Elantra, but from the same... Uh, not, pardon, not from the same team, from Max Cruiser Racing, who have three cars in the race this year. Audi RS LMS, RS3 LMS with the DSG box could be out of the race, car number 811, and another hazard for everybody else on the racetrack to deal with. Max Cruz, not sure if any of our um, viewers and listeners know exactly who he is, but yeah. he's a professional footballer. He plays up front for VfL Wolfsburg, I Wolfsburg. was reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what sort of season they've had, Johnny. I'm not uh, really Wolfsburg. a follower of Bundesliga. Oh. Now, the moment for the Max Cruz at Audi was coming through Vipperman, Flansgarten, and he certainly has had big damage on the left-hand side of the car. These TCRs built very toughly but I would be surprised if that car can come back home on it under its own steam. Bed. It's not going to be towed either because he's lost the rear end. Obviously, front-wheel drive car has lost the rear end, perhaps on colder tyres, and recorrected, which has dragged him wide of the line. The rear end is connected with the barrier, quite a weak part of a TCR car, so the tracking arm will have broken from that first impact. That's then sucked the car back into the barrier for a second go, and eventually it settles along the Armco barrier uh, for a third time. So. Uh, I'm sure the left side is not pointing in the right direction. It won't be an e certainly not under his own steam, potentially not an easy recovery as well. We might have uh, a Code 60 and some repairs to do. Probably not a big enough impact to damage the Armco though, uh, which of course we have seen when, when cars go a bit more acutely uh, into these metal barriers. True, the momentum was certainly with that. I mean, it's a fast part of the track, Vipperman, Flatsgarten, had a car where everybody tends to take off at Flansgarten, attacked that up as a Porsche 
very early this morning, which caught the kerb in just the wrong place, and that pitched it very nearly into a roll at Flans Garten. And that car has been picking up lots of penalties throughout the race, actually. Uh, we've seen him being investigated for speeding in the pit lane. It's now got a speeding under code 60 penalty of three and a half minutes. Uh, plus one penalty point. So the race stewards, who I felt were a little bit harsh in qualifying, started the race quite lightly, I thought, in terms of some of the penalties that we saw, and are now stamping down. We've actually got one driver out in the field from the 125 Uber Motorsport car, who not only has had been disqualified from the event, he's also had his license rescinded for doing 220 kilometers an hour in an 120 kilometer an hour zone. Ooh. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, well, if you were in rallying, you'd get a 5,000 euro fine and told you're a really naughty boy on a main road, on a public road. Penalties around the world are all over the place. Wow. Yeah, there that, that doesn't seem to be a great deal of consistency, I suppose, from <laughs> discipline to discipline, but that, that's always been the flavour of a decision like, or a, a breach of the regulations here at the Nürburgring. They clamp right down on it, and I uh, would have thought message very firmly received. In that regard, 100 kilometres over the code 60 speed limit, did you see it? Or the 120 kilometre speed limit? That's that's kind of a due care and attention offence, isn't it? It's uh, it could have been nasty that. It could have been very nasty that. And I take it he overtook cars doing it. My well, German's not good enough to understand right. that, but uh, I do know it was at post 200. Right. Well, that's right at the end of the lap, Hohenrein, um, which is the, basically the link road between the Nordschleife and the Grand Prix track. Maybe trying to get in for a pit stop, running out of fuel, wanting to get back as frankly as possible. There are no excuses. Um, no. But to me, I mean, <laughs> it feels like speeding is easier to do than something as blatant as overtaking a car in a yellow flag zone. But... Who knows? I think one of the interesting things about racing here versus many other racetracks is because you don't have a much runoff area, the flags are right on top of you. It's not, yeah. Yeah. It's not that hard to... It's not that... Yes, you can't miss them. Yeah. Really, they're there. They're almost in your you know, face, aren't Yeah, they? we race at a place like Silverstone, and the flag point is so far away that if you are focusing on that apex, you're not looking at a Marshall Post yeah. hundreds of metres away. Close to you on the right, yeah. Marshall Post way over on the left. Exactly. It's not in your natural eye line. Here... Exactly, yeah. I mean, particularly, I noticed this when we've had the various incidents at Schwedenkreuz and Arenberg. Think about the flaming KTM and Team Matol Porsche going off. When you are arriving at Schwedenkreuz, at goodness knows what sort of rate, 200 k's and more, it's full and centre, that yellow flag when it's out. You know, you cannot miss it. And the Marshall Posts will have been designed in that way, but equally, they've got to be... Um, evenly distributed around, you know, 200 marshal posts around a 25 kilometre circuit. So there are going to be some areas where they're a little more awkward to see, but that's what's, da you know, the driver's briefing will detail where they all are. And that's also the, the importance of getting your ring license through either NLS races or the qualifying weekend, as it was this year, two three-hour races, one on Saturday and one on Sunday, to become acclimatised if you are new to this type of racing and it's there's nothing else quite like it folks around the world the two leaders coming back together we saw the mercedes dropping off the tail of the number 15 audi the number three mercedes now coming back towards it it was one and a half seconds of the gap at the line last time by they're getting towards the final stages of the of the lap it looks like and the mercedes once again completely dry track by the way we've been talking about rain in, in spots it seems like only a few moments ago it's about 20 minutes ago where we had rain and, and a damp track at parts of this track that's completely gone now the sun's come out the uh, the clouds have broken we are not discounting the possibility of further rain we're into the brunching area of the circuit so still a considerable of amount to go but the Mercedes it seems now coming that car coming back to Fabian Schiller and he's gaining ground every corner every braking area he looks like he's closing the gap well they are dragging the uh, TCR Audi out the way if that indeed was the TCR Audi at the was, back of the yeah because yeah, that was a little bit further around at Flanscott and the car left the road at Vipperman so still affected by yellow flags, but they might have been able to lift the speed restriction now. 120 k's into 60. 
So less of a chance of the gap between the top two cars altering going into that and out the other side. Very dark cloud away in the distance, I notice, as the cars head towards the Kleiner Carousel. But hopefully, I'm just trying to work out the orientation of that now, is that the weather we've had? Because the sunshine is still evident, but the dark clouds above Galgenkopf, which is the lingering right-hander that really just it feels like it's never-ending. Eventually it does, though, and brings you out onto the Dottinger Hoor. And Audi 15 putting another lap on, I think, the Twin Bush Team Keep Audi. Yeah, that's the number 11 machine that Pierre Kaffer is part of that driving lineup. Pro Am car and about to go a further lap down for car number 11, running in 17th position. Leader clearing the Audi, but the Mercedes, the chasing Mercedes, slotting in behind the back marker into the tear garden. They come sweeping left then right got to get round here it's the whole for mercedes bmw oh, for mercedes the whole for teams bmw and the mercedes being bolted a little by that audi of pierre kaffer as they cross the line and the gap was 1.5 seconds last time by it ebbs and flows around the uh, 25k track it's 1.4 so no change if you look at the stats lap on lap, there's been no change between those two cars heading out on front. This is where we see the Mercedes getting by the back markers now. It's got clear track towards the rear end of the Audi. However, as ever in this race, there is more traffic ahead. A little bit compromised, wasn't he, on the exit there? Just yeah. couldn't quite get the throttle down as early as Dries Van Thor and actually had been compromised in the tier garden as well. So whilst the gap uh, was 1.4, Pretty consistent, actually, from one, one lap to the next. Uh, yeah. We will have lost a little bit through that, but I think uh, the Dries Van Thor Audi was then compromised going down the hill on the Grand Prix loop to the hairpin, just caught a traffic at the wrong point. And indeed, that uh, gap has come down again, still on the Grand Prix loop. And once again, Dries Van Thor having to go wide and around the outside of a, a slower BMW through the Schumacher S's. So the gap decreases even more. Uh, just a tenth faster with Schiller through sector one. Uh, it's going to be a lot faster through sector two. We're not even on to the Nordschleife yet. Uh, but uh, I would say, what, two car lengths, three car lengths? Yeah, if that, I think the elastic band will severely condense when they get to the end of the lap. My wording was probably sending you down a blind alley there, Joe. Not Pierre Kaffer in the car, it's Pierre Kaffer's ah, right, team. Sorry. That right. was actually Arno Klassen, who's the bronze in a Pro-Am lineup. So that's the reason why he was taking his time. You know, he's found himself a measured pace uh, to punch out. Well, he did the right thing. He just stayed on his line. That's it's what we're told to do in the yeah, briefing. Absolutely. The quicker car will get by, and the, the quicker car will want you to do that so he can predict where you're going to put your car. Yeah. So the Ikeep Vitesse car with Klassen at the wheel running in 17th position. They might still be on for a Pro Am podium. It's still the number six car, I reckon, of Pro Am driver lineups. Car six, the Bilstein Mercedes, that leads that class. Schiller leaning on the flashers. Every moment he's got a chance to flash the Audi ahead, but also, of course, the traffic too. He is doing it and just about clearing uh, the BMW as they get back up to speed again in the slipstream over the brow of the hill, even closer between our leading two. The gap at the next split will be registered at just 0.4 of a second. It's certainly not the 1.4. It was at the line down to four tenths of a second then. So this battle rages. Isn't this remarkable? You know, safety cars tend to bring the field back together, right? And we don't have safety cars in this race. And yet we've got two cars on a very similar strategy with four tenths of a second separating them after 21 hours of racing. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. brilliant. And in fact, 24 hours, uh, 21 hours, bang on. There it is. Three hours to go of the 50th anniversary race for the 2022 24 hours of the Nürburgring, powered by Total Energies. A big squeeze for the race leader, having to get by two abreast BMWs. That is Dries Van Tor trying to thread his way through. And unfortunately for Fabian Schiller, he couldn't find a way by either. So there was no way of capitalizing on that moment. Probably only about 20 minutes ago, Dries Van Tor had a a unforced error into an Adenauer force which closed up the gap and this is the pressure Fabian Schiller just sitting on the tail of the Audi 
can force Dries Van Tor potentially into a missed step. So three hours just under, still to go, and this is by no means done yet. Audi and Mercedes still in the mixture, and possibly a BMW for the podium yet, in the form of Schubert Motorsport. The next racing hour begins right now. Exmuller, the scene of the lead battle, and the traffic, as it so often does, clumping here at the Nürburgring, when you've got uh, the, some of the slower cars needing to be lapped by the middle order, and then they're needing to be lapped by the SP9, the GT3 leaders, and Fabian Schiller almost wanting to hold back a little bit if Dries Van Tor is involved in an incident, because very easily here, Ben Constant-Juras, we could have the two cars that lead the race involved in the same crash. Especially when so close Fabian Schiller is uh, to the rear wing of the Audi, he hasn't got any chance to respond if the Audi does have to brake heavily for a slower car or finds himself his nose chopped off. Interestingly, now we're on the flat out sections with pedal to the metal the Audi does stretch its legs a little bit and has a little bit of an advantage we've said this before the Mercedes doesn't seem to have the top speed and the legs that perhaps the BMW has and does seem to lack a little bit to the Audi Schiller now in the slipstream drawing up back to the gearbox and the rear end of that Audi but the initial acceleration zone lost a couple of cars lengths Klostertal is such a scary left-hander that uphill stretch is just absolutely flat chat. And Klostertal's a little bit of a lift. You heard the drivers there in the background just lifting for the left-hand king. Towards the carousel then, it's Fantor leading the Mercedes into the carousel ball. That concrete that forms the banking of the carousel, been there since the circuit was built back in the, uh, the 1920s and 30s, and iconic photographs of the Caracciolas and the and the like, the auto unions, they are nose to tail now. They're tripping over left and right, tripping over back markers left and right. They're into the technical part of the Nordschleife now. Which means it's harder to get out past traffic. It really it's also is, yeah. harder to overtake generally. It's the uh, left and right of the Brunchen section of track that follows the carousel after poor act they've through Whippham and now heading towards Brunchen through the right-hander the difficult thing around here for the lower speed cars is they actually need to be on the racing line yeah. they can't afford to be slightly wide because if they are they'll have an almighty accident there's no downforce pushing a TCR car into the ground it's almost floating over parts of this circuit uh, and that then also creates even more trouble for these faster GT3 cars that actually can go offline because they're being stuck to the ground with the downforce but it's still so marginal around this sector 7 of the lap where all the work is done Hot sticky tyres and slicks for both of these cars and that uh, invisible hand of downforce helping the SP9s out. But think about the four guys that are here this year in the Dacia Logan <laughs> running in SP3. Fifth place in SP3, let me remind you. And Oliver Creaser doing a cracking job through that right-hander on the run into the first concrete section. They're at the second one now at Schraubenschwanz. But uh, these two GT3 cars that lead the race need to go round the outside of Oliver Creaserman in the little Dacia just before the carousel. To give uh, everybody else the name check in that team, Jürgen Busman, Michael and Yannick Lachmeyer, and... Um, Nutters. Was, yeah. There are a lot of them. Cor correct. <laughs> but we had a few drivers in here overnight, including uh, Fabian Pietzmeyer, saying, actually, when you encounter the Logan, they're doing a really good job. You know, indicator flashing to say, I'm going to head at this side of the track, and uh, the rest of the racetrack to, to my left is yours. But uh, they're brave, brave souls, and the Dacia Logan's still running. The number three Mercedes is definitely not as quick as the Audi on the straight. He was closer to the Audi as they came out onto the Dottinger Hoh straight. They're already through Tiergarten now, and the gap has not closed at all. There was, there was no picking up of the slipstream. So the Mercedes struggling on the straight, no question getting right on the tail of the number 15 leading Audi through the twists and the turns of the whole of the track, but onto the dotting of all, and if anything, the Audi very comfortable in just sitting there. They're into turn one. That's the right and left chicane and out onto the Grand Prix track.
dramatic skies, isn't it, around the circuit. Uh, to the west of the circuit seems to be where the weather has disappeared off to. Uh, although, drops Ooh. of rain on Raffaello Marcelli's windscreen in the number 12, which sits in fifth position. And this is where the weather's been coming in from all weekend, from Exmuller, from Brightshide, that second entry to the Nordschleife for tourist laps and the lowest part of the circuit. So again, the red and yellow striped flags waved by the marshals to indicate either debris on the circuit or in this case, a slippery road surface. And heading now through Bergwerk and on the run up towards the really quick stuff, you don't really want it to be wet along here through Kesselsen and Klostertal, but Raffaele Marchiello is gonna to have to be prepared for the worst. It almost feels like as you climb out of the valley again, that's where the weather improves once more. It's down in the dip where the low cloud is hanging around. Again, what what do you do as a driver? You you see the you see the raindrops on your windscreen, and that immediately thinks how much you think how much grip have I got? And these long stretches of flat out stretches on the Nordschleife, then into heavy braking areas. That terrifying, terrifying to think that you're going to go on the brake and find your tyre slipping through the right under just getting around the outside of a bat marker. This is the air, this is the kind of area what I'm talking about. And then, you know, up the hill towards the carousel through the, the twists and turns, and then into the banking. Stays on the outside, out of the banking, because a bat marker was on the inside using the ball. And that's our all-lady team. Different line there altogether, wasn't it? In the BMW GT4. Uh, All-female driver lineup, but moreover, all-female pitched crew as well. Pippa, Pippa Man, that was, in the third-placed SP8T BMW M4. Probably very at home on a banked <laughs> Panda, <laughs> considering her yeah. number of years in the Indy 500. Fabian Vulven's part of that team, and she's celebrating her 100th race Is that this right? weekend, uh, uh, in total, in the world of racing. Right, so not here at the Nürburgring, because no. that would be some record. Yeah. But, uh, Especially race. she's quite young. Yes, 100th race uh, in a relatively short career, but it's a great initiative, the GT tyre motorsport by WS Racing M4 GT4 and at the moment they are in a podium slot for class SP8T it's the number 12 Mercedes the Bilstein livery car that holds the lap fastest lap of this race 8 minutes 11.639 last time through Marcello Rafael Marcello 8 minutes 12.1 he's not far away from that fastest lap is he He's pressing on. Ah, now that's proper rain. Proper rain on the windscreen of Fabian Schiller's number three Mercedes. Oh, Maxi Gotts. And Maxi Gotts knows what that means. A little bit of puff, purse, lips, and a puff of air out of, like, the... <sighs> trying yeah. to stop me out there. That's probably what he was thinking. Uh, Is now he, the or does, would he prefer to be in the car when he's fully in control? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Now the rain kind of subsides. It was pretty heavy rain on the windscreen of the number three there. And now we can see that the rain has subsided. So, again, oh. voyage of discovery when the, when the weather's like this. Well, they haven't got yet to the bit where we know from Raffaele Marciello it was really starting to pour as well. Adenauer forced, affected by rain. Windscreen wipers still on the intermittent setting for Fabian Schiller having to sometimes stray off the ideal racing line because down the hill toward Brightshide, there was a middle order Cayman there, which is also doing a fair lick down the hill. I suppose this is role reversal for Kelvin van der Linde. Remember when he was pursuing Alexander Sims and could react to Sims's moment at Metzgersfeld. This time he's the leader and Fabian Schiller has that slim advantage. This is sector five on your timing screens. Uh, normally taken at about one minute, 47 seconds. That's what Raphael Marcello was managing even with the rain on the windscreen. These guys haven't completed that sector. They're about to do so. But other drivers who have been through it, yes, they're nearly two minutes to take through that particular sector. So that's nearly 15 seconds lost just in one sector of the lap because Marcello, uh, who, by the way, has now come into pit lane in the Bilstein Mercedes, had just starting to rain conditions and now we've seen very very strong rain uh, on the windscreen just marginally uh, for Schiller and van der Linde as Maxi Gutz gets his balaclava on he is getting ready to go out onto circuit that's probably explaining the puff of the cheeks as well. <laughs> Very smart spectacles this weekend for Maxi Gertz. They having to be removed so he can put the fireproof balaclava on. 
and helmet and hands device will follow shortly too but the backdrop of the Nuremberg castle up on the hill is completely black and also as the cars heading out of uh, Galgenkopf and onto the uh, Dottinger Hoor skyline not looking particularly hopeful either for the near future. What get speed need is for Jules Gounon, who we know has got those cut slick tyres, to go through that sector of the lap. He's, he's not been losing a huge amount of time with the cut slicks, to be honest, mm. but will he gain time in that wetter sector? It's the first real opportunity to see if those cut slicks if they are still cut slicks and the cuts haven't disappeared, yeah. uh, actually do anything because Schiller's coming into the pits this time by. We won't see the Audi come in until one or two laps later. So this is an opportunity to get speed to react. Is that rain cloud going to deposit more rain across more of the circuit? Is it going to linger for more laps? And therefore, can they afford to go cut slick like Gunnar has done? I think at the pace that these two have been at for this particular stint, it would be hard with the cut slicks to, to keep with Van der Linde, uh, but we really would like to see uh, Jules Gounod go through uh, sector five. He's been, he's just gone through sector four, and he's a second off what these guys did through that. So I think the rain is moving, and it's moving into more of the, the circuit. Seems a shame to break this up with Schiller having to pit this time, by. Uh, well, Tor otherwise, they'll run out of fuel. Jules. I know, Jules. I know. I wish we <laughs> Jules. Call me Jules. Yeah, I did. Yeah. All right. No, no. He's in the car. He's in number four. Um, it would be it would be great if we could do that uh, fuel them on the hoof but no Schiller's going to break up the party this uh, amazing battle that we've been watching now for pretty much the whole of this team since these drivers pitted last time and they got uh, came out on the track almost together they've ebbed and flowed away and closed back up to one another and then and then the Mercedes has dropped back off Fantour will have another lap after this one before he will then pit. But uh, as we've seen, Maxi Goetz getting ready to take over from Fabian Schiller. And the responsibility of bringing this car home with under three hours or final three hours remaining. Now that track was dry there. You heard Ben in the background go, Ooh. That's because we Schiller almost rode over the kerb and more there, didn't he? It sounded as though he actually bottomed out. Mm. Caught, the, the, caught the mini carousel at the wrong point and just lost the front end for a second, which looked for a moment as though he was heading to the uh, scene of the accident, but kept the car out of the barrier, but also just off the grass as well. Lost a bit of time, but he is, as you say, coming into the pits now uh, to swap drivers, perhaps change tyres, well, yeah, definitely change tyres and get a new tank of fuel. It's always horrible when Schwaben Schwanz becomes wet because greasy concrete, I mean, we talk about uh, asphalt not having much grip, but those concrete blocks just spit you out over the top and potentially into the barrier. We've had very uh, dramatic accidents like that through the years, but I think Joe's right, it hasn't yet started to rain at Schwalbenschwanz and uh, Galgenkopf and looking dry into Tiergarten and Hohenrein too. But it's getting wetter uh, down at the scene of our rain because Jules Gounon through that sector now at 2 minutes 03, four seconds slower than our leaders went through it. He even though he's got, got yeah. yeah. Although, as you said, uh, as your face implied, Joe, probably not got many cuts left in those slicks well, after being used for seven laps. They are going to be wearing, aren't, aren't they? The, the, the rubber does wear and the, and the grooves get um, less deep. Um, it's right, shallower is the word I was searching for there. The number three Mercedes into the pits then, as we uh, suspected. I think less deep's allowed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Well, I've said it now, so it's going to have to You be. said shallower as well. Uh, I, mean, I did you say covered all, covered all the bases there. Um, it's the man that's going to have to cover all the bases in the number three. Get speed Mercedes now, though. Maxi Gertz gets ready to get into the car. Fabian Schiller, great job. You know what? Yeah. Great job. Because that that's is a nice a, moment. Absolutely. You know what? That was a... Well done, mate. You did very well to bring this car home because all of those drivers out there with these changeable conditions are on a knife edge. When that weather changes and you've got those slick tyres getting cold and, and cooling off and then slipping and sliding around on the wet track, um, that really is why these boys and girls get paid the big bucks. Fabian Schiller, not yet gold rated, but I have a feeling it might, might be uh, just a matter of time because he is a true talent at 25 years old. Maxi Gert has got a few years on Fabian Schiller and has probably helped him a little bit uh, with some coaching, but as he, just before he took over, he actually just slapped the sides of Fabian Schiller's helmet in congratulations of uh, getting the car not only back straight, 
but at speed as well and being able to adapt to those constantly changing conditions. What Fabian's doing now is having a word with Maxi, saying where all the treacherous bits are and where to take it easy. It looks to me as on the timing screens as though it is definitely moving. It's affecting sector three now. S sector three is a slower sector by some five seconds across the minute. It's affecting sector four as well. That's nearly two seconds slower and it's only a 10 second sector. Uh, and potentially it's moved away from where it initially appeared in sector five because that seems to potentially getting a little bit faster again there. Mm -hmm. What goes on the car? Slick. It's got to be. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, there's no doubt about that. They're not anywhere near needing wet tyres. And that's what makes it hard because you're coming upon part of the track where you just met with this wall of rain that's kind of dampening the track. And I've yet to see sort of uh, sprayer being developed by the cars. Mm. We've, we've, once you see that, that's how we're playing te te Oh, yeah. Absolutely, but I mean, the way Get Speed have approached this now, they've got two cars, really nice positions, second and third for the three and the four, but one car's on cut slicks, old cut slicks and very worn, the other car is on slicks and they can monitor the two and decide which is best. So this is a, like a split strategy, if you like, and I don't know whether they... They won't have planned this from very far back. It was more to do with the timing of the individual pit stops. These cars have become separated on the strategy many hours ago. But because Get Speed have got two cars very much in contention, they have the luxury of just rolling the dice in two different directions and hoping one, one route will be a winner. Now, Maxi Gertz on an outlap, just being a little gingerly heading through the Yokohama S. Doesn't seem to be a great deal of grip down there No, on, on medium temperature tyres. A couple of stabs into the right hand of the first corner and then lost the rear he did. Uh, on the exit of the second. So I wonder when we've got rain on the Grand Prix track again. Uh, it, it's what we had last time. Interestingly, the weather and the wind has changed direction. We've now got a headwind down the main straight here. Uh, so potentially coming from a different direction, the rain that we saw passing to the west of the circuit might now be being blown back towards us again. And certainly creating huge challenges for everyone out there trying to read the conditions and trying to be as fast as possible. For the likes of Jules Gounon sitting there, three and a half minutes behind the leading battle, three and a half minutes ahead of its nearest rival, you don't have to be on the very knife edge. Of course, you want to be as much as possible. But that battle at the front of the field, Maxi Gutz needs to maximise his outlap uh, just in case uh, he can do some kind of undercut, overcut situation when Van der Linde comes into pit. The flat out stretches that we have on the Nordschleife, the run up the hill to Bergwerk through the right hander and then the run from Burtwork through Keschelchen to Klostertal. The left-hander at Klostertal, very, very tricky. Fully Drivers off the gas. Yeah, Sven Muller in the number 33 Porsche, well off the gas through Klostertal. That's a knife-edge area of the track. Now, this rain falling heavily on the run-up to the carousel, it's all uphill from here, breaking right off the gas, just feeding his way through. Will go cool through a little bit of a left kink and then into a right hander, and he's off the gas. And there, the understeer came. The understeer <laughs> came. The car. He turned the car, and this is exactly what I mean by Voyager discovery. He turned right, and the car went straight on. Yeah. This is the level of grip we're seeing. The concrete of the carousel. Horrible. I'm sorry, you said no way to cut slicks. I'm having cut slicks on that. Yeah, well, good shout, mate. Good shout. Yeah, it's but, really but, falling. Look at the camera. camera. But when I decided, it wasn't you really like this. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what all the uh, Getsby mechanics are saying now as well. It was the right shout at the time. But again, the rain is pounding down. And it's doing so at the carousel through Klostertal, Kesselschen, the build up to that. Hoar Act as well, the highest part of the circuit. And how long does the rain stay on the track all the way round to perhaps Flatsgarten? Very slow indeed for Kelvin van der Linde heading through the concrete and out the other side. For the first time though, Johnny, that's proper rain. Yeah. It's yeah. not this kind of thing purporting to be rain. It's hardly dampened the track. That's proper rain. We're seeing wet track now and we're going to see spray from the tyres. We're into, we're into uh, aquaplane territory now. Very tricky. 
Oh, he's nearly lost it, nearly in the barrier. That was feet away from the armco for Dries van Tor. Talk about a squirm and a slide. I thought that was game over, but amazingly, Dries van Tor staying beneath the white, between the white lines for the time being. What on earth is going to be around the next corner, though? And Dries van Tor needs to just take things carefully here, uh, getting no doubt real-time reports from the Phoenix Audi crew as to what he might expect in the next couple of sectors and reports quite possibly from Kuba Gimaziak depending on where he is around the lap he's in the other Phoenix Racing Audi car 16 which is still in sixth place but a heart in mouth moment then gentlemen yeah tricky 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 we're coming through where are we just coming out of brunch in there are we the, the ice ice curve, yeah, and down, yeah. down the hill, um, essentially towards Falvenschwanz. And we're now. coming out of the rear now. Yeah, it's starting yeah. to accelerate and starting to be able to generate heat and lean on the car a bit more again. Well, that's Flatsgarten where the cars often take off, but uh, that car glued to the asphalt now because of the dip in pace. So Brunchen next for Dries van Tort, then Ice Kerber. Kelvin van der Linden with the helmet on, getting ready to jump into this car. That means they're going to pit early, doesn't it? Let's have a look, see where they are on the schedule. No, uh, no they're, this, due in. they're due in this they're lap. Due in. Yeah. This is ideal because this is going to give them an opportunity to decide what tyres to go on because that now is getting dangerous. We saw how close the barrier he got and that was just doing the job, the job that he's been doing lap after lap after lap, doing exactly the same. But you can't do that anymore because now the track is wet. And Maxi Gertz on his out lap, six seconds slower than uh, Dries van Thor in sectors two, seven seconds slower in sector three. Of course, they went across those particular sectors at very different times. So that's how much the weather has affected those sectors. A little bit more on point in sector five, because that's the sector actually that doesn't have the rain any longer and is starting to dry up. Yeah. That was where it first appeared, but it seems to be getting faster there. Everywhere else, a lot slower. Sector seven, a two and a half minute sector is now over three. Mm. Windstream wipers working over time on the dotting of Horner, but at least Dries van Til hasn't got any spray to deal with. Amazingly, he's got to the dotting of her with hardly any traffic uh, in front of him. But pensive looks from the rest of the crew. Dries van Til just through a quirk of how the race is panning out, given this almighty stint as far as responsibility is concerned. Robin Freins watching on from the pit wall. Fred Verviche can't be far away. Kelvin van der Linder as well, but it is Dries van Tor, their man, who has to react like a, a cat on a hot tin roof to these ever changeable conditions. And he's going to die for the pit lane. So Team Phoenix calling this car in at the end of lap 133. And that, to me, seems like a sensible move with well, just over two and a half hours to go. That is their, uh, that is their oh, they're on, due. They're due anyway, yeah, right. So yeah. what it would have been fascinating if it, they'd only done six laps of their stint or seven laps of their stint. But they, thankfully, this is timed perfectly, therefore, for Phoenix. Yeah. And they will be getting on to probably full, full wets. You would, you would or not. think. I don't know. <laughs> you would think. There's enough of the track and it's damp enough. Well, first job is how is the engine bay and this supposed oil leak or something leaking away. Is that well, fire extinguisher? No, no, that's oil. That's oh, oil. oil. Oh, yeah. say. Pressure okay. canister. Yes. You push the oil into the engine to refill it. Proper rain on the start, finishing straight yeah. now out of our yeah. commentary box window. Guts was four seconds faster through sector six on this lap. Can't see what tyres are going on, Ben. Oh, I mean, if I'm standing in the pit lane, <laughs> I know what I'm going with. Uh, yeah. I'm not, yeah. Going, not going with slick tyres anymore. Look how tricky it is out on track. The number three, Maxi Gertz, slipping and sliding around in that Mercedes. He's taken the lead on the road by dint of the Vantor Audi being in the pits. Not yet. Oh, not yet. He's got a way to go before he gets oh, he's to, got the, a end yes, he's, end he's the lap. Yes, he's yet to make his way around. He needs to get to the oh, end of the lap yet. Oh, oh. Ice curver, right hander, and off onto the grass briefly there. So I thought he was struggling through Brunchen, but he did a very, very good job. There is some runoff curbing there. That's a famous place for so many fans to film. Cars have their own moments, some big uh, incidents in streetcars over the years at Brunchen. But Maxi Gertz kept it out of the wall and now is heading for Schwabenschwanz. So this is where Nicky Team left the road in the night in the TF Sport Aston Martin. 
bit of a squeeze from one of the RV and Zorg Rensport Porsche Caymans. Concrete section coming up next. Rain and concrete, never a good combination. No. And remember when Schiller brought that car in. Cut slicks, cut slicks Ooh. going on the number 15. Now we've got Maxi Gertz when he took over the car from Fabian Schiller. These two cars were right together. And now we're getting towards the end and the, uh, the, the the end of the pit stop for the 15, and Maxi uh, Maxi Goods has just come out of the Dottinger Hut. So as Maxi continues down the Dottinger Hut, we get, keep an eye on the pit lane as well, just across the way from us here. The problem is Goods lost 13 seconds at this, the start of the lap. What, yeah, this is what I'm wondering. But gained four in sector six and gained another in sector seven. I think the gap is going to have grown uh, mm -hmm. because dint of just the track conditions when Maxi hit sectors one, two, and three, which are quite different uh, to when uh, Therese Van Thor was there. Kelvin van der Linde is going to have pretty bad conditions on the first sector of the lap with the rain falling here on the track. There'll be temperature in Goetz's slicks. There'll be nothing in right. van der Linde's. Goetz can wait. He's through the tear garden. He's about to take the final turn and then head down past the pits as the number 15 Audi comes off the jacks and it's making his way out of pit road so he's got the full length of the pit straight Goods just coming onto the pit straight as the Audi left the pits and that gap is bigger than when these cars pitted but it's gonna be hard hard for the Audi in these first couple of corners it doesn't have any temperature in the tires yes they've been in blankets but they've also sat on the apron for about 15 20 seconds yep. and now are being doused in uh, cold wet rain um, mm. you can't get dry rain uh, <laughs> I know what you mean. Get warm rain. <laughs> you can get warm rain, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so th these are the tricky uh, areas of the outlap. It's not quite as it is in the States in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, the IMSA Sports Car Championship, where there are no tyre blankets allowed. So you get to DPI slithering and sliding for pretty much the full outlap. But Maxi Gertz next to no grip as he heads down the hill the cameras tend to flatten this part of the circuit out but it is a significant decline to this year the good year hairpin at the bottom of the hill and maxi gertz staying away from the natural apex of that right hand hairpin where the wetter uh, wetter rain <laughs> is gathering <laughs> to ah, your that, I'm, I'm seeing spray i'm seeing spray coming off the tires not off that, slick tyres. Not off slick tyres, yeah, yeah, but we're pushing water, the surface water now. So we're into, a, oh, we're into really dangerous territory. Slicks on that track surface. And we see Maxi Goat sliding wide and going off the track. That's not the ideal line through that section. Certainly not. And that's because we've got, we're now the water's beginning to, to stand on the track. And rather than just ebb away, it's enough rain to actually wet the track. Now, how does this time, which looks very, very slow, but uh, we understand the reasons why, compare to uh, Dries Van Tor's effort? Well, it's van, van three der seconds that he's, uh, that he's lost. Van der Linde, new driver in, I beg your pardon, yes. So, Kelvin van der Linde, 50.1 on the second part of the Grand Prix circuit, 53.3 from Maxi Gertz. And Christopher Haaser in the number 22 Audi. Now, the last time these cars ahead of him pitted, the 22 car collection out, he was able to take the lead, albeit briefly, for about a lap, but that has not been the case on this pit stop cycle. 22 in third, therefore. Philip Eng. Uh, no, that's not Eng, is it, in the number four? Because uh, Eng is very much a BMW man. So who's Engel. Will? Thank you, Maro Engel. Yeah, ENG confusing me. Uh, Maro Engel, the platinum rated driver, sharing the number four Mercedes with Gilles Gounon and Daniel Junkadea. Did they do a pit stop early? It's in the pits now, isn't it? Was it was in the pits now, four. It? Okay. And... I think that's a scheduled stop. I'll just check that for you. Well, we know that the three and the four have come out of alignment uh, regarding their eight-lap chunks, and that happened a little while ago. I think possibly by design for Get Speed so that they could pit the cars at least a lap apart. Gunan's on schedule, that will be Fine. eight laps completed when yeah. that car trips the beam as he comes out of the pits. Yeah, it has, yeah. And the other car that's in is Alexander Sims in the Schubert BMW from fifth position. So that will be pretty much on, on plan as well. Remember, the 20 car for a long time was three laps behind pretty much everybody else oh, stopping. I think Sims is in early. I think that's only half a stint for Alexander Sims on that last stint, because he's usually a completely different timing. Yeah. 
Well, Sims has only completed four laps. Right, so that's that got stint. to be connected so to the weather then. Yeah, that's half a stint. Yeah. So does that mean BMW are now going to throw something completely unique uh, at that car to see if they can claw back and get themselves back into contention? You've got to say that Schubert, at the moment, a little bit away from a podium position. It's got to be worth the risk, hasn't it? So I mean, what, like full wet? Uh, yeah, if you, let's try something completely different. But, well, the other thing is, because he's only done a four-lap uh, stint, he can do a much shorter pit stop compared to an eight-lap stint, because remember, the minimum pit stop time decreases well, by half, as far as I know. It's all mapped from the stint length that you've just done, unless we're into the final 70-odd minutes of the race, and then it swings around to being uh, referencing the time you've got to the end of the race. Yeah, you'll be back timing, and it takes about, it's about one hour and five to ten minutes per stint. Uh, we've got two hours and 28 minutes remaining, so actually we've, we, we've got to do two with a splash at the end at the moment. Yeah. We can only get to, but if the track slows down, if we're in wet conditions, we'll use less fuel perhaps, and maybe that 10 minutes that will be missing will be able to be caught up. But I think, I think Sims was on course to just have two laps, uh, two stints left. But by c coming in early, perhaps to do something special with the tyres, he's going to now put him in a position where he needs to do an extra pit stop. So to to fully flesh that out, Maro Engel, who's now on an out lap. His first sector, which includes the pit stop, took him three minutes and 50 seconds. Alexander Sims has gained a full minute there by doing the shorter stop after only four laps of the stint, because he's just done the first sector in two minutes and 46 seconds. So that's a shorter pit stop, and then the first half of the Grand Prix track. And he's by far the fastest man through the second sector of the lap as well, uh, which is still wet conditions. I wonder whether they have done something special with that BMW. Um, because his pace, and we'll, we'll confirm it as we go through more sectors of the lap, is a lot stronger than we've seen. Maxi Goetz, for instance, in sector two, Grand Prix track, did a 53 on one lap old slick tyres, whereas the Audis are in the 50s and the BMWs in the 47s. Yeah, on the, on the second bit of the Grand Prix track, we'll see what Alexander Sims can do through hats and back and Flugplatz. That's next sector, possibly more of an idea. A minute and 13 it is for Mauro Engel. Could be even quicker for the pursuing BMW. But when you're down in fifth place with a quick car, that Schubert BMW is a fast machine. It proved uh, that was the case on Friday in qualifying. Why not go outside of the box a little bit when, you know, who remembers a car that finishes in fifth? They're trying to make the podium. Yeah, you, you make complete sense, Johnny. The, the, the Schubert car was in contention uh, right the way through this race. It's only just fallen out of contention in the last few hours. Well, Jesse Crone very nearly made the top four in top qualifying one. It was only an errant KTM on the hats and back that lost a wheel, which meant that there was a Code 60 in place, and then he couldn't use the, se the second lap of his single lap qualifying, double lap qualifying when you've got the track to yourself. Um, to any use and, and could not progress to the second of the shootout sessions on Friday evening. But that Schubert Motorsport BMW, fast car, yes, rattled the barrier when Alexander Sims was at the wheel and the first bit of rain hit. Um, but I, should, I don't think we should count the yeah, number 20 car out just yet. And remember, the only thing that put the Schubert car out of contention was the puncture when the rain came during the night. Yeah. And it, it did, it, I think it hit the barrier and punctured the tyre, didn't it? Yes, or it did. It the it car as well, the yeah, tire. understeered off. Yeah, understeered off, yeah. So um, they, they've, they've been clawing that time back. And if you consider where they are now, back up the order into fifth, they, they dropped a little bit further back didn't they and they've just clawed their way back ahead of the uh, the Bilstein uh, Mercedes so yeah I mean <laughs> I'm not really one to gamble to be honest and really just sort of throwing something out there like let's put wet tyres on to be different from everyone else that's usually not the way to, to go you've got to be very very lucky for the rain to come just as you do that to make any massive difference otherwise you're going to be pitting very very soon to get rid of those worn out wet tires yeah because you need consistency across the full stint don't you yeah yeah or else and you of course you know you're taking advantage because it's a shorter stint so less time spent in the pits but you are going to have to pit earlier because of that because uh, there wasn't enough space in the tank for 
the full fuel allocation. Yeah, the, the option. I think the option for Schubert there was stick on the plan that they had, have one less pit stop generally, um, and that would have saved them two and a half, three minutes, wouldn't it, uh, in total. But they have now fallen on to the strategy of their rivals, mm. albeit potentially with something slightly different bolted to the car. Uh, hearing from people watching uh, various different streams to us that there is definitely either a cut slick on that car, if not a wet tyre on the BMW. We'll see it in the split times. Um, actually, where the circuit is starting to dry now, Alexander Sims is very slow. Where it's wet, he was very quick. So I wonder whether he does have slick tire, uh, wet tyres on. I'm being told that he has. Um, he's got. He hasn't got dries, and yeah. he hasn't got full wets. He hasn't got full wets. Okay. So he's got some sort of cut intermediate or a cut slick or something. Yeah. Because the sector where Maxi Gertz is fast, he's really slow. And yeah. Gertz, we know, is like got eleven slicks. seconds difference in a not quite a two-minute sector. So, well, it is two minutes for Alexander Sims running in fifth. Back across the line goes Maxi Gertz then. 142 laps just completed. We are only 17 laps away from matching the record distance from a handful of years ago. Lucas Stoltz in the Bilstein yellow and blue Mercedes, car number 12. How's the sister car getting on at Bilstein, which will still be the Pro-Am leader, just ahead of it, actually. So Hubert Haupt is seventh in car six. No, I'm looking at the age-old screen again. I'm sorry, boys, but making the same <laughs> mistake. Right, so Stoltz in the 12 is seventh. Nico Bastian is ninth. But just glancing at the numbers ahead of car six. Yeah, they're all Pro cars ahead. So car number six still with the Pro-Am lead as a very dog-eared... Uh, number 16 car, I think, coming in. 22. Oh, that's, 22. that's the car Dark collection leg. car. Yeah, 16 is green and white as well. In the hands still of Kuba Gmaziak. But this is Christopher Haza from third position into pit lane. And thankfully, he is going to stay on board for another stint. So we'll be very, very grateful for a nice clean windscreen for at least the start of the next stint. The gap out to 22 seconds between our leaders, such as the difference in tyre strategy and the difference in outlap pace when that rain fell. Uh, we saw it at the very start of the race, the very first stint of the race, the Aston Martin inheriting, the inheriting that's right, the lead, um, because they were in the pits at the right time whilst we had a Code 60 out there. And that's how the Lamborghini lost a front uh, leading position and the Aston gained it. Uh, just roll the dice when you're on the track or not. It looks as though Audi have got some kind of slick prepared, whether it's a cut slick or a full slick, difficult to know, but certainly that bigger rain cloud has passed through and it's not quite as wet out there as slick. it was two laps ago. Ah, oh, yeah, cameraman's found slick. a cut. Yeah, Perfect. well done, mate. Well done, giving us a clue as to what's been considered. Still a lot of consideration going on there in the 22. That's pitted from third place. So this will give us an indication of what the teams are thinking. Um, once you've committed, you're out there for a full stint. That's it. That's the one. The cut slick, best of both worlds. But we did see that Joel Gounon, when he had the cut slick on the previous stint, didn't lose massive amount of no, time, did he? No, it's, it's a lot better. It's not great. Certainly when you've got standing water, it's not going to do anything for you. But it's a lot better than slick tyres on an, an ever uh, more wet track. Now yeah, we are in a position where this Mercedes, uh, or not this particular one, this is number four, the number three is still losing time uh, to Kelvin van der Linde at the head of the field. Van der Linde has cut, Gutz has full slick. He was the first person to come in for this round of pit stops, so didn't have the full picture of what was going on weather-wise. Everyone else since then has chosen a cut slick Maybe it'll come back to him at the end of the stint, but the difference between the two doesn't seem to be so much that he'll be able to claw back the 26-second gap that it is now. Maro Engel crossing the blend line, but in the correct direction, as in he was on the track uh, and not in the pit lane, and you can cross that solid white line certainly in one direction. You can't when you're coming out of the pits to make sure that uh, those already on the track have the advantage into turns one and two at the Yokohama S. Also back on the move, Christopher Haza 
in the car collection Audi. So he will feed back into the mixture in fourth position and behind Kelvin van der Linde, Maxi Gertz and Mauro Engel for Audi, Mercedes, Mercedes. Then another Audi and then the first of the BMWs, the M4 GT3s making their debut at the Nürburgring 24 hours, celebrating a 50th anniversary of their own because the five and the zero adorning the flanks of the Schubert Motorsport BMW to celebrate 50 years of the M branding, or the M specification of BMW. Heading down the hill and back down towards the Goodyear hairpin. Fabulous Legends Empower race yesterday in the lead up to the start of the 24 hours. A win for Bill Orbelin, but also featuring on the podium Johnny Chicotto and uh, Steve Soper. And they put on a really good show for second and third. I did think for a long period of time this might be a BMW year in the Nürburgring 24 hours, but it'll be a what heck of a result and a change around if they can do it now. It came as a massive surprise to Bill Orbelin to find having put the car on pole for the Legends <laughs> race, he was starting at the back because they reversed the grid and they didn't tell anyone, <laughs> which I think is genius. Yeah. I think it's perfect, yeah. It's like going short oval racing from the UK <laughs> to uh, flip things around and the fastest guy has to come through from the back. Unfortunately for people like Eric van der Poel, they didn't get much further than turn one because there was a bit of a pile up uh, into the Yokohama S. Amazingly, we've avoided certainly the first lap carnage down there in the main race. There have been one or two cars that have come a cropper, though, including a spinning Falcon Motorsports Porsche on the exit of Turn 2, which was then collected by an Opel Astra OPC. Track is clear again. We had yellows at the exit of Callenhard a few moments ago, but just getting the word that the whole 25 kilometres is back to full race speed. Still, I'm sure, a bit of the nasty wet weather around. And now for the Schubert BMW, lots of traffic to contend with at the end of Hats and Back. This is nip and tuck around the outside of an Ashton, now caught behind a VW Golf, one of the many GT tyre entries. There's a significant sharp bite out of the front bumper of the next Astra as well. That's a wet track as well, Johnny. Yes, it is. He's contending with a wet track and like a video game, left and right, left and right through the, uh, the slow traffic. At least Alexander Sims knows the current conditions, having just done eight laps, though, behind the wheel of the Schubert Motorsport BMW and strapping himself in for another stint. And fresh tyres should help him out, but that's the last thing you want through the many blind corners on hats and back to see basically a touring car race breaking out this deep into a 24 hour. So rain falling as we head on down towards Arenberg. Sims is not far off, fourth position there. He's, uh, he's only five seconds off the back of Christopher Hasse, who's come out of the pits in the 22 uh, just ahead. So that's why Sims is wanting to push on. Uh, he is faster than the Audi ahead. So rain pouring down at, uh, through uh, Schwedenkreutz into Arenberg and then down towards the Foxhall Adenauer Force. So that part of the track is going to be very, very tricky. So it's, you, you kind of going to have to be a bit conservative on those cuts, uh, those cut slicks. Not, they're not massively great. It's not like it's lapping in the dry when it's wet, like a wet tyre gives you. So you're still going to have to be very, very careful, especially if the rain is coming down as heavy as it looked there. Just caught a glimpse of the weather down at Arenberg. Yeah, it's got, we've, we've got another wave of weather down there at Sector 5, haven't we? Because yeah. the, the track was improving and now it's much, much worse again. This is not falling in the hands of the number three Mercedes that is out there on the slick tyre. The only known uh, top runner to be so. Everyone else with the cut slick and maybe BMW with a wet tyre. I'm speculating completely on that because Simsy's uh, sectors are incredible. Sometimes uh, in massive traffic, he's still a lot faster than the guys ahead. Mm. Yeah, but then in the drier areas, it seems to be nowhere, losing quite a, a yeah. chunk of time, but they're having to weigh up the pros and cons of their current tyre selection, almost down to crawling pace, Sven Muller in the number 33 Falcon Motorsport car. So this is the car in 10th place, 44 hitting big dramas overnight. And certainly for Falcon, they have uh, put all of their chips in the direction of the 33. 
But Porsche having a trying year in the Nürburgring 24 hours. The best placed car at the moment is KCMG's example with Earl Bamber at the wheel, their ninth. Ahead, therefore, of Sven Müller. And then Uber Motorsports car. Well, Uber have a pro am lineup. Lars Kearns just pitted from 13th position in the 25 car. Battling really with Conrad Motorsports Lamborghini, also a pro am machine. Change for fourth position. Ooh. Sims 10 seconds faster through sector five than Christopher Hasse. So already not only passed, but di disappearing up the road for the BMW. And that is a change for position on track. OK, it's been a little while since we've had one of those, but this is the nature of the different ways you can approach this race now. And working out on the fly whether a full wet tyre, a cut slick, or indeed, if you're brave enough, a full slick is the better for the majority of the lap. And that's the tough thing, trying to make the decision for the whole lap, not just short sections of it. Because Maxi Gutz was five seconds faster at the end of the lap than Kelvin van der Linde. So clearly the slick tyre is still working at the end of the lap, um, whereas the wet, the cut tyre is not working at the end of the lap. So we've got a middle part of the lap that's very, very wet, an end part of the lap that is still at the moment quite dry, but rain falling on the start, finishing straight again, that is still gonna, that is nearly going to change. An incredible patience from Sven Muller to get around the KTM every time he puts any input into that Falcon Motorsports car. The car is sliding all over the surface of the road. The change of position from Alexander Sims, simply better grip from the BMW around the outside and into fourth position as Christopher Hasser desperately struggles with his cut slicks. We know he's got cut slicks on that car. I'm gonna just say it's, uh, it's wet tires for uh, the BMW. Bye-bye, says Simsy. Yeah, and Christopher Haaser left to uh, float his way down into the foxhole because that car just lifting up at times on a very greasy road surface indeed. Calvin van der Linde in the number 15 car also having to work his way delicately along the hats and back. He's got the Glickenhaus in behind, not for position. That'll be Thomas Much uh, in the SPX uh, leading car, but uh, that's Glickenhaus with its extra aero. Remember, not running, it can't run in the official GT3 category, but uh, has been, well, up and down the order and doing pretty well in SPX at right now. Now, I'd like to say we're joined by another guest, Jean-Francois Bruneau from K Kramer Racing has uh, jumped into the commentary box. Um, Jean-Francois, first of all, when was your last stint? And then have you had to contend, contend with this madness where you've got a wet corner followed by a dry, followed by a wet, and what on earth tyres do you choose? Yeah, I guess the, the, the race had been too boring up till this point. Right? So, <laughs> need to make it more interesting. Uh, no, I, I was lucky enough. I came in, uh, my last stint was uh, double in the night. I, I wrapped up at uh, six in the morning and then went back, got four hours of sleep and, and uh, came back. And uh, the guys now are basically going to keep her on track and take her home. I mean, we're, we're not really in the fight. I got hit uh, on lap one. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I had a fabulous start. We had, we had a pretty poor qualifying because of uh, suspension issues, uh, but sorted it out for the start. And a uh, very strong start, made up some of the eight positions, uh, made my way up to, I think, P4, P5 in, in Cup 3. So in a Porsche came in GT4, yeah. uh, which is the, uh, the Monti Trophy class. And um, got tagged, uh, cut tire, uh, came back in, uh, lost uh, loads of time put us a lot down, um, went back out three laps later, just cursed, I guess, cut tire this time without contact, just cut tire. Um, but uh, going about contact, I've, I've done this race five times and I've watched it on TV, gosh, since, since I can't even remember when I started watching it. And I, I don't think I've ever seen such a crazy iteration of it. Uh, yeah. The amount of insanity out there. Um, but it felt like from the word go, I mean, in SP9... Well, from qualifying one, when Pele rear-ended Nick Tandy for no reason. That was a bit of madness as well. The, <laughs> the, the two guys that have shared a car in so many occasions. And, um, yeah, they weren't particularly happy with one another. But, you know, the SP9 cars, we know, uh, it, this has become a sprint race. From 4 o'clock to 4 o'clock, you cannot afford a misstep because you're not going to finish, certainly as a winner, and certainly not on the podium. But a thought has to be still concentrated on the classes that you run, Cup 3, 
Cup 2, which is for the new gen Porsche Cup cars. You know, one which, mate which, classes. Which, which Kramer Porsche is leading. We've been fighting for the Indeed. lead, you know, the entire race. P1, yeah. P2, P1, P2. Uh, Moritz Kranz had a, a fabulous uh, stint, and, and we were still in P1 when I when I walked up here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just think, uh, again, I, I've been doing, you know, I've been in the sport most of my life, and, and you know, it's, it's my job. I've, I've rarely seen this level of risk taking because, I mean, the you know, consequences are pretty dire out here. Uh, and the, the, you can thread the needle, you know, a couple hours from the end. I've rarely seen it on hour two, hour three, you know. Uh, Do you think it's been too much then this year? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's been a sheer... I mean, the Vantor brother incident was crazy in hour four, I think it was. And Lawrence Vantor's actually been very public in admitting that he pushed too hard because he was up against his brother at the end yeah. of the day. They've been racing for years. Yeah, yeah. And it's... They, they, there's a comfort the level, right? There's a comfort well, yeah. level and you're like, yeah, I mean, you know. It, it's get by him or bust right. in the wall. And you've got to remember that this is more than just a family duel. You know, right. we're talking about the defending champions. Manti put so much into this race. It's their biggest race of the year. And you have to remember the context. No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the, the R8s are, are, are pushing. I mean, we've got hit. So I got tagged, and it, it took us out, cut a tire. But uh, I think our car, and and you know, we're not we're not slow by any means. No, uh, no. The GT4 cars are, are quick. Uh, we're just not as quick as as a, a GT4. And, and what's happening is because we're quick enough, um, they're basically they're they're threading the needle every chance they get to 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 blow by. And uh, yeah, I mean, we got hit. My, my co-driver, uh, JJ Van Roon, got hit, sent off. Luckily, didn't make contact, but uh, uh, down at Nauer Frost, cut across the grass, went straight because he got tapped. Uh, I had a, I saw a massive crash in front of me, the Subaru, in the middle of the night, crash oh, wow. in the bottom of the foxhole. And how close I, were you to being? Oh, I was back? on, I was on his tail. I mean, and, and I was telling everyone, I was just following him. I was not, you know. I was not flashing my light. I wasn't. He had a decent pace. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll follow you and, and you know keep the pace up, and we're good. We're game. We were doing, you know, we were doing uh, mid nine minutes, which you know at night I mean, we were out of the out of the fight anyways. Um, so I was happy with that. And um, yeah, he lost it at the bottom of the foxhole, and then just 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 like a pinball, pow pow pow, left right, boom boom, and from one guardrail to the other. Um, and just you know, destroyed the car. Driver's okay, luckily, but uh, that, you know that was a big one there also. And I, mean, I was, I don't know, I was maybe 10 meters from that. Wow. Okay. It feels like your driver line at McKay Kramer has been very late coming together. I mean, we had some timing sheets issued earlier on in the week that, that didn't even know your car existed, I think, and certainly didn't have the right drivers. We have got the correct lineup now. 252. So you're sharing with Henning Kramer. JJ Van Roon, as you said, and fellow man from Atlanta, Andreas Gabler. Correct. So, did you know Andreas beforehand? Yes, yes. So, uh, Andreas is a longtime friend. So, I actually, actually uh, I actually coached Andreas and oh, brought, okay. brought Andreas to the Nurburgring. Yes. So uh, that all years, makes sense. Years ago, yeah, yeah. And have you raced with Kramer, K. Kramer before? I have. Yes. So, uh, if you recall the Ginetta program in 2019, yeah. So, um, I was the point Ginetta guy, uh, and um, I did the, the full season in 19 with them. Uh, and then before that, um, also some uh, some uh, Cup uh, Cup Three races as well. Um, and uh, this year, I'm, I'm only doing the, the the six hours and the 24 hours. Right. Yeah. It's great to see you. I'm sorry, the result isn't going to be the one you would want. But um, I mean, it's an intense class. Cup Three was always going to be crazy. Um, and you just weren't on the right side of the luck this year, and that's a massive part of the racing at the Nürburgring, isn't it? Correct. As you said, it's a sprint race. You, you can't really miss a beat. And, and even though there has been a lot of attrition, a lot of Cup 3 cars have been taken out or, or have been held up, um, there's still a few of them that have, that have kept up the pace, kept, kept clean, and, and uh, yeah, they're so far down the road that, you know, at this point, uh, in our class, it's a track day. Oh, well, still very enjoyable, I'm sure. Come back next year, won't you? I, I, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I hope make make it six. Yeah. That'd be good. That'd be really cool. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to come and visit us in the box as well. Um, we're going to do uh, a little roundup because we're heading towards the end of the hour. Uh, and Ben, you've been paying close attention to the battle at the front. Well, yeah, just quickly, uh, Alexander Sims got ahead of Christopher Hasser, but in the sector, long sector seven of the lap, uh, had a very slow, lost 30 seconds. So I think he had a moment. He is on complete wet tyres, Alexander Sims. Uh, but now in the wetter conditions at the start of the lap, Sims has got back ahead 
of Christopher Hassa. Uh, we have really wet conditions on the start, finishing straight as well. Uh, not rain, but hail falling. Uh, Maxi Gutz is on the start finishing line right now and tentatively turning his way through turn one. On his slick tyres, he's lost another 15 seconds on that last lap. Slicks are not the tyre to have at this stage. Wets, I think, are. And keep an eye out for the number 20 uh, BMW in fourth position. The last of the BMWs flying the flag now, the Schubert Motorsport machine. Threw, changed its strategy through the dice to be on a wet tyre. Let's see how it works out over the next couple of moments. So through, through the tricky area of the Grand Prix track, the Mercedes from Get Speed safely negotiates the OVR racing, alternatively fueled fuel, uh, Ford Mustang. That biofuel has kept those, that car and the other five in the AT class on the straight and narrow. It is a different day of the week, it appears, at the carousel. Completely different weather system for Alexander Sims, who now arrives at a virtually dry Caracciola carousel and the sun glinting off the Schubert Motorsport paintwork. Yeah, that's not good. Not, not for his wet tyres, is it? Not. No. I mean, he took 15 seconds in the start of the lap out of Christopher Hasse in just one sector, which is, a mi which is 90 seconds long. So it's great there, but as we saw him lose half a minute in the long seventh uh, sector seven, uh, we'll see again soon just how much he's lost. He's certainly cleared Christopher Hasse, hasn't he? There's no cars around him whatsoever. He's having a, a little bit of track to himself, but he, has, he does have to be very careful mm. on the dry track. He's just going to eat those tyres up if he's not too careful. Yeah, he's going to look for the damp bits, isn't he? Just a, a, a bit of a talking gesture, though, the way that track is drying up it is it's, a, it's like another country yeah yeah you know, you've gone from you know you've gone from northern europe almost scandinavia to uh, mediterranean and, and chris, chris Bahasa, Bahasa. so much faster massive you've got to give him the space here because he's going to get by somewhere and at brunchen there is a switch around again that is for fourth position as christopher Haza in the 22 car collection audi gets back in front of alexander sims amazing and the schubert motorsport says, car bye bye <laughs> those tread blocks have already overheated haven't they they're like jelly now it doesn't take much to do that and now the car is like floating around on molten rubber quite literally and the car's just the, the car's just going to be sliding around um he hasn't really got a choice now but to uh, to perhaps get off those tires and back, back onto slicks because as we can see the majority of the track now is pure dry well the grand prix track is still doused with quite a lot of water but the problem is by the time he gets back there what's going to be left of the tire if yeah. it's really if the blocks have started to move around and been eaten up even though he's on wets they're going to be no good on a wet track so and the thing is a big question here he's already done a short stint as a kind of outside bet you know to, to try and get the car back into contention then we might be on the cusp of another very short stint for sims here and if anybody at home's thinking well when he wears the tread off he's then got a slick well he hasn't because there isn't any rubber on the tire if you look at a slick the little round holes that you see they're depth where uh, depth indicators on the, yes. the actual tread the amount of rubber that you have on a slick tire it's just there's, there isn't any tread pattern you're putting the maximum amount of rubber into contact you'll not so be far when, from the cords at that point so if he does wear the tread off he's then got literally he's on the carcass he's just running on zero rubber he's just going to slide around even more in the very long sector I see what you mean about how wet that grand prix track is it is yeah down the hill from our commentary position in the long sector which took christopher Haza two and a half minutes 252 for alexander sim so he's lost 20 seconds in a just under three minute part of the lap it's fair to say though the early part is still pretty wet uh, sector three for instance you couldn't do it in a minute but we're seeing a minute 15 for sims on the wet tire we're seeing a minute and 25 for the guys who are on the cut slick uh, so you have to actually really look at the overall lap time as a whole as sims comes into the pit so obviously not happy with that tire choice they made the gamble it hasn't worked out uh, they can go to the end with two stops now uh, are they chasing yet more tyres? Are they going to put the cut slick on this time? Or is it an intermediate? Well, he didn't have a choice, really, because he's got no tyre left whatsoever. He was just losing bagfuls of time. What's going on the car? Looks like we've got a set of... I can't really tell, to be honest. It's um, just looking over across to the pit lane. It looks yeah, like slicks. Full, full slicks. So full slicks. He's no, gonna... They've got cuts in them. Are they cut? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are. Hand-cut slicks. So, um, 
again, best of both worlds. A little bit of groove to dissipate any water from the surface of the slick tyre. And that was only, was that three laps in? Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, he hasn't crossed the line yet in the pits because the Schubert position, uh, where they've uh, been positioned for the weekend in the garage, is ahead of the start finish line. So, three laps. This can be a very quick pit stop indeed as the fuel goes in. They haven't even bothered to put that up on the Dolly Jacks and reposition it to 45 degrees. So, they're expecting Alexander Sims to return to the race very swiftly. So many people on the grid before we started the race at four o'clock yesterday afternoon. Great to have fans back in full force. Luca Ludwig along with the rest of the crew from Octane 126 with the thumbs up. They, he got the Glickenhaus trophy for the quickest car in qualifying on Friday. And the plunge down towards the Yokohama S of the first time of asking. Really good dicing, particularly with the TF Sport Aston Martin and the 98 Rover Racing BMW in the early stages. They could not be more side by side through the Yokohama S and for a lot of the Grand Prix lap. This one of the moments that will stick in the memory for Porsche fans, particularly when the Van Tor brothers came to blows. They were side by side into Tiergarten and that was the end of the race for last year's winners. The Cus sponsored number one Manti Racing Porsche in the barrier hard and Manti with their Grello car packing up for the weekend. On fire, Hatchfade and Kreutz, KTM needing desperate attention from the marshals to extinguish the fire which would get larger and larger. Teichmann Racing's, well, one of their four cars in Cup X. Felix von der Laden got out, then wanted to get back into the car as it started to roll down the road and into the foxhole in a cloud of smoke. Sensibly, he stayed well away from the car that again became ablaze. Thankfully, that fire was out a few moments after it collided with the barrier on the way to Adenauer Force. A failure for Sheldon van der Linde's 98 BMW M4, which pitched him very quickly into the right-hand Armco barrier. This was in the dead of night and Rover Racing's horror weekend for the 2022 edition of the Nürburgring 24 hours would be pretty much over at that point. Kelvin van der Linde, at this point driving the number five Phoenix Racing Audi, collided with a midfielder, one of the Cayman S's. That pitched him into the barrier and out of the race for Phoenix number five. Thankfully, he would have a backup ride, which amazingly is now leading the race. And Calvin van der Linde inside the sister car at Phoenix number 15. Falcon Porsche number 44 spun around on the exit of turn two. Then it would be wiped by a Opel Astra, which had no warning that the car was sitting in the middle of the track facing the wrong way. Severe damage done to the rear of the Falcon Motorsport Porsche 911 GT3R. A significant hurdle in the race mounted when the sun began to shine again. Max Hesse, though, as day broke, losing the car one of the quickest parts. Kessel Shannon, Klostertal, too much damage done to the rear of the 72 BMW Junior Team car. We could go no further, and Max Hesse just processing that incident. At Arenberg, Maxi Gertz, unaware of a Porsche Cayman that had gone off in front of him and spilt a load of fluid on the road, he could then not get the required turn in as he approached the foxhole, but uh, thankfully the gravel trap did its job and kept him out of the wall. Good run from Alexander Sims just before the rain struck on the then leading number 15 car. This was a change for the lead of the race around the outside of Antonius Bucher and into Tiergarten. Good straight line speed from that Schubert Motorsport BMW, which has now subsequently fallen to sixth position. Jesse Krohn at the wheel. Then the rain arrived for the first time in the race at Metzgersfeld. Very little warning for Alex Sins in the race leading number 20. He skirted off and into the scenery. Amazing to just get away with that with a punctured front right tyre and he limped back but that gave the lead back again to the Phoenix Audi number 15. In the background the Glickenhaus fully sideways for Felipe Fernandez Laza driving it at the time. Slippery surface flags out on the Grand Prix tracker as well to warn everyone of the downpour. So this is not to do with any fluid being spilt, but purely moisture from the sky. Michelin tyres cut slicks being readied for Audi number 15. And 
these decisions being left as late as possible, working out whether the track is more fully wet, more fully dry. Uh, there are times when it was an exact 50-50 split. Get Speed continuing their fight to the lead of the race, ideally, but Audi are preventing them for getting that provisional top spot with the advantage of road position but always when the cars rejoin from a pit stop with new tyres, Michelin tyres, it's always a ginger affair on the Grand Prix track when grip is at a premium and the tyre temp not quite in the window. When they get to the dotting of her, we reckon the Audi's got the advantage, unlike the BMW that can close up fairly significantly on the back straight. Mercedes doesn't quite have that punch and therefore can't make a use of the toe. Welcome to the last couple of hours of the 2022 50th anniversary. Total Energies, EDSC, 24 hours of the Nürburgring. Thanks to Johnny and the team for the last few hours. It's Nick Damon, Peter Snowden, me, John Heinoff, and John Edwards joins us from BMW. I'd love to see you here, but I'd rather we weren't seeing you here, John. What what a weekend for you, what a weekend for the team, what a weekend for BMW. And sadly, I don't mean that in a positive way. Yeah, unfortunately, I've had a, a full night of rest, which is not what you want during a 24-hour race. Um, it's bizarre, isn't it? Uh, when, you get, when you get that rest, you it feel great now, but you feel bad at the same time. Yeah, it's really rough. I mean, uh, on the one hand, you know, watching right now, I'm, uh, I'd be relieved to also not be in the car <laughs> as, uh, as the guy who has to to, to bring it home, you know, as as uh, as the plan was, I should have been in from hour with four hours to go to two hours to go, and then it would have been Nikki Katzberg jumping in for the last two hours. So we would have been, you know, right in the middle of it. And I mean, I just put my put my sweatshirt on to, to come over here, and there was hail coming down yeah. outside my window. And by the time I'm here, there's a dry line on the front straight. So you know, that was only the span of ten minutes. Uh, on the Grand Prix circuit, we just saw race control seeing hail on the Grand Prix circuit. So you know, winter down there here it's like a beautiful august day and you know t-shirt weather it, it's it's remark how do you how can you deal with this i mean it's about being on the right tire at the, the right time but is it more being not on the wrong tire yeah i think you nailed it i mean you there almost it never is a right tire in these conditions because you know as you watch and, and as the conditions change i mean to do eight laps tire. yeah to do eight straight tire yeah to do eight laps right now on a wet tire would be impossible because of of the dry so you know alexander sims they put the wet tire it looks like it was a risk since they were on the back foot might pay off might not but he's going to have to really take care of those tires in the dry um but of course, if you're on even a cut slick in those conditions, when that hail comes down, a cut slick just isn't enough. Mm. So, um, you know, and then bless the guys that have to run on, on the full slicks in those conditions. If you're on a medium tire and that that's really hard to bring up the temperature, that's a really, really tough call. One to of make. the uh, Toyota Altis fan favorite cars, one of the smaller engines, the slower cars out there battling. It is the 119. This is the old Thai driver team and that car is moving very slowly. The 120, or was it that car actually that was completely rebuilt around the front end at one stage? They've both spent some time in the garage. Meantime, Sven Muller in the 33 Falkland Motorsports car, just uh, heading through past the Glicken house. And he's obviously on the right tyre at the moment because there's confidence there as he's heading down through to the siphon. Yeah, very different to his onboard from about 20 minutes ago, exactly. watching him through Hatzenbach. Um, that looked really, really hairy. And I mean, I almost thought he was taking it too cautiously and then you'd see him have a big moment. So, I mean, I, I, I just, I don't envy the guys in uh, in the car right now. Obviously it looks pretty dry right here through, uh, through Exmula, but um, in those conditions, there's just very little you can do, you know, you, yeah. I think the only trick you can use really is to brake early yeah. and if and if you realize there's grip then you can come off and float that speed in yeah. and then you you use your hands to turn in uh multiple times to the corner so you kind of test the grip in the brake zone so before you actually have to turn you give it a little wheel and you see if there's grip 
if there's grip, then you can straighten out and wait to turn in later. But if there's not, you know you're in trouble and you need to make up for it. That, that, that's how us rubbish drivers drive all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's what we're it's not the honest. ideal or the fastest way, no, but it, it is really the best way to survive. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it's more akin to being a rally driver here, isn't it? Corner to corner, lap to lap. Yeah, because you're it just changes for the so grip. fast. Yes. It changes so fast. I mean, you know, if you imagine when I walked back to the hotel from the paddock when the rain first started, it was fully wet as I walked down the hill. Then I crossed under the tunnel, and on the other side of the tunnel, it was half dry. So, I mean, that's only a span of three, 400 meters. And if you can imagine a 25 kilometer track, uh, it, you know, you only see the same spot every nine minutes or so in these conditions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just different every time. But what's remarkable to me is we're going to fall, I reckon, even with everything that's gone on, even with all the code 60s, even with this weather now, and we're lapping a good minute, a minute and 10 seconds slower than we should be at the front of the field. I think we're only going to fa fa fall one or maybe two laps short of a distance record this weekend. Yeah, and I don't think that's a big surprise. I think the rain's the only thing that, that slowed that down because uh, it's one of the lowest car counts we've had mm -hmm. in recent years. Does that um, make that much difference? It makes a huge difference because the number of incidents you see is a lot less. Right. So it's the number of code 60s. And so what we expected based on what we saw in the six hour is that we'd have a lot of code 60 early part of the night as it gets dark. Um, but as those cars crash out, I mean, you know, even our cars, we, we crashed out with both cars. Um, I wasn't going to mention that. We don't, we don't, we don't rejoin the race. So, uh, you know, you're just losing car count. And, and by the end of, end of the night, uh, if it had stayed dry, it's going to be a really flat out race with not much code 60. And I think you're seeing that right now. I, I was taught by my dear father, much, much missed, that you should always try to take something positive out of every experience uh, it's it's not always easy to do that but frankly as he once told me even if you said well i'm not going to do that again um that that might be enough what what can you as a team you as a driver and bmw as a manufacturer take out of this this weekend because it clearly hasn't been the way you wanted to go there's still one bullet in the gum alexander sims and schubert fighting at the moment in fifth position but what can you all take out of this well, I think, uh, you know, I was talking to Gusto Farfus this morning over breakfast, and he said, I, I think I need a few days still <laughs> to accept it. But <laughs> in a few course, days, that's it. in a few days, I'm sure we will uh, we'll look back and, and the positive will be that, that we were fast. I mean, we, we retired from the lead. So yeah. the Aston obviously was very quick. Did that surprise you? It did surprise me because I didn't see them anywhere in the in the prep races. So yeah. um, I don't know if they didn't nail it. I don't know if there was maybe something else going on. But um, in Still any case, a relatively they, new team. They're learning. Yeah, um, but you you, you can't say that Nikki Tim and uh, Maxime Martin are learning at no, all. No. Um, had a had a nice clean battle with Maxime. Yeah, um, used to race with him in the states as well when he was yeah. at BMW. So um, know him. He's a great driver. Obviously, the whole lineup there is really strong. But obviously, they didn't really factor in any of the prep races. So it was very surprising to see them go that quick. It did seem like they had high tire deck, so they would really pass us and pull away in the beginning and the middle of the stint, but I seemed able to kind of reel them back in towards the end. So who knows what the what the race would have brought at the end. But the good good news for us when we look back is that, you know, we were twenty or so seconds, thirty seconds sometimes ahead of the Audi when we had our when we had the problem and we did have a technical issue unfortunately. Um, but you know we were there. We were in the fight. Augusto, in two or three days' time, only processes will remember that nobody beat his new qualifying lap record, <laughs> yes. and that that'll make him smile. And he's still never been out qualified in top qualifying here. Still hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, and uh, John, for you? Uh, well, next is a little bit of a vacation. My wife's flying over, so we're going to do oh, okay. uh, a couple weeks here in Europe, and then um, back to it at Watkins Glen at the end of June. So yeah. that's a little bit of a break for us after kind of being flat out here for the past couple of months since Sebring, really, we came over and did some sim sim work in uh, in Munich, and then uh, back to Long Beach, back to Nürburgring for the prep races, back to Laguna. I mean, we were crisscrossing the Atlantic uh, uh, way too many times the past few months. Take it you don't mention to your wife that it's Le Mans in two weeks' time, and if you just happen <laughs> to be driving by... Although you probably don't want to go to a race if you're not racing. I, I don't. I mean, you know, my hotel's booked through till tomorrow, so I'm still here. Um, but it would, uh, if I was driving distance from home, I'd probably already be home. It's, yeah. it's a, a bit painful to yeah. hang around and, and, you know, think about what could have been. It just, just uh, 
sits on your mind a little bit. So definitely looking forward to a bit of a reset with a vacation. Well, enjoy that because downtime and time with family is super important for anybody who's in this business. And we all know that whichever side of the fence we're on and whatever we're doing. Um, say thank you to the team for us. They've given us tremendous uh, entertainment this year already in NLS and here. Will you do any more of the NLS this year? Uh, not really up to me. It's not planned, but... Right. Um, you know, as I've said, any time they invite me over, I'm going to be thrilled to come because, uh, you know, even in NLS, just a four-hour race, there's yeah. just nothing like racing at the Nürburgring. So I'd definitely love to be back, hopefully uh, hopefully come back and do some, some preparation for next year. But um, at the end of the day, the, the NLS races for us are preparation for this. for this. I mean, this is the race. So I'll see you in upstate New York for the sale in six hours. See it? you there. Thanks for having me. Sounds like a good idea. Thank you for taking some time to come over. I know how difficult it is even to be around the track now. John Edwards from BMW joining us here. Nick Damon and Peter Snowden uh, with me, John Hindoff. We'll head to the end of the race here. And mm. after all of that and all of the... Basically, the joke, it, the, the joke has been thrown in there and the dice been rolled. We've still got yeah, a Vanter at it, the head of the field. Van der Linde, and it's kind of... Uh, Vanter. Oh, have I got a locked up time to see who of you, one of us has. Um, oh, okay. The, 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 it's a, the interesting thing is, unfortunately... Oh, no, it's me. Sorry. That the, yeah. Um, the rain coming when it did has kind of robbed us of a battle royale prior to the, to the sprinting. In fact, just prior to the last stop, it started to get wet. Maxi Gotzel came in. They went for slicks. A lap later, which of course here is, well, in the wet, about nine minutes, the rain was strong enough for Van der Linde to, and the, the team Phoenix uh, to make the decision in the 15 car to go for cut slicks. It's turned out to be the genius move because even though it was raining a bit heavier and Alex Sims went for wet, the because there's never a point where the whole track was wet, mm. even full wets weren't worth it. And what happened was, as soon as they got to the point where they could stop him one more time, Sims bailed out with the uh, Stuart Motorsport being done. They've gone back onto sticks, or probably cut sticks now with Jesse Cohn. But the problem is that when Maxi Gotzel came into the pits behind Van der Linde, I think it may have been actually at that point, it may have been Van Tor, um, the last stop, the gap was oscillating one and three seconds. Yeah. It's now it's a minute and two. And yeah. that's just down to a combination of luck and making the right call, John. And those decisions have to be made in split seconds. If you weren't with us earlier on, we have had a, a, a driver excluded from the race and his permit withdrawn. Uh, it was the number 125 Huber Motorsport car earlier this morning. The stewards of the meeting deliberate long and hard but the evidence that was presented that in a 120 kilometer an hour zone, the driver went through at 220 kilometers. Yeah. Disqualif immediate disqualification uh, as a driver from the race for Hans Vermin and the withdrawal Enzung, of his permit for driving. So there is a written sliding scale in the rules. Correct. Um, and, and the Golf was 3K underneath getting exactly the same, the Mark III Golf driver. He got a two point on his license and a 90 second penalty, I think it was. Yeah. Um, there have been a few other penalties. I'm not quite sure how many of the, uh, uh, the previous team picked up, but um, it's, there's, a, there's a few non respects to the Code 60s. Both the two, two, three and the triple two have picked up. I'm guessing they're team matches because there's there are lots of numbers missed out. So when you have numbers contiguous this high up on the uh, the counting scale, they're normally teammates. They are they're, they're two of the, uh, the GT tyre cars. They're completely different because all the four GT uh, tyre motorsport by WS Racing teams are in different classes. This is the 222, which is in the uh, VT2 uh, rear wheel drive class with a BMW 328i F30 and a 223, which is the uh, Volkswagen Golf Mark 7, yeah. which is the front wheel drive. They both got a minute and 32 for not respecting the uh, code 60. There's also a slap on the wrist and a minute and a half penalty for not respecting the code 60 car. 140 the pit lane AMC Sankt Vith team. That's the Toyota G86 Cup, one of my personal favourites because when I was walking down the pit lane. Uh, on Wednesday, I noticed the engine bay was reminding me very much of a 1970s car. There was so much space around yes. the engine, you could actually work on it and see the bits and get the manifold off without having to be a contortionist or having those special angled tools which you can only get from manufacturing, cost £197 each. Uh, we've got a couple of other problems. The 633 had a speed limit uh, in the pits. Um, violation. The first, we have seen some multiple speed of the pits, and, and it appears that for speeding, it's not how fast you go, it's the number of times you do it, and they increase ah, okay. the, um, the penalty each time. Because someone who's on at least the, third, the fourth go, uh, the 633 um, 
obviously being a squadron, but also the Ford Motors GMBH Tom Van Lauer's uh, Porsche came in the C4S. I can't, I've no idea which drive it was. I'm just uh, 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 respect that to a um, team. A one, a one minute speed in the pit lane penalty for the 23 car. That would be their second offence, which is why it's turned out to be a minute and not 30 seconds. And that is the 23 car is the line speed by Car Collection Motorsport. That's when the R the R8 LMS Evo, but that's when the Pro Am um, effort. So it's yes. uh, a little bit further down. So I think we also have the 256, which is, oh, that's interesting. The 256, I think, has been the serial it has. Um, uh, pit lane speed limit Correct. abuser. It was initially given a 30-second penalty. They realized it was the 256, the K. Kramer Racing uh, Porsche 7 8 came one of their three cars. This is the car which has Olaf Baunek and Karl-Heinz Meyer uh, as well, two of its drivers. That then got upgraded to 148 seconds for speed in the pit lane. You kind of think at some point it's more likely the buttons are on than the drivers. Um, and they've just not set that correctly. And just as we finish off... This well, the drivers are hitting it at the wrong place. Uh, that, and that's what the engineer exactly, will tell yeah, you. Yeah. Another speeding it's always the driver. For the 84. This is the, so they didn't realize this. My start is this is quite as long as it's turned out to be. I'm sorry, everybody. This is the 84 car. Which is oh, quite yeah, the the flag. Racing. <laughs> that's a Toyota GR Super GT4. Uh, then we have the 323. Oh, driving. That's the first one. We've got a driving time penalty for the 323. Yeah. Um, that is 30 seconds, and the 323 for all you number lovers is a Rockstar Games car. We had uh, Ben le Lyons leader earlier. The class. Uh, the BMW 325i in V4. We had Ben Lyons earlier. Up, he is obviously the man who is, uh, who is programming right now a way for you to hijack several cars whilst uh, running a massive crime syndicate in an up yet unnamed city for GTA 6, whenever that may be released. And finally, for now, and I'm going to have a lie down after this, is the 871. Adrenaline Motorsport Team Alster. Oh, that. The, <laughs> the C2. About to CS Racing. Nick Damon uh, is going for a rub down with some uh, halibut oil. Uh, and that's uh, a. Uh, that's a big penalty. A, a 3.32. This, this is another and code 60 and a point. That's between 20 and 50 k's over. Right. Hmm. Uh, Nick Damon with all of the updates on the penalty. Peter Snowden with us now as well as we're into the uh, well into the last two hours of this race. We've watched enough racing around here, Peter, to know that while at the moment the red, white and orange number 15 leading as it is by nearly a minute in a normal race in the in the normal motorsport world you'd say ah hour and 20 minutes even in an endurance race hour and 20 minutes a minute to the good stroke at home from here not here john i'm going to pull you up on your use of english english language there already it's uh it's an oxymoron saying normal and motor racing well that's, that's it's like saying true. army and intelligence in the same sentence it doesn't <laughs> work. stop it <laughs> Are you served? You're allowed to say that. Exactly. I'm, I'm, a quali I'm qualified. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I, you cannot take anything for granted. Here comes Maxi Goats into the pit lane. And a conundrum. Do they... Well, I reckon this is a lap early. Uh, well, they go, do they go on to cut slicks or do they take... Stay on slicks. He's getting close to the point where the crossover is going to happen. Uh, cut slicks is still. But he can't go to the end for a second. No, they're going to do stops. But this is a tire choice now for the next eight laps. Right. I would think probably it's getting very close to the point where the Van der Linde cut slicks aren't much quicker. So I think they're going to go for slicks again and just curse their luck. They came in a lap earlier the previous time round. But Schubert can go with one more stop yes. from here. Yes. So they're going to claw back some of that time that they're lost. I think you're right that Max is in a lap early as well. They're in a seven. Correct. Um, this is only a seven-lap stint. Well, off off has timing. come the intermediates or the cut slicks and a new set of cut, that? That cut Michelins. Michelins. Yeah. Gone for cuts. I'm surprised because I think that in the next hour, unless they have a much more accurate weather forecast, I think there's even more rain, and that's going to be full slicks by the end. I, I made a mistake there. I called them intermediates. They are not intermediates. They are slick tyres that have been cut with a heat gun. And that is a huge difference, Peter, isn't it? Because even... So, so what's around the, the sipes, the grooves that have been cut in? First of all, Tyre 101, let's dismiss some, some myths. On any tyre, a, a, a racing tyre or a road car tyre, the grooves don't give you the grip. The bits in between give you the grip. The grooves are only there to move surface water. And in the case of uh, road tyres as well, to allow the blocks to move around to get them to heat up, because you don't want to um, be always having to weave around when you get stuck behind someone pulling a caravan at 40 miles an hour and keeping the heat in the tyres. What we've got there is what should be normally a slick tyre. And it'll be probably 
the softest compound or possibly a medium okay. compound tyre that has been cut. So even if you do wear them down a bit, you've still got the carcass and the construction of a slick racing tyre. So they should be relatively durable, should be relatively durable in these drying conditions. I, I know opinion is going to be divided on this, but I've, I've never been a big <sighs> fan of uh, hand cut slicks, uh, especially on a circuit like this. I don't see the advantage. I don't think there's a, a, long, a long enough use for them. Uh, Christopher Haza off the track there, the number 22. He was following the... I thought that was the 55. The, the, the man filter car. Yeah, I think it's the 55. I mean, I yeah, Treff's think. behind the wheel of that yeah. at, at uh, the that, moment. That was absolutely sucked into someone else's accident. Uh, and that was just coming over the, uh, the brow before Brunchen. And the man filter car, that's been a good run for them in 14th position. But that is significant contact. And the issue is here, if you get onto the grass, the grass is going to be very, very wet indeed. Sorry, Peter, you're not a fan of, of cut slicks because... Um, it's such a small window you can use them in. Uh, right. If, on, on a short circuit, if the weather stays like you've got an opportunity to come back and pitch and change them quicker. It's a real short window of the use. If you get it out and ate it, yes, absolutely. The North Cypher, I just don't see that you've got the advantage of them because... You, the circuit's different all the way round. And Is it not the least bad option? Because full wets we saw with Alexander Sims weren't working. Full dries were it, treacherous in some places. So you go, what's the safest option? Yeah, OK, in the absence of a proper intermediate, then I guess, yes, you're probably right. right. OK. But I just, think, I just think the negative here is too big with the length of the circuit because it changes so differently. You go out at one bit. We saw earlier, Grand Prix circuit, absolutely soaking wet kicking up spray yeah but once you get off the Grand Prix circuit onto the big bit it wasn't nearly as bad you're not going to need them there and they're going to overheat and I just I, it's the old risk reward ratio and I, I just don't think they're worth it cars I think they can go to the end with one more stop um, category Nick see if you agree with me for this uh, I think the first one that can go no to the end with uh, one more stop uh, well actually we'll have to see where the number three comes out he's come out uh, he's gone out he's out and so Adam can definitely, in the three, the, uh, the AMG team get speed. That's the leading one of those two cars. But it will be when they, they cycle through the marrow angle slightly ahead at the moment. That only needs to stop once more. And Jesse Crone in the Shoot Motorsport car only needs to stop once more. I think at the moment, everyone else does need to stop twice. You need to get with a... With a well, within an hour, yeah, because you could, you could, you could have like a, you know, seven minutes extra of running, couldn't you? Until you go down to the share of car. Um, but I think they're a lap off the lead at the moment. Dennis, uh, uh, Michele Beretta in the Sheriff's yeah. Spot Team Phoenix, Pro they've just pitted as well. Yeah, going through code stuff, I don't say problem volume. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same, because yeah. I've looked up through with him. There is the uh, man filters, uh, Mercedes to the left hand side, that car. And now it's sunshine there. there. Just I rest my cake. Yeah, no, but, but, look, but if you look for the windscreen of the car, it's grey as anything. So, any, uh, to, you know, to quote Stingray, anything can happen in the next half hour, Thank otherwise. You. And to quote the great Nick Damon, it's your job. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping on the black stuff. I thought one of the things that's been really interesting is talking to the drivers. And it, thank you very much indeed for all the teams, the PRs, the management and the drivers themselves for you know, making the efforts to, uh, to cross the track from the pit lane side, which is where for, I think, every year that we've been here, We've done our substantive broadcast one. We have done some TV slots from this side before, but not the, the full broadcast. So that's been great for them to come over. But I've been really interested at how they've been saying that the new black tarmac, Peter, is very difficult to spot oil or damp patches on it because it is so new and it is so black. And, then, and therefore, it's harder to see those subtle changes, the visual clues. So the, when you find out that there's oil on it or there's been water on it, particularly when it's in the dark, is when your front wheels are on it and aren't turning. And absolutely, and the, the, the problem with that stuff is that it's, with it being brand new, it's, it has, it's still really green. Mm. It's, not, it's not the colour, it's a phrase of it. It's, it's fresh, it's new, that's the problem with it. And then when we had that rain this morning on those bits, the problem with the new tarmac is the oils haven't settled. It hasn't got that sort of veneer on the top of it yet. So everything comes to the top really quickly. And it's like you're driving on suddenly wet glass. It's yeah. worse than just, uh, just ordinary track that's being grained in over seasons of hardened racing. Hello to Carmine. Been watching and listening for the uh, last... 22 and a bit hours had some 
explaining to do to the roommate at hour 20. <laughs> Thanks, Carl, mate. Fantastic. Uh, hello to Ian McCarthy. Says, finally, we've got some patina on the car. The winner can now be clear-coated tomorrow and put in the museum and shown exactly how it's gone. The man felt this car is under tow by the Opel SUV, the Mocha, one of the DM... It's not wanting to follow that in a straight line, yeah, is it, John? Some, it's, it's, uh, not, it's not liking that. It's on a very short rope, which worries me. We've seen a couple of incidents this weekend, but uh, it I think that has rear steer, which wasn't specified on that version of the GT3 car. Uh, at all, Snoy. Yeah, that is a very short tow rope. Uh, I'm thinking left rear. Pro, uh, oh, I think it's front left. I think it's front. I, I think front left. I think so front left's collapsed. It just did not make the apex, yeah. and that left rear is clattered the barrier. Yeah, left rear is gone. Both. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Chris Harzer in the number 22 car in fourth position for Audi Sport Team car collection. Um, did a good job in avoiding. Which was as Nick rightly said, sort of, sort of, dummied in to following. It's so easy to do. You get target fixation on the car in front, even at the highest level and these guys have trained for this but they're still going to be tired don't you know I thought it was funny what John Edwards said about you know I feel really fresh which is really weird three goes the Dacia and Logan with that all important rear aerofoil contributing to Did its lactose many pounds of down many ounces as it pounds round you know what though 103rd place. It, uh, they, they might crack the top 100, and that would be massive for Phenomenal. them. Phenomenal. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Dacia Logan in an international sports car race, and it's nowhere near last. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, I, I'm not... This is this is for all the Dacia fans. Um, I think we need to decide whether it actually is Dacia or Dacia. I mean, I know they, they, they've tried to, it depends to re where you rename are. it in the UK for some reason. Uh, only knows. It's running one, 103rd. That's what matters. One, two, three. Oh, oh. Half a dozen Porsches, including um, some uh, 9, 9 gt 3 rs several BMWs, um, some Porsche Caymans, some BMW 240i's, KTM crossbores, uh, at least one Aston Martin... Uh, Vantage, possibly, yes, that the top class Aston Martin Vantage, uh, the Dodge Viper, the 8.4 litre Dodge Viper, mm -hmm. as opposed to the Dacia Dacia, which I think is a 1.6. Well, the Dodge Viper is alternative fuel, so you know, mm -hmm. right. weigh that up, see, uh, almost 7 litre bigger capacity. Yeah, indeed so. I'm running on food waste. Yeah. Uh, Toyota Supra, uh, a GT4 Aston Martin, all behind that Dacia when it comes to the final results. And you can say, ah, yes, well, but, mm. uh, yes, I'm sorry, but, you you race to the end of a 24-hour race, and if you're still there at the end, there's no asterisk that says everybody else falls off, and oh, well, you haven't won, because everybody else threw them at the scenery. Fastest lap for the uh, Dacia slash Dacia is an 11.41. That means the top cars are lapping it every two and a half laps. Yeah. So that has had to do with a lot of track. Oh, facing the wrong way is a 3 1 0. Oh, this one of them. Yes. Um, I've, I've got to say, sorry, but 11.41 for a 1600cc <laughs> road car is yep. hugely impressive. 15 miles and 11, so it's averaging 80. Yes. Round the track. There you go. Mm. Ah, now the 310 got a, quite a lot of uh, oh, right rear look, damage. This is another Max, this is the Max Cruise racing. Yeah, a lot car. of right rear damage on that oh, car. I slightly concerned. I thought he might do this. I thought he might strand himself on the curbs. Just got away with it. Yeah, but it's going to high, nearly high centred it on the curves. And where is that? Uh, right rear damage, as Nick said. That is... Oh, he might have got some help here, actually. No, that is uh, coming down. Is that Vipperman coming down? Yeah, I think so. Uh, towards that area of the... The, yeah, the, 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 the rear, rear suspension's right, rear gone. Right collapse. Yeah, the, rear, the right I'm not rear sure suspension. what his cause and what his effect, but he's, um, that's what, oh, another reason why we're stuck on the curb. Very high curb on the uh, right-hand side there, and he tries to do a kind of a spin turn, which didn't really work, and just perched himself in a wobbly precariousness over the, uh, the curb, where he, uses, he just used sheer brute force and large amounts of revs to get off. 
my monitor has decided to start flashing at me now for no apparent reason. I was Can trying I to tell you something. I think it was coming out of brunch and down towards Flansgarth. Oh, really? Oh, it was the okay. early yeah, one, yeah, the okay. drop. It, and now it's um, trailing smoke, which I think is tyre rubbage. Who, who's dr that, it's it's Engelman, been it's Engelman is driving that according oh, okay. to the graphic. Uh, so that it will be... Oh, well, that's good, because I haven't got an Engelman in there. But that was uh, Jasmine Prisig, <laughs> Prisig's uh, car, but uh, not Jasmine behind the wheel. I'm very concerned about this monitor flashing. Max, because, uh, is Max Cruz, of course, is the um, for, uh, current um, Bundesliga player and former um, German international, um, 14 times international, full international for Germany. And he, uh, he's now playing for, he's driving a Volkswagen. Who's he playing for now? Uh, that that would be Wolfsburg. Then. Certainly is. He has, yeah. been, he has been everywhere. He's, he's Very two, good. He's two, two seasons at Bayern Munich. Now he will be seen himself racing for his team in Creventic events later this year, and with an eye to get into this event next year or the year after. Obviously, he, he's towards the end of his career, but he you, needs you're to. You're playing a lot of FIFA at the moment to get all those no, stuff. I had a fantastic chat in the garage on Wednesday with the team manager and one of the drivers of the, of the sister car, the brother Carl, whatever, and he talked about, about Max. And, then, and, and obviously, one that I could, I, he was vaguely reminiscent, so I just wanted to check out. And on his Wikipedia page, he got all the. He was one of the overage players for the Olympics in 2018 as well. So he's a, yeah, he's a good player, striker, and uh, you know, being a, a, a professional footballer these days has made a lot of money. And he's now investing in racing, and, and according to the guy, he's good. He's good, apparently. Behind the wheel. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, Should ha good. Good um, hand-eye foot. I coordination, shouldn't Apparently, round the Grand Prix track here, first time he'd ever driven a race car on a racetrack, he's two seconds off the pro. Oh, that's magnificent. And that's his first time ever. That's magnificent. It's got better since then. I mean, if you're five seconds off, you're doing well. That's what Bradley always tells me. I think he's just t saying that to be nice, in fairness. <laughs> but that, that's magnificent. He doesn't, he doesn't want to come and play in the championship, does he, by any chance? Well, I, I don't know. Do you need a striker? Yes, <laughs> always. But yeah, so just bear that in mind because they will be. So I, I, out thought, in the I race. thought it was a Nurburgring here, not not football focus. <laughs> it's all sports are linked. They're I know. Linked. I know. Quite remarkable. I'm, me I'm messing with you, Nick. And so Audi Sport Team Phoenix still lead. Yellow flags for the man filter AMG getting pulled back off Given the track. Up, getting that back to pad. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really smart by the recovery uh, recovery team. Because they were going to tow it, now they, get, now they want to do it, they get a flatbed. Yeah. Because several of the wheels aren't pointing in the same direction at any point. 20, Not ideal. 23rd <laughs> position for that pink. Is that what that was saying on the front of the... That's the... Ooh, no, I think past no, the I don't think so. The that's the 264, John. Oh, yeah, no, that's the Cup 3 leader. That's 22nd position, the Schmickler Performance Car, the 264. I thought that was, but... That's 22nd was overall. 22nd wow. overall, and... Uh, 14. 14 laps off the lead. Yeah, you can see the attrition we've had at the front. You can see we started with well over 30 GT3 cars of, of, of both Pro and Pro-Am. I, I still want to draw attention to the battle that continues. It's now just two cars in the 992 Cup class, the Carrera Cup class. How uh, far's the gap? Uh, it, it's, uh, well, the, the first car's just gone across the line. It's about half a lap, actually. It, it is about half a lap. We have three cars within about a minute and a half for pretty much the first half, three quarters of the race. Uh, it is Keir Kramer Racing in the 127, the Black Falcon 123, who are having that battle as the leader comes through. Van der Linde, this is his last lap before he stops, and we've got a preview of his tyres, which will be full slick. So it's, it, it, this wet dry has fallen perfectly for Audi Sport Team Phoenix, and they've made the right decisions, in all fairness, but it's fallen and he comes into pits. It has literally been the fact that they got the chance to go on the cut six minute, and then they've come in two laps or three laps after when the, uh, the faster of the two Mercedes AMGT gets beat, who also went for cut six, but that's not the thing to be on. Now the tie is back on the slick again, John. Yeah, Knopf and von der Linde then. Um, with two opportunities. The five car fell by the wayside earlier on, the team car. Maxi Kurtz will follow this car into the pit lane for Mercedes AMG Team Get Speed. They're running second and third at the moment, still getting the team prize as it stands. Some evidence of, of contact on the front of that car. Well, they could slick again. They've their mind again. So they're, they're, they're literally oscillating as we've spoken between cut slicks Ooh. and um, a full set of slicks. So. What actually goes in the car being interesting is certainly being held at the front. Now, of course, it could be cuts. It is. It's cut sticks at the front, sticks at the rear. 
No. Yes, that's what I've just seen going on. Are you allowed to on. do that? They're, well, don't forget the fish, they're, both, they're all slicks. Oh, yes, yeah, a good point, yeah. The cut stick is just a man who's got there with a, with a kind of a scraping iron thing. So yeah. they've gone cut sticks at the front, they've gone sticks at the rear. So obviously the most they're, they're most worried about is understeering off in wet conditions. As we just saw him do, in fact. But of course they will get understeer as they go through the the, uh, the stint, because obviously as the track dries out, they won't be getting ultimate grip from the front end. So what do you do if you're Maxi Gertz and Mercedes AMG, AMG team uh, gets to do it now? Hmm? Adam Christodoulou is in the car now. OK. Um, and he, he has got, he unfortunately is on cut sticks, so he will have to run out the rest of his six, seven, eight. It's, it's Mauro Engel that should it's be Mauro Engel that should be coming in next, and, yeah. And uh, he will not be, he will be, unfortunately he is sort of like a genuine three minutes behind, but it's going to be down to, to what he decides to do. I mean, it, you know, perhaps just go for slicks all around and just hope for the best, but you're not going to make three minutes up. You're going to need an, a, a, an incident for the number 15. Whilst we look at the tyres, did you see that there was a driver change there, Peter? I think there was, yes. For which car? For the leader, for the 15. Uh, he isn't out yet, so when he comes out, I, we'll see if they change drivers as well. I, as I, I think, well, it depends. Do you give the closing driver two stints so that they're there. Van der Linde's only done one stint, hasn't he? Yeah, but we're, 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 not, we're not two stints from the end now. We're stinting three laps, it's into four laps. So it's, it's like 12 okay. laps to the end. So my guess is you don't really want to put a guy in for four laps at the end, do you? No, probably Might not. Might be, but you don't want to. No. At RSL, under score studio, Rich Harrison says it's pronounced Dacia. With a T in the middle, not is it? Dacia. Romanian brand, and my Romanian wife confirms okay, pronunciation. Okay. Well, Thank then. you, Rich. In which case, <coughs> he's not part, of the P <coughs> not part of the PR department, <coughs> therefore I won't accept <coughs> it. <coughs> Sorry, Nick, can you just reach across as the dust there? Just, just get that bit of dust off John's halo? <coughs> I'm Sorry. I think it's Dacia. But, mm. <laughs> yeah, you, do you know what? If, if John had said Dacia, you'd say Dacia. Let's put the whole thing off. <laughs> uh, another one point uh, for non respect of Code 60, and this for the number 102. Ooh, who is that who's transgressed? It's Pelsy Corner. We should have a theme tune, shouldn't we? It's the Falcon Horse Motorsport. Yeah, uh, they've got a good one that's one that's got Jorg Muller in it. Yeah. Uh, not sure which driver, though. Can't yeah. tell you that. BMW M4 GT3, uh, Pro Am. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it, they, they had accidents, didn't they? I think twice during the various qualifying sessions. They weren't quite as uh, profligate with bits of car as Patrick Pile were, but they were quite close. Yeah, marvellous stuff. It's still saying for Van der Linde, but I don't think you get a change of driver ID till sector two. Well, Van der Linde could go to the end. Eight, eight and four would just be under the driver limit. Would it? OK, fine. I think the, I think the Luma rank actually um, illustrates when he comes out of the pit lane. Yeah, straight away. I do like the note on the um, uh, on race control. Um, any cars in park firm here? Um, uh, sorry, Lumi rank displays from all cars in park permit, please return by parcel delivery two, and then the address is there as yeah. well, within 14 days. Thanks very much. Doesn't say whether you register or not. No. Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, don't, don't use Hermes, whatever you do. Well, well that'll get left at your neighbours and you'll never see it again. Someone's lobbed 40 displays over the back of the... <laughs> <laughs> Second place then for Adam Christotoulou. Team Angles car in. in the pits, as we expected. It's three minutes 51, call it 3.52 uh, across the line. It's not actually, because Van der Linde's just gone by. It's 51 and a half seconds between first and second. Now. So in those, la those laps that Chris Dewey did in the last couple of laps, when uh, uh, Kevin Van der Linde started going off, he did gain about eight or nine seconds back. He was a minute and two behind our... There was a point when I was last on when Chris Tadoulou, in his last, I think, three laps of his eight-lap stint, reset the car's fastest lap three times in a row. And I think that's his time, the 8-12-0, in that car. Absolutely phenomenal. Well, he is the ultimate ring expert, especially for that. He just comes from nowhere near mm -hmm. uh, the number ring. Well, it, you know, he has developed into that, and... Specialists around here are really worthwhile. Mm. Yeah, I mean, good drivers will get up to speed here, but the difference between a good driver and a specialist can be five, six, seven seconds a lap. 
Christopher Haas in the 22 Audi has reclaimed on the road third place. He's gone past Mauro Engel. Um, not sure where he is on the strategy, though. He'll be in next time around. Uh, so he's yes, he's start, no, he's, no, no, he's got two laps, sorry. Oh, he's so just started his seven. So he's going to do a very timely splash at the end, isn't he? He's yeah. one lap or two lap splash. Mercedes going on to Slicks. Oh, at no. Front? Yeah, so they're going all third, which I think is no. I think Van der Linde's in, in defensive mode, and, and the other car seems to be in attacking mode. And therefore, that all slick concept, rather than the cut slick front, pure slick rear, is the only, only option you've got. You do the same as the other, you'll get the same result, and the result is not going past him. Mm. You've got to look for a performance advantage here. Yep, 100%. Through goes Jesse Kron for Schubert Motorsport. And down towards the first corner, just waiting for the cars to emerge from the pit lane. And so Engel has dropped behind the Schubert car. Chris Meeks will be the next car through, but he's a ways back. And I think actually he's off the lead lap now. Because he's made his 19th stop. Yep. There is something very, very impressive about the rumble of that EMG. I do like that. It, it's it's comforting, isn't it, when it fires up? It must be great sitting inside it's, the car. It's impressive managed to keep that engine noise in the rumble for it, when, it, when it moved from what a 6.2 liter normally aspirated engine to the turbo engine. They managed yeah. not lose the uh, the guttural, literally vibrating the entirety of your chest cavity move feeling about it. But yet the same base engine in the Aston still sounds totally different. Well, there's a heck of a lot of difference in the tuning mm. in the Aston. Well, they, do they run the same turbos? Um, no. No, they don't run the same turbo. I don't even think they run the same camshafts, actually. And there's I a think, different I think electronics. It's, I think it's block and heads, basically. Yeah, it's I, that base engine. Yeah, I, I, the, short motor. No, that's about that heads, isn't it? When we were talking about the launch of the road car through the carousel for the oh. car collection, oh. Lion Speed car sideways side. Oh. Got it, got it, got it. Oh, don't got it. Uh, but stopped just in time. That's the 23 car uh, entertaining us a moment or two ago. Uh, and that was... That was his, in his desperate attempt to keep the thing from popping out the end. He just, over, he just gave it too much steering angle. Too much left up. hand down, yeah. Very cool, but a slow-mo for a while. Was it just drifting through the carousel with you know, an hour and a half? Yeah, I love that bit. To go. He he Dennis look, Fetzer, who was... He uh, might have confused and thought he was, he was on the show back on the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Friday night. Yeah. Friday night, yeah. I enjoyed that. Thank you to back, Becky Evans for stepping in and actually um, allowing me to get answers to the ridiculous questions I would have been asking myself and I've been on my own. <laughs> We've all been there. There's, a, there's an awful lot of, a lot more about uh, drifting, drift masters, if you want to find out a little bit more uh, about that in, uh, in Europe. Becky and the rest of the team, very entertaining for us on Friday night down at the southern end of the Grand Prix circuit. So gents, we are Coming down to the last 70 minutes, or there about 75 minutes of this race, for most people there will be, not, not for all though, there is one more stop. Well, the problem is, of course, it's not just 70 minutes, is it? it can be another eight, uh, seven and a half minutes on top of that. Well, I'm pleased you said that, because that's exactly where I wanted someone to go with that. Well done, Nick. <laughs> So, you know, this is, this is, you said, oh, right, Co, we're within 64 minutes of the end. Oh, damn, we need to be within 72 minutes of the end, yeah, effectively. And uh, remember, and I'm not sure if you were here, Nick, w w overnight, we were talking about my propensity to fill um, downtime with reading of regulations yes. and, and car handbooks, yes. owner's manuals. You're the one. I, I, am, I am the one. I am the one. Um, a slight change here this year. The chequered flag waits for the leader. Okay. So instead of the chequered flag going out at exactly 24 hours and everybody then coming through it, it's so not theoretically, mm -hmm. if it got the absolute maximum, you could have to run another 17 minutes. That's what we're saying, yes, exactly that. So I mean, it's unlikely, obviously, the, yeah. the likelihood is it will be, you know, six to eight minutes more. But that's interesting. Mathematically possible. Mm. And therefore, you have to uh, take on fuel accordingly. Though, of course, you will know where you are. When you come to the last stop, you know where you are relative to um, the chance of that happening. Well, you will if you're an SP9. The problem is for the other categories, mm. and the pit, you've got a vector in the <laughs> pace that you're going, the pace that the leader's going, whether there's a, a battle going on. Should I just tell them some of the teams down there that Paul Trust was still available this weekend <laughs> for working that out for you? He'll be on it. 24 in the pit lane is the team 
admit to the car that we just saw spin. Chris Meese brought it in. Um, yeah, Chris Meese did bring that in. And I think it's the end of the end now. He's on the, he was on the lead lap when he came in as well. Yeah. And he's going to remain on the lead lap, actually. He's going to remain six or seven minutes off the, off the front. But, he uh, might just have enough drive time to be able to take that to the end. Hasn't shown on the screen as out of the pits yet, although he is. Mm. Um, I think my computer's decided to give up the... It's having a bit ghost. of a... Yeah. Dare I do a complete restart? Well, we, it, did you see overnight that the, the team... It's, who, out, it's out and it's me, isn't it, still? Yeah. Did you see overnight when the team was trying to do some computer... It was trying that to was do... Funny. And it, was, it was doing a Windows update. Cause it, it got, oh, oh, well, oh, no. no, no B-S-O-D. Blue screen of death. Well, yes. Someone said, someone said, well, you should turn the internet off so you can't do an update. Though. Yeah, it's wise half of the event. Mm. Never do it. Never do updates at the weekend. Yeah, I tried all that as well. It still happens. <laughs> and it's always the computer that you boot up that you need immediately. Of course, because it is Bay Murphy's law. Somebody uh, tweeted it overnight, and I'm sorry, because now re I'm now rebooting the computer with, uh, <laughs> with the Twitter on, so I can't say who it was. I would have loved to have heard that service call. But no, I need the computer now. The car's crashed, and I need the... No, no, I, I can't go back. I can't go back to the last setup. I need it now. <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? What? The computer? No, the car or the oh, driver? Yes, exactly. Exactly. That would have been a very interesting service call. Now, let's, let's see if my machine is as clever as it tries to make me think it is. Into the pit lane, another one of the GT tyres. GITI, GT tyres. Female team, including the crew. Uh, so I, I don't think all of the crew this year is female on that car. Quite, no, there are, there are. It, was, it was last it, year. Are they sh there are some female crew. They are obviously showing some across the four cars mm. in the WS team, but um, certainly all female drivers and a female race engineer on the team as well. Yeah, yeah. Very, uh, very good um, programme from GT Tyres. I heard you talk about it earlier, Nick, where that they have, I think, deliberately chosen different cars to showcase their tyres across uh, a different range of performance. Racing improves the breed, if you want to oh. uh, learn enough, then you, you've got a 24-hour test bed, but why do it with the same car in three different ways? Why not have front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, you know, engine at the front, engine exactly. in the middle, and, and just see what it is. You know, it, it may be, you know, we, we obviously uh, all work on the the Hankook series, which is the Preventic series, with Hankook, and those tyres are exactly the same. Mm. Um, in compound, there's some minor construction changes, especially for the uh, rear-wheel drive port. Mid-engine cars and stuff, yeah. No, yeah. no mid-engine cars and the front engine, and most cars in there's just a slight construction okay. change to the Porsches, because obviously there's a very different way they use their tyres. Weird balance. But the, yeah. com the compound is the same across everything. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the Hankook are very much at pain to say, you know, the compound you've got on your TCR car is the same as you've got on your GT3 slash SB9 machine. Um, and it's designed, you know, and it's interesting because it doesn't really, you notice, it doesn't really give it a lot of extra that tyre in the first couple of laps. It's kind of designed to run the, you know, the stint at very similar speed. It's very flat in its drop off. The, the, the only problem with all racing tyres nowadays, and, and um, my experience of different manufacturers of tyres is very limited, probably three, four different tyres that I've, I've run on in the last three or four years. They all seem to be really, really good at the start. The, the, the days of having to really baby them early on, the, the confidence that you get from the tyres, and what you're more likely to get from your race engineer is, don't forget, you're on new cold tyres. And you think, yeah, but there's, there's loads of grip. Yeah, but they're not up to temperature and pressure. And hitting curbs early on, Peter, before the pressures are there, it's, it's sidewall damage, shoulder damage that you get. Often you can't see it either. It's on the inside uh, wall or shoulder of the tyre. And whether it's, you know, particularly on a racing car, you want that confidence early on, but you've almost got to roll yourself back a little bit and say, give yourself a couple of laps, son. Well, I, I, we saw at the very beginning of the race, didn't we, coming down the, the dotting of her behind the safety car, that the, some of the cars were ex almost excessive wee weaving, mm. doing just that, getting those heat into the shoulders and sidewalls those tyres so they can just get on it straight away because uh, otherwise you will just damage it and it will, will be a failure. You don't really want that anywhere on the North Cypher, to be honest. We've talked all, all weekend, Peter, you and I, about the 
improvements in technology in the cars, the speed in the cars, the GT4s and the GT3s, where they were, where they are now, the lap times. We, we should have mentioned this earlier, to be fair, but the, the, there are, I think we've said this a couple of times, there are nine different manufacturers of tyres here. The, the top class is open tyre, um, so you can pick your tyre manufacturer. There are five represented in there, and, and well done to ADAC for doing that, because that is very, very unusual. It's easy to go for the, oh, let's have one tyre and take a big check from the tyre manufacturer of Solar Supply. They haven't been tempted uh, into that. But a lot of the performance round here in particular comes from advances in tyres and ultimately we benefit from that as road car tyre users. Of course we do and it's uh, they, how things have come on in the I would say again largely down to the GT3 category that's sort of evolved so much in the last 10-15 years uh, it's, it's become the benchmark series of, of the of racing across the world but other manufacturers other suppliers cars themselves are product but the tyres as well what people are doing the braking Peter Cates talked about it didn't he about the braking on that Porsche mm. uh, on a on a Cayman GT4 car and he was he was waxing lyrical about it and telling us how, how late he could turn in beyond his beliefs and, and as you said John it's a GT4 car which is not not denigrated not putting it down but we're not even talking the very top level and we're talking in GT racing so if that's like this here at GT4 GT3 what's it like when you get into LMP3 one and then hypercars etc I mean that oh. is that is rocket science. I mean, quite literally, we, we, we joke, but you know, we've all got uh, uh, a certain brand of phone in here. Let's just call it an iPhone. There are other brands are available. John hasn't. I know John's looking around for his. But, um, but the point I was going to make was the processing power in a modern phone yeah. has got more than it got the man onto the moon in 1969. Oh, yeah, five. I, I think that's just, three, that's just frightening. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a really good point you make. I mean, it's interesting when you look at the pinnacle of tyres. Yeah, where, where is the pinnacle of tyre technology? My, my safety is it probably is oscillating between GT3 in a competitive open track or LMP1, because we all know the... So I'll say the pinnacle of motorsport F1 and does not have the pinnacle of tyres deliberately. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's not the tyre supplier's fault. No. They're being asked to do a job to, to provide programmed obsolescence, actually, is what it's, what it's all about, to, to, to force something to happen. I still like your idea for Formula One that they should use all three compounds over the, over the race. I've got many ideas, but just don't, they won't phone me. I don't know why it is. is this a, a couple of penalties just before we get to the top of the, the start of the final hour. The triple three. Don't rub your hands with green there, Cole. The uh, Dragon Dale Wappler oh, by Merton. Hyundai 30 and V2 front wheel drive. Um, that's picked up a uh, pit side. Pit lane's been over 82 seconds. Uh, we have a non-respect of the speed limit again for the well, I mean, the first time with only 30 seconds for the 118. That is the uh, oh, the unnamed um, team Motoflex car, and that oh, it's a Dacia. Dacia, sorry, that's the Dacia. The 118. The 118 is the Dacia. That's got a. Uh, th it's not make a big difference having a 30. Oh, excellent! They were speeding in pit lane. No, get in. We had to speed somewhere. Uh, did we do the 102? I don't no. think that's the no. correct response, so, Mr. No, Hancock. yes, you did. Yes, you did. That's yeah, the, 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 the so Just a couple. Car. So we're over penalties. There's, there's, there's an hour and three minutes to go. So, so if you came in now, you could get to the end. Uh, even if it goes to yeah, because you know, time, you know where it was. You did a little bit of lifting, coach, so you get through. He'd make, he'd make an amazing team manager, wouldn't he, John Hyder? Speeding in the pit lane, get in! <laughs> yes. That's what I want to see, lads, commitment. <laughs> the team manager of so-and-so, please come to race control immediately. Respond to your emails. <laughs> you you realise your team is speeding the pit lane? Yeah, bloody marvellous, isn't it? Yeah. Giving the guy a bonus. I've told Derek, well done! Uh, let's take a look before we head into the final hour then. Uh, at the sharp end of the field, it is Audi Sport Team Phoenix by 49 seconds. It's coming down slowly, but very slowly indeed to Adam Christodoulou. He has been mighty in the team get speed. Mercedes AMG number three in second place. He's got about two and a half minutes uh, on Jesse Crow and the Schubert Motorsport BMW M4 GT4 in third position. Uh, and then it's... Uh, it's Mario Engel, excuse me, lost my place there for a moment. And the team gets speed Mercedes AMG GT3. They've still got two cars in the top four. Car collection in fifth position with the number 22 car. All up still on the lead lap here. Share a sport. The number 16 car, Michele Barretta at the wheel of that Audi. Audi's packing out the top part of the field, aren't they? Uh, seventh place. Raffaele Marcello in the t first of the team Bildstein cars, that's the number 12 machine, still on the lead lap, also still on the lead lap, Chris Meese in the number 24, 
Uh, that's another one of the car collection machines. Eighth place, ninth position is off the lead lap. So it's only the top eight now that's on the lead lap. We'll finish off the top ten. Dennis Olsen for KCMG Porsche and Nico Bastian for Mercedes, the second of the Bill Stein car. Bill Stein car is the number six. That's your top ten. And a quick look at some of the class leaders. I won't have time to do them all before we go into the uh, last hour. The uh, 706 leads SPX as we've got a big incident coming on to the Dottiger Hur, and this is going to bring out the code 60s. So let's just take a moment to assess what's going on. There's a silver ish car. Number 18. Sorry, it's the number 18 car. Uh, 18 is the KCMG Porsche. And That's had no luck all weekend, though. No, car. it really hasn't. So it's a Tandy Bamba machine, yeah? Yeah. And that would be Bambi, because uh, we had Vanto, so surely that would be... That's quite a lot of damage there. It looks like it's lost a lot of front Dennis there. Olsen It was, was Dennis the at the car, yes. And there's a ton of debris and grass and all sorts over the track, much like the, uh, one of the BMWs in the night, wasn't it? Uh, Sheldon van der Linde's accident put a lot of detritus on the track. Um, I, I should say, by the way, uh, and rightly so, we were talking about speeding in the pit lane. It is very dangerous. We weren't encouraging it at all. Um, <laughs> with the comments about the Dacia and they have been penalised as everyone else has been. Uh, safety mm -hmm. is top priority here at uh, the Nürburgring Nordschleife and indeed always should be in the pit lane. It's a very busy pit lane here and it is always best to be underneath. <laughs> 60 minutes of racing remain. 23 hours completed. Luca Ludwig picked up the Glickenhaus trophy for pole position for the Octane 126 Ferrari. And in bright sunshine, 36 SPX and SP9 cars charged off down to the first corner. A little bit of bumping and love tapping going into their dark horse, maybe. The wings of the Aston Martin were flying early with the number 90 Vantage from TF Sport finding pace that we hadn't seen in the early rounds of this season. A mistake by Lawrence Vanter fighting his brother too hard. Dries got away with a little tap, but the one Manti Porsche winner from last year ended its race at the Tear Garden before the end of the fourth hour. And the Manti guys knew that Grello's day was done. One of the more bizarre incidents you will ever see or hear about at a racetrack. The BMW, the BMW, the KTM, excuse me, coming to a fiery halt at the top of the foxhole. And great work by our marshals. They've been brilliant all weekend. Seem to have got the fire out, but as soon as the driver jumped out, the car started to roll away down into the foxhole, hit the barrier on the right, and then crossed the track to the left, reignited. Fortunately, that was dealt with very quickly. In the nighttime hours, the remaining BMW from Rover Racing leading for Sheldon van der Linde, right front issue and failure, pitched him into the barriers at unabated speed. And Rover Racing's 2022 race was done just before half distance. Kelvin van der Linde with a Unusual misjudgment on the Grand Prix circuit as he was coming up to the Schumacher S where he caught the front of a Porsche Cayman and the number five share of Felix Audi in trouble. But he still had the opportunity with the car he's been driving since then. Falcon's day, for at least for the 44 car, not great. The number 22 Audi turning that around, subsequently getting a penalty. But then the Falcon car was hit by Carlos Tavares, the man who is at the top of the Stellantis motoring group in one of the front wheel drive uh, VT3 Opels. Max Hesse had a lurid, scary moment hitting the barriers going up the hill to Kesselschen. Enough with enough force from the aero at least just to rip off the windscreen tear offs and the BMW junior team's day was done. Maxi Goats caught out on oil at Arenberg at the top of the foxhole. Managed to keep just enough momentum to get the number three Mercedes team get speed on to 
the straight and narrow again. The Donnie Ho and Tay Garten has seen plenty of action. Side by side, side drafting, standard drafting, and some very brave overtaking maneuvers on the new surface at the end of the Tay Garten. The battle for the lead was well and truly on between Audi and BMW in the morning hours. And then Mother Nature, who had stayed away from this race after really getting involved in the last two years, decided she was going to play her hand. A few spits and spots of rain, and even the best GT3 drivers in the world were caught out. Again, citing the new dark tarmac, very difficult to see where it was wet. The number 20 Schubert car picking up a puncture, which took it out of cycling through to the lead on the slightly different pit stop strategy that it had. Then, it comes down to tyre choice. It's raining, it's not. It's raining over there, it's not raining over here. Slicks, wets, cut slicks, all available to the teams in the pit lane. Somebody had to make the decision. Was it rock, paper, scissors out the back? Did they roll the dice? No time for a committee meeting. Decisions had to be made to send the cars out. And off the top cars, there were plenty of different strategies playing out. It appeared that slicks hoping for full dry, or wet, hoping for full wet, weren't really the way to go. And something in between, those hand-cut slicks were better on more parts of the track. Even when we had a hailstone warning on the Grand Prix circuit, there was still enough of the track that was dry enough to make those hand-cut slicks work. And that was certainly the case for the guys at the front of the field. Were they slightly conservative? Possibly but the Phoenix Audi has come through that unscathed. So welcome to the last hour of this 50th anniversary Total Energy ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring. John Heinoff, Peter Snowden and Nick Damon in the pit lane. Uh, I? Nick Damon, if only. No, no, you normally you, are. You would have heard the end of it, but I have been. That's no, exactly do. so. Uh, Nick Damon in the booth, and on the side of the track at the start of the Dottie Her, a rather second hand Porsche GT3R. Uh, this car will be upgraded next year to the new body shape. Dennis coming through. Galgenkopf and just washing out at the very last moment on the last part of it. I, I wonder, Peter Snowden, if that was a left front puncture as he was coming through there because he didn't look as though he was on the wrong line. He didn't look like he did anything wrong at all. So either something on the surface of the track limited his grip or something went wrong, Peter, with the car. 100%. 100%. So uh, outside influences there. Uh, person of that experience just isn't going to do something like that just just doesn't turn in does it or and unfortunately it's a pretty high high speed part of the circuit to say the very least so uh, devastating for Porsche again it's uh, yet again the Nürburgring bites back and just said I'm, I'm not finished yet you might it, have an hour well, no, but basically said, look, you know, we haven't quite put all the bad luck onto Porsches yet so let's get that one's doing quite well let's get that one out of the way and you thought I'd finished yes no <laughs> it, 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 I think very much it was a situation there where something has happened but a hu huge huge amount of damage because yeah. it's not only to take and quite often expect to see a, you know, a front or rear bumper off because they're a big single plastic unit but it's taken the right rear wing off which is metal mm. yeah uh, clean off yeah, the car. some of it is that's one of the okay. features about this car we've been talking about serviceability there's a big bit of arm core that's going to need replacing as well we've been talking about serviceability they learned a lot from the Le Mans car to be able to take those panels off and replace them for things like punctures or side-to-side -side contact. And it's just a couple of clips to take that off. We had an example right at the start of the race with an anti-Porsche, where they could just clip off the bumper yeah. and clip on the new bumper, which of course is very important with the Porsche. It actually ducks for all your cooling as well. And that was done in about six seconds. Yeah, the two point. clips and it came. And obviously with the two and a half, three minutes you've got to do it, no problem anyway. But even so, it would not have been a major problem where other people have to have like a three-part front end. You've got to take a wing off. It just takes so long. If you look at the design of the car from sort of the ground up at the back, you've got, you've got your uh, diffuser. Then you've got your rear bumper. What they've done is to make sure that the structure, the wings, the metal part is really quite high. So everything below is, as you say, I'm going to use a phrase here, kind of paraphrase, it's like Lego. <laughs> it, it's easy pop on, pop out. It's very unfair. Other brands are sure are available. Uh, not really. Really. No, no, not really. No, <laughs> okay, no, is that fair enough? It's a good one, that. Uh, but that's the whole point. So the, the main substructure has a chance of surviving the impact yeah. so much better, and they can throw the bits onto it.
he says in theory. I am sure all the mechanics will be looking at this and going like, so you think it's that easy, do you? Tell you what, yeah. we'll swap jobs for a weekend see how we get on. Yeah. Yeah, not uh, not at all. You haven't seen me with this man, have you? I don't want to. No, it's like a cow with a fountain pen. <laughs> <laughs> so pull, pull the other one. <laughs> If you are just, jo- <laughs> it's the final hour. If you are just joining us around the world, good to have your company. Uh, trying to sum this race up in a few words. Uh, where were you? Is the simple answer to that. We could start now and take another 24 hours to describe what we've seen in the previous 23. Coming through the number 33, Falcon Porsche, sitting in 10th position at the moment for Patrick Pele, and he's on the Grand Prix circuit at the moment. And they have not yet quite had the race that they were wanting. Missed part of the NLS uh, this year. And the preparation did not go the way they wanted. Supply chain issues, which has affected everybody in fairness with various bits and pieces. But they, me. They, couldn't, they couldn't get their tyres. Uh, even though they're sponsored by Falcon, they could not get their tyres. Falcon have got a performance centre here. Most of the big tyre manufacturers have there try things out. In fact, the N rating on Porsche road car tyres is Nürburgring or Nordschleife. That's what people will tell you. Um, and if you haven't got the N tyres on... Um, it, what, for your warranty. Well, <laughs> uh, possibly insurance, actually. <laughs> Into the pit lane for what will be the final stop. This is the 20 Schubert car, which was in the mix until... Their drop time coming out of third position uh, on the track uh, that uh, punctured during the night when things went uh, very wrong with that shower of rain. They lost five minutes, six minutes during that period. They also had a, a it was a good call. They put Alexander Sims onto wet at the height of the uh, precipitation an hour and a half or so ago. That didn't work. They lost some time. Luckily, they were to bail out and not have to take an extra pit stop, but they are the first of the cars to stop, which means they will have the longest pit stop, um, but they are on their last stop, so they, they have to put enough fuel in for just under an hour, really, because whilst then 50 minutes to go, you have to put a bit of a, a, bit of a, a float of fuel in to make sure the, uh, the race ends. A, f- a float of fuel? A float of oh. fuel. I've got a fuel float, so if, if I have to uh, make Makes up sense. three quarters of a lap. Uh, well, I see what you mean. Yes, uh, yeah, a bit, of, uh, a bit of extra. A bit of extra. Yeah. What really scares me is John. I completely understood it. Yeah, so yes, yes, yeah, not me bad. too. I'm not sure what that's. I'm not we, sure we've spent what that a lot said. of time together recently. Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> I'll have you singing show tunes, soon, Peter. No, 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 <laughs> that, that, that would be very brave indeed. <laughs> John, sell tickets. Be the promoter. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Do it. All right. What was it Snowy Snowy Snowden Productions you said earlier? Snowy Snowden Productions. <laughs> yeah. Snow Snowy Snowden <laughs> Productions. That was Earl, ba- uh, Earl, Earl and Hindy in Nashville. Um, sounds like a very dodgy firm of solicitors, doesn't it? Well, uh, Earl and Hindy in Nashville sounds, sounds something uh, like uh, a country music album to me. Uh, Schubert Motorsports, so Jesse Cron there um, with an eight-lap stint. Before that, we had Alex Sims in, who did eight laps, but did come into the pit lane in between because of that tyre swap. So that has cost them a wee bit of time. But that car now, fuel and tyred, to the end, and the 20 car. This, I think, Crucially steered on the lead lap. Yeah, and I think this is going to be the battle, actually, which is the final step of the podium, because Mauer Engel's just gone past. He's going to be passed by a minute and a half or so, but he will need to make another stop before the end. Yeah, which will, which not will be, be fuel a three-minute stop, obviously, because he only no. needs to have a few... A few yeah, we've seen it, a it, number of cars falling off the carousel. One of those was the 20 car. They, uh, he will not change tyres either. It's very unlikely, but they, it, it's really... Well, I mean, you know the rules, what, what the minimum pit stops are, times are on the last stop. Is it free? Yes, pretty much. Depends when you take it, but yes. Um, the out, out goes the number 50. Uh, the reason I don't think he'll take tyres is I don't think they will need to put that much fuel in, so they won't want to be putting themselves in danger of cross-threading a wheel nut or something like that. Uh, the Schubert guys in the pit lane are very happy that they have just sent their man, uh, Jesse Kron, the young charger, back in, in, I think, fourth position fourth, yeah. now. But it's, it's really where the gap which he has to uh, Engel, which we need to just give a couple more sectors to, to ping uh, out. It's, it's going to be about a minute and ten seconds. Right, so it's, it's how long will Engel, who, who is only what, this is only the start of his fourth lap, yeah. So he's got a lot of time to go before he puts that fuel in. He won't be stopping for another half hour. How much fuel we have to put in, how long we have to stay in the pit lane. 
one thing that helps Engel is that we haven't got a full green track. Yes. So he's not using as much fuel because coming through Galgenkopf onto the start of the Dottiger Hur is where the KCMG car is. Um, so we have two slow zones there and two, uh, three code, code 60 uh, zones. Thank you to everybody who has contributed via Twitter and the socials at RSL underscore studio. Uh, has been steaming gently through the last uh, 23 and a half hours or so. In fact, all this week. A particular thank you to everybody who tuned in for the early sessions, which once again, <coughs> via the international syndication and the World TV free, were open to everybody. Uh, those of you in the States who've been tuned in on uh, Motor Trend on Demand, taking their advantage of their free offer for uh, the next couple of weeks. Thank you for your kind comments as well. It's been an absolute cracker, and as we know, it is not over yet. No, I mean, Adam Christillo, who is obviously trying to hunt down uh, Kevin Van Lille, he's managed to take a couple of seconds out of him in this, this, this um, final, well, penultimate stint, but it's still pretty solidly at 47 seconds, and, and that was really all gained in that um, little moment when it was a chance for Kelvin to go on to cut slicks rather than pure slicks. That just made the time which um, Adam's teammate uh, couldn't make up. Yeah. Right, let me quickly run down the class leaders here because we haven't done it for a while. Uh, in 91st position... Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Stand by. I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced I've got all the classes there. So bear with me for a second whilst I... Um, I refire uh, my timing computer. Uh, right, okay. In 91st position, the 300 VT3 Team Mathol, the Porsche Cayman 718S SP3 is the not the superstar car actually, the the 120 rather than the 119 Toyota Corolla Altis from Gazoo Racing Team Thailand. They're in uh, 81th, 81th position, 81st <laughs> position. Sorry, the tiredness is getting to me, I tell you. The GT Tire Motorsport Volkswagen Golf 7 leads the VT2 front-wheel drive category. That is the 223 car in 75th position. Rockstar Games uh, with the 325i. Uh, Notice that car uh, as well, uh, as in a number, carrying the tribute to the marshal who sadly died at the uh, at the end of the last uh, NLS race nice touch by the guys there who have been big supporters of of this event and thank you to all the marshals they lead their class in 75th position uh, in a 72nd position the crawls and the princes uh, family there Hoffer Racing, E46 GTR, life in the old E46 yet, running in 72nd position, so pretty much halfway up the field of starters for the 70th position for the number 200. The privately entered 397 Porsche 911 in V6 is still running and in 66th position leads its class. The Cup X for KDM Crossboard GTX class. Tykeman Racing have still got the 161 running in 62nd position and leading that class. Porsche came in from Adrenaline Motorsport with the two end pits on pit lane out. The V5 class leader is in 61st position for the triple four. SP4T is in 58th position. The leader of that class is another one of the uh, Porsche 718 GTS for a privately entered team. The number 240 is a BMW 240i Racing Cup. What great cars they've been. And pleased to see there's still enough of them to warrant a class here. And it's Adrenaline Motorsport that leads in 53rd position. Cup 5, the new Cup 5 is for the new BMW M2 Racing Cup cars. Just into the pits for what will be its final stop, the number 880 for Schubert Motorsport. That's 51st position. The VT2 all-wheel and rear-wheel drive class. Well, the leader of that class is in 48th position. And that is another Adrenaline Motorsport run car. The 330 BMW G20 leading that class. AT from 
quite early on actually after the demise of the Viper and then the Mustang. The 109 Mustang is running again, or at least it was the last time I looked. But this has been this AT class, which had six cars in it, has been uh, pretty much dominated by the GT3 Cup car converted to run on the biofuel by four motors. And the number 320 is well inside the top 60 at 46. Some five positions further up the timing and scoring monitor is the SP3T leader. This is a Seat Leon, the Autorama Airgate car. This is the Stanko family, the 113, which was uh, my grandfather's old epaulet number when he was in Sunderland Borough Police. 41st position for that car. 32nd position for the number 70 SP7 Huber Motorsport. Porsche 911 GT3, the 991 Cup car. The only 991 Cup car here. That is an absolute shocker. So many people have jumped into the 992s now. Indy Donchi is behind the wheel of the Aston Martin for Dur Motorsport. The SP8T number 95 car leads its class and is in 25th position overall. The best of the Aston Martins getting very close to that 24th position that the original Kermit, the GT, original GT4 car, got on its uh, fourth, on its first class outing here uh, a few years ago. Now that was in 21st position, the best of the front wheel drive cars. It is the Hyundai Elantra TCR, the number 830, which should have been on pole, then lost its times, then wasn't, then had to fight up, then had a problem, and has now come through. They have got a whole season's worth of stories uh, in this race already. 21st position, as I say, for the number 830. It's Mark Bassing who's behind that. They've got a good driver lineup in that. We move into the top 20 now, and it would seem that the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup 992 Carrera Cup cars have not quite fulfilled the potential that I heaped upon them earlier on, and the expectation, because the leader is only in 17th position. Uh, that is the K. Kramer racing car with four and a half minutes on the Black Falcon car in second. 17th and 18th, 127 and 123. That is the battle for the win in that category. And then the classes that started in the first group, SPX and the only, uh, no, actually, I was about to say the only SPX car in the top 30, but I'm, I'm wrong. The SPX leader is Felipe fernandez in the Glicken House. They've had an awful week. They haven't had a wonderful race, but they have been quick when they've been going, and they have had to fight being assaulted by other cars as well. Engine change on Friday night wasn't the perfect way to start the weekend. They have battled back again. They were knocking on the door of the top 10. Might have even cracked the top 10, actually, in the middle part of the race. They battled back again after problems after they were in the garage for being hit by uh, Naston Martin from memory. They battled to 14th position. Second in SPX is the better of the two True Racing GT2 KTM crossbows, and they are down in 24th position but many, many laps away, uh, some nine laps away from the leading class. And that leaves the top of the shop, which when I started this, it may have changed, but I doubt it. It, it was uh, Sheldon van der Linde in the, sorry, Kelvin van der Linde in the Audi Sport Team Phoenix, Audi R8 LMS GT3, 153 laps. We are gonna be close, but not quite at the distance record. The gap, between the 15 Audi Team Phoenix car and the first of two podiums sitting at the moment, Mercedes AMGs from Team Get Speed, 40 seconds to Adam Christodoulou, who's ch charging along. Uh, we've got Maro Engel in third position, but owes us a pit stop. Do all of those cars, Nick, owe us a pit stop at the front of the field, or can they go? The top, uh, I think, no, so, so Jesse Cron doesn't know as a pit stop. The other three do. Right, so the, the top three, in top fact, three, do yeah. also pit stops. They stop. won't be right. long pit stops. They no. won't be the, 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 the long ones, they just just getting the end with their fuel float. Uh, and we're back into summer, so let's speak to the sunniest person we know, <laughs> Peter Snowden, <laughs> on the far end, on the far right of, of our commentary booth at the moment. Is that irony that my, my nickname's Snowy then? Yes, exactly <laughs> yeah, so. Exactly yeah. so. Uh, Sunny car, Snowy. Car, car updates for you. If, if I say to you two gentlemen, the car starting with, the manufacturer name starting with D, because yeah. we can't decide how to pronounce it. Dacia. Is it the Romanians? That's the one. Yeah. 
It's now inside the top 100. Yes! Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. come on. That, now, that time we can say, get yeah, in. Well done. One. Yeah, well and, done. And um, the, the RSL Collective, John, you've mentioned uh, uh, Lanzarote Camel before. Alan Pratt has been very it's helpful updating us throughout this, uh, the race. Uh, and he's managed to take some stills of the Dennis Olsen uh, KCMG Porsche, number 18, when he went off at uh, Galvin Cop. And it's the left rear tyre that failed. The left rear? Left rear oh, right. through the corner, which is what started the cars obviously loaded up. The tyres yeah. failed. Yeah. That spat it left into the barriers. Uh, not what you want, the better times. All I'm going to say from a driving perspective is better there than 50 or 100 metres down the road when you've got 200 and plus clicks on. Or or coming into tear garden. That's exactly the end of that. At uh, the end of the Dottie Gehur and, and turning in that middle. Imagine if it had gone in the middle left hand portion. Let, where let, let's not imagine. I mean, no, 280 not. clicks. No, no. I, 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 that's what it looked like to me, some kind of failure because it went so quickly. And we were fortunate enough to get a, a look at it from behind the car. And it looked like Dennis was on the perfect line to me. It exactly. really was. You, you don't have to nail the first two APCs uh, on that one. It's the third one that you've got to really open out. Now, here is a crucial pit stop for Adam Christodoulou. Oh, sorry, pit sorry, 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 take it back, sorry. From second position, this is his last pit stop with 36 minutes remaining. I'm going to predict no tyres. Oh, hang on, did he go on to cut slicks the last time? No, I think he went on... S no, I think you're right, he was cut. Right, I think he'd go to slicks. one end or the other, there were some cuts. I, I, I think they're... Let's say if they go with tyres, they are going with tyres. So it's going to be cut slicks off there and brand new Michelin slicks on. Interesting there, just uh, we had a little bit of a, a shot into the inside of the car there, John, as the car pulled up from the, ca the camera within uh, that car, uh, looking across at uh, Adam Christodoula. And as he came to a halt, he was furiously pumping what I would say was the, the, the left-hand pedal, which would normally be a clutch pedal, but some of the GT3 cars don't have a foot-operated clutch pedal. The BMW certainly doesn't. It's a, a hand-operated one from the steering wheel. So that would suggest to me that it's the brake pedal, but you're doing that with his left foot. Mm. You've obviously got to put your feet on the brake, stop the wheels rotating while they do the air guns on them. But why he was pumping it slightly surprises me. Well, even th they've had the time to change all four tyres, which I, I wasn't sure. It was cut slicks that came out. They haven't tilted that car round, Nick. No, they, they realise it's a bit shorter. They they're actually looking on the Tesco fuel pump how many litres they're getting in, which they would be charged two pounds, two sorry, two euros and twenty eight per litre for. I think if the uh, the rates I can see over there are, are, are holding up for the pit lane pumps. Uh, the shorter pit stop, I'm honest, I didn't quite catch what it was. I think it's a two minute stop. This one, wasn't it? Um, it counting down, they have finished everything, they, almost everything they need to do as the final bit of fuel goes in. They can release the car in five seconds, whether that's going to give them enough fuel to get to the end. Thinking about it, they've only got 35 or 43 minutes. It is they're slightly over what they need to be as they clear the final bit of fuel away, wipe it down. And they have put 68.27 uh, litres in. Can't see the Euro for that charge. No. Uh, yeah, pump 31, please. And can I have my glasses? Thanks very much. Do you agree with your stamps? Yeah. <laughs> We were talking about this uh, yesterday, John. It's probably probably as good a time as any just to, to cover it. I've, I've kept it in in the in the bank, as it were. I completely forgot to mention it over the night. Uh, but the cost of um, running these things. We said it's 50, 55, 60 euros a lap in fuel, roughly in the top category. Tires. Oh, and the tires. Yes. Right. Roughly three thousand euros a set of tires. Is it? It's that's very high. Not it's quite cheap. Three thousand euros a set well, for four tyres. A lot more than yeah. Ventic. Yeah. <laughs> now, a top team will use twenty-four sets of tyres here, so we're talking seventy-six thousand euros in tyres. But a lot of the top teams do have tyre uh, deals, tyre relationships. You always have to spoil it, don't you? You just have to come in there and burst my bubble. I burst your bubble. I've just, I've just, I've only. <laughs> well, it's how it feels. I've just over emphasised. Respect my emotion. I've only emphasised how important those tyre deals are. Side by side action on the Dottiger Hurt, and this is the other Get Speed car coming through. This is Maro Engel. Now I think, I think if I'm Engel, he's he's four laps into his stint. Uh, that will, yeah, that that's easily. An, <laughs> He's 50 seconds, 57 seconds ahead. He, I think Engel might be able to get to the end. I don't think so. Not a chance. I know, uh, this is the end of his fifth lap. This is the end of his fifth lap. No, he can't. So does he stop now, or does he stay out till the last possible he minute? shorter every time on the minimum pit stop? Not in the last half an hour. Well, not, not in the last few minutes. No? The, the, the minimum pit stop time um, disappears. 
Uh, so I, I, for him, I think he stays out. Stays out, and, they have and to then if smash. there's a, and then if there's any uh, if there's any long code sixties, it helps. Um, he can't be caught up. He's keeping at the moment. This car is about track position. Yeah. If it is the last thirty minutes, John, we're thirty-two minutes away from the end of the race. Yeah. So that could be yeah. absolutely spot on. I think it's more. I think it's more than that. But uh, yeah, I, I just I just think they stay. I just think they stay. Uh, I think they stay out. Because Jesse Krohn, who is yet to come across the line, is fueled to the end. Jesse is uh, only on now his second lap, so he's got um, he's got fuel to burn, literally. Uh, so he can turn that up to full rich and uh, and try and chase that car down for a, a podium. What might have happened if they hadn't lost that five minutes? They would have been right in the mix at the sharp end of the field in that Schubert car. They'd stealth their way there. Hardly mentioned them through Cron the early over, first week. Seems a bit overdue. Uh, yes, he's slow. He's slow. He's pitting. Drama. Drama for Sherbert. As Cron was slow through Tiergarten and now comes into the pit lane. Now he'll have spoken to the team on the radio, phoned in whatever problems he thinks he might have. He comes in past the Dacia Logan which with this stop hopefully hasn't dropped back out of the top 100. That's a leisurely stop indeed for the team. But what we need to see is what's going on down at the far end of the pit lane. I'm oh, training my left. Problem left front. Oh, um, puncture? Uh, or is it brakes? No, that's, that looks to me, I'd say it's brakes, wouldn't you? That's oh, this definitely. is disaster. This is BMW's 2022 Total Energy ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, this car has worked so hard. Drivers out. I, I think this I is think the end. Over. I think it's over, John. I think it's over. Wow. It had, they oh, had worked they, 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 themselves. They, 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 they massive fire on the right-hand side, haven't they? I oh, know that's, 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 that's the heat that's the, the, that's the exhaust. Heat the heat the wrap, heat yeah. around the exhaust. They're, they're big fire, but it's just uh, the, yeah. the pure amount of heat from the exhaust, 800 degrees. This it? car had fought its way into contention, dropped five minutes or so during the middle of the night on a slippery slidey greasy track where they've got a puncture now has something come back to haunt them after that contact or is this something else indeed uh, it's the other side of the car from contact but whether that means anything or not but the point is they were leading on uh, all, as the strategies rotated during that period prior on to the going pit on. cycle yeah. yeah john you said to me before when we did the warm-up half an hour before this race started this time yesterday and you said uh, yeah what, what are your thoughts and i said it's there's this there's that the so-and-so the italians etc etc but it would be very hard not to bet against yeah, 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 yeah. And you said to me, how much? And I said, I wouldn't bet your money on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just in case. There's always that. Yeah. Because of what this place can do. And it's done it again. <sighs> whole BMW M4 GT3 uh, programme has just unravelled with the, lo the one car that we talked about the least has done the best. Yeah. But it's still unravelled at the end. Half an hour short. Half an hour short. The pace of this race... We're not quite going to get a distance record, but make no mistakes. Those of you who are watching and listening, the pace of this race has been unrelenting. Whether it's been the actual pace uh, at 8.11.6 is a very fine time to get around this track. But between the slow zones, Nick, between the purple flags, everybody's been hard on the throttle, then hard on the brakes. It has been unrelenting. Yep, and the BMW challenge has wilted away. Newest car. Well, yeah, but how many of these have been mechanical problems? Mm. Because junior team, accident. Both the Rover racing cars, accident. It looks like this is, is the result of a couple of, it may well not be the final thing to take out, but it, other accidents. Our leader has come into the pits for his final splash and dash. Yeah. That's Kevin Van Linden for the Audi, which are having a lot. It's Audi, Mercedes, Mercedes, Audi, Audi at the moment, by the way. Um, but the BMWs are not going to win the 24 hours of the Nürburgring at their first attempt. And in many ways, I thought they were yesterday. The momentum, the force was strong with them when they came in. <laughs> uh, when you look at what, what's happened, yes, it's a brand new 
Yes, it's a brand new car, but it's had international victories. It's earned its stripes in IMSA in the uh, Creventic series. Samantha Tan I'll, Racing I'll took the first international victory for that car. Turner Motorsport have backed them up, uh, and Paul Miller Racing have won as well. This was the one that they were aiming for. But I'll tell you right now that the bosses in Munich are going to be very upset tomorrow because this is not the car that's let them down. It's the drivers. It's the, it's the human piece. It's the, it's the pieces of meat behind the steering wheel. <laughs> All the four cars, yes, there, there are extreme circumstances, especially with, the, uh, with this car, the Schubert car, because it was the first car to meet the, the, the flurry rain. of rain. Yes. But they've all gone off because somebody has pressed a button wrong, has pressed a throttle wrong, or has steered the steering wheel wrong, not because the new cars are the mechanical. I'm issue. never racing in his race team. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Not even on iRacing. <laughs> Harsh. I would say the one exception, the one that had the right, yeah. the right hand wheel failure. Yeah. Which uh, was that? That was uh, late at night. Yeah, that was the 98 uh, Rover. Car, the Rover car. That, yeah. that wasn't driver. Yeah. That, he was leading the race at that he point. Leading the race the, when the sparks came off on the right hand. Yeah, that's failed. right. Yeah, so we, don't know how that, we don't know what actually caused it. Yeah, well, the they will now. That could, have been, that, that could well have been damaged from, from previous. That was Shelton um, van der Linder at I'm the wheel of I'm that car. I'm not trying to make my, my case even more strong. That could well have been damaged caused by. by um, uh, but it know, might not have been. Exuberant reuse of curbs. Yeah. But you were reuse of curves. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one was a bit odd. I, I, it, it is the BMW curse of the darkness hours. Like the Schubert's got through to half an hour before the end of the race. Here's Chris Tadoulou coming to the line. Not stopping. Uh, no, he, didn't he stop the lap before? Chris Tadoulou. Yes, he did. Sorry, yeah. He changed his tyres. The problem between two um, BWT get speed cars um, fighting at the front is you have no official indication which one's which. You get constantly confused when you're tired, and it's right towards the end of a very, I, very exciting race. I think that has handed the third position to team get speed. I just need to check a couple of things to get it straight in my own mind in this 3D think, chess I think, match. I think Mario Engel's car will be third now. Nico Muller uh, has been out. This is his fifth lap for the number 22 Audi Sport Team car collection. And he's about 90 seconds, call it 100 seconds away from Mario Engel. So if Engel has no problems coming into the pits, and making his pit stop whenever that is, uh, I don't think Muller can catch him. To be close. Muller, Muller has got one fewer laps on his tyres and one more lap of fuel. Uh, so he's got, uh, he got three and a half laps or two and a half laps to go. Uh, he's on lap six of his run. Lap no, five Muller, he's on lap five of his so run. He's got three and a half laps to go. Tight. And we've got 20. Dep depends where the leader, depends where so the leader is. 24 minutes and the half lap. Right. If If... If he's in the right place on the track, if they roll, if Audi Sport team uh, car collection, who are now in fourth and fifth position with uh, Nico Muller and Chris Meese, and they are two minutes apart, um, they, I don't. Well, Michele Barrett is only another 40 seconds. Audi are packing up behind the two get speed Mercedes, and they are well ahead of Raffaele Marcello in the team Bilstein number 12. I think you roll the dice for Muller. I think car collection roll the dice for Muller and say stay out and go to the end. Let's let's force get let's force get speed's hand and see if they stop. If they stop, we might be able to give them a race. We might even get track position. Uh, but we've got we've got one more lap of fuel but than them. It, there isn't a point where the pits close, is there? At the end of the race, nope, so no, they, no. Can, they can make the decision as they come round for that. For, for, oh, it's been one extra lap, and we can dive in. Well, the other thing they can do is they can talk to Team Phoenix and it's just decide when the race ends. Yeah, but the lap's too long. They can't get a, they can't get that, they can't get a lap behind because he's got to cut over. It. No, but they can slow him down. He's got you know he's got a minute plus. On, on the cars behind them, they can slow it, them down yeah, if it's it, it tight. It's on the edge, absolutely. Yeah, they can say just drop back 20 seconds, which is yeah. a little narrow thing, and then they'll stop the. Uh, a reminder the checkered flag waits for the leader here. It does not come out on the stroke of four. So we have got it is uh, 37 minutes and 18 seconds past three o'clock now. So third, just under 13, or just on 13 minutes to run uh, that will take the uh, that will take the 
Mauro Engelkar, I think two more laps. The lead for the 15, Van der Linde, Alex Heesport Phoenix is now 54 seconds at the front from Adam Christodou. Christodou. If things run as we expect for the next 23 minutes, plus one lap effectively, they, they will finish first and second. Uh, neither of them are under threat from any uh, changing ways because they both can beat their last stop. Nicky Katzberg is listening in. Hello, Nicky. The incident on the 98 certainly wasn't a driver error. There was no previous contact or curb riding, not an issue here. OK, Nicky, well, I would absolutely say that in all bar one of their cars, which has come out, has come out just driver error. Right. <laughs> OK. Sorry, Nicky. I still don't want to be on your team. <laughs> now, none of those BMW drivers are ever going to drive for you. Well, luckily, I think it's unlikely to be a major. I mean, I've got, yeah, let's be wrong. It's not like I'm, I'm, I'm saying I, I wouldn't have thrown this thing in the barrier on lap two 17 times. It's a difficult situation. I, I think, if I'm really honest with you, I think the, the, the one of the cars being I have a, a, a bit of an issue with uh, was the 99, which took out the top, the top sport. Uh, Porsche, no, 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 the Schumacher S, because there's just no point and no need for it at that, at that area of the race. Yeah, I, I there's an awful lot here, and I'm, I, there's an awful lot here to unpack. And I thought it was interesting what John Edwards from BMW said earlier on. And thank you to all of the BMW and other manufacturer drivers who come, came across to say hello. It, it's going to take us two or three days to actually work out what we've seen here. Uh, we see it in two or three or four hour chunks and I, I kind of need to just piece it all together like a large jigsaw in the next few days uh, before we head off to Le Mans for the test next weekend. There's not an awful lot of time to take it in before we've got to dump all the information and put the Le Mans chip into the brain. Uh, but it does seem that this race has been run at an exaggerated speed, almost like it's, it's one and a half times speed all the time. And everybody that we've had up here has said, this has been a fast race, this has been an intense race. People are making assumptions about what's going on out there based on the fact that there are fewer cars than normal and forgetting that the Nürburgring itself is still the first thing that you've got to beat. Uh, and, a few, last. And, and the last and the bit in the middle as well uh, and you know there's one or two drivers who've come here rusty I'm not seeing any of uh, the, the guys in the top they're pros but there's certainly uh, some of the the passes the positioning on the track the indicators being used and then cars going one way and not the other first time for three years we've had a proper night running Yes, absolutely. Not a hint of fog, by the way. No, no, no inversion at all. No. So, it, 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 this is, I think that we'll look back on this in a few months' time and realise what a classic we've seen. Oh, yeah. In, in terms, and, and, and all, wheel the wheel racing, check. Fast lap times, check. Distance record, not quite, but I can explain that one away. And that even... I'm going to say it about the the way things go that it is the racing between the neutralized parts of the track for me proves why the way they do this here and they don't put out full course caution oh, yeah, is absolutely the way right. 100%. Yeah, I mean it would have we'd have had uh, the cars going around at 60 kilometres an hour for t uh, 18 of the 24 hours. It's been a fabulous race. I mean, it's just, it is just unfortunate that the normal magic ingredient for an exciting race is, is just our water, but the way the water was added actually broke up a fantastic race. Yeah. Um, it's the yeah, iron usually, our priorities, yeah. Well, usually, I normally say just add water, but we were having enough fun without we that. We didn't need it. We didn't need the yeah. water at all and it's um yeah it's it's thrown a few spanners in the works including for the 20 sherbet racing girl uh and obviously uh, the tactical bad luck poor choices just timing issues between the the cars that looks like it's going to win the van der linda uh audi porsche uh, audi porsche phoenix audi and the chris Dulu, uh, mercedes from team get speed audi porsche well they are the same company it has happened they are the same company. happened they are the same it's company not new uh, i i Back to differ. I, I placed before the court, before my learned friend. <laughs> um, American, uh, American racing. Mm. Audi and Porsche on same cars in America. Mm. Yeah. 
You said about uh, the distance record, John. We're on 156 laps. That's three laps short of that distance record. Uh, and we have 17 minutes remaining. I, I think we might get to 58. Yeah. We might get to 58 50 yeah, again. One short, I think. I think that'll be the third time. Or might, might, might even match it. Um, uh, we, we've had 58 at least once before. I think possibly twice. No, he's going to hit. He's on 56. Yeah. In 16 minutes' time, we'll be on 158. So yeah. across the line, 159. Okay, yeah. fine. Okay, so we could equal the distance record. Okay, Peter. Thank you. Which is, given the fact how we've been constantly whinging about the amount of code 60, just goes to prove how fast they've been going the rest of the time. But again, it's you know the, the distance record is held since 2014, and these cars and the tyres, as they say, are significantly quicker. Uh, despite they've been bopped them back, what this, as we've talked about the development of GT3, it's no longer about ultimate pace. It's having that same right on the edge of ultimate, lap after lap after lap after lap after lap. And so perhaps the ultimate speed is second less, but the, the stint speed is several seconds faster. Scarily so. Well, when you think we've had, I remember seeing on the, the race channel a barrier repair that was going to take, that was started and then said, it'll be in place for an hour. Mm -hmm. And it, well, that was, I think, a take on, so in a, a significantly fast part of the race. And one thing I have noticed is that the the slow zones have been extended, particularly on the Dr. Gahoa, have been extended, I think, at least one, possibly two flag stations further back, which I also think is great, because what you've got there is the opportunity. You're taking away the opportunity for people to trip over people as you're coming yeah, into it. they're bringing it. people down much more gradually. Yeah. Very, but yeah, and I think that's worked really, yeah, really well. you don't want someone jamming on the brakes anywhere on the Norge Live. Um, the... The issue will be, was, was, was going to be, always was going to be, those people who were a bit ring rusty, who were a bit less than match fit, who were going down to 60 when they could have been doing 120. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that was the worry, because you still can't overtake them, of course. Yep. And one or two of the GT drivers Engel seeing that. is in the pits from uh, third, and this will be the chance, perhaps, for Nin Nico Muller to go past. 95 but seconds. Needs fuel. 95 seconds. Well, Nico, you, you leave Nico out. He completes six laps at the end of this one. So I think you, you leave him leave him out. I hope for the best, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it's right on the cusp of what's going on here. Peter, how have you enjoyed this? Uh, how can you not? Yeah. What, what, what's not to have enjoyed? It's been absolutely phenomenal. It could not have thrown many more, any more permutations at us. Um, does it make you want to come back here and race again, or does it, say, does it make you think, uh, I've done my time here, uh, no thank you very much, I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing in my classic racing. I'd, I'd give it a go. Go! <laughs> of I would. Yeah. In the, in the Dacia. I don't want to let you, in the Dacia, let you, you give it a go. go. But I would give it a go, of course I would. Thank you, Peter. Peter Snowden, who's been with us, will bring Johnny Palmer back in for the last 15 minutes and also for some comments after the, the chequered flag. Now, in particular, I want to try and clarify the chequered flag rules here, because clearly Johnny and I have been looking at two different, uh, two different interpretations, shall we say, of what is going on. Now we had this earlier on about where cars were starting and where whether it was going to be the pit lane start or the end of the group start and uh, whether it is something that is and I can say this and I can say literally and mean literally this time <laughs> lost in translation uh, JP you've been looking at the regs now I I've been seeing that the chequered flag for a, a long time I looked at this earlier on and I've asked some advice as well um, about this the, the chequered flag waits so four o'clock rolls around and then the next time the uh, the leader comes through, the chequered flag comes out, but you were looking at regs that somewhat contradict that. Well, uh, yeah, the classification rule, which is rule 38, 38.1, says regardless of the number of laps covered, the chequered flag will be shown to all cars as soon as they cross wow. the finishing line after the 24 hours have elapsed at the end of the race. So regardless of 
when we hit four o'clock, regardless of what car is due across the line next, the flag just comes so if out the, if the and Dutch, locks them into if position. if the Dacia in 99th position comes across the line at four minutes, zero, zero and one second, it will see the chequered flag first. That's how I read it. Right, yeah. OK. Um, and then that, because we've had in the situations in the past, the race leader just beat the chequered, as in goes across the line at yeah. three hours and 59 minutes. Yeah. Second place car crosses the line at four, it can't then Correct. think about gaining that lap Correct. back again because it's locked into position at four o'clock. Yes, yeah, and, that, and that's why I thought they changed it. But Not according to my 2022 regulation. Right. There are various bits in yellow which show a rule sure. change year from, on from year. From last year, yes. But that's not in yellow. OK. Who's told you it's the other way around? I mean, well, that's I'm, the rule for NLS. I know it is, and I, I, lo I looked it up, and I, and I, have, I have asked, and I have had um, a reply and okay. a tweet from that mm. as well. Um, well, it could go one or two ways, folks. Well, I with think us. it may not, it, it may not be actually an issue. The, the people who, for whom it is really important is Maro Engel. Well, no, because it's, it's really quite interesting. I was about to say that Nico Muller didn't go past Maro Engel. Despite Engel taking that splash of fuel. Right. Um, Ah, because he, Muller had stopped the lap before, had he? No, no. no. Oh. Just it wasn't. He, he managed to get enough of a gap, and the, the right. distance between okay. the two is now 16 seconds, with Muller not necessarily fueled to the end. Um, more likely to be fueled to the end if Johnny's. Uh, yes. Johnny's rule. Absolutely. So Johnny, Palmer, Palmer's like, room. Palmer's taking rule. responsibility for this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have a word a with uh, the uh, number 22 car because you're their great hope at the moment. Okay. Not sure this is necessarily a fair responsibility, but I'll take it on the chin. You Why know, not? You've got to just step up these sort of things. All right, I will. I will. <laughs> uh, Nick, your thoughts on what we've seen, uh, not just this weekend, but uh, for the week. You've been here many times before in your Formula One pit reporting role over a decade and, and more. Mm. Um, you've... You've been here for a sports car. Yeah, you have been here for a sports car. Yeah. The ELMS and I think the first year of ILMS, I think we came here. Yeah, um, but you've not seen this event in the flesh, as no. it were, before. Your your thoughts? Well, I think the race itself has over-delivered. It's been, um, you know, consistently enthralling, interesting. We, it's never gone an hour without a shock of some sort or a it's surprise. True. That is um, true. It's never settled, which is interesting as well, because you, 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 you get these periods. Sometimes you get these races which really kick off with all sorts of action, and you get a long period where they settle into eight, nine hours of, of what you would turning laps, as I think we say often. But I've not really seen that. Yeah, just um, clicking off the laps. Yeah, yeah. And that's never that's really happened. happened. You come back. I think the I think the giveaway is if you if you've watched the whole program with us and you've seen the the highlights package. How much new stuff comes on every two hours? You yeah, know, and how much, point. you know, it, uh, yeah. well, we always see the Van Tour accent, obviously, but that's gone down from seven replays to one because there's so much more new stuff to add every single time. And it's been an, an action packed race. I think, you know, if it, it, it does come to where it comes, it, 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 oddly, it was one shower off being a classic. And unfortunately, this time, it's because the shower actually came rather than didn't mm. come. Yeah, we often say, don't we, Johnny, just add water uh, to, if you need to spice things up. We, we had something that was. Uh, quite rich and spicy enough actually True. and the water rather chilled it down a little bit I did enjoy slightly that slightly overworked the metaphor that area of jeopardy where we had you know which tyres are the best to go for and there was just that period of unknown for the teams as well of about an hour an hour and a half maybe and then as things turned out as you say it split the battle apart and mm. um, settled things down but for that period of not knowing which direction to go in that was fun to witness um, we have drama we have drama for the lead car. What? Their final pit stop is under investigation. No way. Really? Just come through on the race control channel. Now, anything that happens now will be a time... I've got goosebumps. <laughs> uh, will be a time penalty. Uh, so this, we've seen this, we saw this happen three weeks ago in the, in the quali race. One. With the penalty hanging over the leader that was applied at the end of the race. One thing I always say is the teams are going to be hoping it's Johnny's rule because the, the program time for Van der Linde to come over the line is about 4.07. Right. Because he went across the line last time, about nine and a half minutes left. Correct. So, he, so it, it, you could actually end up running to 4.17 if you're, yeah. if you're, if you're just yeah. ahead of him. So if it's Johnny's rule, he'll be one of the, well, not one, he'll be one of the last of the GT3s to come across, the SB9s. Right. Um, from the pit lane, working with the team, race leader will determine it, determine the check it, not the clock. 
So you and I, 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 I'm not going to even try and look for the bit that I found now because I've, I've reloaded, unloaded and dumped so many things now. But let's see, because that would be a huge difference. Thanks, Marcel. Down in the pit lane, he's working in the garage uh, at the moment. It means Muller needs enough to run to about four hours, 11 minutes. Uh, on his final stop, so that Nico may well come in for a splash. Uh, I think, well, Chris Meese. Did Chris Meese stop last time around? No, he didn't. So he's going to come on uh, to complete eight laps this time around. So that that Audi, the, the two car collection Audi's fourth and fifth at the moment, and only 46 seconds back to the number 16 Audi Team Phoenix car, Michele Beretta. Has that stopped? Uh, which one, Beretta? Yes. He yes. Won. Yeah. Yeah. He's <laughs> only three laps into a stint, so he can get to the end. The other two, not so sure. Could be knocking on the door of a podium if they all start coughing and spluttering. Oh, I think I think the, the teams will know they need to do a splash and dash. And they, you know, it's not like giving it a go around a two-mile short circuit. Is it? Chris Tadoulou might only need to find 15 or 20 seconds. Yes. Yes. It's not 54. It may not be 54 seconds. Chris Tadoulou did a 14-3 last time around. He's not short on fuel. So they can push Adam. Christo got a new set of tyres because remember his previous stop he'd been on the on the cut slicks. So the he's other, got a uh, he's got a rubber advantage. He's got a fuel advantage. They absolutely need to turn to push because at the same spin, uh, Kevin Van Linder only needs to find five seconds to get a minute ahead. Right. Yeah. And given the fact yeah. that a pit stop investigation is almost certainly going to be a, either a speeding or a, uh, a procedural problem, which is either pretty much a 30 or a 60, isn't it? Yeah. So good point. Good point. Rather than having a relaxed end, both those guys should be pushing to 11 tenths. Right. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yes. So it's an aerial stop then. <laughs> mm. uh, and Linda tries to squeeze past way too many cars at the once, but he's uh, luckily got right. Well, he's got through that quite nicely. In comes one of the Audis. Is that the Muller 22 car that's just rolling down the pit lane? Uh, it's not tripped. My yeah, there's been a problem with the trippage in the last couple of laps. I, I'm just saying I think it might be the 22, but please don't quote me on that because I also haven't got the indication either. Right. Uh, well, what other Audi could it be? Yes, yeah, 22 in pit on the on the, on the secondary time right. we have. It that, and, and it's just come up now on my screen. Thank you. So that is the fourth place car. So they, I, I, I would guess they're coming in now. What was that that they've just completed? That is their... 157. Same lap as the leader, but a few minutes behind. Uh, but that's only their seventh lap completed. So they know there's two more. So if it's Johnny's rule, they'd have stayed out. Yeah. They know there's two more. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's the Palmer principle. Oh, very good. To Rod and, Ro Robert Ludlam book that nobody's read. <laughs> all great wants, strip. All wants I to. can't understand why. <laughs> no. I thought I always thought it was going to be very, very popular. So uh, they've changed the driver in 22 as well, have they? Or did no, Muller stays on board? I would think he'd stay on yeah, board. Because it was such a quick stop he because there's only a short period of time to the end of the race now. now. Now, here's what I was looking at earlier. And Johannes, thank you very much for finding this for me. When 24 hours have expired, the leading car will receive the chequered flag when it crosses the finish line. The overall leader at the, at the time will take the chequered flag even if the vehicle in question has been given a time penalty. Now, that is a change, and, it, and, and I saw that marked in yellow, and so uh, it may be a different part of the regs to, to what we were discussing earlier on. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't point, actually yeah. go against what I've said. No, um, no. Because we're interested in the cars in front of the leading car, effectively, True. but before four o'clock. Yeah. And if there are SP9 cars elsewhere in the top class, and there's a matter of, you the, know, the fact 10 seconds between them, that could decide first from second. Uh, let me very quickly run through some class leaders. Uh, as into the pit lane. Well, that is the replay of the problem at the pit stop we're, we're seeing now on the screens here. What the issue was. Right. Well, there's fuel going in. The tyre stop is stopped. They're peeling off the... They fired the engine. Have they fired the engine while it's fired fueling? Fired the engine and then turned it off again whilst it was still fueling. Oops. Slam dunk. Slam what dunk. that 30 though, isn't it? And it's fired again there. And they're waiting to pull out. 
Oh, there's some very, very concerned faces down at Audi Sport Team Phoenix. Um, yeah, that's quite a serious offence fire when you're fielding, isn't it? I think it'll only be 30 seconds. Well, I, mean, I, don't, I don't want them to lose the race on a penalty, so I hope it is. Well, I, I, Audi, here's the storylines. Audi wins. It's the 10th anniversary of them taking their first overall victory. Mercedes wins. It's They are the team of the top three, uh, four German manufacturers, Porsche, Audi, Mercedes and BMW, who have not won for the longest time. Mm -hmm. if that makes it. Yep. So there's a great story either way for German manufacturers. But clearly, the way that these teams and manufacturers and marks, they are super competitive and they'll want it to go their way. Um, in the number three, Mercedes team get speed garage. There's a, an air of anticipation, I would say. Mm -hmm. They are standing together and like a football team would, like a soccer team would, in the Audi side of things, there's concern on the pit wall. There's the, the and there's a lot of chatting going on. Um, yeah, it's almost like they want to get this confirmed and talk to race control and try and argue their case. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, here's the leader coming through with on the clock a minute and 36, 37 seconds was that when yeah. he went through? So 90 seconds. Could, could have slowed down. Could have slowed down and... Uh, no, maybe couldn't. No, so he wants to try and get that minute lead in right, some way. Right, got a push still, now. It's still within you know, a bad sector for Adam Christensen. A bad bit of traffic. Here's Christo on the end of the Dottinger Hur at the moment with the Stellantis management, higher management, Opel ahead, flashes the right indicator, stays to the right. I'd say that's a perfect way to do that. Well done, gentlemen. What a day out it's been, a week out it's been for those guys. And doesn't it make your heart beat a little quicker that people at the sharp end of one of, if not the biggest motor, motoring, automotive concern in the world, Stellantis, the head of motorsport, Jean-Philippe Imperado, Jean-Marc Fino, the head of the company, Carlos Tavares and Franz Varvales, all here, all in the same car, not in a big class, not even in a current model car. That to me would make me think, well, they, maybe they do care about it. Maybe this is not just about the bean counters. They're here for emotion, and that cannot do that company, that management team, and anybody that works for them, JP, it can't do them any harm at all. I think they're here, bottom line, to have fun amongst themselves, yep. but it sends out the right message to yep. customers, both of motorsport programmes and to buyers of cars, isn't it? You know, the fact that they're willing to get on board an SP3T Opel Astra Cup car, you know, in the middle of the night they were running something like fifth in class, so very respectable result, and mm. looking like they're going to get to the finish as well. In fact, great stuff. Uh, we have the opportunity on this last lap to go through the class leaders at the moment. Team Mathol in VT3, the 300 Porsche, uh, are leading in 91st position. Tony Gazoo racing the Corolla Altus. It's the number 120 car, not the all-time uh, driver team. They'll be disappointed, but their teammates will take the victory. GT Tire Motorsport, Volkswagen Golf 7 win, or lead, excuse me, the VT2 front-wheel drive category in 74th position for the 223 rockstar games well done to the programmers and their self-built 325i they've done a cracking job to win v4 and they're inside the top 75 the kroll prince family hoffer racing their lovely bmw a46 gtr 70th position for the 200 and leading sp6 v6 the unnamed team the privately entered team the porsche 911 the 397 squad a little golf clap for you in 65th position Three places further up the field. The V5 winner is Adrenaline Motorsports Cayman 981, the triple four car. One place further ahead of that is the Cup X winner, the 161 Taikman Racing Crossport GTX. 718 is the SP4 T leader. That's the Porsche 718 GTS in 59th position. Adrenaline Motorsports 240. Uh, racing Cup car wins that category. It is the 240 as well in 53rd position. One place further ahead is the new 
pretender to that crown, if you will. The M2 Racing Cup car in Cup 5, Schubert Motorsport in the 880. VT2, all-wheel drive and rear drive, 330 BMW from Adrenaline, the number 330 in 47th position. 45th position, the Stanko family, Autorama, Seat Leon, the 113 t is in the lead of SP3T. I really feel like I should have the countdown music on <laughs> uh, here for the, the swinging symbol for the top of the pops thing cutting down things we're doing the countdown 32nd position sp7 uh, for hamprec the hamprec driven huber motorsport 991 cup car uh, and uh, just behind them the at the alternative fuel car the porsche will win that the 320 machine into the top 25 and at 25 door motorsport is the remaining aston martin in a winning position the number 95 car which was patched up early on and probably has half its weight in uh, duct tape on the back of that car but they will come through to a class victory in spat cup three for cayman gt4s schmickler performance in the 264 the pink car 24th position for that sp10 the m4 gt4 2021 version fk performance motorsport 78 car will win in 22nd position just outside the top 20 and the best of the front wheel drive cars the hyundai motorsport elantra tcr 830 have done it the hard way got pole position lost pole, lost pole position had to go at the back of the group and have fought their way back through mark bessing being giving the honour of bringing that to the line. The Porsche 992 Cup Class has been a cracker. There's two and a half minutes between K. Kramer Racing and Black Falcon in 16th and 17th position. Well inside the top 20, not quite inside the top 10 as I was hoping for then. The eight, that was the eight, uh, that was the 127 car, that uh, the K. Kramer car. SPX, just outside the top 10, it's a top 12 finish for Glickenhaus Racing and they'll win SPX. And at the moment, the 15 car, Kelvin von der Linde, is in the lead and coming to the line. Uh, it's four minutes past and there's been cars going past the line and we've not seen a chequered flag. They are waiting for the 15 Audi Sport Team Phoenix car. They are waiting and hoping that they do get to the line. We've still not seen what the answer to the pit stop investigation will be, but whatever happens now, it will be the chequered flag for Van der Linde and the team as they come through. Robin Frines, Frederick Vervich, Dries van der and Kelvin van der Linde bringing this car home to win SP9. down towards the last third of the track coming down in towards uh, Brunchen now in fact just be beyond that coming into Flans Garden checkered flag graphic on the screen but that has not been shown yet so cars that are going past in front of us will have to do one more lap have to do one more lap the man with the checkered flag is waiting to wave it right in front of us. Hope he, did, hope he does a better job than Jean Top did um, at the Legends race. We just spun it around in a circle so you couldn't see it off the first two cars. And only 12 then. Exiting the second carousel. Kevin Van Linde has a very, oh. several cars going slowly because they don't want to have to do an extra lap. Um, I think that uh, Bill Stein's number six car is the best of the SP9 Pro Arms. Yes. Would you agree with that, JP? I yes. missed that one out earlier on when I was looking at it. It was between, it's been between that and the Conrad Motorsport Lamborghini for pretty much all of the race. The Lambo has dropped in behind the leader now, so we'll drop another lap. Um, maybe there, Jordan Pepper, knowing that he didn't have the fuel to go around again. And the 25, no, not. 25 Uber Motorsport car looking like it'll make the podium. Seven and 25 have been together actually on the screen, but many minutes between them. So that's never really developed into uh, a close fight. But yeah, credit to the other Bilstein Mercedes looking like they're going to be prime winners. The scene of so much incident, accident and discussion. The Tiergarten has been negotiated for the final time. Ten years ago, Audi took their first ever victory at the Nürburgring Nordschleife 24 and they take the chequered flag in 2022 for the 50th anniversary running. This is a manufacturer 
who at the moment are unsure where their future lies in endurance racing. And Chris Renke, the head of Audi Sport Custom, Customer Racing, is there on the pit wall to congratulate Audi Sport Team Phoenix. They have brought home another victory. The flags are in the air. Still waiting to find out the penalty and how far is Adam Christodoulou passing this Aston Martin? Couple of seconds here as he comes through, take up for the final time. Will that be where the race victory is won or lost? Past the Toyota Altis as well. Christodoulou across the line, confirmed in second place for Mercedes team Get Speed. And the gap between them, Nick, is. Not come off my list yet, but it was it was running at 54 seconds. 55 seconds. seconds. Yeah, so then you lost it like Yeah. So it's a minute. They're not going to win. It's 30 seconds. They are. And it's yeah. nothing. They are as well, obviously. Yeah. Investigate pit stop. It looks like a two-three for Mercedes Street team. Get speed with Maro Engel coming to the line. Uh, we're waiting for him to come through and confirm this. So the checkered flag did indeed wait for the victory in a change from what we've seen in previous years. The 15 car, not unscathed, Johnny Palmer, with uh, gaffer tape from very early on around the front end of that car. But I have to say, I can't remember too many issues where we're calling that car's number and saying, oh, he's off the track, oh, he's got a puncture, or anything like that. Yeah, uh, there was there was an incident, and there have been so many now. I'm just trying to remember. Um, there was, there was uh, almost an overshoot at Adenau Forced for Dries Van Tor. Well, there was the clash with the number yes. one car, of course. Oh, yes, of course, <laughs> yes. And that was, yeah, when the Van Tor brothers came to blows. And, yeah. and amazingly, it got through that incident with the Porsche spinning behind um, and didn't feel any ill effects from that. And our force ran a bit wide and often that Audi was the first on the road when the rain was coming down yeah. and you had a close rival behind that could react. Do you know, also going into Metzgersfeld, when Alexander Sims left the road in the 20 Schubert Motorsport BMW, there was a Glickenhaus spinning behind, and somehow Kelvin van der Linde kept it on the black stuff then, when it could have been very easily uh, leaving the track and heading for the scenery. Uh, the, the, I, 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 we didn't have the Manta Foxtail this year, and in the fan favourite, I, I think we might have crowned a new fan favourite with the Dacia. yet. Uh, finished 98th. Uh, on the road, uh, fifth in SP3, all but one X car was behind them, and 14 SP9s, says Ken Childs, Dacia forever. <laughs> fantastic, Excellent. fantastic stuff. That's the third endurance race in a row win for uh, Phoenix. Yeah. They've won the last two Coventics as well, have Yes, they have. Mm. Yeah, Very they're good. on real form at the moment. Let's get uh, some thoughts from some of the other teams. JP, uh, get speed, 2-3. What a change in fortune for those guys. New sponsor being BWT. New colour scheme, of course, to reflect that. We've been so used to uh, seeing those cars in red and white down through the years. That's a stunning performance. They're going to come up second and third and be on the podium. Regularly running as a pro and a pro-am car in the past, I remember. Fabian Schiller has raced with Get Speed for a few years now with, um, with the Hills. Uh, husband oh, yeah. and wife Janine Hill, Janine Hill yeah. used to race in for Get Speed when they were in the red and white. Adam Christodoulou, late yesterday evening, making some really interesting comments to say there have been too many times, whether it be with Get Speed or with Black Falcon previously for him, that we've gone too hard too early and ended up in a barrier somewhere and there is a deliberate change of tactic this year for get speed in that yes they were playing the survival mode but the old push without risk if it's possible to do that around here try not to get involved in any skirmishes in the first half of the race make sure you're still there going into six hours to go four hours to go they haven't got the win, but they have got two of their cars on the podium. And I do think that's a result of this sort of, you know, 12 months away. Let's think about how to attack this race in a different way. Play the percentage game. They'll be annoyed not to have won it, but they'll be very grateful to get two cars on the podium. And we still have that slight question mark as to how long, if at all, this penalty is issued, how long it's going to be. If it's a minute, it's a very different result today. 
Well, I I'm just looking. The last line on the race control message at the moment is a pit violation, but not for the car that we're waiting for. It's for Team Zorg Rensport in V6. Non-respect of pit time, replacement penalty, 95 seconds. Mm. Okay. Now, we, th we think, and we don't know because we don't have the details, that it was starting the engine whilst there was still fueling. Starting and stopping the engine while it was still fueling. Joe Bradley. I'd, I'd, I'd like to think they were sensible and give them a 54-second penalty. <laughs> oh, that would drive the Mercedes guys mad. Yeah, though. but I mean... 30 or 60, yeah. isn't it? All right, you know what? In, in fairness, that is a pretty serious violation, and I'm not sure how that even was able to happen in that team of experienced drivers and why the car was you know why the car was fired up whether there was an instruction etc it's uh it's a bit dicey isn't it change to the end of the race this year not everybody likes that but the, the reasoning behind it we discussed earlier on it, it could mean that the checkered flag goes out for somebody who's chasing down the leader mm. and they don't get the chance to chase down the leader we've seen that before yeah yeah we? so the leader ends up on a lap on its own uh, yeah, yeah. When, when there were cars 15 seconds behind it or 10 seconds behind it or a second behind it as it crossed the line. That's the conventional way. The checkered flag goes to the lead car. The, the, the first time the lead car comes to the stripe after the time has elapsed. Yes. That's, that's how it would happen at uh, Le Mans. That's how it would happen uh, anywhere else in a time race. And this race before it's gone out at four o'clock uh, because it's such a long lap and presumably to try and mitigate people stacking up as we saw them do to let the leader go by the, the thing I would say here is everybody's used to passing slower cars and the marshals here are right on that game and but people stay well over to one side it's not it's not as if they're congregating people stacking up and stopping is probably what they're trying to negate that, that's exactly what they're you trying know, to do because that's yeah, dangerous yeah, yeah. and Still waiting, still waiting. Uh, yeah. Some of the other cl the class winners uh, have will get their just desserts as well. What about the Glicken House guys? What an up and down week for them. Didn't get the qualifying they wanted. Didn't get to qualify because of that water pump issue. Had to work really hard on Friday night, JP, to to replace the whole engine unit. Fought their way up to. I, I think they were in the top ten at one stage mm -hmm. um, overall, uh, passing the two KTM's. Um, then they got hit by an Aston Martin, dropped down into the late teens, possibly the 20s, have fought their way back to 12th position. And they have at least won their class. Jim, Jim's going to get a trophy. Yeah, yes, and there is that. Uh, certainly um, up against those two true racing KTMs. But, you know, Jim wants to finish in the overall top three, basically. I mean, he wants to win the race quite clearly, but he wants a better result than an overall top, uh, overall 12th position that is what they're going to come away from the ring with this year. That SCG 004C capable of more on pure pace, and it uh, often performs well when it can get to qualify. It's been on pole in the past, actually, the Glickenhaus car. I remember um, when the front Meyer, I think, put it on, on the pole position a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. Uh, was it my early 15? Anyway, definitely been there in a previous iteration of the 004. Well, that's and that's and that's in fact why the pole position trophy was donated by 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 Jim Clickenhouse. Yes, it? yes. Well, I think it was the year that he decided to put his name against it, and his car went and, uh, really, went yeah, and yeah. got the pole for the first ever award of that trophy. And yes, he awarded it to Luca Ludwig on Friday night after the pole for the Octane 126 Ferrari. Um, it's, it's one of those cars which, again, has had great single lap speed on low fuel. They still didn't quite get the luck they needed, the reliability and the speed required across an eight lap stint to, to match the big German manufacturers. Uh, changing the finishing procedure, changing the podium ceremony as well. The cars are not going to be lifted this year, which I have to say I rather like. Few people asking about the old Golf, the Mark III Golf. That did finish, and I reckon it's got a podium, you know, uh, in, its, in its category, uh, in... And now I've managed to lose it. SP3. It SP3. 84th position from the MSA Zinzi gave him um, ADAC. The Golf 3 16 valve uh, finishing and on its class podium. The, the Mini was repaired and finished as well in the first time we've seen that brand here since 2017. So well done to the Bulldog. Did the Golf get a third, did it? Yes. Is that yeah. a third I can yeah. see there? Yeah. yeah. So the 
podium ceremony is about to get underway. Thanks again to all of our production team here at the ring and back in London as well. Kerry and Rob have worked uh, tirelessly in shifts over the weekend and of course of all of our broadcast colleagues uh, here at the ring and particularly our camera operators who were out in the weather which was pretty chilly overnight and to Nick Damon, Peter Snowden, Ben Constantjuris, Johnny Palmer and Joe Bradley along with the responsible adult who is everywhere Eve Hewitt and all of our listeners and viewers and particularly our colleagues at EMPA Sport Total and our timing partners here for the facilities to be able to bring you the coverage that we have and all of our syndications on TV around the world as well I'm still not seeing the pit stop time mm. keep an eye on that timing screen because as soon as it's announced it will change it's what happened at the end of the race there seems to be from Phoenix to 